death keep our souls lest they fall prey to him. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the first tournament, well, one of the first tournaments of Patch 2.2. And uh, this is going to be the start of uh, Season 3 as well. So if you guys haven't seen Total Tavern, the leaderboard has been reset. The stats have been reset. And today, this is going to be the first tournament that's going to be applying to Season 3. So, so the Season 2 finals have been finalized. You can go and look it back at Season 2, see who the top 16 players are. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Super hyped. Welcome, welcome. So, yes, patch in between games today. If I have a little bit of downtime, we'll go over the patch notes. But overall, just it's it's a it's a rel it's a pretty disappointing. I mean, the new D the new ROR's are cool. I think that's really fun. Got to add some spice to some of these factions. But um, even though Creative Assembly did fix the uh, the Marauder Horseman bug fix is really nice. The fact that uh, certain factions no longer have infinite ammunition is nice. However, uh, they introduced another massive game-breaking bug, which I would imagine they're going to have to hotfix because it affects campaign as well, which means they're probably going to fix it. Um, abilities like Invocation, Realm of Souls, things that resurrect models uh, basically have no healing cap and just like fully heal. It's just it's an absolute disaster. Uh, Human Boy put up a video showing it. Human Boy, yes, yes, if you want to look him up on uh, YouTube. But um, yeah, it's really bad. So basically we have to ban Tomb Kings and any ability that resurrects models has to be banned, including revivification crystals. And for some reason, they just, I mean, Slanesh barely got touched. Like it's its an absolute joke. Um, hopefully they'll get them in the next patch. You know, obviously there's constraints under which they work and whatnot. And uh, maybe we didn't get them the inf information fast enough for this patch. I'm sure they work pretty far ahead, but yeah, Slanesh didn't get touched. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So Slanesh is still absolutely broken, and they actually got buffed in some ways, uh, which is pretty absurd. So it's okay. We have global bands. You know, global bands can karate chop the really broken stuff, and it just blatantly bugged things like Tomb Kings, and uh, we can, you know, block those effects uh, in-house. But, yeah, who would have thought? I just joined this lobby. I was like, oh, this is going to be cool. He's got a Bretonian picture of the guy in the bottom, and Dutoxin likes to play Corn and Nurgle and Beastmen. And then we get a, a Beastmen mirror match, of all things, which is very, very strange. Yeah, this patch is really cursed. Yeah, it's a pretty terrible patch, to be honest. It is what it is. You know, everyone makes mistakes, even developers, and uh, it happens. It happens, but uh, it's a shame because it was, it was a good opportunity to fix a lot of things, but at least we got some new, you know, ROrs, which I think is going to be nice for a couple of those factions, but there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs. I know Hellscourge is actually viable now, too. Literally buffs Slanesh. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I agree with you guys, but it's fine. In this tournament, we have three global bands. So each player gets to ban three factions prior to the to the start of the match. So um, yeah, that's basically to account for like bugs and and Slanesh being still being busted, Warriors of Chaos still being busted. I mean they're allowed to be played in this tournament. If the players let the global ban through, but overall it's uh, it's tricky. <clears throat> yeah, obviously the campaign the patch is going to be focused on campaign stuff, which makes sense. You know, the, the that's the primary focus at, at CA, right? Is going to be the uh, campaign stuff. So. First match is a mirror match. We have the dreaded Doom Bull trying to usurp Torox the Brass Bull. Whoa, look at that. Double Minotaur Great Weapon coming in from the Beastman on the right from Torox's side. Yeah, the Marauder Horseman got fixed, which is really good. So there's there's some progress. Um, if we get a hot fix that addresses the healing bug, I mean, it's a step forward. It's one less broken thing in the Marauder Horseman, right? And then it's just like Slanesh needs a big, big nerf. Like they need to get hammered into the Shadow Realm and... The crumbling nerf, there was a nerf to crumbling as well, which is really insignificant. It, it's like barely anything. Because crumbling only hits one model at a time, unlike demonic like instability, which like melts the whole unit basically. So unde that, I still think that needs to be looked at. Because you, you clearly see a power level of undead just being way stronger, right? Like vampire counts, tomb kings are just so top tier factions and are so much easier to play than non-undead factions, in my anecdotal opinions. Um, 
So I think you really need to take a look at Undead, but it's hard because CA doesn't really want to do anything that's going to affect the campaign experience. Right, so I understand that. You know, it's, it's their primary cash cow is, is single player, so. <clears throat> Minotaurs got buffed. Yeah, they did. They did, which is going to be kind of interesting. All right, guys. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be coming in here with the Dokes the next. He is our resident beast spin corn player. And uh, Nurgle as well, I think. He's got Ungor Spears backed by some Black Horns Ravagers. We got the Butchers of Kalkenguard. All the Minotaurs, I'm not sure about the RR, but they got cost reduction. So, Minotaurs have become a lot more viable, which is. I would love to see Beastmen become like a good faction because of that. Maybe it gives Beastmen like a solid anchor piece upon which to build their factions. I think that would be really, really interesting. So, yep, that's it. It's going to be cheap Ungors, probably designed to counter, you know, Minotaur spam, right? And then he's got Ungor Raiders. He's got a Gore Bull in the back with a uh, Doom Bull. So, Dodoxin coming in with the Doom Bull. Now, if you guys haven't seen Doom Bull, he is the Walmart version of Torox. And uh, he does have this uh, barbed knuckle boxing, which is very cool. Basically, he just gets a little bit of a stat buff. So, I still think Torox is better, but um, a pretty cool choice nonetheless. Now, taking a look over here at the other Brayherd army. This is going to be the Glade of the Everqueen, one of our new maps in the Total Tavern Tournament map pack. It is Torox the Brass Bull. We got Minotaurs with Great Weapons, Gore Herds, and it looks like it's going to be Center Gore Throwing Axe. It's a nice utility piece. You know, being able to get armor piercing uh, missiles against any number of targets, including Doom Bulls, Gore Bulls, all that is going to be nice and good. So that's that. Arena, hey Turn, I was late to join the tourney, but getting to see you cast some sweet new patches just as good. Yeah. Yeah, the patch is pretty terrible, but it does have. There are some. There is some silver lining in it. Like, at least the infinite ammo thing and Rotter Horseman have brought in a check in. You know, Slanesh is just, you, you guys will see over the course of the next couple months until Slanesh gets fixed, then another patch, probably 2.3. Like straight up, you're just not going to see Slanesh getting played because, and they're going to get banned in every single series. <clears throat> we, we have global bans in the meta now, which is very good. I think it makes for a, a far less toxic uh, gameplay and, uh, and more balanced. So yeah, Slanesh is just going to get globally banned in every single series. There's no point in leaving Slanesh open. If you do that, you're just asking for a game loss. Unless you're one of those like sweat lords who really likes to just play Slanesh versus Slanesh mirrors and you're like, all right, let's do it, man. But honestly, that just doesn't seem fun to me. I, I don't know who would enjoy that. <clears throat> all right, guys. So the forces of Dodokasin, the Doom Bull, going to be setting up on objective one, pushing forward with an archer line, very much playing this in a very defensive kind of posture, waiting for his opponent to come at him. Centigore's throwing axes 70 range against the 115 of the Ungor Raiders. So Ungor Raiders with proper micro should be able to kind of keep them back. What was that? Could have sworn I saw like a ballista coming from downtown. Nonetheless, the back objective here is going to be uh, opening up in about 50 seconds and a little bit of harass coming in from Bohemond. And what spells does he have? He's got Buna and Spirit Leech. Probably the best bet for this kid of magic. Spirit Leeching, you know, yeah, Buna isn't going to be particularly useful. Probably just Spirit Leech spam against like the Doom Bull over the course of the whole game just to try and wear him down. You know, if you Spirit Leech a single target the entire game, uh, it will eventually get to the point where you can kind of take it out or alpha strike it or things like that. So, you know, going after one of your opponent's more uh, important aspects is, is very, very good. Yeah, they buffed Slanesh, basically, which is absurd. I mean, they, they added 50 gold to the anti-large Hell Striders, which is an absolute joke, because that's like, that's not enough. Like, that unit, you need to add like 150 to that unit to like, and then we can start talking. Like a 600, 650 cab unit defeats like wild riders or trades evenly with an 1100 gold cab unit. It's just like, no, that shouldn't happen. Even if it is something that like should in theory kind of counter it. That would be like if Empire Spearmen were just like crushing like, you know, 1000 gold, 2000, no, like 1500 gold SEMs and things like that. But um, <clears throat> anyways, Deathcaster back here. Going to be dropping a fast spirit leech on the Doom Bull. So uh, he certainly knows the way. And we see the Minotaurs with great weapons kind of lurking. But but Dodoxin, of course, being... Uh, being the Dark Lord of the Bushes here, he does have his Gorbol and his Bray Shaman and the Butchers of Kalkengard lying in wait. So it looks like it's going to be one of those like counter push type strategies. These guys are going to move in, then there's going to be like a big counter alpha strike. Beastmen are very much about ambushing, and this map actually has some really cool dynamics for it. So yeah, I like this one a lot. Shout out to Wacka Wacka for this lovely map that we now use in our tournaments. On the other side, whoa, what is this? The Dokesen brought a giant in. When did I not see that? Oh my god, look at this thing. So there's just a giant Beastman giant chasing down Torox. That is a really strange tech. A beast bend giant? Maybe beast bend giant stacked on top of like cheap spears is good. Now Bohemond does have gore herds in the front. Gore herds will decisively defeat these like cheap ungors like very very easily. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. However, volume of numbers is volume of numbers, and we do also have the Blackhorns Ravagers coming in from Dodoxin. And it looks like Centaur's throwing axe is maybe going to be used into melee here to go after the ungor raiders. Wouldn't necessarily be a terrible idea to dive back there, but it looks like Dodoxin does notice it, and he is going to be remaneuvering his spears. And we do actually see a Buna being used on Destroyers. Uh, I don't, like, love it. It's not the worst play in the world, simply because they are a decent unit and they could be disruptive to your play, but 
We'll have to see. Now the giant over here, the haggard giant, the time of giants has come. Yes, the Dotson has a giant here, and he's uh, got a Gorble backing it up. Spears battling the enemy Torox, battling the Minotaurs with great opens. And this is uh, definitely a big misplay here by Bohemond. You don't want to be sending Minotaurs into, you know, just a wall of Spears and a Gorble and all of these things. The Minotaurs should probably just be looking to attack the Butchers of Kalkengard who are not an anti-large variant, but that's kind of the nice thing about Dodoxin having a ton of the uh, a ton of the just cheap spears all over the place, right? Now, Centigore is piling into fight. Kind of a curious choice. Like, Centigore is just charging into more spears. Really good raider fire. You can see Dodoxin getting a nice volume of fire here into Centigores, but they are going to get around, and they are shielded, so many of these poor Centigores are going to be uh, punished pretty badly. You see, that that would be one silver lining. If Giants became good in this meta, I would, I would be very happy about that. Now, Spears moving up. We got Ungor Raiders in the back, shooting in. Back objective currently owned by Nadoxin, but you can see the aggression from Bohemond has earned him the objectives, but the trading is not going in his favor. Nadoxin is getting a superior trade here. It looks like the uh, the Bray Shaman of Death is getting beaten up. Minotaurs with great opens are battling Spears and being shot by archers. And on the other side of the battlefield, maybe this is going okay. The Walmart Giant. I think Giant's got a cost reduction as well. I'll have to take a look. Yes, the Sons of Bohemond. He is, uh, he's, he's battling uh, Torox. Torox actually probably does not want to fight a giant. Torox isn't like an anti-large character, and giants hit super hard. I mean, probably could straight up kill Torox at this point. Torox is surrounded as well. He's got spears kind of giving him those little prison shanks to do one damage at a time. We also see the Gorbel here. Gorbel's getting his big cleave and axe out, and he's having a good old jolly time. And uh, and yeah, that's looking like it's going to be Dodoxin taking over the game. Like, most of the trades... Just didn't go super well for Bohemond. Um, he basically had, you know, Minotaurs with great weapons saturated in, into spears. And uh, overall, Dezoxin just took the better, more conservative trades. He was able to kind of get his archer shooting for most of the game. And you can see Objective 1 is currently taken by the Beastmen. Objective 2 taken by Dezoxin's Beastmen. And the back objective is going to be taken. It's only a matter of time. And the Giant is really an interesting pick here. Like, let's see the Giant's value so far. It's gotten 11, 1200 value. That's not bad at all, considering it was being focused also. And I think most of that value is probably against Torox the Brass Bull. What sort of witchcraft is going to be going down here? Most likely a Spirit Leech, which uh, is a little bit desperate at this point. No, Mansell of Gorok. And Bohemond knows the game's over. GG, well played. No, the Undead aren't completely banned in today's tournament. That was a fun one. We got to see, like, a Giant. We got to see the new Minotaurs. But, like, the Minos with Grey Opens just couldn't find a home. They, if those are Minotaurs with dual weapons, they would trade much better into the Spears. But overall, sending those into Spears a little bit unsupported. Like, I think if Bohemond had stacked the Minotaurs on top of the Gore Herds, he gets a much better trade evaluation. Whereas sending them in solo was uh, was too much. So GG well played. That's game one. The Dzoxin is a Beastman main. So if, if you're going to mess with the Bull, you're going to get the Horns for sure. Yeah. That was a fast one. It was a very fast one. Next map is going to be Itza. So we have a combination of new and old maps today. So, hey, at least we got new maps with this patch, guys. At least we got new maps. <laughs> no thanks to CA, but we still got them. And now we have new fun playable maps in the tournament, which is good. Do you think any of the new multiplayer... Uh, I need to test the RORs a little bit myself. This is my first time jumping on today and checking it out and everything like that. So, uh, so yeah. We're doing it. We're having fun. A lot of great matches today. It's a big tournament. The single elimination. However, it's best of three. Uh, I don't know where Bohemond went. Let me check here. Uh, where did he go? I'm just messaging him. I'm like, bro, it's best of three. <laughs> where are you going, dude? Where are you going? Don't leave us. Unless he has to drop or something, which is fine. If he needs to drop, he could just jump into another match. It wouldn't be a big deal. But Maybe he crashed. Maybe he's resetting. Who knows? It's some funny stuff. So the new ROR's. Yeah, we'll take a look at them in between games. We'll take a look at them in between games. The Terracotta ROR seems... Yeah, it does. Doesn't it have Missile Reflection or something like that? That seems really curious. Do you think the cost reduction of Korn's Elites? Yeah, Korn's Infantry are still very good. I uh, Again, I think it's too early to draw conclusions on a lot of things. Uh, let me see what Bohemond said. I had a problem with my camera. So, okay, sounds good. So Bohemond is restarting. He had uh, some issues with his camera, so he's just restarting his game. So. We're all set. Anyways, let's take a look at the matches for today. We have a lot of top players because this is, this is always a fun one. The launch of a new season, right? You have the opportunity to be the number one on the leaderboard. And then you can take a screenshot, show your friends, and you know you will always hold that. But yeah, you can see a lot of matches. We are currently we got this is a heavy hitting match right here. We have Subutai versus Void Lols who got matched up in the first round, which is pretty unfortunate for both of them. It's always like when you have to face the Terminator in the first round, regardless of the position. Uh, going down a little bit further, we're casting Bohemond versus the Doxin House Cat of War here. A lot of the individuals who were top 16 last season are going to be uh, vying for the top spots. we got Roflin here. Man, there are, there is a Nurgle fly loose in this room here, and it is just attacking me incessantly. Oh my god, I can't take it. 
that's probably one of my triggers. Somebody asked what like actually pisses me off, and that's definitely one of them. But Roflin was top 16. Um, let's see here. Any other top 16 players? Platypus playing Romulan Dog in a best of three down there. Yes, yeah, so there's a fair amount of best of threes going. Yeah, patch 2.3. You can see the leaderboard's all reset. Uh, I don't think anybody's reported their scores yet. So, yeah, you can see. Oh, wow. We actually already have a victory. The dreaded Thundernut. Maybe his opponent dropped, or how did he win so quickly? Let me look at the leaderboard. That that doesn't make sense. Come on, guys. We've had this up for a while. You should know how to report scores by now. See, Thundernut could go and take a screenshot right now and tell everybody, like, look, Mom, I'm on top of the leaderboard. Okay, so let me just message him. Uh, all right, so Thunder. <laughs> the dreaded Thundernut. I love that name. I don't know why. It just brings me joy. Thundernut, the number one Total War Warhammer player of all time. At the top of the leaderboard, baby. Do you think we'll see non-Lord Greater Demons? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, it's hard to say. Probably not Corn. Like, I think the, I, I, I don't know. Maybe the ROR. I'll have to take a look at it. I haven't had a chance to look at those. I haven't had a chance to really jump in there. Yeah, the Age of Red Olgor is upon us. That's true. All those, like, demons got their, uh, they got their shine. Yeah. The Demon Prince has got big cost reduction. So maybe Red Olgor is going to be meta now. Who knows? Thunder's, Thunder's coming for that number one spot, ladies and gentlemen. So much to get. Turn the classic Australian fly swatter. I have no idea what that is. I have no idea what that is. I'm, 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 I'm afraid to ask. Is there any chance CA releases a multiplayer patch? Definitely not. Um, the, the one chance that we have, I think that this is such a big issue, the, the healing thing, it really affects campaign. So I feel like Creative Assembly will have a hot fix like in, in the next week. Like there will probably be a hot fix like in a week or two. Yeah. Would be my guess, which is fine. We can still have good tournaments and just ban those factions and bugs until then. And then I think we're, uh, we're a-okay. I would love to see somebody try the new, uh, the new, uh, Lord, the new Cathay ROR. Yeah, that would be really cool. So it looks like the Zoxin's, the Zoxin's going to be on corn. He is probably one of the best corn players in the game. There's not very many corn mains, but he's one of them. And the I believe was top, he was close to top 16. I don't know. I think he was last season or no, he was just, just past it, but. And, and I think if he played more meta factions, he could easily be top 16. But yeah, he's a very, very strong player. Very, very strong. I haven't played Darktide yet. No, no. I, Darktide's just a lot of spam clicking, and it would be a little bit hard in my hand. So what do you think about the corn changes? So let's pull up the patch notes right now, and we can take a look. So uh, let's go to uh, Creative Assembly. Patch notes. Let's do this. All right, let's go to the blog, 2.2. They should include it in the blog how they... <laughs> We have, we have removed healing caps for the undead. May their tyranny live ever, ever long. All right, so let's go check this out. So we're on the patch here. We got the ROWs. So the Terracotta Sentinel Green Guardian. Enemies with, you know, within the aura have their projectiles redirected back at themselves. It's kind of interesting, and it has increased missile resist. I like that. What's that really, what is that really pertinent against? Probably like like hand cannon type units that have shortish range. This thing would be really oppressive against like uh, like another in a Cathay mirror match. This thing could probably be like an auto pick. Yeah, because like Iron Hail Gunners are one of the main things you use to kill such monsters, and they have short range. And this thing's aura is pretty small, so that could be kind of cool. Now, Corn, uh, let's see, gains damage resistance when near enemy large targets. That's okay. Yeah, Corn is kind of. I think I think this depending on the scaling of it, I'd have to take a look at the specifics. Like maybe I think against corn you could go with mass corn warriors and use this guy as your lord instead of Valkia, and he could maybe actually kill like big dread saurian type monsters and like those type of things. Okay, this guy he's got a bound heart of winter. That's actually kind of cool. Probably costs like I would guess a couple hundred more. Heart of winter is a decent spell. It's not like amazing, but I don't know. This thing could see some play, but. Yeah, Heart of Winter is a pricey spell. You, the thing is, you're probably paying the premium for that. It's not like you're getting a good bargain deal, right? So, kind of curious there. We have the Uncle for for Uncle. Okay. So, he has, he heals himself while damaging enemy. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh. This guy has Spirit Leech. He's got a Mortis Engine and a Self Heal. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to one of Nurgle's new lords that they're going to bring. No longer will we be seeing Festus and <laughs> these other characters. You just bring this guy as your lord. He's he's a Mortis Engine, he self-heals, and he has a Bound Spirit Leech. Dude, this guy kind of seems like an auto-pick in a lot of matchups. Kind of seems like an auto-pick for sure. Wow. Holy shit. Uncle for Uncle looks very, very good. Now, this, the Snowhorn of Morn gains increased armor and missile resist at the expense of swim speed. Okay. 
Reduces the uh, speed of enemy units. Uh, that's not bad. He's not bad, for sure. The, depending on the actual like numbers on the armor and missile resist, this guy could be a great tool against like a lot of the Elvish factions or anybody who's looking to shoot big targets against ogres. It's only a temporary... Oh, it's an activated Mortis Engine. Okay. So if it's an activated Mortis Engine... Yeah, it's an active... Okay. Sorry, I was being attacked by a fly, so I'm like... I'm trying to... Right as I'm looking at the Nurgle unit, a fly attacks me, which is great. Um, okay. I don't know. It depends on the percentages of the healing. It heals two times 5%. It's not bad. I mean, he does have Bound Spirit Leech. He could, he could see some play for sure. He could definitely see some play. This guy is not bad. We're looking at the Marquis of Masochism. So a passive ability, regenerating health based on the number of enemies who have their morale break. So classic Slanesh stuff. And yeah, whatever. Like, I have such sights to show you. Oh, I love the Hellraiser reference. They got the Pinhead reference there, which is pretty fun. Um, yeah, eh, probably not. I, I think that these aren't that great. Slanesh is just, uh, Slanesh, you know, I don't even like care to talk about Slanesh. They're just so broken and stupid. Um, all right. The Golden Griffin of Theurgy. Hmm. Increased armor. So permanent, oh, a permanent glittering robe. Blue fire into Searing Doom and Gehenna's is Golden Hounds. Probably will not see play because blue fire is just such a strong spell that I don't see the point really. And then we have the new Vermintide endgame, which is pretty cool. So we'll continue reviewing the patch notes in between games. Uh, let's load back into, oh my God. Talk dirty. Is that the dreaded Demon Prince of Corn who's just coming off a cost reduction? Oh, yeah. See, this is, this is what we wanted from a new patch. These, this is the silver lining we're talking about. The bird is super tanky. Yeah, but Exalted Lords of Change are already super tanky and hard to kill, and Blue Fire is just a way better spell. I, I don't know. I'd be surprised if people are using that. It's not Red Olgor. It's his cousin. It's like, it's, well, okay, this is Red Olgor. It counts as Red Olgor. Guys, this, this guy counts as Red Olgor. Let's, let's not mess about he comes from the darkness of the pitch to bring doom doom to this world of man. It's going to be Bretonia facing off against Red Olgor. Yeah, it's Red Olgor. Come on. Give it up for him, guys. <laughs> Red Olgor approaches. I love when we just start to mangle his name. <clears throat> now, taking a look at the build for Corn. He has a Demon Prince of Corn, Shielded Corn Warriors, which are one of my favorite units on the roster, the newly reduced uh, Minotaurs of Grey Opens of Corn, which are actually much better against Bretonia because they have higher armor than standard Minotaurs. So things like Knights of the Realm and Knights Errant actually do struggle a little bit more against these guys. So I do like the initial opening, Anti-Cavalry. We have the Heralds of Corn's Fury, the dreaded uh, the dreaded ROs, the Blood Crushers of Corn. Are these things, uh, th yeah, these guys, yeah, these are the original ones. So they have the Mantle Immolation, which lowers 20% uh, uh, extra damage by lowering fire weakness of nearby units. Okay. So the Heralds of Corn's Fury, Marauders of Corn, and uh, Dodoxin has always wanted to bring, like, really, really fun builds for sure. Very, very fun builds. On the far side, we do have Blood Letters, and it's going to be the Demon Prince of Corn, which is an anti-infantry specialist, but his stats are still high enough that he can duel. But uh, he's not Red Olgor is anti-large. Now, looking at Bohemond... No Fan Chantress. So I personally think Fan Chantress is probably the way to go in this matchup simply because of the Mortis on all the good corn infantry. Uh, King Lu and Leon Kerr. We got a Grail Relique, a bunch of Men at Arms with Pole Arms, Foot Squires to the back. So a very infantry heavy army, which going fist the cuffs with corn infantry with Bretonias without like Fey Mortis is going to be really, really interesting. This big demon though does do magic damage. So if the Green Knight had been brought, you know, there is the, uh, the kind of point that he would be able to potentially take down the Green Knight, right? So we'll have to see. Demon Prince of Corn going to be surging across looking for King Luan as we do have the Heralds of Corn's Furies over here. So here they come and uh, they're eyeing their prize. Yeah, unfortunately, somebody in chat talking about Warriors of Chaos, they're still going to be just stupidly broken because um, Hellstriders didn't actually get nerfed. Like the nerf is just irrelevant. It's like, it's like, oh no, I can bring well, like less than half of a Marauder, you know, for this nerf. It needs to be more significant. It really does. So, uh, you know, that's why we give players global bans. So if there's just super stupidly imbalanced factions, they can just use the global bans on them. And then they can have fun. They can have a fun and balanced experience. That's the idea. Demon Prince of Corn going to be surging across the battlefield, going after King Lewin. And the Heralds of Corn's Fury. This is what you're all here for. One of the biggest mismatches in the old world. Just some mighty uh, elite demons annihilating Bretonian peasants. Is this what you all signed up for? I would imagine so. So here we see the peasants getting absolutely eviscerated, and uh, these guys <laughs> these guys feasted. They took some shovels to the faces, though. You can see a little bit of HP loss in those Heralds of Corn's Fury there, so it, it, it was not a free one, although uh, more or less free. That was barely any damage and got rid of those guys, so. Now, we got Chaos Warriors of Corn at the objective here. Bloodletters, I feel like Bloodletters are a little bit overkill against Bretonia. I feel like they die quickly to Bretonian archers, 
And also, you know, Battle Pilgrims probably trade Okanes, and oh, they'll beat them all. But yeah, like a Cavalry Charges and Archers can really wreck Bloodletters pretty badly. And now Dodoxin's going to be coming in with the Fury of Korn's Bulldog. So here they come. Oh, man. Oh, check it out. Just more peasants for this call throw. <laughs> Korn's just like, hey, guys, I want some of them peasant schools. Let's go, let's go get them. So these peasants are just getting eviscerated. But it's, it's really funny because the actual gold damage value these things have done is probably like, I don't know, like, like 80 or something. Yeah, it's like 100. So <laughs> he's eviscerated like two peasants there, which is pretty hilarious. Now, talk about another mismatch. Corn Warriors, these giant like seven foot tall chads in plate. <laughs> just like giant tower shields and axes charging these guys with farming tools, which is pretty ridiculous. But the pole arms are going to be surging forward. No, spearmen at arms. And now foot squires are on their way in, which is good. Foot squires will actually trade upwards. Oh, look at this. And Bohemond is going to be coming in with the Royal Hippogriff Knights. And Dodoxin, with very good control, is going to be landing the Demon Prince. Good response from Bohemond, though. He does get the Hippogriff Knights back and doesn't get baited into the ground where the Minotaurs of Corn could have uh, crumped him pretty badly. So... Honestly, with these uh, big Hippogriff Knights, what you can do is you can get them and you can just like cycle charge into the Chaos Warriors of Corn and then pull back. Uh, why is he going up here? Okay, he's sending them after the Heralds of Corn's Fury, which is actually a really good idea. If he can catch them, uh, these things are anti-infantry cavalry. They won't trade super well. Now, as far as the frontline fighting goes, the uh, Chaos Warriors of Corn nah, taking a bit of a beating from the Foot Squires and Spears, honestly. And here we do see Foot Squires getting rammed by Minotaurs as well as the Chaos Warriors. So Foot Squires only have 24 melee defense. They're a very squishy unit. They're not going to be wanting big charge and all that sort of good stuff. So uh, yeah, they're going to get hammered. But good response from Bohemond. He does have his Peasant Bowman in the back shooting into those Minotaurs. Looks like they've just begun to saturate their fire there. And we'll have to see what happens. So with more Minotaurs of Corn coming out. Objectives currently 1 and 2 are owned by Corn. 3 up on the high ground or low ground is owned by Bretonia. And uh, the Hippogriff Knights have not been able to fully catch the old Heralds. But this is very cost effective. He uses a Sword of Corone. He catches some Rotters up here. He's going to push them off the objective. And this gives Bretonia the opportunity to secure this point. Uh, as we do see reinforcements coming in, defenders of Flair de Lee, all that sort of good stuff. Now, Bretonia is actually holding reasonably well in the front line. And the reason why is because of the Grail Relic. So these Foot Squires would normally be broken by now. They'd be running for the hills. But their leadership is holding simply because of that. And it looks like a fat Dweller's Blow going down, which will do decent damage against the uh, Chaos Warriors. And there's another thing that didn't get fixed in the, in the patch was uh, Dweller's Blow. But guys, the dreaded Red Olgor. He's back here. He's got his dual-wielding axes. Red Olgor is coming out with a different kit today. Dude, I'm so happy that Demon Princes are a viable choice, because they are so cool. Like, what a waste of a unit, right, to have it just not be viable. Because the design of the Demon Princes is just rad. And, uh, yeah, Bretonia's getting routed in their front line. I mean, most of Bretonia's big strength, like the Hippogriff Knights and, like, Foot Squires and a lot of units got sent up there. So, obviously, Bretonia's going to get buckled a little bit. They have the side objective. Bretonia's going to be taking control of the top ground. And look at the value trading, guys. Bretonia's actually a little bit ahead. There's many trades that are going well for them. And this is actually not good for uh, Red Olgor here. Dodoxin's in a little bit of trouble as King Lewin descends from the skies to battle the Demon Prince. The dreaded humping attack is firstly to establish dominance. And as soon as he learns how to land... The... All right, there's another one for CA's old books. <laughs> if we get these characters to land properly, that'd be great. But Lewin looks like he'll finally figure out a way to land. And now he's attacking the Demon Prince. And the Hippogriff Knights have also gotten here. Will the Demon Prince of Corn be able to... Is that the Sword of Corn? Oh, yeah, the Sword of Corn! melts those guys the minotaurs get hammered the questing knights get hammered a little bit and now dodoxin's able to pull in some reinforcements so he gets his minotaurs of corn in there with the great weapons but obviously lewin is going to be able to probably defeat the demon prince of corn in straight fight it's hard to say though his stats are a lot less blood letters eat a huge charge there very very nice one by bohemian but it's suddenly going to become very difficult to deal with these minotaurs of corn they uh they will be excellent hard counters against questing knights and a lot of these different types of units so high ground objective is owned by bretonia low ground owned by bretonia as well Foot Squire is trading like super upwards. Those Chaos Warriors are really, really getting hammered pretty heavily. And Red Olgor is in the danger zone, but he's got support from these uh, these Minotaurs here. And you can see the Royal Hippogriff Knights have given Dodoxin a lead. They're basically just getting wrecked horribly by the Minotaurs with Great Weapons, which they're a 2,000 gold unit, right? So, uh, so yeah, Cries of Medusa. The Medusa actually got used against me in a tournament a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Platypus used them against me. It was pretty wild uh, just to get like a cheap terror causing unit on the Dark Elf roster. But Lewin may have bitten off more than he could chew. Red Olgor is no slouch. You know, he has survived many streams. And, uh, ooh, cool attack animation right there. But Minotaurs with Great Open is going to be kind of painful. What you really need here are Knights of the Realm, not Questing Knights. Some Knights of the Realm coming in to just hammer. And look at that. The Heralds of Korn's Fury are coming in as well. And even though they're an anti-infantry unit, their stats are still pretty mean. Their armor piercing's mean. They'll be able to kill Questing Knights for sure. So Hippogriff Knights are back. We see more Questing Knights coming out. Questing Knights going to probably eviscerate these Bloodletters. You can see big damage coming down. And if Bloodletters actually do start to crumble, it's pretty substantial. Um, they, of course, uh, do not have Undead Crumbling. They have Demonic Instability, which is actually a fair and balanced crumbling mechanic. So 
They continue to fight there, battling into the Questing Knights. Questing Knights uh, will be able to beat them eventually, but we do see Dodoxin start to take over the game a little bit, and a lot of it came down to this backfield engagement, the fact that uh, the Minotaurs of Corn were able to kind of beat down this 2,000 gold unit, and uh, the Demon Prince is a little bit, you know, he's in a bit of a precarious situation, uh, precarious situation himself. As the Questing Knights do charge in, there is a chance that the Demon Prince of Corn could get killed here, which would maybe give Bretonia a way back into this game. But it definitely seems like you got to put some respect on the new Minotaurs, right? It's not that they're like stats. I don't think they're crazy better, but the cost effectiveness of them. More Knights of the Realm are needed. Knights of the Realm would, would trade pretty well into them. Despite the armor, uh, if they get that big charge off, they're going to be pretty good for sure. So in the backfield, Peasants shooting into the Minotaurs of Corn. On the side objective, you do see it owned by Bretonia. A couple foot squares trying to hold that one, but it looks like the Flesh Hounds have come in. And uh, we do also have some Chaos Warriors of Corn who, you know, despite foot squares being good, they're pretty much at the end of the rope here. They are... Uh, they are going to be dead and gone. On the middle objective, Korn's going to be surging up with some of these bad boys. And on the high ground, defenders of Flare to Lee and some Halberds and Foot Squires are happily holding on to that point. So they should be able to hold on to that one, no problem. Now, the Demon Prince, did he get away? It looks like Red Olgor has, has, has fallen, yes. We'll have to find him somewhere. Yeah, Red Olgor has fallen, it would appear, or he was unsummoned. And uh, Peasant's going to be a compromise here. Oh, this sucks. You have like two full health Peasant mobs, 800 value of units just getting wrecked here. But Questing Knights being summoned in, that's nice. Questing Knights should be able to counter the Heralds of Corn's Fury pretty effectively, considering they cost about half as much, and they will trade it very, very well. Sorry, guys. Rest in peace, Red Olgor. You had a good run, buddy. Now, Bretonia is up on points, uh, but pretty far behind on value, about 2,300 value. Lewin does have the ability to heal, and there is a damsel for Earthblood, and the Heralds of Corn's Fury are certainly not going to trade well back here. Lewin's coming in, and if Dodoxin forgets about these and just kind of loses them outright, this could give Bretonia the value they need to kind of get back in this game. We'll have to see. Yeah, the Demon Prince was vanished. He got he got Shadow Realm for sure. Minotaur is heading up to the high ground. There are Halberds up here, though. They're not helpless. Defenders of Flare to Lee have a good charge bonus nonetheless. 86 charge bonus, so if they're able to get that fat charge onto either the Marauders or the backs of the Minotaurs, they could actually trade well. And he's going to need to move these foot squares up on the point to make sure he doesn't lose it, because Corn is coming for that booty. That is for sure. Now in the backfield, the Heralds of Corn's Fury, so they do get smashed, and you can see the value gap does uh, kind of go down a little bit after that. We now have 10.3 to 8.8, .8, so uh, Bretonia has caught up a little bit, and honestly, with their healing considered, and the fact that Corn is leaderless, I don't think that Bohemond is out of this game yet. I think our mighty Bretonian Chad might be able to kind of find a way back in here. We'll have to see. Pole arms and a Minotaur is very cost effective, mind you, but uh, these guys are just very low in numbers and have almost no support. Marauders of Corn hit pretty hard. They have 45 melee attacks, so they are going to be very apt at cutting through these like lightly armored pole arm units. So Bretonia is going to have to resecure probably the middle and the side objectives. I don't think that the pole arm guys here are going to have a great time. And now we got Defenders of Flare to Lee coming out. It looks like more questing knights to try and battle the Minotaurs. We'll have to see what kind of engagements they can get. Defenders of Flare to Lee will do well in the charge here against these hounds. They obviously have a charge bonus of 86, and you can see a fair amount of HP being melted off the hounds. But with the Minotaurs coming in the back... Oh no! The Unholy Terror has returned! It has returned! Nakamura, uh, healing is allowed, but not things that resurrect models. Because the bug currently lies in model resurrection, which is such a shame. I don't know, man. I don't know, yeah. It's a shame that it that kind of stuff didn't get hit or tested or something, but... Here comes your boy, Demon Prince of Corn. Red Olgor did not hear any bell whatsoever. And he is back, baby. He, you know, it's very lore friendly. Like in Warhammer 40k, for example, the demons always get karate chopped by the good guys because plot armor. And then the demons just go back to the warp. They stay pissed off for like a thousand years and then they come back and try and kill them again. That's basically just how, how that works, right? So it's very lore friendly for Red Olgor to seek vengeance. He's like the Doom Slayer now. Companions, nice one. Probably going to wreck these bloodletters pretty badly. These are uh, just basic bloodletters, but still a relatively expensive unit. Minotaurs of Corn have really been the big problem, but Companions, I really love that pick here. They are an anti-large questing knight, and Bohemond has really nice micro. Look at this. He pulls these guys back. He lures the Minotaurs into an overextension, rear charges them with questing knights here, and now he can turn around and sandwich them. But Red Olgor is back, and uh, here they come. So he is on his way down. Stand your ground is active. That's going to give a nice leadership buff. And the Minotaurs of Corn getting melted by those two units. Will Red Olgor fall for the second time? Footsquire's on their way in. Bretonia might be able to steal this objective. I don't know how Footsquire's will trade into Marauders here. Yeah, Corn does certainly have that. Capture weight's going to be going for Bretonia now. And in the backfield, it looks like Bretonia's a little bit resurgent. Oh, no! Red Olgor! Red Olgor! <laughs> is he trapped again by a bunch of Questing Knights, Anti-Large, and King Lewin? Oh, my God. Is the Dokesin going to be losing Red Olgor twice in a game? <laughs> that would be so funny, dude. Because honestly, like, Corn doesn't have that much on the battlefield. The Questing Knights are starting to trade really well. Maybe he's making me eat my words about the effectiveness of Questing Knights versus Knights of the Realm. And here we do get some Questing Knights moving out to hit these Chaos Warriors. That's going to be huge. They, of course, are great weapon units, so they'll be able to cut through that armor no problem. 
And Red Olgor is surrounded once again. Once again. Yeah, the infinite ammo bug has been fixed, guys. It has. But companions of Quinnells are going to be retreating. Good control. You don't want to get charged by Minotaurs. They have a big charge bonus of 56. You pull them back. You bait them into some halberds or something. And you you have to be the Walter White. You have to be the one who knocks on the door. You can't be the one letting your opponent knock when you're using Bretonian Cav units. That really is like a big skill set with that faction for sure. So Questing Knight's cleaning up shop. Yeah, just kind of bouncing around, taking out units. Top objective going to be taken back by these Foot Squires here very slowly because some Chaos Warriors are sitting there with a little bit of capture weight. But I'm very impressed with Bohemond's uh, Bretonian Cap Micro. He's got a very, very good Cap Micro. They've been bouncing around very effectively. Companions get in there. They do charge the Minotaurs. And they will be taking a bit of a beating, but they will, uh, they'll put some hurt right back on these guys. An Earth Flood would be quite huge here. And we do have Halberds moving up. The value trading is, uh, let's see, 13,000 to 1,800, which is actually very, probably even, considering the fact that Bretonia does have healing on the board via King Lewin, who heals. But uh, look at this. Red Olgor is coming for blood. The villain is on his way. He wants a best of three, and he's got one. So he's coming after King Lewin. Lewin's going to be landing on the ground. I think he's going to try and bait Red Olgor into the cav. Yeah, he tries to bait Red Olgor into those. Now, the companions do get hammered pretty badly there. Peasant archers in the back. Going to be shooting uh, what little damage they can here into the Minotaurs. And Questing Knights now going to be surging across after the Demon Prince of Corn. Dude, this is a great game. Holy shit. I think that Corn has the advantage just due to the objectives. Like, Bretonia really needs to send a cab unit over here and get this point. Either that or Bretonia needs to have a decisive victory here in the middle. Like, I'm talking decisive. And then they can move out and secure all the points and just triple cap. Because this is very, very close. Corn only needs 300 more points, so 300 more seconds. This is what I'm talking about. Getting defenders of Flair de Lee. To bounce over there and take out those blood letters. Because with good a good charge, the defenders of Flair de Lee should be able to actually defeat these guys. Oh! Look at the corn response. Yeah, dude. Oh, the skull crushers of corn are coming out. The anti-large. I love this tech, dude. Dudoxin brings such fun units. Man, he's definitely becoming one of my favorite players to watch here. Now, down on the low ground, we do see the Demon Prince getting the old horn of corn. And Bretonia appears to have been routed back here. Very close game. Very, very close. We get flush hounds chewing on the archers in the back. The Bretonian Cavalry do come over, and they're trying to capture this, but this will be a disaster, an absolute disaster. So we do see the Skull, skull Crushers of Corn coming, and uh, yeah, these guys will absolutely dumpster these units. I think the only Bretonian Cav unit that could beat Skull Crushers might be Grail Knights with the full charge. Even still, they might lose because of the armor of Skull Crushers, but I think Companions of Quinells would defeat Skull Crushers. They would, they would maybe have the tools to do it, but even still. Trying to get the point. Gonna have to retreat here, otherwise you're just gonna take massive casualties. In the backfield, we have Lewin versus Red Olgor round two. But time is really slipping here for Bretonia. Halberd's gonna be getting some nice shanks into the big boy, so you can see 22, 21, 91. It's getting there. But King Lewin, Leon Kerr, gonna be popping Foe Seeker, the true Chad King of Bretonia, fighting to the bitter end. But time is of the essence, and we do see the Skull Crushers of Corn bouncing over here. And check that out. Oh man, that is so cool. So they're really able to just crump these guys. And yeah, these poor, poor Knights Errant. Not, not even fully fledged Knights. They're, they're trying their best, but these Cornate units were born and bred for one purpose. They're like the Urukai of Corn to, to destroy Bretonian Cav units. And they are doing it very well. In the backfield, Lewin going in for one final fight. He's got 800 HP. The Demon Prince of Corn, six leadership here. If he starts crumbling, he's basically just dead. Look, look how much damage demons take from that. It's like, it's so much more. So he's going to be going down super quick. And, uh,. Yeah, King Lewin has done it. He, he, has, he has won the best of three against Red Olgor. So even though Bohemond has lost the best of three versus Dodoxin, he has won in our hearts and he has defeated Red Olgor. Although I would say Dodoxin's won in our hearts too. He, he brought like Skull Crushers, like all sorts of cool Cornate units and uh, looks like he was able to kind of clinch the game. That was a really MLG play. Like the Skull Crushers of Corn on the far side, just to kind of shut down the Bretonian side cap was so huge. Like if you had just summoned infantry or flesh hounds, they would have lost to those cab units, but... In that case, uh, he was able to do the trick. Best of, he wants a best of five now, that's correct. GG, well played, ladies and gentlemen. That is gonna be a victory for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne. Bretonia, of course, a very good faction now. I would say Bretonia is strong, strong. they can do well. But that is gonna be it for that best of three match. We'll be moving on to another best of three. I'm taking a look here. Wow, 4,000 value. 4,000 value on Minotaurs with great weapons. Oh my God, 2,500. Those Minotaurs with Great Opens carried the hell out of that game. Hey, and our boy Red Olgor, he costs about 2,100 gold. Yeah, like 20, 2,000, 2,100. He's like a little bit more expensive than, uh, than uh, Valkia. But he got 4,000 value. He just about paid for himself considering two summons. Lewin did very well. Uh, Companions got 1,400. But yeah, the Hippogriff Knights getting shut down, I think, was the big deciding play. When the Hippogriff Knights got karate chopped by the... Um, by the Minotaurs, I think that was what changed the momentum of the game. Bohemond was doing very well until then. Yeah, GG well played. Great match between those two players.
So let me go ahead and find another one and we will get this party started. So going on over to the tavern here, we can also just follow the dokes in. We could just like follow him until he gets his, <laughs> until he runs into a little bit of lapse in the bracket or something like that. So, all right, so he'll be playing the winner of House Cat of War or K9. It does not look like we have any second round matches right now. So it's a good time to continue reviewing the patch notes together and we can, uh, we can do it to it. So GG well played. Yeah, it was a good game. It was a really good game. I would have been more of a fan of like the double paladin and fan chantress style because I feel like they could probably like deal with the big demon. I don't know though. It's hard to say. Like Lewin was actually fine, but he only got 2000 value. I feel like Faye would have gotten more value and also would have covered your caster slot. Um, and then the double paladins come in too. All right. So uh, we have the new, yeah, a lot of cool campaign stuff in this patch, obviously, but um, we are here for the battle updates. All right. So battles. Yes. Stretch Craven Tail with a big nerf. He lost by our blood. Um, Doom Wheel's getting a mass upgrade. Love it. I think I think that's good, actually. I think that's nice. Okay, I, here, let's let's read this. Slanesh which has shown an, a near absolute dominance in multiplayer as of the 2.1 update. There are many factors to this, and while we have raised the cost of devoted marauders in 2.1, yeah, okay, that didn't change anything. One of the such uh over, okay, the Chaos Shrine of Slanesh was like a problem, but it's really not the big problem. The big problem is Hell Striders. We're reducing the damage of his giver. Okay, whatever. Um, Hell Striders, as they gain significant marks. Uh, okay, so they're basically saying like Slanesh had near dominance. Okay, so they're acknowledging Slanesh's dominance. <laughs> Cost reductions uh, on Chaos Knights. I think that's that's good. Chaos War Shrine, whatever. Like it, it, that that isn't the main reason why Slanesh is broken. It's actually like one of the very tertiary reasons. Uh, we got a cost buff to their warriors. Uh, let's see. A cap of one. So they really just went hard on the War Shrine, which really isn't the problem. I, I mean, I think they probably watched... I think what happened is Creative Assembly watched the Summer Championship and they just saw the War Shrines being used nonstop and they're like, oh, that's the problem. Instead of the real problem, which is the Hellstriders. Um, Chosen of Slanesh. Let's go look at the Hellstriders. Yeah, Devoted Marauders, whatever. They got a little bit of a... Yeah, so they just got more armor piercing damage. So really, Slanesh got like a lot of buffs in some ways. Mirror Guard you know, got appropriately costed. And look at this. Holy shit. Yeah, Hellscourge has got a, a cost decrease. Yeah, see, like, Hellscourges were, were already, like, kind of borderline decent. Now they're, like, really good at 50. And then, yeah, it's just, like, yeah. Spawn of Slanesh with a slight nerf. It's not going to change anything. There's, the, like, Slanesh got, like, an equal amount of buffs to nerfs. So that's really shitty. But hopefully Creative Assembly will fix it in the next patch. Uh, I know they have a, a long, kind of a longer develop. Like, we need to get that info to them quicker. It, it's partially, like, we need to make sure to give them consolidated info early. And hopefully we can get these changes happen. Yeah, it's just, because that's just nonsense. Like, Slanesh needs more, more nerfs. It's so stupid. It's so stupid, man. But, you know, again, like, I can't blame the guys. Like, a lot of them probably don't play multiplayer. So it's like, yeah, it's understandable. All right, that's just so bad. Oh, God. All right, so with the Empire, uh, Lexer Count Tweaks, sure, whatever. It's all campaign stuff. It's great. I'm going to be playing some campaign, so. Tomb Kings. Uh, battles. Okay. Now we got Zinch, so Chaos Knight cost reduction is fine. Demon Prince cost reduction is fine, in my opinion. Lord of Change getting a cost. I'm fine with this. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm okay with this. I, I like, like, most of the Zinch stuff is fine. Nerfs to Spawn. I think Spawn needed a little bit of a cost increase, so that's good. In the patch notes, the next big rework won't happen until after the new year. Uh, there will probably be a hotfix. There will probably be a hotfix, yeah. We're just going to keep globally banning Slanesh, and it's just a shame because, you know, so many people in multiplayer won't get to enjoy a really cool faction because of that. They're just going to get globally banned every game. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Vampire Coast, what's going on here? Battles, okay. Uh, Banshee's got 100% armor piercing. Oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't have that before. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. They have 100% AP now. Uh, campaign stuff, Chaos Knights, Spawn, Trolls, yeah, all that stuff getting cost reductions. Yeah, nothing too exciting, honestly. Um, battles for the... Like, what else could have used cost reductions on Wild Riders, for example? Like, there's so many things that could be done, but again, we need to get them this information. It's kind of like our fault a little bit as well. Because, you know, you assume they play multiplayer, but they don't. So we need to get this information to them so they can act on it and test it, right? Yeah, because like, what is it? Oh, Hawk Riders got, got changed in campaign. That's cool. All right, let's see what's going on down here. I th guys, I think that's like really it. I know Beastman got like, like Minotaur reductions, a couple other things. Um, so yeah, it's a shame. It is what it is. So let's go to the tavern. Hopefully, yeah, Bellacor got, I think Bellacor got some minor changes too. 
Yeah, he got some minor changes. We'll have some second round matches here starting very soon. So just going to be waiting for one of those. There should be some more 2-0s, and then we can get started. And uh, we'll have some fun. Oh, in the meantime. We can go look at the uh, we can go look at the ROR's. I think that would actually be kind of fun. All right, so versus AI, so here we are, and let's look at the ROR's here. All right, so Zinch, what was Zinch's new ROR? The Golden Griffin of Theurgy. Yes, started down at Skaven, just skips everything in alphabetical order before that. Oh, did I start a little bit ahead? Look at the high elves. Okay, hang on a sec. Yeah, the the way it's like laid out is kind of clunky. All right, so high elves. All right, so gameplay. Okay, high elves. What do they get? So why is it? Why, where are the high elf changes? Okay. So I have to. Okay, here's the high elves. Am I at the top? Okay, I want to make sure I get everyone here because I did skip a couple of those dark elves. I thought a game was open, so I kind of jumped ahead. Beastman and uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. So Torox the Brass Bull, um, yeah, it's campaign stuff. We saw the Beastman Minotaur cost reductions. I think it's all great. These are good changes. That's great. Um, Bretonia, Bretonia didn't need a lot, but getting movement speed on all your cav, like that doesn't hurt. That's going to make Bretonia a little bit better. So can't complain about that. Dolores Blade, the Green Knight, uh, remove the buff to base melee damage and the duration has been increased. Okay, well, it's kind of insignificant, really. Corn looks like the Chaos Fury's got a cost reduction, I think, or that's Demons of Chaos, okay. Now, looking at Dark Elves, uh, looking at battle changes, where are the battle changes, things that are pertinent. Okay, it looks like the Dark Elves are a good faction, but they have their counters. I think I think Dark Elves are fine. I think they're fine. Okay. So Dwarves, uh, Missile. Okay, that's Belagar. Yeah, so it's nothing exciting there. Grand Cuthay. Both Meow Ying and no longer have access to active spells or abilities when in the dragon form with the exception to the following. Okay. So no more activated there. I got it. Scar's Nick stuff. The giant getting... Wait. Why do they... Wait. Why do they nerf Goblin Wolf Chariots? What is this about? Why Why do they nerf Goblin Wolf Chariots? They re... Did they just reduce one of their projectiles? That seems so strange. <laughs> we here at the offices feel that Goblin Wolf Chariots are a little bit egregious. These mighty beasts of old must be brought to heal. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on there. Okay. So looking down at high elves. This is exciting. High elves definitely could use some buffs. Okay. Archers. Love it. Cost reduction. Great. Reavers. Nice. 600 gold for Reavers is a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. Everqueen's Court Guard. Yeah, love it. I'm liking all these changes. Lord Masters got Martial Mastery. Good, they sh good or the Loremaster of Host. Yes, I like that. Cost reductions. The hidden OP that they didn't want us to know about. Yeah. Can you check if the uh, Carl's buffs? No, no, it's just campaign. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I love the high elf changes. Like, high elves, this is what kind of what I was saying. They needed, like, blanket cost reductions across their entire roster. Corn, the Bloodthirster is cheaper. Chaos Knights are cheaper. Um, the Minotaurs really are going to be, like, a big winner here for sure. Minotaurs of Corn getting an HP buff and a cost reduction. That's big. Like Minotaurs of Corn could definitely see a lot more play. As we just saw, they were pretty good in those games, right? Uh, Kislev. The thing, you don't want to buff, buff Kislev guys, even though they're one of the worst factions in the game. And I'll tell you why. You don't want to buff Kislev because they're going to get a DLC, which is going to make them insane. And if you buff them, then they become broken. So you need to like wait till they get their DLCs before you, you try and balance them, in my opinion. Kislev is like a faction that I like to say they have very strong roots. But they just need more stuff. Okay, they fixed uh, they fixed croak. Not that it was like game breaking or anything. Uh, Norska, yeah, beast of Tashnar. Oh, that's a nice buff. Beast of Tashnar going down to six hundred. Okay, Norskin giant looks like Ice Wolf's got a little bit of a buff. They could certainly see some more play. Yeah, melee attack, base damage buff. That's really good. Yeah, maybe see Ice Wolves. Nurgle the giant got fifty armor and cultists uh, cost changes. Chaos knights spawn soul grinders. Nurgle Soul Grinders at 1750, guys, that could be a good unit. That could be something they were already seeing some fringe play, but if Nurgle Soul Grinders, um, yeah, that could give them some fringe play for sure. Skaven, did we look at Skaven? I think I started down here. Um, yeah, Treach Craven Tail, Battles, uh, yep, Doom Wheels getting a mass increase. We already looked at the rest of it, but we'll kind of look through. Slanesh, 
Obviously, the Slanesh just got buffed, basically. It's silly. Um, that needs to be changed. They need nerfs. They need nerfs. Just make, give gold cost increases. If you don't want to piss off campaign players, just change the uh, change the gold cost on things. You'll be fine. Tomb Kings also need to be looked at because they um, their healing is just insane. They're, they're just units are just way better than other factions. All right. We saw Zinch, you know, spawn changes, Vampire Coast. Yeah, we saw most of these. Warriors of Chaos. Aspiring Champions. Holy shit. Did I skip Ogres? God, it, man, how did I miss them? Was it, did they just have like nothing? Empire, are you guys trolling me? Did I actually skip Ogres? Hold on. <laughs> okay, I think they have like something at the top. The Passion Notes, oh man, it's, it's kind of hard to like follow all this. Uh, Ogre Kingdoms, okay. Here we go. Giants got an armor buff, capture weight. Yeah, that's big. This is really, really big. The fact that capture weight got changed for ogres is going to make them much more viable. It's going to make them exponentially more viable. Yeah, that's really nice. Skaven. And looking down here, again, we saw Slanesh. So yeah, ogres players should be happy. Crumbling damage was increased, but in my testing, it's, it's kind of insignificant. It doesn't really change much. But it's only been a couple games I played, so. Uh, vampire counts. No no nerfs to vampire counts, which is pretty wild. Um, Banshees, as a matter of fact, got buffed, so that's, that's something. Uh, Chaos, Chaos Knights, and uh, Chaos Knights, Spawn, Trolls, some minor changes, leadership buffs to some of those units. Undivided Demon Prince only costs 2,000 gold now. That's kind of cool. I dig that. Um, Bellicor also got nerfed a little bit. Yeah, his Shadow Shroud only lasts 20 seconds and it costs more. And his Lord of Triumph. Okay, I like this. I like I like the changes to Bellicor. We'll see if it's enough. Uh, those those are some nice ones. What else? Again, not a whole lot here. Dwarves, I didn't see anything. No, dwarves dwarves are actually fine. Dwarves are a good competitive faction. And somebody mentioned there's some multiplayer down at the bottom, right? So let's go down down to the pits where the multiplayer belongs here. Yeah, so now you can choose which game mode you want to play, which I think is really cool. That's nice. Good on them for that. And uh, going forward, let's see. What are we going to get going forward? Auto resolve, preemptive, siege battles. Okay. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Yeah, the crumbling, the crumbling, I don't know. I don't think it's going to make that big of a difference, honestly. Could be wrong. I could be wrong. All right. So we got some matches. So we have one to cast. So I'm going to hit up those two fine gentlemen. All right. Where are you at? Very good. And GG well played. And now going to, and we're gonna get into lobby. Cool, it's doing a little bit of admin stuff. And outstanding. All righty, perfect. Starting game two, they say, okay. So gonna find one of these lobbies to get into. We should be good. And we'll keep going. Sorry for the very frenetic patch notes analysis. All right, so let's find these. Oh my God, there's so many lobbies up. I don't know which one is the one. We'll just kind of join a bunch of them and see what we could find until we can get there. We have a haggard 1v1 going on if you want to watch. Um, oh, okay, perfect. I'm down for this. Just joined in on a corn versus a... So this must be one of the later round matches between Alric Rawl and uh, his opponent. Yeah, because it's game two. So yeah, Alric Rawl is going to be on Corn. Look at that. Skull Cannons against Dowie, actually. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. Yeah, Vampires will be more balanced with healing. Yeah, they're healing bad. Yeah, that's, that's, one way, that's one way to balance them for sure. All right. So we got Alric Rawl versus the mighty Dowie here. This is going to be, uh, who's he playing against? I can't see his name at the moment. We'll see it as soon as we load in. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to jump into this other series because these guys are on game two, so it's going to be an incomplete series. So uh, I'm going to jump into this other one. So, um, all right. So can I not exit? Quit battle. There we go. Okay. So we'll let them play in peace. And uh, hopefully I didn't crash their game or anything. I don't think it usually should be fine. Because I want to jump into a full best of three. I think that'd be better. All right. 
Very good. And we're in. So here we go. Dwarves are a good faction. Yeah, dwarves, I think, are very strong. They're very underrated. I, I would say they're a solid mid-tier faction. So we got Roflin uh, versus Sandwich. So these are two... This is a, a pretty high-level match here. These are two players who were both top 16 last season. So this is going to be a heavy hitter, for sure. <laughs> James, I'm good. Thank you for asking. All right. So let's get you set up. That's going in the book. I want to get a full best of three. I know there were two Skull Cannons, but... Here we go, guys. That match did look good. But the thing is, if I if I stay that match, then we miss the, the first match of this and we get a, another series, which is going to be a little bit off. So I think it's better to kind of jump between those. Man, guys, I have I have been playing so much Ultima Online. I know I've been saying it the past couple streams, but that, that game has got its hooks in me. The addiction from 1998 is coming back, coming back with a vengeance. What do I think about Korn? Korn is a good mid-tier faction. Yeah, like very mid-tier. Honestly, Korn might be quite a bit better now with the bust of Minotaurs. Like Korn could go from like a lower mid-tier faction to like an upper mid-tier faction. Yeah, Korn is good. They're a really fun fa faction to play too. Very, very fun. All right. Looks good. And we are rolling. Let me message Platypus. He had some questions about the tournament. So let me see. All right, so checking with Platy should be good. Got to get that replay. Yeah, I know. What are your thoughts on the changes? I, you know, honestly, yeah, Franz is Franz is a pretty common pick. Let me look up the exact change here to see. So patch two point two total war was the change to Galmaraz affect multiplayer as well. All right, Galmaraz now grants uh, a sundering attack. In flat, 55 armor piercing instead of 10%. Oh, that's probably for campaign, though, guys. That's yeah, probably for campaign. Yeah. Kind of looks like a campaign thing. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. I think... So this is a new map. This is Borderlow Landing. It's, it's a big-ish map. So mobility is certainly pertinent here. But so dwarves can play this map, too. Like, there's there's plenty of options. As a new player, I really enjoy playing Miao Ying uh, so far. How does Grand Cathay fare in Domination? They're pretty good. Yeah, Cathay is a good, good faction. Like, upper, mid-tier. Maybe top tier even. Cafe is very good. It depends. It takes a little bit of learning, a little bit of positioning. You know, they're not an easy. Like, typically gunline factions are a little bit tricky, but they can do well. They can do well for sure. The Gal Mirage change is only for campaign. That's what I thought. All right, guys. I'm going to go grab some water, and we'll uh, be back in just a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in business. If my eyes do not deceive me, I think we have a High Elf matchup here. I think it's going to be the new and improved High Elves versus Bretonia, which is a very interesting one. Let me go ahead and actually look. Hold on. Oh, my God. It is. Guys, we have a High Elf. Okay. I know we missed out on a Corn Dwarf game, but we already had just seen Corn, And now we have High Elves versus Bretonia on this beautiful, beautiful new map. Beautiful new map. This is going to be super exciting. Did I, spell his name? Did I spell his name wrong here? Let's see here. That should be fine. All right. There we go. <laughs> we should be all good. It should be all good. Man, updating my uh, Total War Warmer 3 in the stakes, like, oh, it's taken a long time, huh? I'm sorry to hear that. I wish they would go nerf Slanesh so people don't dodge all the time when I play them. They're my favorite faction. Yeah, that's the kind of unfortunate part about it. So, and like what's funny is Slanesh in campaign isn't that strong so that's probably why they don't get nerfed because like in campaign Slanesh actually has pretty bad auto resolves in some of the ones I did because um, they're very squishy yeah it's too bad High Elves got cost reductions on a lot of things like Illyrian Reavers got 100 gold off uh, Lothar and Seaguard lost some gold like two, they're two of their best units got cost reductions which is great I want to see the new Cathay ROR me too I think that'd be really really fun thank you guys all for joining tonight by the way it's been a really fun one so far all right, looking good.
not standing. Okay, my opponent's internet might have gone out, so keep me posted. All right, so someone's internet may have come out, so if he needs to, someone, someone's internet died, so they might need to be admin dropped. We'll have to see. Okay, perfect. Hiles, oh no, it's Kislev, okay. It's the Hiles versus Kislev. It looks like the players were kind of switching around with factions. I don't know about their final pick and ban, so we're still waiting a little bit on that. I think I'm gonna get back into the Return of Reckoning MMO. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've heard that was fun. I think Loremaster of Sotek had like a stream where he's playing that. How are vampire counts on domination multiplayer? They're a top tier faction, hands down. Like top three, easy. Yeah, like Warriors of Chaos, Slanesh, and, and Vampire Counts are like the unholy terrors in the night in Tomb Kings. Like those four factions are just interchangeable. Yeah. Very lore friendly. Okay, so let's see here. Taking a look. Yeah, his opponent. Checking with him, and we're all good. Is it going to be Kislev versus High Elves? Dude, yeah, Soul Grinders of Nurgle, I think, might see some play now. Because they were borderline playable with, like, their SEM fighting capabilities, the poison, the mobility. the Giving Nurgle some battlefield control via Bombard is really good. Uh, and now that they cost 150 gold less, like, maybe we see a little bit. Maybe we see a little bit. What's up, says I played Ultima in the original EverQuest. Well, Ultima, um, you, Ultima Online has a really good server now. It's, like, super active. It has like 2,000 to 3,000 people playing every day on it. It's like really fun, great economy. Like it's super fun. I've been playing on it. Uh, it's called uh, UO Outlands is what it's called. Yeah, so healing, uh, the, the healing bug is, okay, they're, they're switching around with factions. They're, they're just sitting on him. He, they, they tricked me. These guys tricked me though because they had a full build prepared. Like I looked and they, they had full builds for Bretonia versus High Elves. So I was like, oh, that's what they're playing. But I guess they just loaded in with that. But um, yeah. It's good. Maybe Dwarves versus Kislev? I don't know. They're switching about quite a bit. Let me see what these gentlemen are saying. Have they locked in? Sounds good. So we just confirming one of our players here had a drop. The, dude, the dreaded Thundernut has dropped, has advanced two rounds because he's literally had two opponents who had to, had to drop. It is I, Thundernut, the destroyer of Total Tavern. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, Thundernut will play the winner of this match. It will be it will be a battle for the ages. <laughs> Nurgle healing doesn't resurrect models now. Yeah, it doesn't. So you don't need to worry about that. But basically, the bug uh, is is with um, I can show you guys after the game with like undead cavalry models get like infinite healing cap and resurrection. It's just absurd. So yeah it is what it is we'll make the best of it you know the total war community it's always been a game that's had a lot of bugs and issues but you know we we as the community we make it work and we uh we have a good time so we'll be we'll be good mm. so dwarves versus kislev is that really what we're getting here on this map dude that that is a very dwarven favored matchup like very very dowie favored and it looks like yeah they're doing okay guys the matchup is official now it is indeed dwarves versus kislev we have the human dwarfs. Well, I guess Cathay is more like the human dwarf. Yeah. But they're both kind of like very stalwart. He said Slanesh loses to... Yeah, we're both from beginner's tournaments mostly. Yeah, correct, Count Sourman. Yeah, correct. Correct. Skaven are not mid-tier. Skaven... Well, Skaven are like... I would say Skaven are like really upper mid-tier. Maybe like low end of high tier. Like Skaven are an A-tier faction. If we were to do like a traditional list, they're not S. S tier is Vampire Counts, Tomb Kings, Slanesh, Warriors of Chaos. A tier is like Skaven, or for sure in that. Skaven or A tier. They The thing is, last season, Skaven came off to a very low win rate in the beginning because of, uh, like, people hadn't figured them out yet. They're not an easy faction to play. There's a lot of positioning. Everything's really squishy. You have to be pretty careful. Um, but yes, when you learn how to play Skaven and master them at a high level, they can be very tyrannical because Globideers are very overtuned. So those things just absolutely wreck. Hey, Will, hope you're feeling better, man. Sorry to hear you're laid up in bed. 
Uh, dwarves are hard favored against Kislev, in my experience. Because Dwarven cannons just, like, dunk on the whole Kislev roster. You're just like, you just get two cannons, they kill the chariots. You can summon in gyrocopter brimstone guns to shoot chariots down if they get close. There's just so many things that the dwarves have in, in terms of advantage here. Uh, Blight Boil's okay. I think it's a, a balanced spell. It's not, like, super good. I think Stream of Corruption's a little bit more Winds of Magic effective. But Blight Boil's okay. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Yeah, if you guys have any questions in between games, now is a very, very good time for them. So don't be shy. Don't be shy if you guys have questions. All right. Looks good. Tournament's off to a smooth start. No drama, which is great. And who's going to be at the top of the leaderboard? Yeah, we'll, I'll make faction. It's like, I want to make faction guides, but like with the current bugs and issues, it like it makes them like obsolete after like, a couple months, you know, so I'm waiting, like, uh, I guess I'd be waiting forever if I don't make faction guides. So I, I might as well make something, but. Ooh, corn, corn off to a pretty good start with a 100% win rate on the old tavern. Here we go. We're loading in, baby. No, the Hellstriders didn't get nerfed enough. They need to be plus 150, not plus 50. Hellstriders should cost 750 gold. Maybe even 800, the anti-large variant. Like, maybe even 800. Like, is a Hellstrider of equal value to an Empire Knight? No, Hellstriders are way better than Empire Knights. Like, but they cost 150 less. I know they fulfill different purposes, but like I would say you're getting 800 gold worth of unit on Hellstriders. Like with 100 speed, poison, anti-large, like ITP, you can't get rid of them once they surround your monsters. It's like, come on, man, come on. Man. I'm just casting, uh, casting today, but I'm gonna be playing in tournaments like all week. Whenever anybody else hosts tournaments, I'm gonna be playing. I'm gonna, this season I plan on maining Empire Dwarves and corn. I really want to learn corn. I think they're so cool. High elves are doing good. I'm happy to see high elves do good. And again, we need a lot of tournaments before we see what, you know, what really is strong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kislev and Ogres. I think Ogres will probably be stronger than Kislev this season with the capture weight changes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the border low landing. A beautiful map. This was one of our, uh, our competition maps. One of my favorite ones, actually. Really, really like it. And it is going to be the Dowie invading the Kislev coast here, it would appear. We got Dwarf Warriors. A little bit of a strange choice, not bringing Dwarf Warrior great weapons. In my opinion against Kislev, you want great weapons because they're just so armored, right? So, But he's got the shields, which I guess is cool. So it's not the end of the world, but I do think great weapons would be better. Um, in the back, we got Goblobber, Cannons, and Cannons. I like the build a lot so far. I think it's got a lot of good tools against Kislev. Dwarf Warriors, Thunders. Thunders do outshoot very well. Um, Streltsy, of course, costs a little bit more. Of course, you're paying for the melee capabilities, but that's not really going to be that pertinent in a shootout. So, Sandwich coming in with a little Grom, Armored Cossars, but, oh, like, it's very strange. They're both going for Shielded Cossars instead of the Pistol Variants. Oh, I like this play, and this is one of my favorite things about this map. So, check it out. We have uh, Heavy War Sleds as well as a Patriarch, okay? So, they're going to be heading through the bushes, and they are going to be grabbing that back objective. And if the dwarves only send like one infantry unit over here to grab that, oh, dude, they could get run over for sure. I like turns. Did I, did I, did I say, spell sandwich wrong? Oh, I think I did. The <laughs> sandwich. We're just gonna leave it now. I think it's funnier that it's spelled wrong. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's part of the experience now. Which sandwich is he? That is the question. So in the back we got a blizzard. Snowflake Pennant and uh, Guardian Skull. Blizzard, of course, has 100% armor piercing, so it's one of the more decent vortexes against the Dowie. So Kislev going to be getting Little Grom in range. Little Grom, you know what you could do to be really cheeky? Is you could hide Little Grom right here, like back behind this point, right? So you have Little Grom cackling here and just like kind of scooting out and like poking and, and shooting and all sorts of neat stuff like that. Roflin's going to be moving up to the middle. Now, what is he going to be sending to hold the side objective? We'll have to see. He's going to have to put some respect on Kislev here. Now, the answer for dwarves is to send some thunderers and or slayers. You have thunderers parked back here. Some of the chariots come out to harass you. They can cover the objective. Which sandwich is he? It's a philosophical question that we all need to answer. Yes, of course. But both these players were top 16 last season. In season two, which has now concluded, except the grand finals, these players were both top 16. So this is certainly a heavyweight battle. Sandwich, of course, a proud champion of the RTK clan, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, although he doesn't have the clan tag on, I'm pretty sure Sandwich is in RTK, though. And Roflin is in VM. Both of these are uh, representing their clans. So Dwarves going to be pulling in Slayers. We do get the Dragonback Slayers coming, which I like quite a bit. If you don't bring Dragonback Slayers, so those chariots will give you the dirty. And there's also going to be a Patriarch here. He does have the heal, most likely, and the Vigor Replenishment, which is pretty good for chariots and big war machines and like things like that. So 
Yeah, the tower is totally viable. You can hide things behind the tower. The Kislev, I switch. Oh, look at that. Blizzard going down. Roflin has good micro, though. He's able to get away. So he tries to shut down one of the cannons. Now, will it actually destroy the cannon piece? That's the question. Uh, that was probably overcasted, hence the overcast damage. So I don't know if that was worth it. It was very cheeky, but Roflin was able to get most of the Dowie crew away. And at the end of the day, he was able to kind of avoid that. So Slayer's on their way over, and the Chariots are just waiting in the bushes. <clears throat> Back objective is going to be taken by Kislev. So if we look over here on the far side, we can see the Armored Kossar is going to be able to hold this one. And Dwarves... The Dwarves are not a faction that plays the back points. Like, I mean, you could vanguard some Rangers with great weapons to, like, sneak over here and try and troll them, but I think it's better just to kind of defend the two very uh, central points if you're going to be playing those guys. So that would just be my two cents. Now, as far as the fighting goes in the middle, it looks like uh, Little Grom is actually trading pretty well into that very tattered cannon. we got a big Little Grom shot coming downtown, and there it goes. Yep, and it kills one of the Dwarven cannons. It's honestly not a terrible start for Sandwich. He's getting some decent trading. But um, how will the Kislevite infantry trade with the Dowie infantry? We see more armored Kossars with great weapons coming in. The Ice Witch just kind of chilling in the back. And Kislev is opting not to use its chariots on the side. I actually like that tactic. I like that tactic a lot. So here's kind of what happened, right? He brought the chariots in. He was like, hey, man, I'm going to come out here. I'm going to harass your point. And then suddenly Roflin's like, okay, well, my response is a very expensive Slayer unit. And then the chariots are like, just kidding. I'm going to go to the middle. So now the, the Slayers are kind of like a little bit less effective. Maybe they're a little bit less of an optimal summon now that the sleds are going to be moving back over to the center. So Little Grom going after the cannons and Dwarven cannons are not easy to get rid of though. And here you can see the Gobblobber is actually going after Little Grom as well. A really cheeky tactic that you can do as a Kislev player to win artillery duels, which is pretty hilarious, is you get two Little Groms and you stack a Patriarch between them and you heal the Little Groms. And it actually gives you quite a bit of value. Now, will the Dwarves be ready for this? The Griffin Legion is out here, and they're being suppressed by the Skyhammer. Oh, yeah, baby. Check it out. So the, Sky, the Skyhammer is here, and it's going to be dropping some big pot shots downtown into the Griffin Legion. Griffin Legion, a little bit of an expensive choice. I, I, I think winged lancers would probably be fine, but they're going to be trying to get into the backfield. I mean, if the Dwarven artillery position gets compromised, I think the right play for Sandwich would have been to save up like 1,200 gold and get three dervishes and just maneuver like crazy behind the Dwarves, right? Because the Dwarven player moved his artillery really far away from his spawn which means that like if if a couple just came through like this there's no way he would be able to protect that urson would be able to get just balls deep in there and uh have a good time for sure now one of the chariots got hammered really badly heavy war sleds getting popped a little bit here we get the Kossars with their pistols and yeah they're going to be shooting in but i really would have liked to have seen more um of the Kossar great weapons because they would probably trade reasonably well into some of these units sleds of course going to be shooting into the dragonback slayers and it looks like the sky hammer up in the sky oh no Oh no, it's happening guys. It's happening. The Skyhammer is coming for blood. How good is this micro going to be? Okay, come on. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's not the prettiest one. There you go. Now it's going to be money. Let's see if Roflin can nail it. One pretty good bombardment. Oh my god, Skyhammer time. Oh, that's so much damage. Oh my god. Don't do it. The Skyhammer is getting in there. Nailing those armored Kossars. Oh my god, just the three core Kissel of units just getting absolutely punished there now if Kislev wants to get back in this game I mean the sleds are doing well the sky hammer there was pretty painful he needs to get his cav and outmaneuver this single dwarven miner charge through them what are you doing look at this is like this is like a like a gold treasure trove if one cavalry unit gets back here it's basically oh no sandwich what oh don't do it okay so the griffin legion is going to be charging them which is smart and then you just pull straight through them, and, and all three of these artillery pieces are dead. Like, this should just be a freebie right here. I, I don't know why there's not dervishes back there. Like, mobile units really pressing. In the middle, of the dwarves are obviously going to start probably trading a little bit more efficiently in the grind here. You get some winged lancers coming out, attacking dwarf warriors, trading reasonably well. And look at that, Roflin is he's unsummoning all the artillery. So even if your opponent unsummons, they're still taking a, a cost penalty, right? Like, you're going to be losing quite a bit, and it gets rid of that asset on the field. So that was that ended up being a good play. So he does get the Griffin Legion through, and he actually forgets to unsummon the most expensive piece. So I would call that a big win for Kislev here. Like, a big, big win. And that doesn't factor into the gold exchange here that you guys are seeing. So in the backfield, the Gobblobber shut down. That's very cost-effective. Um, that's going to be, you know, 900 gold artillery unit. So big one. Kislev is now, in terms of value, Kislev is actually pretty even. So looking at the middle points, we have Kossars battling Slayers, which is incredibly cost-effective. Kossars will trade very well there. And Kossars versus Longbeards. More armored Kossars moving up. Capture weight's going to be favoring the Dwarves. 
We see one of the chariots here getting last samurai pretty heavily, so yeah, that's certainly not good. Certainly not good. Heavy war sled going to be getting suppressed as well. So little, not little Grom, but the, uh, the, the the sky hammer who's being shot by little Grom is actually applying the suppression debuff on these, and the heavy war sleds are getting wrecked pretty badly. So, good night, sweet prince. You will be missed. Those chariots. Look, he's trying to hide behind the pillar. I love it. Utilizing the terrain to the best of his abilities. I don't know what kind of great weapon infantry we have here, but the dwarves do have a pretty good shooting position. We have the double thunderer as well as blasting charges coming in. Absolutely wrecking winged lancers, which I have no reason as to why the winged lancers would be in combat with dragon back slayers. That, like, they should be back here harassing the missile units, right? The griffin legion is still doing very well, though. They... Oh, don't charge slayers. Don't do that. Okay, you're going to do some decent damage. If he pulls back right away, maybe it's okay. But if you stay, look how quickly the Slayers just start buzzsawing through you, man. Oh, man, that's not good. I mean, that's definitely not good. Like, charging your cabin to the Slayers. I mean, it's okay for shock damage. We can also see in the backfield the uh, the Ice Witch of Tempest has somehow gotten herself surrounded. So we're seeing a fair amount of misplays here. But it's okay. It happens to everyone. But um, Kislev definitely, the fact that they're staying close in the game, despite all these pretty substantial misplays, is, is, uh, is pretty impressive, for sure. So he's playing well in other regards, but... Looking pretty grim bones here for the Ice Witch. Looks like she's going to get punished. And the Griffin Legion, basically a pretty healthy unit of Grif Griffin Legion, just charged straight to their doom there. And uh, it looks like there's 15 models. If he's paying attention, he can go back there and take out that cannon. We'll see if he is. So more Streltsy on their way up. We do get the Armored Cossars with great opens. They're going to be shooting into the Dwarven position. And uh, honestly, you know, like watching this game, it makes me feel like Kislev actually would have a decent chance against Dwarves on this map, considering, considering it's pretty big and you can really pressure with a lot of cav in the backfield. But... I feel like not only was the Kislev build a little bit weak, but the execution of some of the uh, engagements was also very off. Very, very. Those cavalry have taken a Slayer's Oath, that's true. So some Dwarf Warriors getting back here, being run down by the remnants of the sleds. A little Grom getting into melee, trying to shut down blasting charges. GG, well played. Dwarves are going to be claiming victory. The Dawe are ready. The cannons did it. Skyhammer was pretty cool too. That thing got 1300 value. It did get little Grom though, which was good. GG, well played. It's a fun game. Fun game for sure. I mean, you need dervishes. You need cheap dervish cavalry to get back there. You, you know, they're really good and sticky. They can tie down dwarven artillery for like 45 minutes. Slayers. Slayers. All right. So game one, going to go to Roflin. Game two, I believe the map is going to be Black Ark, if I'm not mistaken. We'll have to see. We will have to see. So let's go take a look at ye old leaderboard here. Who is number one? Is it still the dreaded Thundernut? Is he the best player ever in Total War? Find out today. Oh, wow. Check this out, guys. Renegade Moose actually has the uh, the Arcane Phoenix avatar. Look at that. Oh, that's a cool one. Look how cool the Arcane Phoenix is. Oh, man. That's rad. Yeah, so you can see the, the leaderboard starting to tape shape, tape, take shape for Season 3 here, which is super hype. Let's go to the tournament. Check it out. See what kind of progress we're making. And the players are going to be doing their uh, next match now. So we're just waiting for that. So yeah, we're getting there. It's not. It's it's a biggish tournament, but there's one, two, three, four. There's four rounds before the uh, semifinals, right? So, and we're not going to cast every single. We're going to cast one semifinal in the grand finals. Every game is best of three tonight. So, every game is best of three. There's still a couple people stuck in round one. I don't know how that's possible. We're literally already casting. I think a round three game, no round two game, I guess. But we will get there. We will get there indeed. Players on the top side, we got a Royal Rumble between Ulrich, Rall, and Kark. Two players who were also top 16 last season, so a pretty heavyweight fight between those two gentlemen. And uh, yeah, progress is being had. Progress is being had. I know Platypus defeated Romulan Dog 2-0 down there. Their game was a little bit late to start, but they're still not the only ones in the first round. I'll have to double check with some folks, see what's going on. So I'm going to do a little bit of admin stuff. We'll get this party started and uh, have some fun. Beards and belts, yes. The Dwarves did it. Black Ark, we're going back to a classic. We have a combination of new maps and old maps today, I think. And uh, I'm not sure why he's looking around the maps. It's kind of strange. It's like jumping between them all. Or is it Death Pass on this one? It might be Death Pass. Yeah, this could be a Death Pass game. Yeah. It feels weird playing the old maps now that we've had so many cool new ones. Um, let me double check. Yeah, Death Pass and then Arnheim. And then in round three, we have Graveyard of Altdorf, Black Ark, and uh, Glinty Tooth's Crag. Round four, we have the Crucible, Proving Grounds, and Itza. Round five is Gates of Ekerend, Black Ark, and Border Low Landing. Yes. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So the game should be uh, should be all moving along. What we need is uh, 
Yeah, the dwarves are good. I'm telling you, they're not bad at all. Yeah, the Arcane Phoenix is actually a pretty cool model. Did Hey, by the way, for any, any of you guys who actually really did a deep dive in the patch notes, did Creative Assembly fix the um, the Arcane Phoenixes? At, like having infinite rebirth effects, like just proccing like nonstop? Or is that still something that's in the game? That was a pretty meme one for sure. Yeah, Tomb Kings are banned from the event because with Vampire Counts, you can avoid the bug by not bringing the resurrecting spells. Um, but with Tomb Kings, you cannot avoid it because the Realm of Souls automatically resurrects models. Therefore, it has the capability of resurrecting a cavalry unit with full health. So that's just not fair. So, I mean, it, it's not, the odds of it happening are not high, but if it did, it would decide the outcome of a game. And if I allowed them to be played, it would just, that could happen and that would just be bullshit. So they're, um, they're currently banned tonight. Yeah, nothing about the Phoenix. Oh my God, really? But they didn't mention the infinite ammo bug. Yeah, it must it must have been fixed. It must have been fixed. So Death Pass is a great dwarven map. I'm curious who's gonna play. I would love to see some high elves. I, I'm I would really like to see high elves be like a fifty percent win rate faction. That would that would warm my heart. As much as I don't care for high elves and lore, as like an underdog faction, I would really like to see that. Yeah, check this out. High elves are having a good run so far. But again, lower round lower round bracket matches. Like we'll see after like a couple weeks how it really looks. Skaven are having a rough start, though, which is funny. I think it's probably because higher level players haven't gotten around to playing Skaven yet. <laughs> Somebody p actually played Vampire Counts, like, without the healing spells. That's pretty funny. They probably brought, like, a Deathcaster. Yeah, looking pretty cool. Look at this. High Elves with a 5 and 1 start. That's a, that's a great way to start it. Hey, Fal, thank you for the donation. He says $2 and Phoenixes were fixed, but it's not in the notes. Thank you for uh, answering that, my friend. Slanesh is just going to literally sit at like zero the entire season. As, oh, wow. People actually let Slanesh through. That's pretty crazy. So somebody did not globally ban Slanesh. It must have been someone really sweaty. It was, pro you know, oh, it was probably a Slanesh mirror match. Let's see. Uh, okay. So we're going to go to Slanesh. Oh, no. Slanesh actually, Slanesh lost the Warriors of Chaos. Okay. That makes sense. I was like, oh, man. Who beat Slanesh? Okay. Warriors of Chaos. Not so surprised. Not so surprised. I'm surprised with how many multiplayer changes they implemented. People who are actually, yeah, I mean, it, the patch the patch has a lot of problems. It introduced a massive new game breaking bug, but it it does address. It had some positive changes too. I'll probably make a video on it after a couple days when I can really consolidate my thoughts. How's Cafe uh, one and three? Uh, Medley, perhaps one of you guys uh, reported the scores incorrectly. Would be my guess. So if that's the case, uh, let me know what the series was, and uh, and you know I can I can look into it for you. I also might maybe didn't refresh it, Medley. I might need to refresh it. Hold on, let me refresh that. It's pretty easy to report the scores wrong when you're doing it. People people do. Okay, never mind. It's fixed. Yeah. So Medley, check it out. Cafe is actually uh, three and three. I just didn't refresh the page. Yeah. See now we got the the high elves are now six and three. Yeah. So check it out. You can see you can see the stats so far. Zinch, of course, being an unholy tyrant. Ogre Kingdoms, take a screenshot. Ogre Kingdoms are undefeated. You're never going to see this again. They're one and zero. I'd love to see it. Corn with a nice three and two record. Yeah, looking good. Look, even without invocation, the Vampire Counts on Coast are still winning games. That's pretty crazy. Bretonia trying its best. Empire's got a nice solid three and six record so far. I'm going to have to take up the mantle of Sigmar again this season, I guess. Uh, heal, healing, <clears throat> invocation, any sort of ability that raises models from the dead. Uh, they have infinite healing caps and they resurrect at like full health. It's just like, you can go to human voice channel. Yeah. Great start for the high elves for sure. Dark elves for Roflin and his opponent, I think is still on the pick. So we'll have to see. I'm not surprised to see Nurgle too. No, Yumi. Yeah. Is Yumi playing tonight? I don't think, I don't Yumi didn't sign in. I don't think. I would love for high elves to be good, man. That would be awesome. I, and you know, cost reductions are big. Cost reductions are big. It's a good way to balance the game. It's a good way to balance the game without disrupting other things, right? Okay, let's check this out. Thank you guys all for joining tonight. It's been a fun one. We're gonna be streaming pretty often this week. Um, probably we'll have a stream tomorrow. I think tomorrow we'll have like a single faction tournament to get more people involved in the European time zone. I'll start a little bit earlier. And uh, we'll do all that. Fal says, I lost the game as and against Empire, so I've, I've evened out your contribution. There you go. Good. Nurgle is uh, really hard to play. They're, I wouldn't say they're good. They're definitely like on the lower tier factions. Yeah. 
Yeah, Human Boy did a video covering the uh, covering the, uh, the the changes. I would watch it here, but I don't want to be one of those people who just watches other people's stuff and takes credit for it. So Roflin is here on Zinch versus Dark Elves. Okay. So Roflin is Zinch with the new spawn cost increases in Marauder Horseman not double firing. Now Zinch is probably still a top tier faction, I would say, just based on their mechanics and their Protoss shields and their infinite healing on said shields. But um, Dark Elves are also good. I would say maybe historically speaking, this matchup was won more by Zinch before, but with spawn costing more and Horseman not being bugged anymore, maybe this is like more of an even matchup. Ogres are a lot better now. Who wins in a fight, me or Tyrion? Oh, Tyrion would probably kick my butt for sure. Come on. Come on. Yeah, Swordmaster's got, um, they have the mastery now, don't they? I'd be interested to see some ogre play. I'd be really interested to see some ogre play. Certainly a lot of potential. So let's do this. See what matches are going on. I want to make sure everybody's out of round one real quick. There's probably still some people dwelling in the pits of round one. It's a classic. Cathay's good. Cathay's good. They're a strong faction. All right, so let me message some players here. So they got pings. I think everybody is just about out of round one. Let me just check on this match. And is there any other matches stuck in round one? Okay. So just shooting a message to everyone who's still in round one, because we have people approaching round three already, and there's, there's still people chilling in round one, just hanging out. Great. Sometimes people just lag and, and whatnot. You never know. Could be any number of things. Yeah, Swordmasters have some niche applications. I think maybe against Corn they could be good. Like against Corn, Swordmasters probably beat most of their infantry pretty well. You have to watch out for like, uh, you know, actually I've had some, some success using skull cannons against Hiles, like shooting their cavalry and also running over their infantry. Replenishing ammo is pretty good too. Like, I think skull cannons are a little bit underrated. I really do. We saw in the game that we almost watched earlier, we had Ulrich Rawl, like, with the Skull Cannons. So maybe there's some sort of, like, mad scientist tech to that. Maybe. Yeah, Swordmasters are really cool looking, too. They're super badass. Let me just make sure this is the final matchup real quick. Yeah, it looks like it. Yep. <clears throat> looks pretty, pretty good. Turn, doesn't this healing bug make the Festering Stew just way too strong? They resurrect. Oh, do they? It, it, apparently, Lich, it only affects, like, cavalry units. I don't think it affects infantry. Yeah, Dov, I, I, Skull Cannons aren't as bad as people say. Maybe in land battles. I don't know. I don't know about land battle applications. I haven't been doing much land battle, but... Especially versus cav factions. Yeah, and Skull Cannons, like... I, so I played a game versus Zyphos last night. It was my corn versus his uh, High Elves, and he brought, like, a Swordmaster build against me, and the Skull Cannons stacked on top of my crappy infantry actually did kill a lot of Swordmasters. And then they were able to shoot the Dragon Princes and other cav units and, and do the things, yeah. Uh, Rotus, I haven't, I haven't seen that. You can send me a message in Discord with it, and I'll check it out. I would definitely be interested. Yeah, Minotaurs with great weapons also certainly become much more viable. The corn ones, especially, they have um, yes, yeah, sir, we just finished great. They have uh, they have a seventy armor. So against like Knights of the Realm equivalents, like those type of units, they they become much stronger, much much stronger indeed. Yeah, it has to be a model with a mount for some reason. The bug is tied to mounted units being resurrected. You, like, there's also a weird bug where if you resurrect Queen Bess with Invocation, um, it, like, crashes your game. Somebody reported that earlier. So, there's resurrecting Chaos Knights. How could you do that, though? I don't think Chaos Warriors of Chaos can resurrect anything, can they? Maybe they can. Because Fleshy Abundance is just HP. Unless I'm crazy. I'm pretty sure it's not. Hey, Gunhound, how you doing? <laughs> Torox excited about Minotaur checks it out. Chariots do not get the heal bug. Okay, that's good to know, Dove. How excited are you for the for even more undead tyranny, Dove? Does it bring you joy as a fellow Empire player? <laughs> a fellow son of Sigma? All right, cool. So it looks like those guys are getting their matches done. And we're all good. So Zinch Dark Elves, this is a very sweaty matchup. Basically, if you guys are new, what comes into it is... Um, Hell Scourge, or, uh, Scourge Runner Chariots versus uh, Marauder Horseman. That's like... That's like what this matchup always devolves into. And it's just, it's super janky. And it's going to be an exalted chicken, most likely, just spamming blue fire versus Malekith spamming soul stealer. That's like the very meta, meta, meta way to play this matchup. 
I'm actually very happy that they're now banned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. They're just they're just not fair. Tomb Kings especially. Tomb Kings like the realm dude, if you look at um I don't know the exact math, but if you look at a Tomb Kings unit that has ten thousand HP after the Realm of Souls and the Lore of Nehekar are passive, they realistically have like somewhere between like fourteen thousand and sixteen thousand HP, if you really like math it all out. It's pretty gross. It's pretty gross. Like the amount of effort you have to go through. With vampire counts, it's like not quite as egregious because like you're like, oh well at least they can't shoot me and like you know, but Tomb Kings are also bombarding you with catapults and great bows and shit. And you're just like, oh my god. Yeah, it's just, it's absolute anarchy, man. I think Creative Assembly will hotfix this one, though. I really do. Because um, this is a pretty big bug, and it affects campaign also, so I think they'll be quick to fix it. I think they'll be quick to fix it. Crone Hellebron, no way in hell. Crone Hellebron is not going to be played this game. Not at all. Uh, Dov says, I realize now I've been doing it wrong for years. Instead of advocating for nerfs, I should have been asking uh, to the, for the people to buff overpowered factions. <laughs> then they just have bugs with said buffs. Make them so OP they have to be banned. That's true, Dov. That's the way you do it. That's the way you do it. Well, the reason why Tomb Kings became overpowered in game three is because of the changes to healing. So healing became like percentage based and it just got insane. Like, the Realm of Souls heals your entire army for like a, a pretty substantial percentage, and so does the lore passive, right? It's like, so that's a that's a problem, and it never got like scaled correctly. But again, in campaign, it doesn't really matter because you're just playing against AI, and AI are potatoes. But when you have like two players playing, it becomes a very noticeable issue, right? Yeah, so that's that's kind of the the tricky thing there. Yeah, Rakarth is uh probably not that good. His abilities are all pretty mediocre. Malekith is like just so much better. Like you get all your caster in one spot. He's like al almost as good of a fighter, and he also a soul stealer and gaze of malice. Like he just becomes way way better for sure. Yeah, the undead crumbling nerf was pretty insignificant though, from what I saw. It's very little because crumbling only kills hits one unit at a time. I'll have to test more before I draw conclusions on it. But my initial feeling is that it's not um it's not that much. Yeah. Like I always, I always wonder why, I always wonder why demons crumble so hard, but like undead don't. I under, I think I understand it. Like maybe the demon units have, they have higher base leadership than undead, right? Like they should, if that's the case. So it's like harder to get them to crumble. But yeah, that's like an interesting paradigm to be kind of explored. Like I, I'm not, I haven't done enough research on it to really give an informed opinion. So I'm not going to really, I'm just kind of speculating. I think, uh, yeah, like demonic crumbling is really significant, but like undead, when you get a unit, like a unit of zombies crumbling, it doesn't mean shit. Like that zombie is going to be there for like 45 minutes, even when it's crumbling. The crumbling damage increase means zombies will now die in 6.5 minutes instead of 9.5 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I think they need to make it so units that are crumbling do not have capture weight. Also, that would be really big. Like, why do mortal units lose capture weight when they run, but undead don't? Like, that that probably needs to be changed. And that's something I'm going to try and send to Creative Assembly, and hopefully we can get that. I think that's a pretty big one. The exception of Furies, demons generally have a bit more leadership. Yeah, so it's like a leadership thing, I guess. Undead don't have a lot of leadership. How do you play a match of domination without a lord? So, when you're creating your armies, I'm going to give Sandwich a, a warning for taking a while here. All right. Okay. Cool. So just shot him a little message there. And we'll see what he says. Okay. So he's just telling me he's ready. I just shot him a sandwich a message, so. Because we, uh, I, t I t in the rules, that I, I told people to try and keep it under five minutes for army building. This has clearly been like seven or eight minutes. I don't mind chatting with you guys, but we're here for we're here for action. You know, we're here for action. Yeah, the crumbling units still fighting and capturing. Yeah. Faust says hilariously in tabletop demons had a rule that if they rolled double on ones and morale check, they just had all their dead models pop back into existence. Yeah, that's still I think that happens in 40k to an extent. I don't think it's like every unit, but like they get some back. Yeah. Yeah, vampire counts, man. 
Always a villain. I can't wait to play against vampire counts and old world tabletop and that eventually comes back and have them be overpowered there too. That's going to be fun. <laughs> That'll be fun. All right, guys, here we are. It is the forces of Zinch led by the great, the great agent of the changer, I suppose. Kairos Fate Weaver coming in with the soul grinder as well. Soul grinder to throw his mighty javelins. We got Malice Darkblade. Oh, with double shades. All right, guys, I suddenly am interested in this game. Malekith, you know, I've kind of been like, all right, I've seen this a hundred times, but... Malice Meme Blade is a very, very good pick. Yeah, he's hard to snipe. Like, you can waste like, oh my god, look at the haggard textures on his face not rendering. When I'm out here, look, look, look. He, he kind of, oh, he looks like Morbius. He looks like Morbius. Look at his face. Then when you get in, it actually renders his face, but like out of this angle, it doesn't. Oh my god, that's so funny. So Mass Corsair Handbow, a very good skirmisher unit. They can skir they can skirmish with horsemen. They can poke. They can also fight a little bit in melee. Pretty hard to snipe, so. Good stuff. We do also have Malice Darkblade as well as a Master. The Master of Puppets is pulling the strings here, apparently. The Master is an anti-large specialist. Probably a tech against the Soul Grinder, I would imagine. I think that's going to be the case. He looked like Morbius. Yeah, he looked like Morbius. And then we got a Pit of Shades caster in the bushes. Pit of Shades obviously got nerfed a while back, but it's still a very, very good spell. Now, for the rest of the... It's, 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 Maling time. it's Malice time? Yeah, how it's Malice in time? Yeah, oh, it's Malice in time. Yeah, there you go. I like that one. That's good. A new meme has been formed here, guys. Shades with great swords. Oh, that's so cool. So the shades with great swords can definitely put some serious hurt on the uh, Zinchian infantry. Pound them at a distance. If they get close, they can fight. <laughs> Dr. Malice Morbius. <laughs> Dr. Malvius Morblade. <laughs> oh, man. That's so good. Malice is the new Morbius, guys. He's, he's taking it from the vampires. Rotter Horsemen of Zinch are still a good unit, even after the nerfs, but obviously they're not going to be, like, absolutely just stupid broken in melee like they were before. On the backside, we have a bunch of Chaos Warriors coming up, as well as some Rotters, and the Great Lord of Change going to be trying to control the battlefield. Now, how does he deal with the Soul Grinder? I guess just get Shades in range and just kind of pound it a little bit. The Shades will be in range in a second, and we'll see how good the Micro is going to be for Rofling here. Big blue fire shot from downtown, going to be going into Malice Darkblade, and a nice shot. Oh, and the Soul Grinder Javelin as well in Malice. So Malice does pop the Blood Price, which gives him a little bit of ward save, but overall that's very, very cost effective because that actually does a little bit of damage to yourself, so I don't know if it's worth the ward save. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'd have to kind of math that one out a little bit. He will Malice all over them. That's right. You'll see. Now Shades of Sandwich are in position. Roflin immediately notices. We get very good control. And now he's going to be able to kind of abuse the, uh, the shield mechanic and just pull back and let that thing heal the full health. And just like that, you get a free invocation, basically. You know, 600 HP healed. Talk about a good faction mechanic. Now, Chaos Warriors of Zinch moving out. Marauder Horsemen, Eye of the High Ground Atakin. They're up here. They're going to be sitting, throwing javelins over the hill at the Shades with great swords. Oh my god! Who would have thought the Zinch Haggard throwing javelins up on the high ground? <clears throat> Apparently they're not, they're not very accurate when they're throwing from up there. A single Scourge Runner Cherry going to be running into the Marauders. Gets a really, really nice charge there. So many of those Marauders going to get plowed and they actually lose their shields and will probably uh, kind of start to lose some units from there. Some more shots coming in as the Blackheart Corsair Handbow is going to be skirmishing against the Zinch army very heavily. Sandwich really wants to make sure he captures that back objective. The fact that he's not playing the back objective is going to give Zinch a pretty substantial point lead. Malice is already halfway to death. Um, but again, he has Demon Form too. So you just let him get blue fired and then he, then he goes full Malice Malice Meme Blade mode. And he has a, a good jolly time for sure. We have a Up in the front, we got Chaos Warriors. The they're hustling. They got those silver shields and they're not going to care too much. But the Shades can put a lot of hurt on this army. I do love the Shade pick. I think it's pretty cool. And yeah, I mean, Shades shooting into Chaos Warriors, even with Silver Shields, will do some pretty substantial damage. It looks like a Blue Fire is going down, not after Malice. A little bit of a mistake by Sandwich, not having Malice engaged. Uh, Malice needs to be just attacking Chaos Warriors. And are these Shades being sent into melee combat against the Great Weapons? I mean, against the Chaos Warriors. It's not a terrible idea since they do have Great Swords, but even still, like, Zinch is now getting a triple cap. So Zinch is going to steal the side objective, and the Dark Elves are just going to have to value trade, but... Roflin appears to be outvaluing as well. I mean, he's Roflin is one of the players I've probably played the most in tournaments. Him and I are like just a, we're we're of course the eternal nemeses. We run into each other all the time. It's like we trade back and forth 50-50 in all our games. And I can tell you, he's a very very strong player, very strong. So shot coming down. Kairos Fate Weaver going to be attacking Malice. Malice does have the blood price value trading favoring Zinch at this point. The Dark Elves going to be moving up on the objective. Not sure why they didn't send like a Bleak Sword over there or something. Like a like a Bleak Sword or two. I feel like that would have been pretty good to make sure they don't get triple capped. And now we do see the Shades with Great Swords being hunted down by Marauder Horsemen. So nice little Javelin right there. Now they're in melee. So let's see if they actually throw their Javelins in melee as well. 
We'll have to see if the bug has been fixed. It looks like they got their melee weapons drawn. Okay, I don't see them throwing their weapons in actual melee, which is a big improvement. So that's going to allow the Corsairs to fight a little bit more effectively. We'll have to see. So Malice has gone Super Saiyan, and it looks like Sandwich is going to be pulling the value back. Uh-oh. Kairos is overstaying his welcome, ladies and gentlemen. And Malice Mean Blade is Morbin all over his face. 5,500. A lot of damage going down to that chicken. You better put some respect on Malice's name here. Fury's being killed. Horseman diving too deep into the Corsair lines. Malice is giving him the business, dude. Reaper of Souls is active. Also going to be doing a little bit of damage. Not a whole lot against single entities, but still not insignificant. Regrowth going down on the big chicken. Guys, he's unstable, and Demonic Crumbling is not a joke. He's going to be taking a ton of damage from this. So that's going to be countering the regrowth to a large extent. The Scourge Runner Chariots have him trapped. Roflin could be losing the game right now, 100%. Malice is just carrying this game. <laughs> he's Malice, and yes, he is. He's putting this game on his back. And Kairos Fate Weaver is in the danger zone as a giant Manscore screams down there. And that is a huge throw right there, potentially. So big shots coming in. That turkey is going to get cooked. Thanksgiving coming uh, about a month early. And Malice is at 1900 HP, being attacked by the match core. Negative 41. He's still not. Oh, Oracle of Eternity is giving ward save against the crumbling damage. That's so funny, dude. And down goes the chicken. It can't get past the Scourge Runners. And Malice. Dude, Malice just Malice all over that guy's face. Oh my god. Kairos is slain by the meme blade. And Sandwich is back in this game with a vengeance, ladies and gentlemen. Suddenly, I don't think Zeech has a chance anymore. Uh, I mean, Zeech is a faction that's really lord dependent. Like, they don't have their magic. So that hurts really bad. And uh, the horsemen, like, were kind of sacrificed to try and save the chicken. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Roflin tap out of this game, like, 100%. Sandwich is back in, the, back in business. We got Bleak Swords on the way. Bleak Swords on the side. Uh, Bleak Swords will probably defeat Marauders. They just have better stats, right? HP is a little less, though, so we'll have to see about that. 36, 32, 35, 34, 28, 28. So pretty big stat differential, but obviously Bleak Swords are a little bit squishier. But with the Chariot there, should be a pretty easy secure. Obviously Dark Elves are going to win pretty decisively on just two objectives here, If you know, considering the circumstance. They have plenty of time. So um, I think that is probably going to be it. Roflin will probably try a little bit longer. You know, he probably feels as if he has a pretty good point lead, so he's going to try scrapping for a moment. But at the end of the day, what's going to happen is these things are just going to get picked apart by the Corsair handbows, and Malice is just going to Malice all over these units. And, uh, and yeah, the Marauders will move in. That's cute, but there's Bleak Swords to fight them. Bleak Swords, again, will hold them all day at the very least. We have a Master back here uh, who's actually chasing down the Soul Grinder. So another very unfortunate trade here for Roflin. As the Soul Grinder does get killed, negative 43 leadership, and the Master of Puppets certainly pulled those strings. And down goes that bad boy. So on the other side, we do get some uh, Dark Riders over here. Not going to do super well against Chaos Warriors, but the plan is going to be to pin them in place and use a Pit of Shades, I would imagine. Yep, so we see the Pit of Shades follow up. Just pulls back, avoids it with his own Dark Riders. Kind of pins them in place. His Pit of Shades will probably bring these guys down to about 60%, I would wager. Uh, it depends if it was overcast, I don't know, but we'll, we'll probably see. The Master, the Sorceress, and the Dark Riders probably will be able to use their combined forces to defeat the Chaos Warriors. And that's going to be a triple cap for Zeech. Malice is just going to give the business to these guys. Manticore is holding back the... Uh, Weird spawn, which of course uh, all the chaos spawn for Zinch, I believe, got a cost increase, which I think was a good change. Spawned a little bit too cost effective, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, Kairos got his bread buttered, man. Yep, prediction was pretty correct, about 55% on these guys. And uh, the capture weight should favor the forces of the Dark Elves here. Now they have two characters, each of which have three capture weight. Horsemen have uh, three as well. Uh, three or four, I can't remember, but um, nonetheless, should favor the Dark Elves. Now, Chaos Warriors moving up. I really don't see what Roflin sees in this game. He's down 4,000 value, and that is it. GG, well played, ladies and gentlemen. Malice cooking up that Thanksgiving feast. Shades didn't do that good. Honestly, nothing in the Dark Elf army was that crazy. The Master did not even that good. It was really just Malice. Malice just hard carried that game. He just put that game on his back and, you know, caught that chicken. And that's the thing. If you bring big, expensive lords that are pretty much your centerpiece... Much like in tabletop, if you lose your big centerpiece, you're often going to be in substantial danger if he doesn't give you some sort of return, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a 1-1 series on our hands. Thank you all for joining tonight. It's been quite a bit of fun. And, uh... He was... Next game. All right. Very cool. Very cool. So let's see what happens, man. The chicken got cooked. And now we are on to our next map. Let's go ahead and take a look. 
the next map is going to be uh, Glinty. No, is it Arnheim? I think we're on Arnheim, yeah. It's going to be Arnheim for this next map. Going back to the classics. Got to mix in the new maps and the old maps. All right. And uh, we're good. So next game. Yeah, it, it's it sometimes is weird how things get stuck, for sure. Like, I've had experiences like that where Lord looks like it should be able to escape, but it gets caught in, like, the edge of a chariot or something. Yeah, Zarkan was pissed off. Zarkan is, uh, what kind of a demon is he in the lore? Is, is Zarkan, like, uh, is he, like, an undivided demon, or is he is he a Zinch demon? I don't really know the lore, but somebody in chat can probably answer that. Yeah, Tomb Kings are banned, and anything that resurrects a model is banned, yeah. Tomb Kings are banned because their lore their army ability automatically triggers the bug, so, um, so yeah. Great. So just checking here. Got some messages coming in from players. Looks good. Hey, thank you for sending me the soundtrack. Appreciate that. I got that. And we're good. All right, let's check the brackets. Make sure nobody's stuck in round one in the pits of hell. Hey, Tinkerbell, thanks for becoming a new member. Welcome to the Dukes of Haggard. Hope you're doing well. And thank you for becoming a channel member. It helps out quite a bit. So how are they still in round one? Maybe I got to refresh this again. Because some the fact that somebody's in round one and it's been like, like an hour and 45 minutes, that is not right. So we got to go double check that. Okay, I just I think I just needed to refresh it. Okay, it looks like everybody's in round two now. Great. Nobody's quite in round three except the dreaded Thunder Nut. He awaits atop his throne of skulls. And down here... Got some good games being played. Some people in round three already. Platypus will probably be there soon unless the dreaded Gaz can pull off an upset. We'll have to see. And uh, yeah, we're all good. Man, this is fun. Hey, Pete. It's my dad's name. Thank you for the donation. Many thanks to the most entertaining caster and player on YouTube. Thank you so much, man. That means a lot. Excited to get back into Age of Empires soon. For anybody who's missing out on Age Streams, we'll be having that very, very soon. We'll be getting back into Age of Empires in the next uh, next couple days. We'll have a stream. And then uh, obviously when the new civilizations come out, we'll be covering that. <laughs> Roflin has been sandwiched to the Shadow Realm, yes. That game, but he'll be back for vengeance. And uh, thank you to the Ravenous Moose for 1999. I don't see a message, but thank you. I think TBD is going to win this tournament. Yeah, me too. He's he's a he's a ferocious one. I support the Wood Elf win rate. How are they doing right now? Let's go check it out. So the Wood Elf win rate... Um... Hey, look at that. Wood Elf's off to a pretty good start for the season. It's going to be really interesting once we get the single faction tournament going. That's a good way to get a lot of stats out on the table. Greenskins and Lizardmen are already having a much better start than last season. Who's having the absolute worst start? Skaven. <laughs> Skaven are 0-5, which is so weird. Because uh, when you put Skaven in the hands of a high-level player, dude, they become so hard. To, it's hard to beat. I don't know why Skaven are having such a bad start. 0-5. That's a rough showing, ladies and gentlemen. Green skins. Yeah, honestly, pretty good pretty good start for a lot of factions. You know, even the Empire's 4 and 6 now. Bretonia's doing fine. Nurgle. Yeah, this this looks about right. Tomb Kings obviously haven't been played yet, and they're not going to be because of the bug. So they'll just kind of chill down here. But um, yeah, kind of a cool start. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Caught turn live. Yeah, man. We had another tournament going on this morning hosted by one of our excellent hosts, Foul. So I decided to have a late night stream instead, which actually worked out great. Allowed me to take care of a lot of IRL stuff. So we are here and uh, it's good because it gave us time to figure out the bug as well, right? If I had just had my tournament in the morning on launch day, which I think I'm going to do this in the future, wait till like nighttime to host so we can find any bugs. Van Gogh, thank you. I can't wait to see the buffed high elves in action. And always thank you for the entertaining stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun to have my second game of Domination be this tournament. Thanks for hosting. Hey, hope you did well. How did it go for you, Straya? Tell me about your game. Let us know in chat. Your second game ever. You're getting into tournament. That's a very Chad move. I think Skaven are good, man. I really do. Yeah, Tomb Kings, uh, the healing bug, uh, we talked about it a couple times. So basically, it just there's no healing cap on cavalry, and they also like resurrect at full health. It's just crazy. Counts are about mid-tier without healing. Yeah, that sounds about right, actually. Hey, Nefestus, thank you for being a member. Always love the streams, dude. Hope the Haggard free for come back. They will. Fidel, thank you. And uh, free for will rise. Maybe, it, depending on how long the stream goes, maybe we'll have one. But we're going to have a tournament tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a single faction tournament. This is a big best of three. 
Um, tomorrow we'll have single faction with best of three finals and whatnot. So um, that'll give us a chance to... I'll be playing tomorrow. I, I got the itch. I got to play. Yeah, Fao, it's pretty crazy that nobody found the bug in your tournament just because everyone picked Warriors of Chaos and Slanesh instead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's pretty funny. So it looks like Roflin might be playing Dwarves. Um, the pick for a sandwich, we'll have to see. We will have to see. I got to show you guys Ultima Online one of these days. Would you guys be interested in that? Like, how many of you guys would actually tune in to check that out? Like me playing Ultima and just playing my Haggard Thief and just stealing from people in dungeons? Uh, Alexander, Nurgle mains rise up. Dude, Nurgle will rise. Nurgle might have some tools. With the new Soul Grinders... Costing less, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> My characters. I have a thief and I have an assassin. So I have a thief character, which you can actually just steal from other players. It's so funny. It's so funny. Hey, Pepper, you just got knocked out. Knocked out. Don't stress it at all. You you got those reps. You got those reps in. You, you're slowly improving. I dude, I like I play in tournaments. You know. All the time. I consider myself, you know, a, a pretty high level player and uh, I get knocked out in the first round all the time. It happens. You know, some, some days it just happens, you know, you get just happens like that. You know, you run into a tough opponent and uh, yeah, don't stress it. Don't stress it. Yeah. Hey, I hear you. Okay. So to not bring a Lord in your army, what you do is you, um, when you're building your army in domination mode, uh, you put your Lord in your reinforcing army. So you click on the little like, I can't show you now because it'll reveal their armies, but you click on the little bar above your reinforcing army to highlight it and you put your Lord there. And then in your starting army, your Lord is going to be whatever your first unit actually is. So like if you put a hero there, a unit, that will count as your Lord for the sake of penalties. <laughs> uncle for uncle, deliver us Nurgle mains from the pits. Yeah. The new patch has some good things, some bad things. It's a very mixed bag. Overall, I would say it's 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 a bit of a negative for sure, but it does have some positive changes, like the high elf stuff, the corn stuff is really nice. The beastmen like got some cool changes, but overall, like the the Slanesh not being nerfed is really bad. Um, and Slanesh getting buffs, I just don't understand. Uh, I don't think Anticity is playing. He was streaming quick battles today, so I'm sure he'll be back. Anticity is uh, always a top contender for sure. It, you know, playing in a lot of tournaments can definitely be tiring. So it's, especially when you're doing like a lot of videos as well, it can, it can kind of like, you can find yourself playing in tournaments instead of doing videos. So yeah, it's like, you got to balance it out. Plague bears, plague bears are a good unit. They're not bad. They have a ton of HP and pretty, pretty fighty and grindy too. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to try ogres. Actually. I have some weird schemes about ogres. All right. So let's see. Sandwich taking his time with the picks. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what we can have. The negatives are it introduced a massive game-breaking bug and Slanesh didn't get nerfed. So the meta is basically going to be the exact same. It's just going to be Slanesh, Tomb Kings, Vampire Counts, Dominance with uh, with Warriors of Chaos. Like, nothing changes there. It's just... so, But that's why we introduced global bans into the competitive scene. A lot of games do that, actually. If you look at Age of Empires, when they have, like, high-level competitive series, they do global bans often, like in Best of Sevens and things like that. Like, players will globally ban factions that can't be played in that, or civilizations. So it's not an uncommon thing in RTS games where you have more stuff. Um, so Peli says, I didn't see an answer anywhere. On Warhammer 2, I played with a buddy, and we could decide to have a battle on auto by default or manual by default. Yeah, you can. You can choose either uh, in the loading. So basically, you can make it so that if one player wants to auto, wants to fight the battle, the other player has to fight it. Auto, that's typically how I play it. And then if both players, if you if you want to auto, both players need to do it. Because, yeah. Because sometimes auto resolves like, like I played a head-to-head -head campaign with Professor Pwn where my Kislev army had a good auto resolve against his army, but in the actual fight, like it, it lost the fight, right? So you need to, you need to kind of have that. Uh, we don't really know about the crumbling damage yet because a lot of the undead stuff has is so buggy right now that like we don't get a good taste of it. Okay, Norska versus Zinch. So Sandwich is going to be on Zinch. And, uh... Let me just go ahead to build. Okay, fine. And let me do this. Cool. So telling the players five minutes. Just got to keep things moving along. Best of three tournaments are much longer. That's why it's not double elim tonight because it would just be like a crazy, crazy long tournament. But best of three is nice for getting a nice kind of spread of stats. 
Lizardmen actually not doing bad tonight. You know, one thing to consider about the this this meta is that the maps are very different. Like we have new maps now, so that's going to make different factions viable, right? Like before we had a very narrow pool of maps, but now that we have bigger maps, more diverse maps, it's going to enable certain factions to do better, which I think is actually a really exciting thing about this patch. So shout out to all of our map makers. If any of you guys are here in chat, you guys are like the lifeblood of this community, man. So thank you so much. And, uh, and yeah, looks like the round two matches are just kind of finishing up. So we'll go into round three, four, and then five is the semifinals, of course. We got a nice 1-1 one -one series here. And life's good. Life is very good. I'm pretty excited for Stormgate as well. Yeah, Stormgate looks fun. That's another RTS game that's going to be... Uh, I don't know when it's coming out. I know the beta is like mid-2023, I think is what they said on their little post. That'll be fun. Hopefully it's uh, like kind of on par with like StarCraft or something. Yeah, the maps are really a game changer, Turtle. I agree, man. I agree. Yeah, there's some there's some good maps. We we have uh, an old map right now, but we, of course, will go back to some of the custom maps. We'll get those ones back in there. Give Chameleon Skanks cold one bouts. Holy shit, that would be annoying. Imagine Chameleon Skinks riding the, the the like the feral cold ones. Like they can ride those things and just like shoot their little darts. Yeah, why wouldn't they have that? Why wouldn't Lizardmen have like a little Velociraptor mount? Like a, a smaller cold one that like a skink can ride with a blow dart? Oh my god. Imagine how obnoxious Lizardmen would become if Chameleon Skinks could ride Velociraptors and shoot you with poison darts with like 90 speed. Oh my god. That would that would give everyone a taste. That would give chaos a taste of its own medicine. Yeah, with poison darts and missile resist. Holy shit. That would be crazy. Okay, Roflin is ready on Norska. So the barbarian hordes are coming. <laughs> that would be so nuts. Oh. Dark Age Rush. I always see you in chat. Is your name inspired by like Age Vampires, like rushing somebody in the Dark Age? Is that what it is? Or is it something else? <laughs> Nox in chat says stop <laughs> on tabletop horned riders on on tabletop horned one riders were skanks oh okay that's kind of cool but you can still see the cold yeah I'm trying to see here uh, nobody really knows how demons of chaos are it's too early to see the meta we have new maps and some some balance changes some for better some for worse so we're gonna we're gonna see what the meta looks like after a couple weeks we're gonna see what it looks like so Yeah, but the other player can't vote anymore. That's weird. Yeah, that would be a setting in your uh, in your campaign. I'm not quite sure. It's not my forte. Fowl says, in tabletop, the Dread Saurian could have the Chameleon Skinks camouflage and made it count as ethereal. Oh my god, that sounds pretty OP. They should just give Chameleon Skinks shotguns. Yes, I agree. I think that's a, a pretty apt balancing change there. One sec, guys. My dog is barking. I'm going to make sure it's all good. And uh, we'll be starting the next game here in a second. All right, the dreaded Chihuahua is fine. It was just barking at someone outside. You never know. It's our little guard dog here. Orbital shock, orbital drop shock Saurians. Oh, I like that one. Like, just give him, give him like a space marine drop pod or something. That would be pretty cool. All right, so has it been five minutes? So we'll give him another thirty seconds, and then he gets a warning. Five minutes is plenty of time to build an army, dude. It's plenty of time, <laughs> in my opinion. I think it's plenty of time. Give Chameleon Skinks, Cold Ones, and Gisales. Oh my god, imagine if they could like ride Velociraptors and they had sniper rifles also. That would be some broken shit. That would be some really broken shit. Yeah. <laughs> Medigun. <laughs> yeah, the Dread Saurian, like... Okay, here's the thing. If the Lizardmen really wanted to win the conflicts with the Skaven... Like, why wouldn't they try and salvage the Skaven weaponry? Like, I feel like they're they're crafty enough that they could make it work. Like, imagine if a Dread... Like, the Skaven, like... Okay, let's say the Lizardmen defeated the Skaven in a battle, right? And you had... 
and you had, uh, you know, some Rattling Gunners who, who had their equipment on the battlefield, why wouldn't the Lizardmen, like, straight up take the Rattling Gunners and strap it on top of, like, a Carnosaur, you know? Like, mount it on the Carnosaur's back and just have, like, Croc R up there with, like, an like a M60 or something? Like, why wouldn't they? Is it a pride thing? Like, don't they want the, don't they just want to get their plan done, though? Like, why does the Empire not do that? Because Skaven weaponry can kill you? Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. The Great Plan Warpstone taints it. Okay, so, well, what, Chaos, for example. Like, you, do you really think, like, the followers of Nurgle would be apprehensive about trying Skaven weaponry? Like, I feel like Nurgle would be like, oh, yeah, give me that rattling gun, dude. And then, like, Nurgle could get, like, a giant toad dragon and strap, like, six rattling guns on top of it and just have, like, oh, my God, that would be the funniest thing. Yeah, that'd be the funniest thing. Oh, uh, the road to Talapheim needs a little bit more testing, yeah, because it's very big. I want to get some more opinions on that first. But I'm going to play it on my own and draw some conclusions this week. Warpstone mutates. All right, fair enough. Aren't Lizardmen basically immune to Chaos Corruption, though? I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like there would be someone in the old world who would be, like, greedy enough to try and use it. A toad dragon, yeah, toad dragons. If you look at Nurgle, go. If you haven't seen them, go to Google and look up the Nurgle toad dragon. It's probably going to get added to the game someday. Yeah, it's basically Zhao Ming. Yeah, hey, come on, give it a try. All right, ladies and gentlemen, taking a look at the army of Roflin coming in with Marauder Horse Masters. They ain't what they used to be, but they're still very good. Going to have a core of Marauder champions on the ground, so four Marauder champions, very elite infantry to fight the forces of Zhenshin. It makes sense. They're going to be incredibly durable against the Marauder Horsemen, that's for sure. And in the back, we got Marauder's Great Weapons, as well as a basic Marauder's. Now, what would counter this build pretty effectively would be Zinch Spawn. They would probably Sunder the Armor of Champions and trade very, very well, backed up by Marauders. I think that would be very, very nice. But we'll have to see what Zinch has as a counter to this. Now, looking at the Zinchian army, it's, it's funny. People have not adjusted to the Horsemen being nerfed yet. Granted, maybe they're still really good. I'm curious if they're going to kind of stay meta here. We'll have to see. Like, because if you really think about it, these are this is quite a bit of gold. You could have like four or five more, you know, a couple spawn units for the cost of these horsemen. Although I feel like you need horsemen just to, as chaos in these factions, just to control the, you know, utility on the battlefield and make sure that your opponent isn't bullying you with magic and other things like that, right? So, <clears throat> something to think about. As far as the army goes, though, we do have the Pink Horrors, uh, Chaos Warriors of Zinch with shields. So, Marauder Champions and Chaos Warriors of Zinch will have a bit of a wet noodle contest, but there are some spawn in here. So I do really like the spawn pick. Now, uh, it looks like Sandwich is going to be uh, banking resources at this point. You get a big blue fire coming down. Blue fire is going to be nailing into those horse masters here. And yeah, just classic horse master skirmish here. And uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Just bouncing back and forth, throwing giant shafts at each other's faces. That is basically the story of this exchange. But Roflin's army certainly seems a little bit stronger in melee. Now, guys, I want you to pay special close attention to these good boys. So Norskin Ice Wolves got a pretty big buff. They got a damage increase. They got a cost reduction. I'm really, really curious how the Norskin... Are they going to be like kind of similar to Corn Hounds? Like Flesh Hounds, right? Are they Flesh Hounds with a little bit less damage output as well as uh, Frostbite? Perhaps so. Blue Fire is still a very good spell. Did not get touched in the patch, even though it probably could have. Uh, it's good against everything. SEMs, multi-model units, monsters, whatever. You name it. It's just basically a spell that's point and click and does good damage. And the Marauder Horsemen here are getting buttered up pretty good, but Roflin is actually going pedal to the metal. He's, he's pushing back the Zinchian army. High ground is going to be controlled by some Marauders. Should be able to hold on to that objective, no problem. And the Marauder Champions actually getting their bread buttered a little bit because the Marauder Horsemen lower their armor and make them weak to fire, and then they're being shot by, you know, fire damage via the Pink Horrors here. Flamers coming in from Sandwich. I really, really like that pick quite a bit. I think that's a nice tech. Flamers of Zinch could have scoot up, and, uh, you know, he's going to be sacrificing time on the objectives to... Uh, to try and value trade against Norskin. So far it's working. I mean, Sandwich is up pretty heavily on uh, on value. So is the case with Zinch. Zinch usually is ahead on value for sure. So the good boys are going to come over to the side point. They're going to jump on this bad boy. Norska's Marauder Champions kind of getting picked apart a little bit, honestly. And now it looks like some of them are turning and running, which isn't going to be great for them. But the ammunition is about half on the horsemen. He didn't bring a Lord. There's no Wolfric. Like, he brought a caster as his Lord in this army. So we don't see Wolfric or someone who can stop Kairos. But that also makes sense because uh, Kairos could snipe them with blue fire. It kind of takes me back to the days of Warhammer 1 when people wouldn't bring lords just so they wouldn't die to how overpowered Spirit Leech was back then. But Zinch has given up the triple cap, right? So that's kind of the trade-off here is that Norska is going to get a pretty substantial point lead. 
We'll seem to have enough time to get the objectives back. We'll certainly have to see. Horsemen on their way over, but ammunition is certainly running out. Champions are still feasible. I mean, 79 models here, 78. And the Marauder Horse Masters of Anorska good to be scooting up and trading. Looks like they do a little bit of damage here against the Marauder Horsemen. Not too much. Blue Fire from downtown, getting on into the Marauder Horsemen. Picks off a handful of models. Really, really good spell, like I said. And the Norsk Ice Wolves are just waiting in the wings. We'll see how good they are when the fighting actually commences. Currently, we have the value up to about 150 for Zinch, or for Norska, excuse me, which will uh, keep increasing. And the Norskan Doggos, are they going to get a Frostbite off? They do not get the Frostbite. They didn't actually make contact. They did here. And the speed has been lowered a little bit. So the, the good boys have moved up. And is the Norskan Army going to engage, or are they just going to kind of harry and push with their, uh, their Doggos here? Also, is Norska going to be summoning in, like, Javelins? Okay, Condom Wolves. So we are going to be getting Condom Wolves. So here they come. These guys are anti-large specialists. The premier condom brand of the old world. Going to be doing some good work, most likely, into the spawn. Although this is a pretty big mistake here in the bushes. We do have the Norsk and Ice Wolves getting uh, caught in a gaze of fate. So Roflin with a pretty big misplay. Sending away his good boys to their demise. So he loses two good boys in the forest. Certainly not a good trade at all. Those are a good unit, you know, and they just kind of pay the price here. Pit of Shades going down on top of the Chaos Warriors of Zinch. That's going to be a nice one. Condom Wolves get in. And uh, they actually get on top of the Flamers of Zinch. So that is a nice trade by Roflin. So he's actually... Force pathing these skin wolves through, and he's able to get onto the, uh, you know, one of the better shooting units that Zinch has. So this is a win for Norska. This is a big loss. So some trading back and forth. I think if Norska hadn't lost the good boys in the forest, I think that um, this could be very cost effective, right? Like having the flamers of Zinch getting like potentially crumbled and beaten down here is very, very nice. Now, will the condom wolves be able to escape? So they're going to pull back the skin wolves. They're going to try and get through. What you want to do in this situation, if you're Norska, is you want to hold the objectives for as long as you possibly can. And then fall back when you're able to win on one point and Helm's Deep that shit. You just want to hold that until the like the bitter end. And Norska can do that well. They have some stalwart infantry via like champions and even their basic marauders aren't bad. Because, you know, Zinch is giving up a lot of points right now. And the value trading isn't that different. Like it's relatively close, but you have to remember Zinch does have the OP healing, so they're going to be able to heal. Whereas Norska has some limited healing on like the uh, skin wolves and different things like that, so... Something to uh, take into account. So currently, we're going to be seeing 500 points. Skirmishing from Sandwich still pretty heavily. Heavily active as uh, more Skin Wolves are being pulled in. We actually get Marauder Berserkers being moved in, which I, I think I understand. I think the Berserkers are being pulled in because they, uh, they're they going to just sit on the objective all day. And he no I think Roflin probably knows he needs to just play the objective game a little bit now. It looks like some Skin Wolves are going to move in, maybe try and get through the, the seam here. I think that's going to be the case. Like, if he moves through there, he can probably get on top of those things. And now the Marauder Champions are being pulled in. Skin Wolves being pulled in as well. Skin Wolves are going to be targeting the spawn who are charging. But Zinch does have shooting via the Pinks and some of these other units. So it could get a little bit messy. And now the good boys have come back. So there are some good boys, and they're going to be moving up through the trees. As we do get great weapons into the Chaos Warriors. Not a bad trade at all. And I would imagine another Pit of Shades going to be coming down right now. Yes, on top of the Pinks. It'll do about... Bring them to 60%, give or take, would be my estimate. Skin Wolves kind of getting wrecked here a little bit. Zinch, of course, trading very, very well. Will Norska start Helm's Deeping on the top objective? I don't think it's quite time for that yet. That was a nice pit of shades. He needs to just do his best to keep the value as close as possible. Skin Wolves uh, tearing through the Weird Spawn a little bit, but it looks like a Harmonic Convergence going down. So Harmonic Convergence, pretty cool on top of the Weird Spawn here. As we do see the Flamers of Zinch shooting into the Great Open, so that's very, very nice. And uh, yeah, melts those lightly armored units, melts armor too. Flamers of Zinch, a nice tool for getting rid of really cost-effective infantry. Now, you have to imagine Zinch is going to have to overextend itself now a little bit, which could give Norska an opportunity to get in there and get some work done. The good boys moved into the forest, but obviously against three Marauder Horsemen, you're not going to win. I don't care how good of a boy you are, that's not going to be a good fight. Now, the Marauder Berserkers have engaged against Kairos, the big chicken. We get more Marauders just piling in. Zinch really, really just going for the objective win. Uh, not Zinch, excuse me. Well, they are obviously going to try and win by objectives, but Norska is going to go for a Helm's Deep approach, which I think you probably, at this point, start sending stuff up to the high ground. Because by the time Zinch pushes you off these two objectives here, you'll probably have just over 1,000 points, maybe? Like around 1,100 when they get both those objectives? It depends on how this fighting goes. Skin Wolves and Berserkers fighting here. Berserkers, of course, have very, very good trading. And uh, yeah, Marauder Horsemen are also out of ammo. Good Pit of Shades. Really, really nice Pit of Shades there by Roflin. He's able to punish those Zinch in units. And uh, Marauder Horsemen being pushed in on both sides. Zinch does have Terror, but man, that Pit of Shades was super good. That was super, super good. Premier Belfiend also fighting in there as well. So hopefully he doesn't get karate chopped for the sake of Norska. Now, Norsko holding on to this point. Berserker is doing very well. That Pit of Shades might have been enough to kind of buy the time. Zinch is starting to probably sweat bullets a little bit right now. And look at this. The Condom Wolves went around the back. And they get on top of the Flamers of Zinch. Ooh, that's really good. Check that out. 
So they must have routed and then came back and they didn't get chased off. So that's a rough one for uh, for Sandwich there. He's going to be losing quite a bit. And Norska is just holding on to these objectives. And now you can see Sandwich is getting, you know, he's starting to feel the pressure a little bit on the objective. So I think this is the time where Roflin helms deeps on the top. Like he's going to be breaching a thousand points and he can kind of still hold on to objective two for a while. Zinch obviously is going to get a cap on the other side, most likely. You can see they're kind of pouring their Marauder Horseman on to try and cap this. And also got Spawn coming over, a couple different units like this. But good micro from Sandwich. He's basically parking all these units on the point, And I think he's barely going to get it. But yeah, this is this is the time for the, the Horn of Helm Hammerhand to sound once more in the deep. These Berserkers are trading very well. Very, very well. And the Condomables here also tearing through quite a bit. They were able to get those Screamers down. I don't really like the Harmonic Convergence usage. I feel like just spamming Blue Fire is objectively better for your Winds of Magic. But... I don't know. Good workout. So Marauder Champion's on their way up to fight the Forsaken. No reinforcements coming here. So Forsaken will crush Marauders pretty well. Side objective zone by Zinch. Currently, we look at the points. Roflin down by about 2,000 value, which is uh, even more stark. But I mean, Zinch is kind of getting pushed back a little bit. They still have their big chicken. A beautiful Zinch army ability is going to be hitting all those units. Zinch really needs to get this hot top objective, though. This is big. And we do get some Skin Wolves coming up here as well. So here they come. So the Skin Wolves pushing up and going to be going after Yield Forsaken. Here they come. Somebody in chat asking about things I've noticed. Uh, Marauder Horsemen aren't as broken as they were before. So that's good. That's that's a, a really big positive. Forsaken have terrible melee defense, though. It's only 20. The Corn ones have like 16. So this is this is Helm's Deep time. If you're Norska, you're sending every single asset you have, I think, to the top here. Although it looks like he's trying to hunker down in the middle, which is fine as well. I guess he hasn't been bullied so hard that he's going to be like forced to run. It looks like another blue fire going down. Onto that Bale Fiend right there, and it looks like the Bale Fiend doesn't end up dying. So the, the Lord of Norska has fallen, which you can see on the leadership. Yeah, their Lord... Oh, maybe the Lord is one of the Marauder Champion units. I'm looking at his leadership right now. Those are of Zeej. So let's look at these Marauder Horsemen and see if the penalty's in effect. So the Lord... Okay, it looks like the Lord was actually a different unit, so it should be okay. Marauders and the Champions battling against these bad boys. All the Marauder Horsemen of Sandwich are being pushed back. Roflin is actually maybe getting back in this game a little bit. Despite the value discrepancy, it looks like he's pulled it back. Now, this, this kind of often happens with Siege games. Like, in the beginning, they'll be really nasty with their Magic Spam and their Marauder Horsemen. But then when they run out of ammo and their Winds of Magic starts to kind of get, like, a little bit wrecked and run out, then, like, you'll see other factions start to creep back in value. That's kind of, like, one of the paradigms of Siege. And I think Roflin has just secured the game. It looks like he's gotten the side objective, which is going to be too hard for Siege to get all three of them. The score is currently, you know, 1276, and, I mean, Zinch is nowhere near winning. So Norska would even have a little bit of time to try and get an objective back. But up here, we do see the Forsaken. Maybe they get this one. This is certainly a really, really nice play. The middle is being threatened by Zinch. The top being threatened by Zinch. But the Horsemen of, uh, of Roflin have secured the bottom. So maybe he's going to be able to Helm's Deep there. Looks like the Changer will get this point, though. It's going to be a, actually a potentially tight game. We'll see if Norska can hold on here. Is Norska even playing the top? No. Okay. Maybe Sandwich is in this one. This is going to be really, really tight. Really, really tight here. It's just Marauder Horseman and a couple tattered units, some champions. Norska needs to just get everything it can to this point now. I don't think Norska is going to be able to secure the top, and that was the problem. I think a little bit of a misplay by Roflin, not playing the top objective. Because um, it's so easy to choke point Zinch on the hill and keep them from getting it. Whereas Zinch can easily just like swarm across onto this point here, right? Some Marauder Champions holding on for dear life. Guys, we got like 100 points. We got 100 points left. We got about, man, this is going to be so close. Marauder Horse Masters coming into fight. They're obviously going to push and uh, battle the Zichian Horsemen here. Should be able to win in combat against those two Horsemen units. One single Marauder Horseman coming in. Roflin just going to get these units on the point to try and delay the capture for as long as possible. Guys, this game is getting really, really close. Getting super tight. Marauder Horseman to the back battling here. And we do see ye old horse masters jumping onto this bad boy. Forsaken losing the capture weight. Roflin takes the capture weight back, guys. He only needs to hold a little bit longer. About 20 seconds, give or take. Zinch is making its way over to the side point, but Roflin blocking with the Marauder Horseman. Oh, man. This is really, really close. This is so close. But I think at the end of the day, Norska's going to get this one. Yep. Another five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. Victory for Norska. GG, well played. Dude, that was a great match. That one had me like thinking each guy was going to win at one point. But Norska held on, dude. But Zinch, you know, let that happen. Zinch did not con contest the objectives. There's there's a lot of people who like to play that way. It's risky, but I personally don't. It's, it's a little bit too stressful for me. GG, well played. The changer has spoken. Wow, what a great game. Weird spawn coming out. Who's this lord, by the way? The lord was Kairos? Wait, Kairos? Yeah, Kairos is on the field. Okay. Norska's lord was a warhound? Oh, I think he unsummoned it. Okay, to avoid you being sniped, which is pretty smart. Yep, you can see the rest of the Norskan army. 
Trust me, no, David, that game was close as hell. Because if, if with the value lead, if Zinch ca- captures him there, he's not, the game's over. It was actually very close. <clears throat> so, that is going to be a 2 1 victory for Roflin, who will be moving on. The good boys have won this day, aka the Frost Dogs. And uh, let's see what lobbies we got. So, I'm going to go ahead and refresh this a little bit, and we'll find another lobby. Yeah, wins and losses are feeding into Total Tavern, yes. Correct. Okay. So, I don't see any round three games yet. Platypus is playing one right now. We could cast Platypus's games. All right, one sec here. All right, uh, let's find out. One second here. Got a lot of round two games going, some round three games. Progress is being made. We're making yeah, this is tournaments moving along. It's good. Ulrich Rall versus Blood Penguin on the top could be a very fun game. And so he's already in a match. Let me see if Ulrich started his. And he is playing against, I think, Blood Penguin on the top, who's actually an Empire player, I think. Let's see if we can cast that series. We'll give it a good old college try. And yes, in the meantime, we could look at the ROR's. I know we were looking at those a little bit, so we'll go look at those bad boys. So skirmish versus AI. So Zinch has the new big chicken, <clears throat> the Golden Griffin of Theurgy. So this thing has what ninety armor? Nah, eh, it's okay. I don't know how much I I like it. I don't know, maybe maybe someone will give it a try. There's so much unexplored meta though. This guy is definitely exciting. The dreaded Uncle for Uncle. Yeah, he's got pretty good stats. He's got the Defiling Deluge. So it heals 0.8% of his HP for 6 seconds. So it's not like a huge heal. We'll have to, I'd actually be interested in testing out his damage. Let's do that. So we'll just get him in here and uh, we'll, we'll send some uh, State Troopers against him here. See how that goes. Let me just make sure the players aren't ready. I want him to be good. Okay. Oh, perfect. So we have a match to cast. Uh, yes. Code, please. Okay. They just got into the lobby. And outstanding. So after this game, we'll come back and we'll test the uncle if we have a little bit of downtime. But obviously, you don't want to miss a, a quality series here. That's that's the important thing. All right. So this is going to be Alvaro Corral, a top 16 player from last season. Blood Penguin was a very strong player as well. I think Blood Penguin made it pretty far in some tournaments with the Empire, so that'll be pretty fun to see. And uh, let's see what maps we got. The new Terracotta Sentinel ROR is very good, is it? Yeah, it's exciting. Valnir, oh, you think it's bugged? Interesting. We'll have to take a look at that. I'll have to take a look at that. All right, let's reset scorecards, guys. We got another best of three in today's tournament. It is going to be Roflin versus Sandwich. Not Sandwich, excuse me. I'll recrawl. Wait, why is my brain just out? Okay, it's Plague Penguin. Plague Penguin? He goes by Blood Penguin and Plague Penguin, so he's, he goes by many names. Alric Rawl, there you go. And uh, let's make their names fit. Best of three series, every match in today's tournament is best of three. And uh, yeah, that's the tale of the tape, man. That's the tale of the tape. The new Sentinel one-shots Bombers, dude, that's so exciting. Plague Penguin beat you with Kislev. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So Graveyard of Eltorf is going to be the map. I would love to see some really good Kislev play. Alric Rall is a scary player. Alric, uh, Alric is a Zinch main, I know. Like last season, he almost always played Zinch. That was kind of one of his favorites. So I would wager we'll probably see some Zinch back. I would wager. Yeah. None of the new RORs have seen, been seen yet. Um, Kislev, yeah. We had a Kislev vs. Dwarf game, but you're not going to bring an Elemental Bear against Dwarves. We also haven't had a Nurgle game. Corn got played, but we, although, guys, we can't complain about Corn. We got to see Red Olgor win a game. That was a badass game. That was a really badass game. An ROR Nurgling unit would be really fun, I think. You know what I wanted as an ROR Nurgling unit? A Nurgling that doubles as a bloated corpse. So it's a Nurgling that you can, and I'm not talking the crappy infested Nurglings that Kugath has. Like, you get a Nurgling unit, and you can press a button, and it does, like, bloated corpse damage when it explodes. So, like, a 450 gold Nurgling instead of 350? 
maybe 500, but it, it's a, even if it has a low model count, it still does like a bunch of damage. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah, like I, I always thought that'd be a neat idea. It'd be, it'd be really fun to actually design RORs. That'd be really fun. The ROR Sentinel can finally make Rattling Gunners lore accurate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, isn't that true? Yeah, I like cheaper ROR's, and you do see that, like with the Empire. Like, let's think about this. So the best ROR unit for the Empire, uh, probably like Sigmar Sun, Silver Bullet, Sunmaker. It's like, you know, there's there's some variants there. Sunmaker is very good, but for the longest time, Sigmar Suns were always like a big staple. Like a lower tier ROR unit. But some factions have really good high-end ROR. It's like the Wood Elves for a long time were using the uh, Lost Sylvan Knights. They were a very popular pick. So, is this actually a Beastman versus Bretonia game? Let's see. All right, let's see. Talk soon. Outstanding. All right. Nerglings are pretty quick. They have 30 something speed. Silver Bullets are really good, but Sunmaker has been more meta defining in Warhammer 3 for sure. Yeah. A super speed bloated corpse. Like, yeah, they just like. They could shoot like a bloated corpse out of Queen Bess or something. Yeah. That would be something. I bet you YouTube like listens to me say that and they're just like, oh my god, this guy's talking about some dark shit on his channel. Uh, Bubba's Big Blast. Cairo, so much death. What can birds do against such reckless malice? I know. Yeah. Thank you, Bubba. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Sigmar Suns are the Empire front line. I know they really are. Flagellants are good too, though. I like flagellants. Like they don't win a lot of fights. Yeah, they win some, I guess, but typically they trade down. But they they still they hold for you, which is the most important thing. That's why I often use those or spearmen with shields for the Empire. Are pretty good because they have like I think almost forty melee defense or something. It's like thirty eight, forty something. So that that's pretty good for like a frontliner for the Empire. Yeah, it's not great, but you know. Can't win everything. So I legit think we have a Bretonia versus Beastman match on the Graveyard of Altdorf, which is uh, an awesome map. Let's take a look here. Uh, one sec. Checking the builds. I think they're still doing picks and bans, actually, because they haven't started doing their armies yet. So yeah, so we have a little bit of time. We have a little bit of time. If, if you play 2v2 with Clan Eshin, yeah, you could use the, you could make a Bloated Corpse Invisible, right? You could cast spells on it, like with certain types of allies. That would actually be really cool. The dreaded sneaky bloats of doom. Okay, maybe Plague Penguin's on High Elves. Ooh. Has Plague, Pen has Plague Penguin been the High Elf Chad today who's been buffing up the High Elf win rate? Let's go look at the stats. I know the stats don't mean a lot, of, mean a whole lot on the first day, but it's still kind of fun to see. Still kind of... Oh, Ogre Kingdoms. You guys ready for this? You want to see the best faction in Total War Warhammer? It's the Ogre Kingdoms. Look at that. Number one. Number one Ogre Kingdoms in all of our hearts. Uh, Warriors of Chaos, number two. I can't believe people are not globally banning Warriors of Chaos. Like, who would just actually let them in? They're not banned from the tournament today, but, like, you have three global bans per player. And somehow, people are allowing Warriors of Chaos to be played. Like, that's just asking for a loss. Like, who, who are, the, who are these, these mad, mad, mad people here? Yeah, man. Slanesh, too. Slanesh needs to be karate chubs. Zinch has taken a couple L's. They lost to Norska, lost to Dark Elves. Yeah, we saw that. Dwarves with a solid anchor in the middle at 50-50. And uh, yeah, we're starting to see some stats change. Empire down in the pits. Apparently they're not using enough wind wagons. And uh, yeah, we'll figure it all out. Empire has become very predictable though. That's the only thing about them. Like People people know that you're just going to have Sunmaker and wagons now. Because it's that's the one downside of the Sons of Sigmar. Uh, Norska versus High Elves it looks like. I think it's going to be the final match. Let me just check. I don't want to spoil their builds. Yep. It is Norska versus the High Elves. And Graveyard of Altdorf is a pretty darn big map, so mobility is pretty important here. Abishak, 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 I think I said it right. Thank you for the 20. I know someone named Abishak in real life. Eh. IRL. Maybe they wanted to play them. Yeah, like both players would want to play them though, because each person has three global bands. Yeah. I'd kill for lead belchers with snipe. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Warriors of Chaos are just broken, yeah. They, dude, they have so much stuff. But, like, obviously, they're just abusing Hellstriders, which are just absurdly broken. They, they basically didn't even get nerfed. 50 gold is so insignificant for, like, a unit like that that you bring four of. Yeah, it's just... Oh, my God. Oh, uh, no. The, it's not the Crumbling. The Tomb Kings, there's a healing... A bug with uh, resurrecting models right now, so that's why they're not being played. What High Elf Lord do you bring here? Oh, there's a bunch. You can go Tyrion... 
you could go Imric. You could go Lariel. You could go with an Archmage. Those are probably the, like the four viable options, I think, here. Yeah, those are probably the ones that I would go for. Imric isn't bad, though. He could definitely do some work. Um, Tyrion isn't terrible. You know, he can outduel Wolfric. He can kill Throg. Uh, he does have Sunfang to kill, like, Berserkers, which isn't bad. There's, there's a whole bunch of choices. Oh, my God. Nurgle. There's, like, a cursed Nurgle fly that's been harassing me this entire stream. It's driving me nuts. All right, guys. I'm going to go refill my water. I'll be right back. We'll start and uh, enjoy the, the hype trailer in the meantime. More Lord of Death, keep our souls, lest they fall prey to him. Almost choked on a meatball. Oh god. <laughs> so I don't know who Plague Penguin will be. Emmerich has been pretty popular. I mean the Vuvuzela is very good. The Dragon Horn, which buffs your entire army across the map, is pretty insane. You get that going. Drop some uh drop some big AoE buffs on a large map where you can't normally buff things on the other side. I mean that's very good. That's very, very good. Alright, looks like Ulrich is ready. I would imagine the dreaded penguin will be ready soon. We have so many of those types of names in, like on high-level players, right? We have like a platypus, we have a houseplant, we have a penguin. There's so many people with names like that that are also happen to be very, very good at the game, which is pretty hilarious. Yeah, Emmerich's not bad. He's been making he's been making some waves. It's not that he got buffed, but I think his his like what he does is more conducive to domination. Yeah, he's constantly getting like support, doesn't get isolated. Yeah, it's cool stuff. So a couple more games, and then we get to the semifinals. A couple more rounds, I should say. Bottom side's moving quite a bit slower, so hopefully those gentlemen will get that party started. Platypus been tearing through his opponents on the bottom. We have Stingers, we have Roflin, and the dreaded Thundernut battling. We will see how that goes. The Dokesen battling the House Cat of War right now. And there's another one, like House Cat of War, right? Hey, look at that! It's Imric with a uh, Silver and Guard, Lothar and Seaguard build, and uh, some Spears. That's pretty cool. Looks like Norska has made his rounds, and uh, or the Norskin build that Roflin used has made uh, made its rounds. That build is almost identical to what we saw last game. Very interesting from Norska. But they do have a uh, do have a Balefiend caster, a couple of Marauder champions, horsemen, and armored skin wolves. Now the armored skin wolves are very cool because obviously the armor against Silverhelms and Reavers makes them much more durable. Whereas like regular skin wolves, if they take charges from Dragon Princes, Silverhelms, Reavers. They actually get wrecked a little bit. There was kind of the same theory with the Empire where you would basically... Get out, get out of here. Oh, the fly landed on my microphone. God, man. I can't get it either, dude. I was like a good 20 minutes before the stream. I was like trying to hunt this thing. I was like, that's how I know I'm getting old. I just can't catch the flies. This one's like frenzying right now too. It gave me some peace in the earlier games, but now it's just like, it's just no mercy. Yeah, Silver and a great against Norska. Yeah, high armor, high melee defense. They can hold back the, the Marauder Hordes. It's kind of like the Spartans in 300, just the shield wall interlocked with the spears. Yeah, we'll see what they could do. So, the map, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the Graveyard of Altdorf, one of our new maps. We have an objective in the middle with a kind of a forest area where you can fight. And uh, on the far side, of course, you have uh, you have two objectives on the open. So, I don't know why the fly is like, att the fly is like attacking the microphone straight up. It's probably because Nurgle's just losing all of its game, so Nurgle's sending its agent to uh, to get us. Like, I want to swat it, but if I swat it, it's going to get all you guys in the ears because it's on the microphone. Get out of here, dude. Jeez. Oh, cursed beast. <laughs> the foul beast. Yeah, dude, I definitely am getting stat debuff. God, man. Look at this thing. Jeez, it's so hard to focus. All right, guys. Got to buckle down and accept Nurgle's blessings. Silver and guard in the front. 
high melee defense, which isn't even at its peak right now, because when the battle actually starts, their melee defense is going to be 54, which is pretty nuts. So front line of those bad boys. We got Lothar and Seagard in the back with some spears. Up in the sky, it's going to be the Great Lord of Dragons, and you don't bring a big non-healing dragon character without Lore of Life, so that is going to be that. Let it sit on the microphone. No, if I do that, it's, it's I'd have to swat it, and it would like get the microphone, yeah. ROR flies beating. It's true. I'm getting wrecked. I'm getting wrecked so bad today, dude. I, I just felt like an old man. I was like, I, I feel like if I was like 18, I would catch this thing so easy. I would swat it. Oh, it is what it is. Now for the Norskin hordes, we got champions, champions. We got some armored condom wolves in the back. Like I said, I explained why they're good. 70 armor mitigates much of the damage of reavers and silver helms and dragon princes. So that is going to be quite nice indeed. Love this map. I've had some really good games on it. Uh, the middle object is very important. It's kind of cool because direct fire artillery can't quite shoot in here. It can cover the side objectives though. If you have like a cannon here, you can hit three and you can hit one, but you just are not able to really contest the middle as much. So there, this actually map opens up a lot of uh, cool tactics for sure. A lot of little skirmish fights on the sides, all those different things. So we'll see what happens. Imric is on his way over. He is looking for blood, probably breath attacks. If Norska doesn't have any mass, he can fly in and just kind of attack whatever he wants. I mean, Imric will kill a Bale Fiend very quickly. Uh, as far as items, Dragonhorn, Lord of Dragons, very standard. Most people don't bring the Star Lance, even though it's very cool. Activated, activate buff items unless they're really egregious, like the Witstealer Sword or something like that usually aren't brought. It's funny because most people here probably don't even know what the Witstealer Sword does because Slanesh just like never gets played. It's such a shame. They're such cool factions. Like Tomb Kings and Slanesh just like not being playable. It's like, ah, uh, like Tomb Kings aesthetically speaking are one of my favorite factions. Now, how is the side objective going to be played? Ooh, look at this. Plague Penguin, gotta be coming in, baby, with the Illyrian Reaver Archers, which I believe also got a cost reduction. And they, with 140 range, should heavily outskirmish Marauder Horsemen. And since Marauder Horsemen <clears throat> got changed, in that they don't actually fight double attack and melee now, I think Illyrian Reaver Archers could actually probably beat Marauder Horsemen. Horse Masters? Let's see. Yeah, they would beat Marauder Horsemen in melee or Horse Masters. They just have better stats. 5,500 HP against 58, so it's pretty close. I think that could work pretty well for sure. It's the dreaded Norskin Warhound General, I know, I saw. He's just gonna unsummon it. I guess that High Elves can be a sniping faction, so he's just trying to mitigate that penalty across his army. Kind of an interesting tactic. Although, Wolfric is good in this matchup, he's really good. Like, Horse Rick on a horse, just like evading Imric and using Seafang on static archer positions and like trying to goon the caster and all that stuff, I think would be really cool. We see Alric Rawl moving over here, so he's got his contingent of Marauders on the side point, Marauder Great Weapons. Nothing that like a fat Dragon Prince could handle, right? If you just got like a big Dragon Prince to run these guys down, it would be very, very good indeed. Do you think we will get a tabletop a Tomb King's army in the old world? Yeah, I think it could happen. <clears throat> they split the, in the little art teaser they put up. I, I think we could get some new Tomb Kings. I do. Like I feel like what's going to happen with the old world and tabletop is they'll release a couple armies, and if it sells well, they'll commit more. If it doesn't sell well, they'll probably just be like, use your old armies. Have fun. So we'll have to see how it goes. I, I have hope. I have hope because I'm super excited for it. So, you know, choosing to believe here. Double cap for the High Elves. Norska being very conservative, trying to get some Berserkers up, and we do get the Beast of Tashnar mobilizing as well. Norska going to be going for an Envelop, right? So, dude, this is like the 13th warrior when they, like, emerge from the from the mountains in the forest. So, Norska, look how cool this map is. And then coming for an ambush around here, like all these different angles with which you can press, I think that's really, really fun for sure. So Imric, the Lord of Dragons, is up in the sky, going to be eyeing these units. Spearmen trying to screen, so you can see the Silver and Guard are kind of eyeing down the Marauder Grey Weapons. <clears throat> the Marauder Grey Weapons are a really nice choice. I like that quite a bit. Like a very cheap armor-piercing unit that can actually trade upwards into Silver and Guard has got to feel good. If you're Plague Penguin, what you have to do is you have to get your Lothar and Sea Guard, and you have to just hammer the Grey Weapons. You have to absolutely hammer the Grey Weapons super, super hard. So shot through the heart. These Ice Worm Marauders getting uh, tapped by the Lothar and Sea Guard, and I uh, would imagine they'll switch fire onto the Great Weapons. We'll have to see how on top of things Plague Penguin is here. On the side, we do get some Reavers coming out. Silver Helms, Reaver Archers, so it looks like it's Silver Helms. Silver Helms will be good against basic Marauders, but Armored Skin Wolves will give them the dirty, but not if Hemrick's there. Hemrick can certainly help. Pit of Shades, very, very good against Elves. They tend to sit in these very tight formations, and it looks like a partial dodge? No, it's a pretty square hit. Those Lothar and Sea Guard are going to get wrecked pretty good. And Ulrich Rawl does move up in the middle. We do have the Silver and Guard moving into fight. Now going to be battling against Marauders as Marauder Champions get into the back line. This is, this is where Emmerich probably wants to come. Just tear apart these Marauder Champions because, you know, having them chase Lothar and Sea Guard feels pretty bad for sure. And yep, High Elves do yield the middle objective. High Elves could also try and play the sides if they want to. We do see the Spearmen fighting here and the Lothar and Sea Guard continuing to shoot into the Marauder Horsemen. 
the fly has landed on the microphone again. He, he's tempting me to swat it. Oh, man, get out of here. What's going to happen is I'm going to swat it and break my microphone. Then it's just going to be, then Nurgle will truly have curse man. We'll truly have one, which is wild. Now, big envelopment from Norska. They're going to be circling the army. You can see here on the bushes, we do have the condom wolves getting into the backfield, trying to shut down the reaver archers. And we see the uh, Lothern Sea Guard giving some decent shots into the Skin Wolves, but these are armored Skin Wolves, so they're going to mitigate much of that archer damage. Imric attacking the Marauder Champions. And we do see the Silver Helms coming in to help, but fighting in the forest will penalize monsters as well as cavalry, so it's going to be a very, very good trade for those Marauder Champions. And Ulrich Rawl with good control, getting his Marauder Horsemen in position to kind of throw at Imric. I don't think we've heard the Vuvuzela quite yet. Clap it instead of swatting. Also, move your hands close very slowly, aim your clap. Ah, I feel like I'm going to miss. I'll, I'll give it a try, though, for you, brother. I'll give it a try. In the backfield, Dragon Princes versus Armored Skin Wolves and Beasts of Tashnar. A terrible trade for the Dragon Princes. And here we do see some Silver Helms finally cleaning up Marauders that did overextend. But these uh, Dragon Princes need some milk. They need a little bit of support. Like these Reavers need to be up a little bit closer and shooting. I mean, they're kind of shooting, but the damage output's pretty lackluster. I do like the idea of pulling Emmerich over here. I think Emmerich could trade pretty well into these units. We'll have to see. Dragon Princes trying to pull back. And uh, Lord of Dragons active on the Skin Wolves. Now this is what I'm talking about. A big... Fire damage dragon against skin wolves. Very cost effective. Skin wolves are weak to fire. They have a regenerating unit, so they are weak to fire. And Emmerich's able to probably pick a couple of those guys off, or at least send them running and get a little bit of HP damage. So, <clears throat> high elves, behind by only about 300 on value. So, value trading's very even. What I would love to see is a, a reaver to go take that side point. Norsk is not defending the side point, so you could take advantage of your superior mobility and uh, you know get that party started for sure. Lord of Dragons, though, still dancing, still partying, able to pick off any of these Skin Wolves. The Hyle Forces in the front, kind of left to their own devices. They didn't really have a whole lot of support, so the Norskin's probably going to kind of tear them to shreds a little bit. You can see eventually the Marauders are going to get through them. Horsemen getting into melee, and that sure as hell kind of looks like they were throwing in melee, those Horsemen. Although, I think they're trying to run through. Yeah, they're, they're running through, so I think as long as they're not like committed to a melee attack, they still kind of throw a little bit. We'll have to see. So, Imric still attacking. Pit of Shades attempt coming down from our boy Alric Rawl. And that is going to be missing against those Lothern Sea Guard here in the backfield. It seems like Norska may have overextended a little bit. Some of the units getting routed off, including the Beast of Tashnar and these Marauder Champions <clears throat> could be enveloped. Although, honestly, these Marauder Champions are so far away from the objective, you probably just ignore them at this point. And look at this. Some Spearmen trying to be, get real cheeky and move over to defend the side point. Yeah, so they fled the middle, but Berserkers will cut them to shreds. They're going to have to get some Lothern Sea Guard there to help, like some Lothern boys over here. Something. Otherwise, those Berserkers are going to get a triple cap. Now, Imric, the Lord of Dragons. Still causing some drama. Able to kind of throw it, get in there and uh, go fisticuffs with some of the chaff units, although I guess him fighting chaff isn't necessarily effective. Silver Helms, afflicted by the, not afflicted, but buffed by the uh, dra Dragon Helm. Going to be getting melee attack as well as fear. They get a nice charge into the Skin Wolves there, and uh, those Skin Wolves are having a terrible time for sure. I really love that Imric is like a viable pick and competitive now. It just like shows that in many ways this, that we have our problems in the game. Like, I, I would say in Warhammer 3 and Domination in general, there's a lot more things that are viable compared to, like, Land Battle, where it was a very kind of set and stagnant meta. I'd be curious about what the Land Battle meta is like. I'll have to talk to Human Boy about that. Now, on the other side, Reavers are here being attacked by Maws of Savagery. I really like the cheeky cap on the side by Plague Penguin. I think this is great. It forced Ulrich Rawl to send a much more expensive unit to try and stop you. And now with proper micro, though, Plague Penguin just runs away. He just cackles. So you're just like, I'm the gingerbread man. You're not going to catch me. But if Plague Penguin just lets these Reavers get caught by these much slower units, I mean, that's a pretty big disaster here. So obviously he's very taxed and stressed out in these other fights. But yeah, losing a Reaver unit. Yeah, it looks like he's going to get it. He only loses like 14 models. So not the end of the world. And Imric is kind of bunker busting here in the front. There is Earth Blood. There's no regrowth, though. And yeah, he's, he's kicking this Manticore's butt, man. The Elves are trying to keep that value close. Imric taking a lot of Javelins to the face. But he does have that kind of Malachith situation where, like, even if you value against him, but if you don't kill him, like, he's still going to be a big problem, right? Terror route going down. You can see the Skin Wolves that were sent in to fight him are instantly Terror routed. Spear is still holding. High Elves able to kind of secure their side point by using what? Spearmen and it looks like some Silver Helms cleared out those Berserkers. The big Reaver core of the Plague Penguin going to be coming back into the middle. So nice High Elf skirmishing. Side objective almost taken. And it looks like the Maws of Savagery. See, this is where you go now. Now you just go take that. A big expensive unit can't be everywhere at once. He, he needs to get this objective. Plague Penguin needs to grab that. Like, that's big, big turbo important right there. So Horsemen getting into melee. And these are no mere Horsemen. These are the Marauder Horsemen throwing axes. So they have uh, moved in and uh, I would imagine will be attacking the big dragon in melee. Probably want to use their throwing weapons instead. Well, so they're in melee now. Let's watch them. So it does not look like they're using their throwing weapons in melee, which is good. Because in the previous patch, they would have thrown their melee attacks and they would have, like, just messed up Emmerich super badly. But the High Elves are kind of scrapping back despite the value discrepancy because a lot of that is tied into your boy here. 
And it looks like he's kind of not getting the side point. Okay, he's got some Reavers coming over. And Reavers did get a cost reduction. So High Elves, really, really, like many of the units on the battlefield, you're, you're feeling the buffs they got, right? You're seeing and feeling said buffs in action. So if Imric can win this fight, maybe kill this pit caster and survive the Maws of Savagery, there could be some hope for the High Elves here. But it's a very precarious situation. Maws of Savagery are anti-large and armor-piercing skin wolves, so they're going to be pretty good against Imric. Although the High Elves do have a lot of Reavers around. The Reavers seem to be trading excellent. Look at this. Dragonhorn, 56 melee attack Reavers. Beautiful charge into Marauder Horseman. Marauder Horseman defeated Reavers in the previous patch because of the bug. And now Reavers should win that fight. So that's like a big, big differentiating factor, right? And Imrek is actually getting pretty deep and, and taking down these Maws of Savagery here. He should probably just stay the course and fight. I don't know about the healing situation. It looks like he's got some Lothern Sea Guard. The side objective was stolen, so Reavers have taken that one. This map allows for a lot of that kind of play. What I would probably do if I were Plague Penguin right now is I would pull back from this fight now that you have the side objective and i would just start like trying to pick apart norska as they try and get the side objectives back and just hold the two points right i think that's the way but Ulrich knows that that's probably a, like a possibility and he's got his big goon squad going after emrick emrick's getting throwing axes hit they're getting in there skin wolves also doing a bunch of damage manticore in the back going to be attacking some of the reavers will emrick be saved that is the question he's broken into being chased but high elves should have some mobility here to save him i mean i man they're really beat up high elves need to do some housekeeping and unsummon some of these units maybe well, I don't know. Looks like he's in good shape. Imric on the run, being chased down. Ulrich's going to have to commit to that one. That is for darn sure. Over here, we do have the Reaver Cav battling the Beast of Tashnar. And these are the Reaver Archers. They're not quite as good in melee. Still not slouches. Might be able to defeat the Beast of Tashnar, considering the numbers advantage. And there's also some basic Reavers here. So uh, we'll see how that all unfolds. Now, over here, Imric being chased through the forest. Also being healed. They're going to need some big Cav. Plague, Plague Penguin is saving up. This is a, a little bit interesting. I don't know what he's maybe saving up for. So we see... We had 2,300 resources saved. Now we get Silver Helms coming out. Maybe he was looking to get Dragon Princes. He definitely wants to save Emmerich if he can. I mean, Emmerich is still pretty fighty with 2,000 HP here, so saving Emmerich would be a big one, 100%. And look at this. The Elves are trying to jack the objective here with the Reaver Cav at the back. Manscore coming in. These Reavers on the side, I think maybe, yeah, do you leave them there? Do you send them in? Wow, that's a loud motorcycle. Jeez. But it looks like it's going to be kind of camping on that side objective right there. So, in the back, Pit of Shades going down. Pit of Shades very, very nicely cast by Ulrich. Going to be hitting those Silver Helms, which again are not a cheap unit. They cost about 1,000 gold when you bring the Shielded variant. And it looks like the Lord of ja Dragons here did, uh, did get captured. Yeah, so he's down. He is killed. And there's going to be a Dweller's Blow going down. If Ulrich doesn't respond to the Swellers, this could be like a, la a good last laugh from your boy Emric. Because that's going to be hitting a lot of units. It hits the Bale Fiend. It hits the, the Maws of Savagery. That's a pretty good value grab right there. So even though Emric did die... Uh, it looks like he might, because Dweller's Blow does single target damage, and it's just like a busted spell. It's incredibly strong. Yeah, guys, he killed the Bale Fiend, and the Moss of Savagery are also in a little bit of trouble. So Imric did pay the Troll Soul, but the High Elves still do have the side points. I don't know how long they're going to be able to hold on. The game's getting a little bit scary for the Elves. Reaver's battling into Beast of Tashnar. Might be able to get them. Beast of Tashnar holding on, though, and now that these Marauder Horsemen are coming in, the Reavers turn about face and attack the Marauder Horsemen, trying to kindle that charge bonus there, but probably going to be hammered. And the elves seem like they're kind of running out of steam a little bit. Granted, there are some silver and guard moving up into the middle. On the side point, looks like Norska might be able to get their teeth on that objective. And the Mage of Life has hidden in the bushes with some cav routed on the back of the map. High elves don't seem like they have a whole lot, though. It's going to be tough. Silver and guard, I do like that. Like, the Marauder Horsemen here aren't going to be super good against those. Uh, somebody in chat asking what round this is. I believe this is round three or four in the tournament, so... Tonight's tournament's all best of three, so it's a little bit of a longer format. But as long as it's single elimination, it doesn't go that long, so... We're doing good. We're having a great time. Silverins moving on up. Silver Helms coming in for the kill. Reavers, Hiles might be able to resecure the middle objective. They haven't quite been able to pass Norska in terms of value yet. We do see the Mage of Life and some Illyrian Reaver archers coming over to try and contest the side point. And it looks like this one is going to be taken by Norska eventually. Although, honestly, a single Reaver could actually maybe wrestle this point and keep it for the Elves, which would be incredibly powerful. So Silver and Guard have moved up. They will have five capture weight. The Norsk and Marauder horsemen don't want to waste ammunition into their silver shields. And it looks like uh, the Hiles are back with a lot of skirmish cavalry. So we do have the Lothern Sea Guard coming out, as well as the Illyrian Reaver archers. Going to be moving on over to the side point right here and uh, pressing in. I honestly feel like this was pretty evenly matched. If the elves didn't blunder Imric, then maybe they'd be winning. I actually think they might be winning this game right now. Because like Norska doesn't have much on the field. And remember, the elves have healing, which, which kind of counters the value lead a little bit. So... I think, again, if um, Imric had lived, the Elves would probably have won this game. But now it's a very contested game that either player can win for sure. But still, I would say at this point, slightly Norse can favor based on the circumstances we have at hand. Spears in the middle, but Marauder Champions and Bale Fiend of Shadows is uh, resummoned, so Ulrich spending quite a bit to do that. 
This is a masterful play here. I don't know if Ulrich noticed this, but some Reavers came out of the bushes from Plague Penguin, and they routed this unit, and they're going to route the Beast of Tashnar. Man, that's a strong one. So suddenly, the Elves are maintaining a double cap, and Ulrich is so committed to this side. Like, he's got so much here pushing back the Elves. And the Reaver Archer is going to get back. A little bit of a trade here. Lothar and Seaguard shooting into those units, and the Elves have also gotten in the middle. So guys, Ulrich is suddenly in a little bit of danger, all because he didn't see this. All because he didn't see this. The side point is actually saved by the Elves. It's a pretty biggish map, so you got to plan ahead a little bit with your uh, movement. Marauder Champion's going to be moving in. Silver and Guard will hold them back for some time. Obviously, Marauder Champions will win eventually just due to their damage output. Um, they're pretty similar in terms of like functionality and style. But this is going to be scary. Reavers, you know, skirmishing pretty well against Norska. Norska's going to have to collapse in the middle and get that soon. Because the Elves have now a double cap here. It's 11.15 to 11.34. The Elves will be passing them pretty soon. And those Reavers on the sides, beautiful stuff, man. Beautiful getting that point back. And again, Reavers got a cost decrease. So you're kind of seeing that in action a little bit as well. Silver and fighting. Norsk is going to be coming for the middle. And the Elves uh, are going to have to figure it out. Maybe the Elves are going to try a cheeky cap on the side. Ulrich is going to have to leave some Rotters over there. If he leaves that undefended, the Elves might get it. The Elves really, really shining with Reaver play. Also Silver Helms, though. It's not just Reavers. He's using pretty much all the Elvish cavalry. Oh, that one guy got punted by that Manscore. Full on charge into the forest. I understand this. It might seem like a bad idea to charge into all these elite units, but the reason why he's doing it is to keep them away from the objective so he can maintain that for as long as possible and try and get enough points to win on one. And then the High Elves can Helm's Deep on the last point. But Ulrich knows this. He's going to be sending some Rotter Horse and Throwing Axes over here. I think the Elves need to reinforce that if they can, although the resources have got to be getting spread very, very thin right now. That's got to be a very stressful one. Full surround of the Force, though. The Elves actually get a full surround. They hammer. Look at that. Beautiful Elvish play. As the Silver Helms do surround the Marauder Horsemen and all these different units. And those guys are going to get hammered. Yes. So what are these? These are Illyrian Reavers. Looks like the Manticore got busted a little bit. These Silver and Guard are holding on for dear life. But now Capture Weight in the middle. It's going to be going to Norska. So Norska has essentially 10 Capture Weight here against uh, this Caster. Counts as 3 and these Silver and are 5. So it's, it's, it's like, you know, give or take like a uh, value differential of 1 to 2. So it's not going to be a super... Oh my god, look at this! The Elves! Ulrich is being too greedy. He's not guarding his points. And the Elves are just cackling in the deep. Oh my god. Is this going to be another Elvish objective capture? See, this is what's so cool about this map is it like opens up a different play style, right? I love it. So here, they're going to hold on to this point. Ulrich is like a single Marauder unit would have held this point. Now the Skin Wolves are going to move back. Norse going to be grabbing this. And we get more Reaver Archers on the other side. Reaver Archers is going to be engaging against Marauder Horsemen. Chaos players have to get used to the fact that Marauder Horsemen are not as busted as they once were. Normally, Marauder Horsemen would dominate most of these fights, but now they have to fight fair, right? They don't have that stupid double attack bug, so I love seeing it. I love seeing even fights there. So, the Elvish theft on the side objective, it looks like Norska will be able to mitigate this, I think. The Skin Wolves do get back to the point, and it looks like Norska is able to re-secure the side point. Just barely, ladies and gentlemen, just barely. The Marie Archer is going to be occupying them. The question is... Do the Elves have enough to win on uh, on just one point? That's really the deciding factor here. This one's going to be held. The middle is controlled by Norska. This is going to be a razor close game, man. Uh, back objective, it looks like Norska was able to hold on to that one. I think all Rickroll just barely wins this. It's going to be super, super close. I don't know what other tricks and shenanigans the Elves could have, but this has been an amazing game so far. And just, man, I I'm so happy we had that map making contest. It's just, the games are so much better when it's not Black Ark and it's every game. It's like actually seeing different strategies and like, like, aesthetics, it's so much better. It's so much better. Norska going for the kill, though. They're not going to let this leave this down to the numbers. But Norska would win right now, I think. Unless I'm crazy. So, for the Elves to win, yeah, it's going to be... Well, oh, actually, hold on. No, I think the Elves would win on one. Wait. So, it's going to be uh, 30 seconds. Wait, now, how many objectives do they hold? So, the Elves only have one objective, right? So they get one per second, so... Okay, so it'll be about, about uh, 100 seconds there. So, a little bit, a minute, and, you know, something or other, and... Uh, Norska will win in 100 seconds, so in 50 seconds. Okay. Yeah, Norska wins on the two. Norska definitely wins on the two. I don't think the Elves have the time to get anything back. Ulrich is probably sweating bullets right now. He is probably sweating bullets super, super hard. Man, what a game, dude. Look at the score. What a, what a crazy scrap using the Reaver Archer mobility. Norska's going to get it. There's no way the Elves can get this. Norska has finally secured its value lead and is utilizing said value lead to kind of control it. Ulrich has learned his lesson. He's now like holding the points, right? He's like leaving stuff here. He's not making that same mistake he made before. And the elves simply don't have enough time. Well played to the Plague Penguin and to Ulrich. That was a great showcase of the new map and, you know, also the new high elves. 
they were very competitive. Honestly, if Emmerich wasn't blundered, that's a high elf win, easy. So, certainly winnable. All of you high elf fans out there, hold your heads up high. You guys are in a good place. GG well played. Game one, going to Ulrich Rall. There is only defeat. Yes, yes. Love these new maps a lot, even if you only got to play one. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, Undeader, of course, broken, which is great. Always a good time. So, looking at uh, your boy, Emmerich, he didn't quite pay for himself. Spearman, Silverin did good, despite being swarmed. The Reaver Archers were badass. 900 value on that one. And yeah, the basic Reavers, Silver Helms did, wow, 1300. They got summoned a couple times, though, I think. They got summoned a couple times. GG, well played. Great game. That was only game one of the series, too, guys. We got we got more matches. We got more good times tonight. Let's uh, let's have some fun. And that is a victory for our, one of our Season 2 finalists, Ulrich Roll. Clearly very, very good. All right, one sec here. Okay, so just doing a little bit of admin work. So let's go ahead and do you. Where's Roflin? Where is he? There he is. All right, so let's go ahead and drop this gentleman here. His opponent did not show up. Norska says no. I know, truly. Yeah, great stuff. So, Roflin advances. We're rapidly approaching our top four. And let's see what's going to be going down. Okay. Cool. All right, outstanding. I think we're good. No drama. No issues. Perfect. What's not to love? Cheers to the high elves. Sick game. Yeah, that was a really great game. Uh, what's the next map in this series? I think it's back to Black Ark. We're gonna do a bait, like a old map, and then we'll uh, we'll have another new one after that if it goes to game three. So it's Black Ark, and then Glinty Tooth's Crag, and then we have the Crucible, which is gonna be one of my favorites. I'm so excited. The Crucible is the corn map. It's really really fun. So you guys will get to see uh, a heavy brawl, and then Proving Grounds and Itza Gates of Ekrand, Border Low Landing, uh, also in the later rounds. Semis have Road to Vols Anvil, Altdorf Graveyard, and Itza. And then Glinty Tooth's Crag Slush... Oh, wait. Is this my tournament? This doesn't look like my tournament. Uh, we need to change Celestial Lake. Yeah, that needs to be changed out. Okay. So, going to have to edit the maps here. I forgot to change the one to the uh, semifinals. So, we will uh, we'll take care of that when we get there. All in due time. Yeah, Dragon Princes are a weird unit. I always, I always feel like Silverhelm's just like... For a cheaper price point, fin like get the job done in a similar way. Fireborn, of course, have had niche applications, like with Larry, like with healing, heavy healing. But the problem is they can't have their models resurrected. That's why Blood Knights are better, because they can have their models resurrected. So, like, it's not as big of a deal if you just get shot by cannons and stuff. Yeah. Anyone use the Cathay Arwar? Oh, Medley, has, has Celestial Lake been fixed? But the question is, Medley, is it updated in the Mac pack? Did, uh, did Waka... Like, how does that work? Medley, if Celestial Lake is, is good and good to go and Wacka said it's like all set on the map pack, then we can just play it. You let me know. Shoot me a message in Discord and tell me. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be all set. So players will do their picks and bans here and we'll be getting started in a minute. Okay, and all right. Yeah, Blood Knights are very good. Plus, they have Missile Resist, too, which is really nice. High Armor Shields. They have the, the Banner of Blood Keep. Red Keep, I think is what it's called. You use the Cathay ROR. It's pretty neat. I might actually bring the Cathay ROR against, like, Vampire Coast or something. Although, I feel like Animated Hulks are just going to trap it in place and just going to be like sit there for, like, 40 minutes doing nothing. I don't know. I, I do feel like that could be a little bit of a problem. Yeah, same reason you see more Knights of the Realm instead of Grail Knights. Indeed, it's the exact same. Yeah. The reasoning there is, is very similar. So. All right. It's been fixed by. Okay. Great. We had some newer players who had questions, so just answering those. What campaigns have you guys all been playing, by the way? What, like, ha today's patch, didn't it have a lot of, like, positive changes for campaign? Yeah. 
Wait, oh, okay, so he must have had to have dropped or something. Okay, interesting. Rufflin won that one, then he got there. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect, and down on the bottom side, yep. The, the, the top 16 is coming into shape. We're starting to see some familiar faces getting into the later rounds. No surprises there. All right, let's see here. Hundred years against Dark Elves. Are you guys talking about Globe Ears? Oh, they're such a nasty unit. Those things are just so foul. I would like to see some more High Elf play, honestly. I played a Lithanar, the Grim Warden. Orion's campaign is now stupidly fun. What do they change about that, Skaven? Less settlement battles is very good. Okay, do you actually notice that? Like, do you actually feel less settlement battles? Oh, maybe that's what we'll do tomorrow. We'll see. Shroom is like, Empire, hell yeah. Shroom, bro, we have your map coming up. We have the Crucibles getting played today. Yeah, Crucibles coming up in one of the next rounds. Which is going to be very, very fun. Yeah, I know. The, camp the list of campaign changes is pretty serious. But there will be a head-to-head -head campaign coming soon. It we we I was going to do those like every week. And um, yeah, I just never got around to it. I wish I was a vampire in the late 80s and not early 90s. <laughs> Thank you so much for the six bucks. Yo, Turin, glad to see you. Love the streams. Uh, not, not at the moment, no. Just taking it one day at a time. Yeah. Thank you. I do appreciate that. I do appreciate that. In your best vacation spots worldwide? You asked me this last time, actually. Um, dude, I, like, the thing is, I'm not a very traveled person. I'm, I'm, like, more like, like a hobbit. Like, I like my shire, and I like to stay in my shire, so. Yeah, it's like, I really am not, like, literally, I've been to... I've been to most of the state, like many of the United States, I guess, you know, um, but outside of the US, like I've been to Canada and I've been to like, I've been to Europe, I've been to England, uh, Germany and Poland. That's like pretty much like it really. I haven't, I haven't traveled much. I'm really not worldly. <laughs> you don't remember. It's okay, man. Thank you. I'm not a worldly, like a cult, super like uh, traveled person. I love Poland though, honestly. But I'm really biased because I my smoking hot wife is from Poland, and so like I associate I associate all my like every time I go to Poland it reminds me of like you know my wife and I enjoy I like that. But I love Poland, I love it. Like going to uh, yeah going there for the holidays is really fun. But yeah, you know, I've never been to Italy. I haven't, even though I'm, I have a lot of an Italian ancestors. I've never been to Italy. Oh, Kislev for Plague Penguin. We we have a Kislev main. Yes. Okay, cool. Zade says, I haven't played Warhammer as much lately as I used to, but I always enjoy watching your streams. Hey, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for that donation and uh, hoping to get back in the game. Come play, come play some multiplayer with us. Come have some fun. Yeah, I'm really like a Hobbit personality, though. I don't like to, I like to, like, I, I think that's a really apt analogy. Uh, in terms of like traveling, I like to travel like once a year, maybe. And for me, that that's like my trip to, to Rivendell or to, or to Mount Doom, you know? But when I come back, I'm like, dude, I'm done for like a year. Put a fork in me. Like, I don't mind like small road trips, like, like two, three hours, but like big traveling, like flying and stuff. It's, uh, it's also expensive, you know? Like there's a lot of inflation going on. Like groceries are more expensive, like utility, like everything is just getting more expensive in the world. So like traveling is getting harder, you know? Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, Plague Penguin is a really good player. He also plays underdog factions, which makes me, makes me put some big, oh my God, Ogre Kingdoms versus Kislev. Talk dirty. Yes, dude. Yes. This is perfect. For somebody who loves Beastmen, how would you play them against dwarves? Um, so Melonhead, to answer your question, you would need to tell me what map you're on because the Beastmen's playstyle changes massively depending on the map you're on. Beastmen would absolutely annihilate dwarves probably on maps like like uh, like Altar of Graveyard, different things like that. It, it, it's a very map dependent matchup. But if you're on like Itza or like something like that, you're gonna have some problems for sure. All right, one sec here. Very neat. And it uh, looks like we're all set. Cool, cool. Excellent, Anakin. Excellent. But yeah, just let me know what you want to do. US dollars are worth more overseas. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but like things here in the US are also getting more expensive. At least at least where I live. 
I, you know, I love California. It has its problems, obviously, you know, a lot, like every state kind of has its problems to an extent, right? California certainly has some. Um, but the biggest issue I have with California, it's my home. I love it. I live in a small mountain village, which is absolutely beautiful. But the cost of living here in terms of rent and, and real estate is so stupid. It's so stupid. And like my wife and I love it here. Like we want to live here, but like if we want to own a property, it's like probably just not viable here. It's just straight up not. It's just too expensive. So like, that's the thing. It's, it's a tricky one. The ogres are coming to get you. Yeah, I'll get you guys an army of my Warhammer tabletop army soon. Yes. The ogres are going to my house. They are. Look at them, dude. I live in a mountain village. It makes sense the ogres would be here. Hmm. The cost of living is insane. Yeah, it really is gross. The rent is just absurd. Like, we pay such a disgusting amount of rent for what we have. But, you know, we live in a beautiful town, so, like, it, it's... Yeah, the weather's nice year round. Like we almost never need to, you know, deal with rain and snow and things like that. So, although I like rain, rain is kind of charming. All right, guys, it's the battle of the big boys. It is Boris Ursus against the Slaughtermaster of the Great Maw. Oh, dude, this is hype. We got scrap launchers. We got man eaters. We got double little Grom looking to pop some ogres in the face. Got some Zargard, just the most chad of units, backed up by the Kossars of Spears, which are one of the units you really want to spam against Ogre Kingdoms. Oh, dude, this is hype. This is great. Man, I'm really, uh, I'm really happy that I decided to cast this series here. This is going to be really fun. This is going to be really fun. Uh, you know, I've been to Florida as a kid. I, I don't think I could live there because it's too humid. I hate humid weather. Like, sweating is, like, the worst. Like, I don't mind sweating in dry weather because you, you know, like, dry off, but humidity, you just stay, you stay. Like, I, I don't want to live in a humid climate. Yeah, just, just, no thanks. I would happily visit, though. I'm sure, I'm sure it's lovely to visit, but living there, I, I probably wouldn't be interested, so. All right, so, the Plague Penguin's still loading in. The Lord of Kislev, the Red Czar, going to be doing battle with the Ogre Kingdoms. Ogre Kingdoms have good capture weight now, though. They have really, really good capture weight. So each of those bulls has five capture weight and 54 speed. So you have to remember, these guys can bounce around and steal your <laughs> steal your objective. They'll steal your girl. They're going to bounce around and, and steal those objectives. And they're going to love every second of that, which is very, very exciting. Scrap launchers are a good choice, I think, on Black Ark. Because what you can do is you can bounce down here, hide them, and then shoot. And little Grom won't be able to hit you. You could also do the same thing here and shoot over like this if you're being pressured. So there's going, to be, uh, there's going to be some cool stuff there. Dual weapons, obviously, self-explanatory. Good against infantry. Now, looking at the Kistle build, Little Groms are very good against Ogre Kingdoms. They hard counter Iron Blasters, very good against Grap Launchers, can kill Ogre Models, which are big targets. Boris Ursus is a great duelist, obviously. I actually think he's quite underrated. And uh, yeah, Magic Kislev, one of the big weak points about Kislev is their magic. Okay, Boris is giving a speech. I'm sorry to interrupt that. But the Gust of True Flight is okay. Um, and you know, Hailstorm's not the worst. Honestly, Kistle of Magic, in my opinion, is just so subpar. I think against Ogres, I'd probably go Ice, maybe. Try and slow them down and maybe use the Spirit Leech to snipe their characters. It just all feels bad, though. It all feels bad, to be honest. Zargard, Zargard, as well as Kossars with Spears. On the back, we do have Armored Kossars moving up to grab that point. The Ogres are going to get you. I think Ogres could have a new playstyle where they start to, like, bounce between objectives and just steal them all. I think that was my speculation about Ogre Kingdoms prior to the patch, was that... If they had good capture weight, they could just snake objectives like left and right. And they could just cackle the entire time. Ogres aren't really like a cackling faction, though. They're more of like a deep, throaty, kind of bassy laugh. Like a really deep bass in your voice, you know. Slaughtermaster of the Great Ma, he has got Yield, Troll Guts, and uh, the Bone Crusher. Bone Crusher is a very good spell. It's 50% armor piercing, which is enough against Gislev. And uh, it's pretty cheap. Only 10 wom. And it gets the job done, man. Can't complain about that. Ogres are just chilling in the back objective. Ulrich, is he going to yield the objectives initially? It doesn't look like it. The reason why Ulrich is hiding back here is because he's hiding from Little Groms. He doesn't want to eat the Little Grom shots to the face until he has to. So he's he's just kind of hanging out in the back of the map. Here we get some Armored Kossars coming up, a little bit unsupported. And look at that, the Scrap Launcher is launching some scrap. Yeah, nice shot there. And some dodging from uh, Plague Penguin. Plague Penguin summoning out units. What does he summon? It looks like it's going to be more Kossar Spears. So it looks like Kislev is not going to be playing the side objective. I probably wouldn't bother at this point. If I'm Kislev, maybe I just do a straight push, like supported by artillery. 
and go here. I feel like the ogres are coming to get you down here, right? Like you're you're not going to get this objective. These Kistle fights here are going to get absolutely punished. Like these guys are being sent on a new mission. You remember in the Kistle trailer, the the trial by fire when they're like you know brothers and sisters betrayed and abandoned. That's these guys. They just get sent off to just get owned by a bunch of ogres and then you know. And then they turn into corn followers, which is how it goes. Good times. So this objective going to be taken by Kislev, most likely. Plague, Pe Plague Penguin sending a couple units up there. Setting a little bit of a... Oh, I like that. He's kind of using the edge of the map here to uh, to make the ogres take like a more circuitous route. But I think he's going to move up and just take these points. Point. The ogres are coming, though. Both of them are on their way in. You can see little Grom's going to be shooting downtown. Meanwhile, the Patriarch and Boris Ursus is going to be sitting here, stealing the objective from the Noblars, who only have two capture weight. And, uh, yeah, Ogre Bull's coming to get you. These poor, these poor Kossars, they got their pistols drawn, ripping some nice shots. Maybe they'll be able to accrue a little bit of value before they go quietly into the night. And what is being shot? Oh, look at this. Ulrich Rawl actually has an Ogre Hunter. Look at this Chungus. Ogre Hunters are awesome models. They're so awesome. There's actually a guy who hangs out in the downtown of my, my village I live in who looks like this guy. Dresses like him, too. Nice spear right into the face of Boris Ursus. Decent damage. Not insane, but still, you know, significant enough. And it looks like Iron Guts. Ooh, he's got the Armored Boys. But Boris is getting in there. And Boris is an amazing anti-large armor piercing character. So he's going to be able to nibble on these guys. And these Iron Guts are going to be in trouble. The Patriarch also getting down and dirty here. In the meantime, Zargard against Iron Guts. That's going to be a very good fight for the Iron Guts. They are pretty much designed to be a unit like Zargard. Their armor counters the DPS of Zargard. Their great weapons counter the uh, armor of the Zargard. So you guys can kind of get what I'm saying here. Ogres are coming to get you, man. Is it a little bit of lag? Looks like maybe a little bit of lag. It happens every now and then. Some, sometimes players, we haven't had any lag in this series, and then out of the blue, some sort of magic happens, and uh, that's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. So hopefully the lag will subside. Come on, baby. The ogres need to feast. Guys, just pretend like I put it in slow-mo for a second. Yeah. Iron Guts are just such a cool unit, and I like that they actually have applications against Kissel. Like, it feels like they're pretty good here. So Iron Guts beating into the Zargard. Boris Ursus coming back to help with the Patriarch, which is going to be great. Um, looks like there's some sort of magic. Maybe the Shard Blade going down to do a little bit of a AO8. Yep, Shard Blade not that good against Ogres because they have low model counts, but still not the worst. Now, Zargard will defeat Ogre Bull dual weapons, but they'll take some damage in the process. The big Power Fist of the Ogre Kingdom is going to be going down right here. So check that out. Unfortunately, someone pulled the dreaded lag switch. We have players connecting from all over the place. I don't know, I think, I don't know where Plague Penguin lives. I know Ulrich's in Eastern Europe. Um, but I'm not sure about the Plague Penguin. So Salax Lullaby going down, giving some fat heals, and the Iron Guts are finally being buckled down. Kossars of Spears being attacked by the Haggard Noblar Trappers, which are actually picking off some models here. Pretty ridiculous. And we'll see if the Kislevites can hold. Kossavite Dervishes being summoned from reinforcements. Uh, Vanguard Point going to be clearing out the Noblar Trappers. Should be doing pretty well there. And in the backfield, we got two Ogres coming to get you, actually hunting down the little Groms. But at this point, there's uh, Winged Lancers and Winged Lancers back here. So the Winged Lancers of Kislev uh, will absolutely plow Ogre infantry. Like, the Ogres are going to have a really, really bad time if they get charged by the Kislevite cavalry. Now in the back, it looks like the Ogre Bombardment ability goes down, does a little bit of damage. Not bad. Zargard are just such a durable unit, man. Like, even getting hammered early, they're still steady. Their melee defense currently 74 with Boris Ursus. And this Hunter is just getting the business from the Red Zar. So currently, Ogres do have a double cap on Kislev, but Kislev is getting a nice pick here. I mean, if they can kill this Hunter and then maybe have Boris hunt down the Slaughtermaster after that, if possible... That would be very, very good. So a couple of the elite Zargard going to be helping here. And the Hunter uh, looks like Troll Guts. Yeah, not a bad idea. Troll Guts. There's going to be some more Iron Guts coming in. The big armor-piercing boys. As these Zargard on kind of the western flank of the battlefield are... This is a very strange type of lag. I haven't, I haven't like seen this. This is like... It's been a while. One of them definitely has some internet issues going on. I don't think it's me. Because on my stream, my stream software tells me if it's me. It'll be like, hey man, you're dropping frames. Shit's getting south on your internet. But... Uh, we'll hope for the best. We'll hope for the best. Hopefully we can get through this game and uh, you know, not have any light going forward. Power Fist, once again drops. It's going to hit a couple Zargard. going to tickle the pickle there. And look at these little trappers here. These Nalar trappers actually held back the cost of dervishes. Wow. It's impressive. I mean, they have some Ogre support, though. There's also a couple Iron Guts kind of saturated in with those guys. The big Winged Lancer charge. Winged Lancers, I think, are probably your best tool against Ogre Kingdoms. Not against Iron Guts, but against every other Ogre variant and Noblars. They have enough charge bonus at 70 that they can just absolutely crush through these chaff units. They can get in there, do their thing. Somebody in chat with a good question. Why are we not seeing Kislev Chariots? Well, Kislev Chariots are pretty trash against Ogres because Ogres have a big mass, so the Chariots can't push through them, so they just get stuck. The only thing they'd be good against is Noblars, and Noblars aren't really like a significant threat, so... On the bottom side, Noblars are here, holding objective number three. Noblar scrap launchers, chilling on the other side. 
Yeah, dedicated servers would be a power fantasy. That's something that I think most Total War players have power fantasies about. But um, I don't think it's going to happen. You know, the fact we 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 basically have to scrap and beg for features in multiplayer. So I, I like I don't think I don't think there would be anything pertaining to that big like of a change, right? I used to be optimistic about it, but I don't know. I really don't think it would happen. Scrap launchers also have been just shooting this entire game. You can see Ulrich Rawl sitting with the scrap launchers and just getting great pot shots into the winged lancers and other units back here. And now we got, oh my god. How is this allowed to happen? Some man-eaters with great weapons came all the way around the side here. And they somehow found their way to Little Grom. Like, these, o where do these ogres come from? Got a lot of damage here. Winged lancers charged them. They only have 40 armor, but man-eater great weapons are going to definitely go to work on these guys. So little Grom's getting hammered pretty badly. The Red Czar over here still fighting. Uh, Boris Ursus a little bit surrounded, but he still has his Czar Guard retinue. But it looks like Boris was able to get some massive damage onto that Slaughtermaster, the Great Maw. Of course, anti-large armor piercing frostbite makes him a pretty ideal hunter. Puts the Ogre speed down to 38. But you can see the Ogre certainly having no issues holding objectives now. Winged Lancers on the eastern side of the battlefield. They're western side, I guess, technically speaking, but depends on which way you're looking. They're able to get the Saber Chest pack here. And on the other side, the Man-Eater Great Weapons able to just absolutely crush those Winged Lancers. So those, those Chad... Man-eaters are now on the back point, and you know, guys, ogres have good capture weight now. So they can get here, and they can steal objectives from you. It's not like the days of old where you'd be like, oh, those three ogre units can't outcap my one infantry. I'm good. No, times are changing. Winged lancers with a big charge into the ogres. The great maw is indeed hungry. But so too are the lances of Orson as they get a nice charge here. And how's, uh, how's our boy doing back here? Pretty good. Zargard might actually be able to steal the back objective. Boris Ursus. Uh, did not get the Slaughtermaster. I wonder if he's going to go after him. The Slaughtermaster is actually an open field. Probably you take Boris right now and go for it. Although Boris does have three capture weight. The Patriarch has three capture weight, and so too do the Zargard here. So you might be able to just steal this Ogre objective. We'll see how quickly they respond. Some of the Ogres are overextended as well, and we can see the Kissel of Cavalry doing a very good job. The Maneater Great Weapons, where do they go? Here they went. So it looks like they're just beating down some of the poor winged Lancers right here. So those guys are getting wrecked pretty good. And check it out. Kissel might be able to steal the back objective, but it's only going to be a temporary thing, really. Uh, we do see double Ogre Bull coming in, so that's going to be 10 capture weight against the 3, 6, and then 5, minus some because of the damage. So uh, that's easily going to be an uh, ca uh, objective capture for the Ogre Kingdoms. Kislev does take it, though, and, you know, every point matters in these close games, right? We can see a game coming down to a couple points, and Kislev getting, you know, 10, 20, 30 seconds worth of points off that objective could be the deciding factor. Little Groms are getting hunted down. Honestly, they've been struggling a little bit this game. Nice Kossar play, but Scrap Launcher is still generating good value back here, shooting into the Kossars. So that's going down. And the Maneater Great Weapons are going to be getting ye old troll guts. And that's got to feel good for those big boys as they're a relatively squishy unit. Is Boris going to fight the Maneaters? There's only seven of them, so Boris can certainly fight. He does use the Fury of Orson, which is going to be rampaging him, but he does make him a little bit more of a, a you know, serious fighter. Should be able to kill these Maneaters. Only five models. I think Boris is going to be able to handle them. And Kislev looks like they have secured their back objective now. Is Kislev going to play anything on the bottom? It does not look like it. It looks like Kislev is going to be trying to stabilize its two little Groms. And then they're going to be moving up and uh, trying to really press the Ogres back. Because if the artillery is able to stabilize, that could be a big problem. And dude, Boris has just been such a chad this game. Like everything he's been finding, he's at 1600 value. And the Red Czar sees blood, dude. He's, he's going for it. Yeah, yeah, the Red Czar is going after the Slaughtermaster. I love it. That Slaughtermaster better run, man. We see some unsummons in the back. Ogres coming in with uh, Iron Guts again. Nope, just Ogre Bulls. Kossar should be able to potentially fight them off with some support. Patriarch's going in for the kill as well. Old Peglegs tried to run. He's pretty close to his healing cap, but he could definitely get one more troll guts here. We'll have to see. Hmm. I agree with Ethan in chat. Ethan, Arrow, how you doing, man? I think uh, I think they should give uh, Greece his 10 capture weight. I think that would make him fair. Little Grom friendly firing the Patriarch. Boris getting in the Red Czar with a big attack. It's currently wavering, negative two leadership. If that Slaughtermaster breaks, that would be really bad for the Ogres because then he could be shot by Little Grom constantly and he'll probably run off the battlefield or have a chance of running off the battlefield, potentially, depending on the shooting. So, Slaughtermaster's broken. You need to get Little Grom to target that. Dude, this game is so scrappy. I feel like Plague Penguin and Allery Crawl are so evenly matched. Like, they're both playing cool factions too. It's not like we're getting like super meta stuff here. Now, Kislev using his very good cavalry to steal the objective. There is a unit of Noblars there. You definitely want to charge them. In response, Ogre Bulls with dual weapons are coming out. Um, here's the thing, if those two dervishes kill these noblars which is very very possible with good micro you could then probably oh okay second ogre is being pulled in i would i would say you could probably 2v1 that kislev has more winged lancers going to be trying to push these noblar trappers off the objective ogre bulls moving towards little grom and it looks like the slaughter master was not targeted by the artillery so 
We'll see. Looks like uh, he's going to come back and probably get a troll guts on himself. I can't see the ones of magic, but this objective is actually going to be going to Kislev, obviously. Uh, Kosovoy Dervis have uh, way more capture weight than an uh, expendable Noblar Trapper. And he's going to get this round. Definitely should just kill these Noblars. That's like free real estate right there. But, yep, he takes the objective. Kislev being very, very cheeky here, but Ogres are going to be able to capture it back. <laughs> and again, Ogres have good capture weight now, so it's a much, much better dynamic for sure. Wing Lancer is moving on up. Hammering into the old Noblar Trappers. And here in the back, we have Kossar Spears shooting into the Saber Tusk packs. And uh, Winged Lancers once again coming to ride them down. Ogres kind of looking bare bones here, guys. Like, Kislev has pulled a pretty big value lead. It's 10.6 to 9.5. We see Saber Tusk packs come in. You know what's really weird? We don't see any um, Iron, not Iron Blasters, but uh, Lead Belchers. I know they're a little bit vulnerable to Little Grom play, but I feel like, like three or four of them could be really, really strong against Kislev. But I guess, yeah, Little Groms would maybe wreck them a little bit too hard. It's hard to say. So all these little, like, cheeky thefts from Kislev are certainly going to add up. And now Kislev is going full winged Hussar here when, when the Sabaton music plays. So we get the winged Lancers moving up. These poor little goblins going to get wrecked super hard as soon as they get discovered. And now they've been revealed. I would imagine the Kislev Cavalry is going to do it. Lance is couched for Urson, baby. Couch those Lances. Here they come. Lance the couch. Couch the Lance. There you go. Whatever you say. Beautiful stuff. Those guys get wrecked. And Urson is going to be taking the top objective, so... Beautiful stuff. Really, really good play on both sides. Ogres on the low ground. It looks like they have yielded that objective, and the bulls are on their way back up. Currently, Ulrich has a point lead, but is behind in value by a fair amount. But remember, Ogres have healing, so that's a little bit of a different factor. A lot of the value is against the Slaughtermaster, who has been able to heal, so that's something to note. Ogre bulls get annihilated by shock cap charges. It's not pretty for them. They have, like, no armor. So they'll do a little bit of damage on the return, but you're going to see a lot of Ogre bulls go down here. Immediately, they start to lose heavy HP. The Winged Lancer is going to buckle them, fold them like a piece of paper, and there you go. So the charge bonus is big. 70 charge is no joke, and uh, down they go. So will the Ogres be able to get their back objective back? Maybe so. Really nice pick here. If these Winged Lancers can finish these Ogre Bulls and then get another charge into these Ogre Bulls and just keep maintaining good charge bonus value, that would be pretty MLG. So the Ogre Lord's going to get unsummoned to avoid dying to Little Grom, and Kislev is now getting some Dervishes maybe around the side. Are they looking at like a cheeky cap here? That could be kind of interesting. Cavalry, big fight over here. We get the Winged Lancers as well as the Patriarch fighting, but they're pretty heavily swarmed. Ogre Bulls, Ogre Bulls, but the Red Czar should be able to kind of lead his people to victory over in that particular fight. Kislev trying its best to hold on, but the new Ogre capture weight is certainly very, very pertinent here. And as soon as these units do get up at the point, that is going to be a big one. So are the Ogres coming to get you? The eternal question that, you know, every philosopher has asked themselves since the dawn of time, we will find out. As more dervishes move on over, it looks like they're going to be heading into the Ogre Bull dual weapons. No, looks like they're just retreating. So Kislev is going to be yielding that objective. But look at this. The haggard side thefts. I love it. The dervishes should just kill these. I don't know why. If they had killed... Here's the thing. If these Noblars had been killed earlier, this objective would probably go to Kislev even easier now. Kislev is very, very close on points. It's 858 to 923. So the Ogres are just barely ahead. More dual weapons going to be charging in. But the Winged Lancers have been really, really big playmakers this time. They've been doing a ton of, a ton of work against these. So Kossify Dervishes, bounce it around, looking for engagement. Kossar Spears moving up, two little Groms still shooting in, picking off Ogre models wherever they can. 13,000 to 11.5 in terms of value. Dude, Boris is just unstoppable this game. And I guess you have to remember Kislev has healing too via the Patriarch, so he's at 2,300 value, 2,200 value. He's paid for himself. He's just, he's just straight up dunking on these Iron Guts, like every attack he gets. But looks like he's got bigger fish to fry. The Ogres are also leaderless. They don't have any magic. Their Lord's gone. Uh, he was unsummoned. You know, he, he retreated off the battlefield, essentially. So the Ogres are not going to have that. Whereas Boris is, Boris is going to be able to run around and do quite a bit, right? Wing Lancer is charging once again. I don't know where the charge order is. Uh, maybe into these guys. A little bit of an awkward one. They might not get their charge bonus here. And here, the Kislevite Dervishes going to have to pull back. Somehow they got caught by the Ogre Bulls with dual weapons. A little bit of a lapse in micro. Also a little bit of housekeeping here. Need to unsummon these guys uh, to make sure you can refill your uh, Dervisher pool, as they say. Wing Lancers into the old Ogre Bull dual weapons. Doing great. Kossar Spears, a very tough unit for the Ogres to remove. They have high melee defense, and they also have anti-large spears. They're able to trade pretty well. This is very much like a tug-of-war this game. This one's just been like a back-and-forth battle across the battlefield, which is absolutely wild. Ogre Bulls moving up. Anything on the spawn. Kislev not really playing down there. They certainly could, but they would need to bring some uh, heavy hitters. And I mean, Kislev is banking, what, 1,000 right now? 775 for Alric. So I think Kislev is starting to feel the pressure. The Ogres counter push. But the Ogres are also being buckled back a little bit. Winged Lancers pushing very deep into Ogre territory. Trying to steal this objective. It's not going to happen quick enough, though. Winged Lancers don't have that much capture weight. I mean, they can outcap a, a Noblar, but... Yeah, it, 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 the Noblars will get there and mitigate that capture weight for sure. The Red Czar is still doing his thing, but this might be a situation where Kislev 
is going to be focused into a uh, into a triple cap. It, it's probably what it's going to be. So Kasavai Dervishes, Kasavai Dervishes moving up. Frost Maiden going to be attacking into those. And on the side point, looks like the Ogres are coming to get you. They are. Look how, like, if there had been a second cab unit, though, this objective could have flipped right here. But, like, yeah, honestly, get these Winged Lancers and just just crush these crappy Noblars, dude. Just get in there and give them the dirty. Boris moving up with the boys to try and get the objective. Kill the Noblars! Run them down with 70 charge bonus. They'll buckle off the point in, like, two seconds. A little bit of a blunder here by Plague Penguin. Could cost him the game. It's going to be tight. We'll have to see. He's going to get the objective. He gets the charge off finally. So there they go. But, like... That's the difference now, because now the Ogres have some time to get here. Whereas if the Noblars had been buckled quickly, maybe you get it. I don't know. It's hard to say. But Ogres, look at that. Now they have capture weight. So the Ogre Bull is able to get it. Wing Lancers do charge into them. We get some Dervishes on the other side. And a Hailstorm coming down, which is going to be a pretty good cast. Boris leading the charge. And Kislev is going to have to find a way to get the back objective too. So we do get some Wing Lancers coming. They get the charge order on the Noblars. So they should do very well for themselves there. And Kislev is being surrounded by a lot of angry ogres, guys. The Maw the ma is hungry. And it's looking for some of those fancy wings. Imagine if the ogres had those cool, like, wings on their back. That'd be pretty rad to see. Like some ogres who, like, hung out in Kislev a little bit too long. Yeah, that'd be neat. But Boris, I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. In the previous patch, ogres would have not been able to get that objective. It would have been a Kislev objective. On the backside, though, we do see the Noblars getting crushed. And this is probably going to go to the Winged Lancers. You need to make sure to charge those dual weapons when they get close. Because, they, you know, they, they'll defeat them, and then you can just get back and grab the objective. But I don't think so. I think Kislev needs a triple cap at this point. Ulrich is really closing in on the victory, and the Red Czar is trying his heart out. We even see little Groms being pulled up for capture weight because they're out of ammo. And, like, Kossars that have, like, basically no stats. It's going to be a couple Kossar Spears who are just in very, very bad shape. And, uh, man, oh, man, this is just super scrappy. Super scrappy game. The Winged Lancers have completely cleared off the Noblars. Capture is going to be going to them. They need to just, like, pull back and then, like, the, the perfection would be line up right here and then charge the Ogres, like, on the edge of the objective and try and keep them off whilst maintaining your capture weight. That would be, that would be the best. But I don't think it's going to happen. The Maw is hungry, guys. And the Ogres are back on the menu. Granted, Kislev is considered to be one of the worst factions in the game, but it's still cool to see the capture weight for the Ogres coming into play and actually mattering. So Wing Lancers, I don't know if they got the charge. It looks like they might not have. Because they definitely took way, way, way well, too much damage there. The Red Czar trying to hold. Ulrich, very close to winning, about 25 seconds away. So he'll be there very, very soon. And I think that's going to be GG. Well played to the Great Lord of the Maw. Ulrich Rall will be feasting tonight. I know where Ulrich lives. It's literally like like 4 or 5 a.m. But, you know, he's, he's dedicated. He wants to play. Kislev actually stealing this point. Look at that. Able to break off the Ogres with the Red Czar here. Boris doing great, but I think it's too late. Ogres win. GG. Plague Penguin. Certainly a Chad. Very fun. I love the Kislev play. I love the High Elf play. Playing underdog factions is very fun. And clearly you can win with them. But Ulrich also played an underdog faction. Ogres are not considered good. Maybe in the new patch they're better, but I still wouldn't put them up like at the top tier of things. But yeah, he, he brought the Hunter out. He had some Lead Belchers in reserve. Man Eaters were also cool. How the little Groms do? 2,000, 2,200. Boris was definitely a hard carry that game. He definitely carried. I love the Wing Lancers. They seem very strong here, too. GG. Well played. That is a 2-0 series, ladies and gentlemen. Great games tonight, indeed. We've had some really good ones. Let's go ahead and get our next lobby up. Let's see how far everybody is. Ogres eating good tonight? That's right. Hmm. The Ogres can celebrate by beating another fellow terrible faction. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They can. The ogres, the ogres got something to something to be happy about. All right, so looking down here, let's go ahead and see how the tournament looks. Uh, Dodoxin versus Samurai style. That could be a very fun match. Let me go ahead and see if I can get in on that. Roflin has advanced. Ulrich has advanced. Shorty versus Void Laws here. I have no idea why this says negative three. Somebody, somebody did not report that score correctly, so I'll have to fix that later. But um, let's see if I can get in on Samurai style and Dodoxin. So. Uh, let me see if they started. If they started already, we will um, we'll just experiment with the ROR's until until then. All right, let's see. Thank you. We got a series. Yes. Add a boy to Dodoxin. Dodoxin is the if you guys haven't seen him on the leaderboard, he is the 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 Dark Lord of Kazrak One Eye. So oh, and it's on the Crucible. I really wanted to cast this map. I really wanted to cast this one. 
I love this map. It reminds me of like the Bone Zone from back in the day. Yeah, baby, the Crucible, the corn map. Ulrich says, check Steam, please. Steam? Uh, let's see here. All right, so, so one second here. Uh, blah. Let's see here. All right, so gonna see what's going on. I'm gonna see if, uh, so Ulrich had the drop, so he's, he's, uh, he's uh, we could have bl the Blood Penguin advance. All right, so we're gonna do that. So let's go here. I'm just gonna fix it on the old website. All right, so let me tell Ulrich to report himself as a victor. And I will change. All right, so Blood Penguin is back. Maybe we'll see some more high elf play later on if he manages to make it to the later rounds. We'll have to see. All right, so we'll see if he updated it yet, and then I will adjust the brackets. Map has been updated. Actually, it'll be different next time. Yes, correct. So the map will be... The, we've had some updates to the maps, which next time we do a, an update, which will be pretty soon, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to you know, show you guys all that good stuff. Yeah, we're almost at the top four. Good expedient tournament. We started at... Uh, what time? 4.30, give or take? Yeah, 4.30. It's been about three and a half hours, which is pretty good. And I think we'll fin finish around five. Five, five and a half hours, which is a, a really, really good benchmark for like a, a tournament of this size. We have 50 plus people and uh, it was late night tournament. And best of threes too. So it's like very expedient. Very, very expedient. All right, so let's see here. And uh, did Ulrich update his scores yet? Come on, Ulrich. You gotta report your score so I can fix the brackets. We will see. One of you report scores. All right, outstanding. So that should be fine. And then uh, let me just go check on Roflin's matches. He said they were taking a while. Cool. Some of these best of threes can take a while. Okay, perfect. So very interested to see what we get here. Oh my God, is it an Ogres versus Bretonia game? Are we just being spoiled today? I feel like we are. Do we, do we deserve this? That is the question. You know, I have to admit, with all of like the janky things we have in Total War multiplayer, between lag and balance issues it's it feels when i go to cast games like that don't have like like server like peer-to-peer -peer, like age of empires or other things like it feels weird like I, I in the back of my head i'm always like why is there not something wrong <laughs> you know like that's an actual thought i have all the time when i'm like covering other games that have like actual multiplayer servers and stuff it's so weird Guys, I think we might have stumbled into another Ogre matchup here. We're not 100% confirmed yet, but um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, could, it could be happening. The Ogres could be coming to get you once again. Okay, so they haven't updated yet, but uh, as soon as they do, it'll, it'll be fine. So the winner of this series will be going to the uh, top four. That is going to be the case. Uh, the top four maps, let me make sure they're good and not bugged ones. Road to Altorf Graveyard and it's a, yeah, those maps are good. So that should be fine. They're pretty big maps. It says a small one though. So the closer in that, that series is a small map. Hey, Ulrich, thank you. Well played, D-Man. So report yourself as winning and so you get your proper win and I'll update the, um, yeah, Total War has its charm. It does. The haggardness is like part of the appeal, you know, like the wildness. All right, Ulrich, so I'm going to just uh, substitute Blood Penguin for you, and you should be good. <laughs> Video games, talk of, yeah. Lobatomir, yeah, that's pretty funny. I guess that's a pretty apt description, isn't it? All right, let's get this going. Just got to switch the brackets up a little bit. Blood Penguin, if, if you're on the stream, type something in chat. You're, uh, you're all good. So just stand by for your opponent in the next round. Okay, so let's do this. And the Penguin has advanced. All right. Cool. 
Yeah, there's there's like a really serious magic to Total War though, because like even with some of the jank we have, like the amount of factions, the aesthetic, the universe, like how good some of the battles look when they're actually fighting and the fact that we have decent balance considering 23 playable factions isn't like dude like rts games with three or four factions struggle to balance like you get like you know starcraft warcraft 3 they, they, like there's balance issues with that many factions right but with us we actually have some balance like decent with this many factions that's really the crazy thing yeah all right so we're all good. Thank you for playing all rec great games, man. Hope to see you back next time. I know it's very late for you, so I was surprised to see you sign up. I was like, holy shit, it's going to be like very, very late for you. Yeah, yeah. That that's why we that's why we all play, right? It's all those all those kind of variables we talked about. So how's the old leaderboard looking? Let's go check it out. Hey guys, check it out. Look, Stingers, it's time for you to take a screenshot. And Platypus, Stingers, Ulrich, the Dokes, and. So this is a this is a, right here is a custom avatar. You guys see that? Oh, the the Dokesen. He I made him a, a a bet that if he if he was if he won with um if he won with Kazrak in a tournament match that I would make him a custom avatar. So we have Kazrak here with aviators, flames. He's got like a ammo vest. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. So I I, I will put up a bounty page eventually. Um, to have have uh have like more detail on that. Hey, come on, what do you, hey, Sergio, what are you guys doing? Where are your avatars at? You guys have avatars. You've won games. You got Mossy down here. Yeah, man, it's good. It's all moving. You know, I need to make Red Olgor. I need to make Red Olgor um an avatar. I think he needs to be unlockable for corn. Not Demons of Chaos. He, he's a corn guy, right? So he needs to get in there and do that. All right. Looks like the game's going to be starting right now. Oh, it's it's Greenskins versus Corn. Oh, this is perfect on this map. This is like a chef's kiss. This is a chef's kiss right here. Oh, my God. It's Red Olgor. Hell, yeah. He's coming. He's back. He's out for blood. Looking to serve the blood god. No, Lithanar is actually good in some matchups. He's not enough of a meme. I'll put up a bounty board that if you win, a, but you have to win like at the later stages of a tournament. Because like in the lower stages, you might just play somebody who you're much better than. Yeah. <laughs> All right, perfect. So ladies and gentlemen, we are here on the Crucible. It's our new, it's our new small brawler map. <laughs> the big caveman match. Yeah, Demon Prince of Corn is, you know, he fights. He causes terror. What's not to love? Aside from that, Chaos Warriors of Corn, Marauders, and Minotaurs with dual weapons. Yes, dude. Yes, the newly buffed Minotaurs. And taking a look at the Greenskin Horde. What is it going to be? It is going to be Squig Herds to kill infantry. Backed up by Biggins? No, just Orc Boys. Okay, so just a wide army with Warzag buffing them, really. Those Minotaurs are going to do some work, though. Like, there's nothing here that can kill the Minotaurs. This is, like, the most mouth-breathy greenskin style. I just love it. There's no archers. There's no skirmish cavalry. It's just like, let's get in there and let's just fight. I love this map. Have you guys seen this one? The Crucible. It was uh, made by Shroom in the map-making contest. It's a beauty. Check it out. So we have um, we have this huge, like, portal to Korn's realm there, which is incredibly cool. So Samurai Style is playing the Greenskins. And, uh, of course, we have Dodoxin, who is a corn mate. Using the Demon Prince of Corn, which I love. Valkyrie is very good, but, like, having a Demon Prince in that same price bracket, who's, like, not as much of a specialist, more of a general kind of fighty type character, I think is very good. Valkyrie is amazing, though. Slavnir is super good, but this guy is going to be more problematic for, like, killing infantry. Valkyrie is not that good at killing infantry. She's, again, an anti-large hunter type character. She's faster, too. Valkyrie, I think, has 90, 100 speed or something, and this guy's, like, 80, so he's not quite as quick. Yeah, Korn is defending. The Greenskins were seeking... This is very thematic, too. Like, the Greenskins were seeking, like, a proper scrap, so they came into the realm of Korn, and then Korn is like, hey, man, <clears throat> you better calm down. Ivan, thank you for the 50 bucks. Greatly appreciate it. I don't see a message with that, but, man, thank you so much. Thank you for keeping this old man going. I really do appreciate that. The Demon Prince of Corn juking some of the shots. Morgrim's Mage Marauders, a nice pick. 
Looks like the Gua is going to be trying to play objective one, objective two. Corn going to be grabbing the far side objective with some Chaos Warriors. And then they are going to meet in the middle and they are going to have a really, really good scrap. How does the Demon Prince stack up against the Exalted? Well, the Exalted would win in a fight, I think. But the Demon Prince is like a middle ground, right? He's like slightly cheaper. I don't really know, though, to be honest. I'd have to look and like test the two units. So Chaos Warriors have gotten down to the low ground point. They're going to be grabbing that one. And we do see Samurai style with all of these uh, horsemen and skirmishers getting some very, very decent poke. Although the Doksin's been juking well. It's one of my favorite stories. I've played a game against the Doksin with Queen Best back in the day. And he literally dodged like every single shot with good micro on his units. It was pretty insane. So he's definitely got that good micro. Now Demon Prince here. Going to be taking some skulls for corn. These, uh, these orc boys looking extra haggard here. Going to have a bad time. Oh, let's watch his attack animations. Kind of see what he looks like. Oh, there's the the big cleave. Nobody beats Scarbrand in the attack animation department. I think Scarbrand's like really really cool, but he does take a little bit of damage. And at the end of the day, that's probably a favorable trade for Samurai Sal, considering that some of the haggard skirmishers were able to get their poke there. So objective's going to be opening up, and Brain Busta going down, triggering the Warzag buff. So the entire Green Skin Army going to be getting a decent stat buff. Minotaurs versus Stone Trolls. This is a cool fight. We got like a Demon Prince in here. We got Minotaurs. Stone Trolls and Orc Boys. See, this is why Warhammer is, is such a cool RTS game. Like, look at this. Look at all this fighting. Look how good everything looks. Demon Prince cleaving through, though, man. Those Minotaurs backed up by the Demon Prince buckled those Orc Boys and folded them like a piece of paper. But the Greenskins are coming down from the hills. Squig Herds engaging versus the Chaos Warriors of Corn. More Squig Herds engaging against the Marauders in the back. And we do have more Minotaurs with uh, great weapons on their way out. So the Minotaur meta is upon us. Granted, Samurai Style is trading well. And even if Greenskins do get folded in a different fight here and there, they still are very numerous, right? So those Orc Boys don't really mean much compared to like a Chaos Warrior of Corn, who's obviously a much more expensive unit. The Minotaurs are also very vulnerable to any sort of focus fire, especially from Rusty Errors, those type of units. Brain Buster going down, which is going to be triggering the melee attack buff. So the entire Greenskin wall right now gets a big melee attack buff from the Bonewood Staff. And the Demon Prince, where's he going to be going? It looks like he's going after Rusty Errors in the backfield, which is a smart play. If the Rusty Errors are allowed to shoot, Minotaurs are going to die. He's going to die. He's eating a lot of shots in the face right there, too. He took a couple hundred HP damage, though. Here it comes! On the Crucible with the giant skulls in the background as well. So there you go. Big damage on the goblins, immediately taking 10 casualties as the Demon Prince continues to rampage through. Looking at the Greenskins of the battlefield, though, value trading is pretty even. A lot of, some of the value, of course, is on the, uh, the Demon Prince, but he doesn't have Gorfees, which is interesting. Red Olgor heals in combat. This guy does not, so kind of strange how they would have that. I guess Red Olgor is probably a little bit stronger because of that. <coughs> it's hard to say. But Corn is valiantly holding. Uh, they have their Chaos Warriors being swarmed by Orc Biggins are now in here. So this is going to get really dicey. Those Minotaurs of Corn are going to be struggling against Orc Biggins. Orc Biggins very, very good here. But on this side of the battlefield, Greenskin's being repelled. Chaos Warriors pushing back. And Chaos Warriors will just really, really give Biggins the biggest business. Their armor is just too high. And it looks like the Minotaurs and the Chaos Warriors here are able to win. It does give Dodoxin an opportunity maybe to move up to the high ground and grab objective number three. We'll have to see how that goes. And it looks like, oh, the sneaky back cap coming in from Samurai Style, baby. He's got some Night Gabos. Nobody saw him coming. The sneaky gets going to be moving up onto objective three. They're going to grab that. It's going to take him a while to capture it because I believe they do have the... I don't know if they have the expendable trait. It's kind of interesting. Maybe the ROWs don't. But they'll get it eventually. And if Korn doesn't send some flesh hounds over there, they're going to lose that objective 100%. So Greenskins are actually trading okay. Samurai Style's gotten his archers back online. He's got some more Orc Boys. Wurzag's constant buffs do very well. And the Orc Biggins, these guys are fighty as hell, man. Chaos Warriors of Corn will trade well, but Marauders will not. Corn Marauders do not have good armor. And Biggins hit very hard against light armor. So that's going to be a pretty bad trade for those guys. Not bad trade per se, but the Greenskins will definitely win it. Now over here, what do we have? We have an Exalted Hero of Corn coming out. Did he have the Potion of Toughness? Kind of strange not to have that. But Adokson bringing all the cool, cool units, and it looks like he brought the Exalted Hero to try and hunt down your boy Wurzag. And Wurzag is currently being hunted by the Chad Demon Prince. He's on the hunt, baby! Is he going to get away? 70 speed against 80, so the Demon Prince is faster. But I would imagine he's going to bait the Demon Prince down here, and he's going to summon some Spider Riders. He'll tar pit the Demon Prince, and then from there he will party. Now, do the Goblins steal the side objective? They do. So the Night Goblin stole the side point from Korn, and Korn did not see it for a long time. A very cunning move from our, our local get here. Flesh Hounds of Corn obviously would have torn these guys up. Granted, no, maybe not. These are the Unbreakable Goblins. Middle points being held onto by Corn. High ground here. And is that going to be a foot of... Oh, Sword of Corn! With the steel chair crushing those units. Orc Biggins get hammered. I love the Sword of Corn. It's so heavy metal. And those Orc Biggins are now going to get trash canned by the remnants of the Marauders. Nope, Goblins coming down from the hills going to help. 
Flesh Hounds uh, not retaking the objective, but rather going to be recharging this position. Corn holding on to the middle valiantly, but nothing on the high ground. And in the backfield, we can see, oh my god, the Demon Prince got baited! Once again, he's going to be dying on stream, but he got lured into the Broken Tusk mob. He's trying to kill Wurzag. Does he get him? Wurzag is getting smashed a little bit. He's at one leadership. Oh, the Demon Prince falls to the Broken Tusk mob. Oh, that was a cool animation. Man, I haven't watched that. So back to the warp with you, buddy. Wurzag with the cunning and brutal tricks, baby. Oh, he almost unsummoned... No, don't unsummon the Broken Tusk mob. Oh my god, he almost unsummoned them. That would have been probably a game-losing game, game -losing play. Yeah, he was trying to unsummon the Orc boys there. And also the Stone Trolls giving the business to these Exalted Heroes. The Oaksen has two of them, but uh, one of the Exalted Heroes getting taken to Pound Town by their giant troll clubs. Yep, he gets taken down. And the other Exalted Hero, probably going to die to the Stone Trolls. And now suddenly the Greenskins are a little bit resurgent. A little bit resurgent, though. Corn does have a good stranglehold on the middle. Uh, nothing on the high ground. They need to recapture some objectives. These Flesh Hounds trading super well. I was surprised we haven't seen too many Flesh Hounds. Yeah, they're chewing through the Orc Biggins, I think. The remnants of them, there's not too many left. Chaos Warriors moving over there. And the Broken Tusk Boys with the downhill charge. Now, they are an anti-large unit, but they have decent armor-piercing stats, so they're not going to be useless against these Corn Warriors. They should have some decent punch. I think they have, what, 38 melee attacks in like that? Is that what I was seeing? Something in that ballpark, but Corn has got to start playing the objective game a little bit. Dude, Wurzag is just holding on, dude. He's holding on for dear life. Look at him. To be fair, though, the Demon Prince has seemed decent this game. He just kind of over... He got really greedy. Like, chasing Wurzag all the way back there is, like, such a dicey play. Such a dicey play. Yeah, it's a rough one. Now, down to the hills. Minotaurs, Chaos Warriors, all these guys. Going to be moving back to the middle. Corn still holding on. Looking at the points, the Dokesin just barely has a bit of a lead. And he's sending some Halberd Warriors to the side point, which I think is very good. This is still a very, very close game. Like, Corn has a good pocket of troops down here, including two units of Minotaurs, which are going to be nasty, but... Minotaurs vs. Broken Tusk Mob is a bad fight. Broken Tusk Mob are designed to kill those type of units. They advance a large AP to get through the 70 armor of said Minotaurs. So we'll have to see what happens to these squealing pigs. As the Broken Tusk Mob here <clears throat> is uh, taken apart by just sheer numbers, it looks like. More Orc Boy Biggins coming in. Getting another nice charge. And the Waz down to the valley. Big stat buff. 47 melee attack on those Orc Boy Boys. Warzag is probably out of WOM, so probably time to unsummon him, I think. Let's get him back to the shadows. And it uh, looks like Yudokusin's going to be grabbing the objective here on the side to the Chaos Warriors of Corn. Talk about a very, very tough unit to remove. Chaos Warriors of Corn are just absolute middle linebackers. They're going to be able to hold on to this point all day and uh, like a dog with a bone there. So if Corn can just maintain a double cap, they for sure win the game. Easier said than done, though. The Greenskins are pretty relentless. Corn obviously a little bit behind in value, and they don't have as many reinforcements coming into the middle. Oh my god, is that what I think it is? Dude, I love watching Dudokson play. It's so fun. We got the Skull Crushers of Corn coming out. He's seeing all the pigs on the battlefield, and I think he is assuming the Greenskins are going to try and overwhelm him with mobility. Really nice Brain Buster right there. That's going to be... Okay, that's why he kept Wurzag on the battlefield. So now it's time to unsummon Wurzag for sure. He's got 134 HP. He drops an Effigy of the Git just to do a little bit of damage because it actually does do damage. And Corn gets buckled off the middle by the Wah. They barely have some Chaos Warriors holding. Just the scraps. Although there are some other Chaos Warriors here I didn't quite see in my initial assessment there, so they'll be back in business, but this is a, a true proper scrap, man. Here they come. We got the Blood Crushers versus the boys. Or Skull Crushers, excuse me. And Chaos Warriors moving in as well, but Chaos Warriors are going to be attacked by the best unit on the green skin roster, which is the Humble Squig. 350 gold. This thing is an absolute steal. They're going to be a great hard counter against some of these Chaos Warriors. For the price point, talk about trading upwards. They will certainly do that. So Chaos Warriors are fighting, but they're taking a lot of armor-piercing damage. Skull Crushers of Corn have gotten 20 kills, but only about 200 value. But, you know, it's not all about value. Oftentimes, it's about pushing things up points. And I don't think Corn's going to send anything to the top objective here. Um, the side is being held by the Halberds, or was. But the Halberds have been moved to the middle. So, Dodoxin opted not to leave them there. I think he knows that this middle fight is, like, super important. And it's kind of, like, all or nothing here. Some more pigs coming in. More squigs. More big, scary monsters. And haggard beasts. All sorts of good stuff. I like pulling the Skull Crushers back. You don't want to get him hit by trolls as well as these guys. And the Cornate Halberds are on their way. Now, Dodoxin saving for something big. Is he going to resummon the Demon Prince? You know, I don't hate that idea, and let me explain why. The Demon Prince causes terror, and Greenskins in the late game, especially with their Lord not on the battlefield, not being around, are going to be so vulnerable to big terror routes, right? So Halberd's getting a nice pile in on the Squig Herd. Samurai style is going to be taking some work here. We get the Orc War Boys moving around the side, and he is back in business. Old Red, o Red Olgor, you guys know, he, he never hears the bell. He's always coming back for round two. 
He's the guy who punches after the bell rings. He's he's that guy. Skull Crushers with a big fight into the uh, big Boar Boy squad. Backed up by some Coronate Warriors who've come back from the route. Halberd's trading pretty well into these guys. And honestly, this play from Dodoxin could get the game for him. Like, if we get some big terror routes on the Greenskins here and Corn just kind of maintains these objectives, we'll have to see. Although the Greenskins with the cheeky sidecaps. They have, like, the really cheap haggard units that can do this. Corn doesn't really have cheap stuff. So Corn has to often send disproportionately, like, expensive units to try and do that. And look at that. The mere presence of the Demon Prince sends all the Greenskins running for the hills. Here comes the boy, Demon Prince. Where is he going to be going? Maybe up to the high ground objective to try and chase those Morgibs and Meiji Marauders off. Meanwhile, the rest of the Corn army is going to be holding this point. And it looks like Corn's just going to be sending out more Marauders and more Chaffians. I mean, Corn does have some cheap units, but not like the Greenskins, right? Squig Herd's moving on to the point. They really want to steal this. So this would be a huge play. Dodoxin is a little bit behind in value, but honestly, he's got his Demon back out in the battlefield. And a lot of the Greenskin green stuff runs off the battlefield too, which means it doesn't like show on the value metric when things like run off. And the Big Prince is here. So Squig Herd's probably won't last long. They do have the dreaded ITP, which makes them uh, very, very tough to remove. And the space is piled in, honestly, pretty cost-effective. A little crappy 300 gold unit, you know, occupying the Demon Prince while the Morgrim's Nature Marauders kind of shoot him. Flush Hounds of Corn are on the way in as well. Very important. I mean, you really don't want to lose this objective if you're Corn. That would be very bad. And the Squigs are moving down to the side. Looks like a huge Squig Tide. But there are Corn Halberds here, and the Skull Crushers are still going strong. They've gotten about 1,000 values. That's pretty good. And has Corn held on? Nope. Corn has lost the objective. Flush Hounds will tear Squigs apart pretty easily. Their damage output against the Light Armor of the Squigs is very good. We do also have the big scary Demon Prince here. He's back up in the sky. Looks like he's going to be flying back to the middle here. And uh, it looks like uh, the Greenskins have snaked the objective. Very good play. we got some Chaos Warriors moving over there. 54 models. Not insignificant. And the Greenskins are also threatening the middle objective. Dodoxin is being spread a little bit thin. His Coronate Forces having to fight on multiple points against the Haggard Greenskin Chaff units, which are just kind of snaking points on the sides, which is pretty hilarious. And here he comes. The big man, the Demon Prince, is on his way probably going to see a big terror out here like most of these greenskin units except the squigs are uh are in very very bad shape but i mean corn probably wins this fight but the greenskin capture weight is still very menacing so here it comes and the terror out did we see it orc boys just broke and uh the both the boars broke and looks like corn just barely holds the objective because of red olgor so he is back the demon prince of corn has held it the Dodoxin maintaining capture weight as the Demon Prince comes in and saves the day, dude. Absolutely saves the day. A lot of green skin Daka, though, including Rusty Arrows. So you better be a little bit careful. The Orc Boy's going to be fighting. Top objective, going to be controlled by some Corn Warriors. But look at this. Orc Biggins running over. Not the quickest. These boys got 31 speed. They're looking for a proper scrap. Going to see if they can find it down at, uh, you know, Costco there. As the Marauder Horseman, and not Marauder Horseman, but the Skirmish Cab continue to get some good shots. Flush Hounds now saturating into the Greenskin lines. Going to be very useful for pressing in, chasing away all these annoying Skirmishers as well as Archers. And it looks like Corn with that route, may have done it. Corn might be clinching the game. It's hard to say. It's very, very dicey. Oh my god, if this little, if these Biggins make it before the Corn units capture the objective, it might actually keep the Greenskins in the game. There is an exalted hero of Corn, but he is large on his horse, so Biggins will eventually kind of chew through him, but he'll still do well against him. He is an anti-infantry unit. Oh man, and the Greenskins just barely stop Corn from getting that objective. Feels bad, dude. Feels really bad. Oh man, those Biggins just barely got there in time. So here comes the exalted heroes. Chaos Warriors gonna fight. Not very many of them, only 49 models. But the Biggins should be able to trade pretty well, and eh, they'll at least defeat the Warriors, and then, you know, we'll see how they do against the Exalted Hero. But the Demon Prince, dude, he is sweating bullets right now. He's like an, he's like an overworked manager. He's just, like, having to having to deal with a lot of drama at the workplace. All of, all, of his, uh, all of his peeps here not quite carrying the weight, so he's doing it. But, I mean, it's not like his value is carrying weight. It's more like his terror routes. The Red Olgor meta is upon us, yes. Partially because we've been watching Dodoxin today. He, he, he seems to like this character. Oh, the Demon Princes are so cool. Look at that guy go. Yep, Orc Biggin's going to die here for sure. Now that the Demon Prince is here, that changes the paradigm of this entire matchup. But we do get a couple of Haggard Skirmishers coming in, trying to put some hurt on this position. And Korn, uh, have they overextended a little bit too much? Nah, there's still some Flesh Hounds causing problems. They definitely need to move up if you're the Greenskins. Get these Biggins on the central point. As far as saved bank goes, 581, 248 for Samurai style. And Red Olgor is getting a little bit beat up again. Hmm. Certainly taking some damage. And Zell yeah, Zell, we, we, we have had some good High Elf games tonight. We had one. It was very good. Amazing play. It was a very, very fun match. So Orc Biggins battling into the Demon Prince of Corn. Greenskins are still holding on to this objective. What a meme. 
Obviously, the Demon Prince of Corn has like terrible capture, well, no capture weight because he's a flying unit. And now we got some more Warboy Biggins coming in. Dude, are the Greenskins going to maintain this objective and win on points? This is getting really dicey. Corn, like this objective needs to be taken by something. Like a Corn Marauder needs to go over there. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe a Flesh Hound. Dude, and the Greenskins hold on to the point again. The Orc Warboy Biggins are here. And they're going to be excellent against all these units. It's a shame their support has fled. The Morgum's Mage Marauders and Death Creepers are in there. Applying poison to all these guys are the Spider Riders. And the Haggard Wah is holding on for dear life. Corn is running out of steam in the middle too. It looks like the Wah is getting momentum. Oh, hear the ground rumble as the Wah moves. And now they're going to be moving down to the low ground objective, grabbing this bad boy. And man, oh man, Corn is on the back foot. Maybe the Demon Prince resummoning him wasn't the way. He has been really clutched with the Terror Routes, but maybe more units. I don't know. I feel like the Terror Routes are very good, though, so it's hard to, hard to put a value on that. But the Boar Boy Biggins continuing to fight. Objective held by the Greenskins. Crazy stuff. Minotaurs of Corn going to be battling against the Biggins. Dude, we have had such fun meta, like, like things that weren't meta last season being played today. Like, just so many uh, different factions. Really cool. Probably the most meta matchup we've had today was Inch versus Dark Elves. That was very meta last season, for sure. Those type of matchups. Sword of Corn, It's coming! Oh, man! Oh, and the sword comes down. Hammers those biggins into the Shadow Realm. Gives these Minotaurs a fighting chance, because they are getting wrecked by these biggins. And we do also have the Rusty Arrows up on the hill. Somehow those guys are just always alive and cackling. Corn uh, has no objectives. corn has been triple capped. And, but finally we get some Flesh Hounds over there. And Dodoxin taps out. Samurai style is the winner. The Wa has won it. Oh my god, what a back and forth game that was. What a back and forth game, dude. That was crazy. Loved every second of that. That was so fun. Well played to both those players. The Demon Prince, uh, yeah. Skull Crushers. Exalted Heroes are really cool too. I wonder if he brought the healing potions on those Exalted Heroes. Kind of curious. War Boys did okay too. Nothing like crazy on value. There wasn't like one thing that was just like the unholy Terminator, right? All right, so that's game one going to Samurai Style. The Orcs got their proper fight. They got it. And now we'll see what the map's going to be. Proving Grounds is very much like a, like an Itza type map, I would say. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a very fun map. All right, so let's go see if there's any questions pertaining to the tournament. How are we all looking? And uh, all right, let's go here. Okay, looking at tournament chat. And uh, all set. A lot of people getting close to the grand finals. The top four, at least. We have uh, on the top side, we have Blood Penguin versus Void Lulz. They're playing their game. Void Lulz is a, a ferocious foe indeed. He is certainly not an easy one. On the bottom side, we have Roflin versus Bulldiga. And Platypus versus the Renegade Moose, all being played. So... We'll continue casting. So we have this series. One, We have two more best of threes after this. And then that's going to be it for the night, which will be a nice solid five-hour stream, I think. Yeah, Corn's happy. Corn got a bunch of skulls. And the Greenskins are happy because they got a proper fight. It's, uh, it's a win for everyone, I would say. I need to fix Samurai Style's name. I'm sorry, Samurai. Sorry to disrespect you like that. Let's get your, let's get your name fitting in there nice and good. Oh, yeah. Uh, you will miss turns. Excellent. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Zylus. Appreciate that. I uh, appreciate that. Wah. I would do a WAP, but my voice is a little bit tired. I said a concert last weekend. Kind of still still getting it back. It takes a couple days. So yeah, Proving Grounds is a fun one. Uh, we haven't seen this one too much. We obviously showed it in the map making contest and all that sort of good stuff, but um, now it's here. We get to see it in action. It's a cool one. It's got some nice side lanes. You could do some sneaky, sneaky gets plays. Honestly, you know what? One the, there was a lot of cool plays from the Greenskins and the Corn in that game. Like the little cheeky side caps are really fun. The winner of the map contest was Celestial Lake by Medley. Yeah, uh, we we we're doing an update to that map, so we're just adding adding a little something something. So that's why it's not in the tournament tonight. Um, but it will be very soon. We just need to update the map back. So, but yes, it was Celestial Lake. So uh, Medley will be winning the cash prize, which will be going out on the twenty first, a couple days from now, when I get paid. <laughs> Always a good time. All right, looking around. Looks like they're all playing. And good. Wonder who's going to be hosting tomorrow. I'm like, I'm like fiending for tournaments now. I'm like, 
I'm like, all right, what other hosts are hosting tournaments so I can play in them? Um, tomorrow we have a land battle tournament by Human Boy, which is pretty awesome. If you guys want to see upcoming tournaments and kind of follow the multiplayer community, come to Total Tavern. Um, you can see who the top players are. You can go check out stats. Um, if you want to like look at stats for previous seasons, you can also do that. Um, you go to stats and then you go to... Uh, it, it's done by like the date, right? So today was the new season. So this was the previous season. You can go see who was like top dog. Go see how crazy the meta... This this was before Immortal Empires when Ogres had like OP Gorgers and stuff. Pretty funny. But um, yeah, so you can go back and check all that out. You can also um, just go to the front page and you can see upcoming tournaments. So this is tonight's tournament. We had one this morning too, which was uh, kind of a warm up for today. Checking for bugs and all that. And then uh, Faction War Qualifiers. So this is Human Boy running land battle events if you're interested in that. He'll be casting and playing them and all that, I would imagine. Which is good. Yeah, there's two land battle tournaments coming up. Yeah, Human Boy posts them here. And then Sotek, Loremaster of Sotek has a tournament on Saturday, which he'll be streaming. It won't count towards leaderboard because it's like a fun kind of casual format. Um, but yeah, still really fun to play in. And if you want to, you know, he's got a cash prize and everything. It's a, it's a tabletop tournament style. So you bring um, one list and you play that entire list the entire tournament, which I think is really a really, really fun concept. So um, Sotek's going to be hosting that on Saturday, the 22nd, I believe. Yes. And then, um, yeah, that's it for now. There's going to be more tournaments. But I'm, I'm sure tomorrow you'll see like two or three more tournaments posted. A lot of the hosts are eagerly waiting in the wings. Yes. Hey, I just got confirmation. Subutai just messaged me. The legend. He says that he's uh, he's going to be uh, he's going to be hosting a tournament tomorrow. Yes, good. He's going to be hosting the midweek madness. Yes, good. Uh, Melon, you just have to shoot me a message in Discord, yeah, when we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fal, it looks like it looks like Subutai is hosting one. Uh, you could, if you guys want to coordinate, you could host one in the morning and one at night, or you know, just 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 don't like have it at the exact same time, or you know, layer it out to another day, whatever works best for you. This is very interesting. Makes it where you need to cover your bases in your list. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. But the problem with t like, I think for a Sotex tournament, he needs to ban Slanesh and Tomb Kings in those factions because Slanesh can bring the same list against everybody and just basically take a fat one on you. Like, there's some factions that are so broken they could just bring the same thing and it doesn't matter. Like Slanesh basically brings the same list against everyone, so he needs to address that, or otherwise Slanesh is just going to win. Let me see how he's doing it. Uh. Yeah, it looks like they're not banned yet. Otherwise, he's just going to have Slanesh just running running all over his tournament. There, no, there won't be any competition. It'll just be Slanesh every game. Sweet. So Subutai is going to host the tournament tomorrow. Hyped. So I got something to play in. Maybe I'll take the day off and play. Maybe I'll probably play and maybe record my games. I'll do like a voice recording. Like put them up as replays. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So... It'll be cool to see who the first tournament win of the season is going to be going to. It looks like Dodokusen is on green skins against Samurai Styles Norska. Now, this was a matchup before, which was massively favored for Norska for some reason. I don't really know why, but it was. So we'll have to see how that goes. I think that... Uh, I don't know why is it so favored. Like, are Black Orcs any good here? I guess Pit of Shades really gives them the dirty, huh? Doesn't it? Like triple black, I always felt like triple black orc would be pretty good against Norska, but like, I don't know, what do they have? Famir, like a single Famir would really punish black orcs. Like Sunder's their armor, armor piercing, bonus plus infantry. Wolfric with on a mammoth, yeah, that's the problem. If you go with black orcs and they come in with a mammoth, you're gonna have a really bad time. I guess you could go like triple black orc with like an Arachnarok spider, Arachnarok queen type unit to fight it. And and who do you go for your lord? Do you go with Wurzag? Yeah, you go Wurzag, like, pin down the Mammoth, and then you have, like, a bunch of Skirmish Cap to control the side points. <coughs> Let me get some more water, guys. I did give Sotek a heads up about the bugs, so Tomb Kings and all that are getting banned, but he seems hesitant to just ban. Yeah, it's... it's Yeah, it, it's it's tricky. Slanesh, Slanesh is, like, doesn't have any bugs, but they're just super imbalanced. But, you know, if he doesn't mind just Slanesh dominating his tournament then, because that's what's going to happen. He has a prize He has a prize for the tournament. There's money on that table. So people are going to play for Slanesh. 50, 50 bucks is, is not a small amount of money. It's, you know, that's substantial. Hey, it's Anticity. Max Boarboy Cav. Is that the tech? Is that is that what you've been scheming from your Dark Fortress in the Hills? Where you sit and just weave, weave webs of strategy and schemes? 
I feel like I feel like that would be Max Borboy calf. Okay, so yeah, just the cheap six fifty ones, and then do you also bring the do you bring the Savage variants, or do you just go with like the probably the armored variants, right? Yeah, Berserkers lose only to Black Orcs, and Black Orcs are really vulnerable against Pit, Sea Fang, Mammoth. Like Mammoth Wolfric feels really good in this matchup. <clears throat> I'm gonna go grab some water while this loads in. Be right back, guys. Oh my god, are we getting a Grimgore game? What did we do to deserve this? <laughs> yeah, Anticity says probably doesn't work versus Skirmish Cavalry on the discussion of Pigtonia. Mostly just a meme though. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it wouldn't work against the Horsemen and stuff, but uh, yeah, this is exciting. So guys, we got Grimgore Ironhide, the man, the myth, the legend. Well, not man, the, the, the Wah Boss. So he's coming in with his big old uh, axe. He's got orc boys in the back, orc air boys, and uh, on the sides we do have savage orc biggins as well as a black orc big boss. Cool build. Savage orc biggins on the wings as well. So this is one of the new maps. This is proving grounds. We have uh, a triple objective. It's a style on the middle. We have some lanes on the sides. If you want to like get real sneaky, you can move there and kind of flank if you want. You have uh, tree lines kind of protecting from shooting, which are symmetrical on both sides. And that's that, dude. That is that. This is real fun. Grim War is about to. About to crush some get gets. I mean, he'll definitely kick Throgs, but I think in a straight fight, Grimgor wins. 70 45, 500. Um, 70 45. Wow, do they have the exact. No, wait. Hold on. Yeah, 60 50, 4, 50. Yeah, an anti large. Grimgor also um, has some abilities, like your next and, and gets Nick, that would help him win that fight. But Throg can engage, run away, and heal, and Grimgor can't. So there is that paradigm when you're talking about like a pure duel between those like two players and things like that. So. So yes, it's a very cool map. Now, the reason why the map has a little bit of fog is because of a random effect. When you load into maps, a lot of maps, um, there's a randomized effect of night, like nighttime fog or like one other one, yeah, like a rain or something. So it's not, this map isn't always foggy, but I actually think it looks pretty cool. So it's very Halloween focused, which uh, of course Halloween's coming in what, 12 days? Pretty rad. So Throg moving up. Throg's got just basic Marauders. Uh, I think Orc Boys trade well, pretty well into basic Marauders. Javelins as well. I do like the Javelin pick. You know, can get a little bit of Daka into some high value trolls and things like that. I'm good, darling. Thank you. <clears throat> the lady stopping by, saying hello. And a lot of Marauder Horsemen. So Horse Masters, actually, yeah. But now they're not as OP as they once were. We saw this earlier, right? Like in the High Elf match that we had earlier today, we had Marauder Horsemen fighting against. Uh, Reaver Cav, and normally Marauder Horsemen trash can them because of the, or they used to, because of the double attack bug. But now that that's been fixed, we see Marauder Horsemen being brought into much more of a balanced state, which I think is very, very good. So happy about that. Medley says, I need to ask uh, what weather this is. This weather is perfect for one of my maps. Yeah. Oh, you're making more maps. Happy to hear it. Well, we will, we'll add them to the old pool. Don't you worry. So moving on in, <clears throat> Orc Boys, Savage Orc Biggins in the back. Gonna be wanting to avoid javelins and any sort of stuff like that. Grimgore is like, I don't care, man. You can throw javelins in my face. I'll take it like a champ. He does have 120 armor. He looks like a like a giant turtle when he kind of runs when you look behind him. Orc boys are shielded, but Grimgore is not. Grimgore eats the javelins to his face. A very wah thing to do. Side objective being controlled by samurai style, so there's not going to be any wah over there trying to get that. You could send some spider riders. It wouldn't be a terrible idea. They are shielded and uh, probably trade well into horsemen now, I would imagine. Probably would. But Orc Boys get to grab this objective. There are some basic Arrow Boys, but a little bit of Bronze Odia action. They're stacked on top of each other. Uh, you would want them like here, like one here and one here, so that they could... Um... So basically, if you had one Archer here, and like one here and one here, then you can shoot your arrows right into those guys just like that. And you're going to do pretty well for yourself. So this objective's opening up. 
On the side, we do get Rusty Errors with a little bit of a cheeky jump. I like this. The Rusty Errors are shooting into the Marauder Champions, sundering their armor. I think that's quite good. Marauders are going to be chasing them back. And then, look at this. The Greenskins are, are lying in ambush. Orc Biggins and Savage Orc Biggins waiting in the trees. In the meantime, Grimgor is going to move out. Looks like he's going to be going after Throg. And a big pit of shades in the back. Not going to do much. It was big. It's always big. But the two archers are going to be kind of holding it down here. Now, Throg is going to get attacked. Your next is down. Fight or die active. And Throg gets absolutely handled by the true by, by the two characters there. Absolutely handled. Yeah, look at that. Big stat debuff. The orc boss is going after him, dude. The Dokusin just brings, like, the weirdest builds. And I love every second of it. Now, we do get more orc biggins coming out. Looks like the Norskins have pushed back the Greenskin Wall a little bit. But Throg could be in a little bit of danger. I think at this point, if you're Throg, you just maybe turn and fight. And it looks like the Orc boss and Grimgor are going to go after the Bale Fiend now. So the Bale Fiend has been discovered. The War Boss is on the, on the Hog, trying to get there. The Giant Hog. Middle objective taken. Side objective controlled by Norskin Mobility with the Horseman. We might have to go back to the old Warhammer 2 days, where you basically see a bunch of uh, Spider Riders and different things like that getting in there. This feels like a Warhammer 2 build to an extent. Although Greenskins would have Grom the Paunch and like 30 Spider Riders if this were Warhammer 2, so. A giant coming into the middle against Javelins and Horsemen? Oh, that does not feel good. Now, I have to wonder if Dodoxin's like trying to entertain us here at the, expense of, uh, at the expense of the game, maybe. I don't know, I'd be curious about the giant tech. Like, I feel like Norska has Skin Wolves, they have Marauders, they have Javelins. They have many things that will crump a giant. I know giants got buffed today, but even still. Now, Savage Orc Biggin's going to be getting the Fist of Gork. We'll move up and uh, try and engage Marauder Champions, but they're going to lose that fight for sure. And the Bale Fiend actually in Mortal Kombat here, and it appears to be doing well, as we see some good boys coming in. So the good boys of Samurai Style and Norska are on their way in. Going to be hunting back here. And now we're starting to see the good green skin units. I was wondering where the squigs were this entire game. Value trading is pretty even, though, but the, the objectives are uh, pretty heavily in the favor of Norska. Granted, Norska's only captured one. They're kind of just having a, a fisticuffs battle. Throg, you better run, dude. Throg's just, like, sitting there picking his nose, not paying attention. As, wow, Gr did Grimgore just, like, turn more green, or is it just me? But, yeah, Throg is going to not have a good time. The Wa is active. Grimgore has 94 melee attack and 600 weapon strength. And Throg is just getting bullied, dude. That's got to feel bad for his ego, for sure. Although Grimgor, if anybody's going to bully you, Grimgor is for sure going to be someone who does that, right? Now, the giant is moving to the side point. It does have like 12,000 HP. So, I mean, in theory, it could eat these horsemen shots. We're going to see if the giant's like tr attacking the Marauder Horseman with a giant. That's some next level tech. Okay, it looks like the giant's going to be hustling to the middle now. In the back, we have some more Orc Boys coming up. No resources being banked for either player. And honestly, value trading is pretty even. Granted, uh, there's some healing on Throg, so it's going to be a little bit of an issue in that regard, but looks like the Waz is going to be pulling the middle objective back. Grimgore Ironhide, he's not going to... you got to turn to get that charge bonus. Grimgore has a big charge bonus, actually. He got 70. So him versus Throg. The Giant's coming in. Your next is popped, Grimgore. Grimgore's coming for him, man. Dude, how? who would have thought in a competitive like top end of a tournament, we're getting Grimgore versus Throg. It's like the most ridiculous duel ever. But yeah, Throg loses the duel once again. He's forced back. He's going to go heal and do troll things. Uh, middle objective is going to be taken by the Wa, and the side objective finally taken by the Wa as well. So Night Goblins get that. Savage Orcs just going going to the bitter end against these guys. We got some good boys down here, the uh, the Norskin Ice Wolves, who are heavily buffed today, actually, in terms of damage and cost. Battling Squig Herds, but Squig Herds do get the Fist of Gork, which is very cute, so it's going to maybe help them win that fight. We'll have to kind of see how that un unfolds. The Giant being an absolute useless turret, as usual. Not, not, not much to see here. The Giant just... Literally just getting killed by just a, ma a mass amount of javelins. Norska, literally the monster hunting faction. It, at least it's gotten 200 value. At least it's being allowed to just stand here and club on these horsemen, right? I feel like I'm watching the Return of the King when the, the Rohirrim are like spearing down the giant movement kill. Pit of Shades attempt. It looks like it was dodged pretty well by Dodoxin. The giant just being super bronze Odia. Um, but if the giant can survive and the javelins run out of ammo, you know, the classic uh, wimp low style, uh, face to foot style, as I like to call it. On the giant here. <laughs> He's like, oh yes, you can kick me in the face till you get tired. It's basically that approach. It's like the Homer Simpson boxing approach. But the Greenskins get a big win in the forest here, so we do see them uh, decisively defeat some overextended Norskins, which means they might be able to move up and press this. And they do have a double cap, so the Greenskins are now going to be able to kind of close that gap. We do see the uh, Bale Fiend being hunted down by the Orc Boss here. So the Haggard Orc Boss getting in there and just dropping a fat shield bash on those boys. And um, yeah, Dodoxin is just so... 
such a good player and he brings such strange builds but he like somehow manages to make them work against good opponents like it makes me wonder like with him it's always kind of a, a perplexing question is the like is the Dokusen like a really really good player who's being held back by like ha the haggard things like giants or is that part of the magic that like is part of his formula for being good is that he's just wild and just brings these kind of things See, it's, it's a really interesting discussion. But nonetheless, Rusty Air shooting into the Skirmish Cavalry. The Greenskins have their squigs munching on the Spears. Now, Spears will be able to get squigs. Do count as monster size. They do have the large entity size. You could look right here. So Spears will be good against them. But, you know, Spears will also take a ton of damage. Squigs are anti-infantry. And it looks like the Waz is going to be pushing up on the side, trying to take Objective 1. Uh, nobody's really played that objective yet. Really, really, this one's just been super, super focused on value trading so far. Throg, in the meantime, on the hunt, he's trying He's trying to finally win a fight. So he couldn't beat up the older brother, so he's going for the little brother. Trying to get a little revenge here, so he gets in there. And uh, the Black Orc Big Boss is on the run. Marauder Horse Masters do get in there. And will the Black Orc Big Boss stabilize? It looks like he will. Orc Shaman coming to help. And, you know, the Giant with the dreaded face-to-foot style still going. Norskin Javelin's being unsummoned to try and get him back with some ammunition. And the Waz, uh, not doing bad. Not doing bad. Scrappy match. We got Black Orcs coming out, baby. Here they come. So the Black Orcs, talk about a hard counter against Marauder Champions. Like, these guys were born and bred to not only escape the Zawi Tsar, but to also um, attack into the Marauder Champion that just got through them. So they'll be able to get up on that objective. You can see here, Sam, uh, the Dokesen's going to be moving up. And there's not too many things here that are actually good against Black Orcs. So we'll have to see. Like, just imagine if this giant had been another unit of Black Orcs, right? Yeah, like a Black Orc and, and like a, a Skirmish Gap or something, right? The Wa going down once again. Big buff on the entire army. Grimgore still chopping, but, you know, your boy Throg is a troll and he's healing quite a bit. Giant's leadership's at negative eight. Looks like it's finally broken. Let's see how much value the giant got. Oh, 400 value giant. Not bad. Almost the cost of an orc boy. But these guys are MVP as hell. Look at that. The black orcs just chopping through, taking down the good boys, clearing out this very tough pocket of Norskin resistance. And finally, I think there's something capturing this objective. <laughs> we got some archers and squigs over there. Like, it, it's like they're both so averse to capturing this. Are Giants meta? I wouldn't say so. I still think they're kind of haggard. I think there might be some matchups for Giants. I wouldn't say Norsk is one of them because Norsk has so many javelins, but Throg coming in to get revenge. He gets the overhand club on the boss. Is the boss going to go down? Throg looks like he's trying to get to it or maybe going somewhere else. No, it looks like the boss is in danger. 643 HP. He's broken. Grimgore is a little bit worn out. You know, he's only got 2300 HP. Javelins are kind of saturating into him. As Goblin Archers unleash their Haggard Salvos into the uh, into the Marauders here. Side objective is not going to be taken. It looks like Beasts of Tashnar do arrive right before the Greenskins get it. But then we see some Orc Boys move up and some basic Orc Boys here. They're going to be getting on those. And then suddenly it's a double cap. The Black Orcs able to win. Uh, in the middle we do get Mistalkers coming in. I really like that he brought Mistalkers. I think that's a nice contingency plan against Black Orc Spam. They have bonus first infantry, I think. No, they don't actually. They, uh, they don't. But they still have good armor piercing and armor centering, so... Should make them a decent choice, but Black Orcs also give the damage back to them. Like, they have a lot of armor and decent melee defense, but Black Orcs have very high melee attack and armor piercing. So you have to take that into account. Now, on the side point, the Wah has it. The Wah has a double cap. They kind of have Norska, like, in a weird situation. Norska has a lot of expensive stuff in the middle. Are they going to run into the classic conundrum of not being able to be everywhere at once? Throg is pushing, trying to kill Grimgore, trying to kill the Orc Shaman, but you better be careful you don't get baited into a trap. We saw this happen last game. Or maybe a bunch of Orc Warboy Biggins come out. Able to get a nice push in here. We'll have to see what they can do. Dodoxin, of course, had his Demon Prince in the last game. Heavily trapped. What is this? What is this, dude? Is the giant, like, a javelin, am like, ammo magnet? Is that its role? I really want to ask the Dodoxin now. I'm genuinely curious. We have another giant. I mean, Norska does not have a lot of javelins anymore. So maybe the Haggard Giant has its has its purpose? I don't know, man. Dirk at Squigs versus Good Boys here. We got the big black orcs moving in. Black orcs will be able to kind of cut through these hounds, no problem, because the frost wolves uh, do not hunger, and they also last armor piercing, so they lack armor piercing. We get a second giant, giant coming out, dude. He, has he just heard me making fun of him, and he's just like, bring on the giants. <laughs> not one, but two. Now, Throg looks like he's eyeing Grimgore. Grimgore is going to be pulling back, obviously. You don't want to give your opponent a lord kill if you don't have to. I would imagine the greenskins will save up for like a boar boy summon right now. Grimgore could die here, though, 100%. Orc Air Boy is probably going to be shooting into the Marauder Horseman. And Throg coming in. Grimgore is in serious danger. He's got about 1,200 HP. Mistalkers here getting real beat up. 
But as the Greenskins, losing your lord is a colossal problem because it applies an army-wide leadership debuff. So if Grimgore actually dies, that could spell like massive doom for the Greenskins, right? And the Giants here, I mean, it's at least killing Femir now, which is good. Grimgore sitting at about 500 HP. Throg Daddy going in for the kill. Looks like Throg will finally get his vengeance, and Grimgore is taken out by the Troll King. Now, Throg in lore is actually pretty intelligent, so clearly he's using his cunning tactics to defeat, defeat the more brutish war boss. Now, over here on the side, Orc Boys routed off by a combination of Marauders as well as Narskin Ice Wolves. Like, I can't help but think if that giant had just been, like, two or three Boar Boys, he would have just, like, steamrolled through this position. And Grimgore would still be alive right now. So, the middle is getting wild. You can see the capture point not taken by anyone. Are the, I think the... Did this objective uncapture? Or is it just me? If it did, we might have to, we might have to do some sort of a replay or something like that. Because I, I didn't think there was any issues with this map, but... If there is, there was only a couple. The giant's coming in, man. He's moving to the middle point. Norsk is going to be grabbing the objective. I don't really know how that got decapped. And, and this one's also decapped. Maybe that's why the objectives are being weird this game. Are the objectives actually decapping right now? Because if they are... Let me double check here. I keep losing points. Okay. So we'll just switch maps now. Because uh, it looks like the objectives are decapping. It's been a really good game. And it's honestly close enough that... I think, I think we just jump out of the game. Yeah. That'll be fine. So they have been capping themselves this entire game. Got it. Okay. So... Uh, leave game, we replay on new map. So, I will tell the other player as well. Leave game, map bugs. All right. So let me make a little bit of an announcement here. So, um, tournament announcements. We'll just put them on a different map. Here, uh, do not play on, uh, on what's this, uh, proving grounds. It is bugged. Just found out. We will play on Black Arc instead. All right. Yeah. Both. To be to be fair though, both players were getting their objectives uncapped, <laughs> so it's not the end of the world. But it was still a cool game. Yeah, we'll let them redo the picks and bands and everything. So I'll talk to the players here. <laughs> the Giants. Okay, so we'll let the map maker know for proving guns. Because uh, there was only a couple of the new maps that had bugs on them. I think that was one of them. So, uh, all right. Black arc. Feel free to repick and reban. All right, so we'll let them know. It's a new map, so it's fair to switch. All right, so we'll have them do their repicks and rebans for that for that game. All right, so they'll do that, and we'll uh, we'll be good. Just let the players know to switch it up. So that should be the only one we have that has problems. The other ones should be fine. So looking around here, yeah, we had a couple people in that round. Hopefully, we caught most of them before they they got to it. Um, proving grounds. So where is that? We're just gonna switch to Black Arc for now. So, yeah, Proving Grounds here. Yeah. So let's do Black Arc and Itza to finish out the series. Gates of Akron, Black Arc, Border Low Landing is fine. Gates of Akron is fine. Um, Road to Vols Anvil is fine. Altorf Graveyard works. Glinty Tubes is fine. We'll have to change Celestial Lake in the Grand Finals. Commando, as a Night Shift worker, these late night streams are the best. Hey, I'm happy to hear it. Happy to hear it. So they can do their picks and bans. Since it's a new map, they can, they can do that. Um, they can repick and reban if they want to. So, we'll see. Hey, Commando, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Hope you're having a good time. Getting through the old night shift, my friend. Hmm. You guys want to see the... <laughs> I can show you the Ultima online in the meantime. Just pull it up while they do that. Oh, my God. The addiction is strong. Yeah. Yeah, at least we got to see some, like, fighting. It was kind of fun. I mean, it still wasn't, like, wasted time. But um, now we know Proving Grounds uh, needs to be fixed as well. So who is um, Med Medley? Could you, uh, if you're in, in the stream still, could you go to the map feedback and tell the map maker of that map that it needs to be, uh, they need to update that setting that fixes that? That's so weird. The objective, like, uncapping. Huh. Very strange. What do you think about Volkanovski as a backup for this week? You know, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been, I mean, I do follow the UFC, but I, I haven't looked at this weekend's card, really. Yeah, Ultima Online. 
Yeah. <laughs> I could fire it up. It's so ridiculous. You owe stream, let's go. I, uh, thank you, Medley. I appreciate that. So they, they're doing their picks and bans again. Cause it's a different, Black Arc is a very different map than Anitza style. So we're going to do, uh, let me tell the players. Cool. So they got that. Outstanding. Hopefully you guys see that. Here, let me, let me, let me log in. We'll give you the, the nostalgia train. Uh, one sec. So just getting that set up. I'll show you guys for one second. Actually, I don't know about the music, so I have to make sure the music's turned off because it might, oh, hold on. I don't know about the copyright with that. <laughs> I'll show you guys my one, my one character here. Okay. Hey, Weston, for keeping the multiplayer community going through the brightest of buffs and the darkest of patches. Thank you, man. So I just started on this server. But this is my, um, this is my, my, uh, haggard assassin. Yeah. So this, um, this is a, this is a custom shard, but it's also the most active shard in the world. This is, um, this is called UO Outlands. So they, they add a late game progression system, which is pretty cool. But this guy is, um, he's my poisoner. So I have, um, fencing, healing, hiding, poisoning, cell tactics, taste ID, which makes my poisoning better. So basically what I do is, you know, I, go, I can go, hold on. I can go invisible. You know, my guy's invisible right now, so like nobody sees me and then I can like sneak up on him. I can put poison on my weapon. And uh, yeah, so you have to wait until stealth happens, right? So yeah, so now I can like, now I can creep, creep up on things, you know, and, and this guy is eventually gonna become a PK. He's gonna become like a, like a player killer. So that's kind of the game plan, but yeah. Pretty cool. His his name is Hegardimus. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. So we can like run around, check things out, and all that. It's pretty cool. It do, but it's super active. Like the servers, the server is huge. Like look how many people are online. It's nuts. And these are like these are all active players, and you know that's like a huge economy and everything. It's a very very active MMO. Yeah, this one is only Feluca. This is this is only um, PVP. Yeah. Oh, there's a thief here. It's a thief. See this person? Oh, I could attack them, but they'd probably kill me because I'm not. So this person just stole from someone. Their name was uh, their name was was Gray for a second, I think. Oh, that, that's a thief! That's a thief right there. Look, because <laughs> you could just you could just steal from people. Yeah, it's pretty great. So let me just go log out. Hag Artemis, yeah, he's great. So that like little rat guy that just ran in the building, he. Just... He's just stole from someone because you can steal from players in this game. If you kill another player, you take all their stuff. It's pretty nuts. Um, we'll do a stream of this another day. So let me log out here. Uh, okay, one sec. I need to. Uh, we'll look. You guys want to see the thief while we wait? They're they're okay. They they're doing a different matchup now because of the black arc. So. It's Beastman versus High Elves. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, hold on. I'll show you guys my thief. Uh, I've, I've, yeah. I'm not gonna... Uh, I, I understand what it's like to be a haggard thief, so hold on. So this guy... Hold on, let me, let me get some stuff here. Uh-huh. What's interesting about thieves is you can... Um, so this is my thief character. His name is Sheev Palpatine. I actually managed to get the Sheev's name. So he's a really interesting type of thief in that he's very tanky. So I run a thief and with him, uh, he is designed for just like stealing from someone. And then when they try and kill you, they can't because he's like has full plate armor. I have wrestling, I have parrying and spell resistance. So the whole thing with him is like, you know, he's just, he's just an absolute meme, this guy. So like you can steal from people in cities. Like the thing is you have to, you have to, um, shit, do I have any healing potions? I don't have any healing potions on me. So that means like I could probably just get gooned here. Uh, one sec here. As soon as the Warhammer game starts, I'll, I'll switch over to it. Don't worry guys. This is just like a temporary detour. Hold on. Okay. <sighs> Man, I don't have any way of healing myself without potions. So I'm going to go grab some real quick. I think they're up here and then I'll, I'll steal something. So you guys can see what that looks like. He's not a mage though. That's the only thing that's like a little off for the Sheev. 
But like thieves are so fun. One of my favorite things is to go into dungeons and steal from people who are like farming. Because then there's like no guards. In the city, I have to deal with guards attacking me, which is which is very precarious. It's a mage, it's a scribe. Okay, I need to find a... I'll just get some crappy healing potions or something. Uh, herbalist, yeah, he would sell that. Cool. There's crazy crafting systems in this game too. It's like, it's so nuts. All right, so you want to just... These are just crap potions. I could buy some good ones, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, I'll just get a couple of these. So, And it should pull from the bank. Okay, that's fine. Great. Yeah. So the thing is, I can like go up to this guy and be like, hey man, I can click on him. And oh, the world is saving right now. Hold on. And I can go into his backpack and just, I could just take his shit. Like if there were no guards nearby, you know, like, so you can find people AFK in the city, just kind of like relaxed and be like, mm, what do you got here, buddy? And you can sometimes score like crazy good items, right? Uh, you know, you can go outside the city and find people to steal from. I'll do a full stream of this someday because the battle's about to start. So I need to, I need to get out of here. But I usually go to dungeons and then I, I steal there. Like the world map is crazy. Like you can see it's like, yeah, it's like, it's, and the thing about UO is there's no instance housing. So if we go out here, you'll see um, these houses are owned by players. Okay. And I could steal from anyone out here. Anyone that comes out here, I could just jack them. And all these vendors, these are player owned vendors where, where they sell their own goods. It has its like own ecosystem. It's like freaking crazy. Uh, no, I'm just riding a horse. I just started playing, so I don't have anything fancy yet. I'm kind of a potato. Like, there's some guys up in the rooms here. Oh, this would be perfect. Like, like going, clicking on this guy, going into his backpack, you know, and, and just jacking him. I could totally rob those guys right now. But the, the problem is I would have to run away. So, um, so yeah. I, I don't have time for that. Sorry, guys. Oh, perfect timing. Right into the start of the battle. Ladies and gentlemen... We are here with the forces of the Beastmen, Jadoksin, facing off against Samurai Style and his beloved High Elves. Very, very excited for this. Now, taking a look in the back, we do have Spearmen coming up. Spearmen, Spearmen, Spearmen. Double Saigor, one of my favorite Beastmen tactics. I think on Black Ark, it's very good. You just kind of sit them back and, uh, and yeah, it's pretty great, man. You throw boulders at expensive pile of archers and units and... Yeah, I have a pretty good time. That's what MMOs were meant to be. Dude, it's such a good MMO. There's an excellent crafting system, too. It's it's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. So Bray Shaman of the Wilds. We do have the Doom Bull, Butchers of Kalkengard, as well as Ungor Spearman Herds. And on the other side, we do have the Blackhorns Ravagers. So cool stuff. Now for the High Elf build, Lothern Sea Guard, pretty dependable unit. Very high melee defense. If Centigors or mobile units kind of attack those guys, you know, you could take some, uh, you could take that fight and it's not the end of the world. So I love it. Now, as far as magic, it's got to be life caster. Imric, Imric is like Carl Franz. He loves regrowth. Regrowth is his best friend. He's like pound for pound. Like every one of his like HP points is so incredibly valuable. So incredibly valuable. So you guys want a dedicated thieving stream? We'll do that. I'm not the best thief, but I, I get, I get the goods. It's like, it gets your heart pumping too. When you like take something and they're like chasing you, trying to get you, it's like, oh my God. It's some serious drama. It's some serious drama indeed. So boulder shots from downtown, gonna be throwing into the Silverin Guard. We do have the other uh, Saigors over here. Probably gonna be throwing into the Silverin, very cost effective. Emmerich's just like, whatever, man. You're gonna throw me some sacrifices. The dragon will give them the dreaded hump attack and show them who's boss, establish dominance. But the Jumbo's coming in, too. The joke's in with his wild lord choices. Now, does Imric take this fight? He immediately takes 400 damage from the Doombill, which does not feel good. Lothar and Seaguard are in position. High Elves secure the low ground with some Silverin and Spears, which is going to take the Beastmen quite a bit of effort to get rid of. Now, in the meantime, Silverin Guard moving up, being shot by archers. Oh my god, including the Talons of Tor Kaleida. These are Arwar archers, which imbue fire weakness. That's pretty wild. So basically... Yeah, it, it imbues... The, that's good with Imric, I guess. You could, like, shoot something and then attack it with Imric and kind of really, really jump into him. That game is Ultima Online. Yeah, it's 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 the M only MMO I still play. Because the thing is, you can level up your characters very easily with macros, so you don't actually really have to grind that much to get playing. It's very fun. So, big Lothern Seaguard line. I think this is actually pretty strong. 
if the Ungor Spearman Herd can get cleared out somehow, you know, get those Silver Ends kind of pushing them out of the way eventually, then you're going to get in range of the Saigors, they're going to have a bad time. So Saigor is being shot. It looks like the Talented Torquileta and the Lothar and Seaguard are in range. On the low ground objective, we do have a Blackhorns Ravagers, but they probably would lose to a Silver and Guard unit. I'm not sure. It looks like the High Elves are considering abandoning this point. Some Lothar and Seaguard are moving up here. And now the Lord of Dragons has descended from the skies, backing up the Silver and Guard. 69 models, baby. And Imric and the company are going to be doing their thing. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, last comment about the uh, Ultima Online. That is That server has been heavily updated, and there's like new features, and they buffed all the old crappy abilities and made them useful in certain ways. So the, the developers of that server did an excellent job. It's called UO Outlands. It's, it, it almost feels like a new game. It's great. It is great. So Silver and Guard attacking Ungor Spearman herds. Here they come. Very Lord of the Rings-esque. I love the way these guys look, actually. And on the other side, Lord of Dragons going to be descending to attack the Butchers of Kalkengard, who are also weak to fire because of the Talons of Torquileta, therefore giving your boy Imric an extra 20% damage because he does fire damage. Ooh, very cheeky. But Imric's taking a little bit of work. He does probably get a regrowth here, I would imagine. Oh, Dwellers Below going down. That's going to be a nasty one. Dwellers pops up, going to be dragging all these Minotaurs to the Pits of Hell. That is a beauty right there. So those Minotaurs do get dragged down. Big, big damage right there, giving the High Elves a little bit of a lead, despite the fact that Emmerich's kind of getting smashed a little bit. We do see some Centaurs coming around the back right there and uh, going to be charging into Lothar and Seaguard, but this is why I think Lothar and Seaguard are so good, is they're a strong independent archer that don't need no one to protect them. So sure, they get charged. It looks bad. But then they draw their spears, and suddenly the Centaurs start to lose the fight. So... It's uh, very, very cost-effective, and the Talons of Torquilata doing some work, but Imric is getting beat up really bad! Minotaurs with great weapons buffed by the Mantle of Gorok. Dude, linebackers, and Imric just got smashed by that Minotaur great weapon combo. And the fact that we saw Dwellers below probably meant, no, we did have the Winds of Magic for Regro, so that's keeping him alive, but he needs to get something in there to save Imric. Losing Imric, like a big expensive centerpiece that quickly, is going to be game blouses for sure. So Dodoxin on the hunt, hunting down Imric, the Lord of Dragons. And, uh, yes, he's going to be on the run. 1,700, 1,500 HP. Man, the Mantle of Gorok on the Minotaur Great Weapons to Crump Imric, dude. I'm telling you, these guys both have really interesting play styles. I got to say, it's, it's very fun to watch. Cygors are generating great value. They're just having a good time. They're just, like, literally throwing boulders at expensive units, like, the whole game. Uh-oh, Imric's back. That means that the elves certainly have a chance if he gets healed. If Emmerich can get another big regrowth or something, he's going to be feeling pretty damn good. Looks like the Silver Ends are battling the Black Crunch Ravagers down here. And this is also going to be a little bit problematic. We do have the uh, Spearmen moving into the Cygors. Although the Bray Shaman of the Wild is going to be trying to mitigate that a little bit. Two Cygors obviously not going to want to fight Spearmen in melee. The Hylds are actually doing pretty good in many regards. It's it's just Emmerich being beaten down. Like all the value lead that you see for Dodoxin is really just an Emmerich. And if he doesn't manage to finish Emmerich and Emmerich gets heals... And that could be pretty damn scary. So Minotaur Great Opens being charged by Reavers. Doesn't feel good. Amaret could get in and fight, but it looks like it's going to be a Breath Attack. Star Dragon Breath. Friendly firing those Reavers so badly. I don't know if that was worth, but if he charges in, he probably would finish the job. Centigors charging into the back. Looks like more Reavers coming out. And the Elves are desperately trying to hold on to points. It looks like they have this one. And uh, the Doom Bull is actually running. Yeah, Elves are doing very well in many other aspects of the battlefield. It's really just the Imric situation. So... Samurai style is certainly still in this game. I mean, if Imric had died and or ran off the battlefield, I would say it's probably like a pretty safe call for the Beastmen to win. But with him living and getting these chunky regrowths on the corner and then just coming back and charging that Doom Bull or any number of these valuable units, like that's not good for the Beastmen at all. And look at the value. The value is actually closing. Saigar boulders throwing downtown. We'll see what they could do. And uh, here they come. Boulders into the face of some spearmen. Talk about uh, an easy target, but they're able to push back these guys. And the Bray Shaman somehow got like beat up by those spears, and now Minotaurs are going to fight spears too. These are like the most cost-effective pile spearmen in the world back here. Just like killing a caster, pushing into Minotaurs and trading well, doing damage against Saigors. Meanwhile, the Lord of Dragons returns with 3,700 HP, and he's pissed. High Elves only behind by like 200 points right now, which means the Beastmen are certainly in a little bit of a precarious situation. Valyrian Reaver Cav going to be circling about. Get to charge into the Gore Herds with shields. Reaver is coming back this direction. Going to go after these bad boys if they can. And it looks like the Hyle is still defending this objective. Their spearmen are just so resilient here. Beastmen going to go for a cheeky side cap. So we've got some Ungor Herds, which are a stealth unit. Granted, they're expendable, so their capture weight's trash, but they still can capture an objective, right? But it takes a while. 
but they're going to go and try and steal that side point. Meanwhile, the Lord of Dragons lives. Somebody in chat saying excited cow noises. I wouldn't make those noises yet, because honestly, it looks like the High Elves are getting back in this game. Although the double Cygors are still on the table, Butchers of Kalkengard, Bray Shaman with um, Mantle of Gorok, which is such a trippy thing to see. I love it. But yeah, the Beastmen don't really have a lot of resources to get anything big and scary anymore. And look at this, War Lines of Praise coming out. Dude, what is with all these weird picks we're seeing today? This is just bananas. Yeah, the War Lines of Praise just chopping through all these guys. And yeah, they have bonus for infantry, so not bad. War Lines of Praise, what kind of value are we seeing from them? Yeah, only 156, and they are taking a lot of damage too. So yeah, they still I still feel like they're a subpar unit, but maybe it's going to make them work. Dude, this one Spearman unit... Yeah, this is like this is like the time where you make a questionable move sound, like a confused, like slightly nervous, like you're watching like the ninth inning of a baseball game and your game's like up, but the bases are loaded. You know, it, it's kind of like that, or like it's overtime in a football game. You you get the picture. It's like you feel confident, but you're not sure. Like the moves are suspect, as the kids would say. So Lyran Reavers coming across. Looks like the Ungor herd's gonna get attacked by the Lord of Dragons there. So the Ungors get pushed back. But the basement are still very much in this game. The Dokesons managed to maintain a value lead. Here we do see the Fireborn from Samurai style. The Fireborn are just like, you shall not pass. You will not get this objective. And I'm just going to sit here and make sure nothing, nothing is able to get there. High Elves have a pretty big point lead. Samurai style does have two objectives. He has had that for a long time. Honestly, Beastmen are looking pretty out of steam, to be honest. Um, I think the, the Doom Bull is still around. Still hanging out. You know, he's, he's got his, his punch in. He does have the dazed ability, so when he punches something, you could see, um, yeah, I think it's what, negative 10 and 25 speed punishment? Yeah, it's not bad. I, I still think Torox is way better, simply because he uh, he has the ward save, so if he has to fight somebody like Emmerich, you know, it's going to be much better. So the Fireborn plowing through some Ungor herds, some poor unfortunate Ungors. They're going to pay the troll toll pretty heavily. And Dragon Princes, if they can charge light armor that's not braced and not looking at him, of course they're going to be able to kill it, especially Fireborn. Fireborn are actually a good tech against Beastmen. Beastmen sometimes bring Buna, though, and this is actually not good for the Fireborn. Uh, to be fighting Minotaurs with Grey Opens with the Mantle of Gorok. This is a problem with buffing spells, though, is a lot of times your opponent can just get away when you cast it. So the Fireborn are on the run. A couple of them might die here. The Doom Bull's trying to help, but the Elves are just chilling up on the high point. They actually have some reinforcements coming down here as well. As War Lines of Praise chew through these Ungors right here, getting those nice nibbles. Wild Platy, no, you guys go ahead and play the semis. Yeah, go ahead and play. Stream's already going pretty long, so you treat yourself. Big attacks here, though. Ungor Spearman herds getting grinded down. And uh, I would imagine the Warlines and Spearmen will be able to win that. The Dragon Princes able to get away. They are a faster unit. Looks like they lost five Princes. What you need to do here is just kind of loop back this way. Pull some Spearmen, infantry up, and then use the Fireborn to buffer them and, you know, fight together. And then the Mantle of Gorok is also going to be... Yeah, that's right. That's true. Torox does do fire damage. So against, I guess, what, like Phoenixes and Imric, I guess, has fire resist? Okay. Imric does have 40% fire resist. So I kind of see that. That makes some sense. Thank you for pointing that out, because it's something I overlooked and had forgotten. Our Silver and Guard moving up to press the point. Blackhorn Ravagers moving in, taking some Lothar and Fire. Certainly going to need some tools to kind of deal with them. Dragon Prince is retreating, but Dodoxin is still very much in this game. It's very scrappy, but I think High Elves have a little bit of an advantage, even though the value lead is, you know, about 1,400. The healing on Amric uh, pretty much mitigates that, so it's a very even game, but the High Elves have, have had a good stranglehold on the points. Yeah, you're talking about Anticity doing a video on buff spells uh, being uh, worse than direct damage spells. Yeah, it's 100% true. It's been that way since game one. It's like, uh, there's a reason everybody used Spirit Leech and Buna for all of game one. You know, those are, like, there are some circumstances in which buff spells are good, but typically they're just not. There's too much counterplay for them, and the, the amount of damage you get from them typically isn't worth it, so. Rangers are pretty good at clearing out Beastman Chaff, however. They are very squishy, so Minotaurs are going to give them the dirty. Minotaur is very, very scary. I would imagine the Fireborn will come in. Lance is couched for, uh... Yeah, for, I guess, the Ever Queen, I suppose, would be their battle cry of some sort. Lothar and Seaguard also pouring some pepper in, but the Beastman might be able to get the point, but it is rapidly getting to the situation where it could be a triple cap. And I guarantee you, wherever the Lord of Dragons is, is not going to be an easy cap for you. We do see some more Minotaurs coming in, Butchers of Kalkengard, the High Elves forming ranks with their spears, and are the Beastmen going to be able to wrestle this point? Fireborn putting up a valiant effort, but... It looks like the Beastmen might be able to get this point. The the newly cost-reduced Minotaurs with Great Weapons have been a big performer in today's tournament from what we've seen. And uh, yeah, Pit of Shades reduces a unit's damage by... Yeah, it just kills the unit, right? So it just doesn't do damage. Yeah, exactly. So it's like... Yeah, buff spells need need some... need some Definitely some buffs if they want to be comparable. Um, 100%. 
Centigors in the back, intercepting the Lothern Sea Guard. Now you might be wondering why would you charge Centigors in the Lothern Sea Guard? Well, one of the answers is they have good capture weight, so they could have moved up and prevented the Beastmen capturing. But nonetheless, the Beastmen do get the bottom objective, but this is a this is for sure a situation where uh, the High Elves will win on one point. So the Beastmen need to use what little value lead they might have, move up and get this. Imric with a nice breath attack, Spearman holding valiantly here as the Butchers of Calcum Guard getting shanked very, very nicely. Lothern Sea Guard shooting, Silver and Guard holding. High Elves just going to be pouring out units and, and defending this point, which is actually really fun to see. Like a big epic Beastmen push on the third point. You know, in many aspects in this game, like in the beginning, I thought Samurai Style was going to lose with Emmerich getting karate chopped, but then it looked like the Beastmen were in trouble. The Doom Bull, it's probably time to, uh, time to unsummon him. He has 45 HP. Just let him go back to the pasture and graze on some, uh, graze on some grass. I think, I think that's the approach you have to take with that bad boy. Beastmen, 100% have this. Sending Spearmen down here is kind of, I don't know. I guess there's Centigors. It's not like great units, but there are some Gore Herds, which will beat Spearmen. And can the Elves hold on to the high ground objective? Currently, uh, it is a two cap for the Beastmen. And the Beastmen actually have good capture weight here. Oh, man. This is getting really, really suspicious here. Getting real suspicious. Uh, Imric needs to move in. He needs to start fighting. He needs to tear out these Beastmen units. I don't know why he's kind of sitting up here. He should definitely go after the Minotaurs there. You know, he himself hits very hard. Obviously, the Blackhorns Ravagers could be pushed off, mitigating some of the capture weight, but a charge on the Minotaurs would, you know, probably kill a couple models. And Silver and Guard are going to be impossible for the Beastmen to remove at an expedient pace. The Swords of Drakwald are on their way up. Beastmen have plenty of time, though. It's not like they're in, like, a huge crunch. They have, you know, a good 170 seconds, give or take. So, you know, a couple minutes here and there. The low ground, though, Spears trading okay. Moving into these guys, it looks like the Mantle of Gorok is down which is going to make them pretty saucy in combat. Those guys will do work. They're certainly taking them steroids. Rangers have also come back, though, so the Beastmen might have abandoned this bottom objective a little bit too quickly. And the dreaded Doom Bull with 45 HP is coming back. That is a mistake. If that Doom Bull dies, then suddenly your whole army has negative 10 leadership, and you're playing the Beastmen, bro. That's not going to be a good time for you. This objective owned by the High Elves. Silver and Guard trying to hold, but the High Elves are being routed on many fronts. And the Bray Herd is pushing in with a lot of units, man, including another unit of Minnows with great weapons, which are going to be tough. Silver and Guard are very, very heavily surrounded. And the High Elves might need to recap this bottom objective, and it looks like they might be able to. It depends on how these Gore Herds function. It looks like those bad boys are being shot. And here comes the fight. No! no. Oh, don't send the Doom Bull into the Fireborn. Oh, no. So that could potentially lose the Beastmen the game. Because now their lord recently died. That's negative 16 leadership on all of these Ungor Spearmen and all of these units that you really need to stay on this objective and fight against the big terror-causing monster. So that was a very Bronzodia play. Very, very Bronzodia. It happens to the best of us. We make them from time to time. But that could cost the Beastmen the game, 100%. Like, you don't, like you have the option to retreat your lord off the battlefield in uh, Domination, obviously. And in Campaign, just not in you know, Land Battle. Yeah, because now, look, the Beastmen, like, they wouldn't be as close to breaking right now. They would have, like, 20 leadership instead of 11, right? So it gets very, very scary. So 1423, the Elves are holding on to that point very, very well. And yeah, a negative 16 move. And the High Elves are also capping the bottom objective. GG, well played. The High Elves claim victory 2-1 in the series. Great game. Amazing game. Mantle of Gorok. Doing some huge damage, but I think if the Beastmen just had some good, better magic, although I guess they don't have the best choices. I think like a Deathcaster against High Elves is good. You just like Buna things down, or Spirit Leech Emmerich, you know, there's there's a lot more. Or imagine if there was a Buna on the Fireborn, right? But Dodoxin is like known for playing cool, different meta, like off meta builds, so big shout out to him. That was a great game. Really, really good game. Hey, Weston, thank you again for that donation, man. Thank you so much. That is super generous. So Samurai Style is going to win 2-0, even though all the games are pretty close in that series. And now we will move on over. So let's go ahead and look here, see what's going on. And we can cast uh, Samurai Style's next games. High Elves getting some Ws, man. Having a nice little run, that is for sure. All right. Let's look here. And where are we? Looking at the brackets, we should have Samurai Style versus the winner of the top side. So let's refresh this. Uh, no Skaven stream game streamed yet today, but they have been played. Well played to Dodoxin, man. That was a really fun series. So Void Lulls is still finishing up versus Blood Penguin. Uh, they're still playing, so we don't know who's going to win that yet. Samurai Style versus Dodoxin. We just concluded that. Platypus and Stingers are playing, uh, so we are making progress. So taking a look at yield brackets. Let me close all these down. 
All right, very cool. And outstanding. Okay, one second here. And here's the brackets. So Blood Penguin versus Void Lulls. A big duel of fates up on the high ground there. And then we have um, Samurai Style versus the Dokes in here, which we just finished. So that was a 2-0. So once they report the score, we can refresh this. Yeah, the, the Haggard War Lines were interesting. Why so late? I know, I'm sorry. Well, I, it's good because we managed to figure out the game-breaking bugs that we have. So yeah, so Platy and uh, Singers are playing their match. We'll be casting this next series, and then we'll cast the Grand Finals. And then that will be the summary of today. So we wanted to go test the Big Stinky. So let's go test the Big Stinky. Um... The uncle, I think is what he's called. Uncle something. Alright, let's let's see how he does. I'm kind of curious about the damage here. So we're testing the ROR right now, guys. We'll get it going. See how good he is. Is he going to be a, a Nurgle Lord choice? Will people start bringing him as their Lord? That would actually be really cool. Yeah, Nurgle, Nurgle definitely... Uh, they, got some, they got some tools. Maybe the new Soul Grinders only costing 1750 could be viable. They're decent fighters. I really kind of want to explore the Nurgle meta a little bit. I do have a Nurgle army in tabletop, so I'm kind of like, eh, maybe we should give him a chance. For, what, what, yeah, we're testing the big boy. So this is the new ROR of Nurgle. So he's got the uh, Defiling Deluge. He's got the Stream of Corruption and Spirit Leech, which are, that's a pretty good kit of spells. He is expensive though. He's pretty expensive. And uh, let's move him into the state troopers and see what kind of damage he does. So Festus is going to sit in the back. Trip, never managed to catch you live before. I've been supporting you on Patreon since early days. Thank you, man. Man, you never caught a live stream. Is, is it just because of the time zones or? Yeah, just kind of kind of how, how it's been. Dude, thank you so much. The ROR Sentinels for Cathay is nuts. We're going to try that out next. Yeah, here comes the uncle. So he could technically Spirit Leech this guy. Is it a lesser Spirit Leech? No, it's a full-on Spirit Leech. It's pretty good. So we'll let them surround, and like, look, he's got a stream of corruption too, so, I mean, it's a pretty good kit of spells, honestly, on a character. Yeah, not bad at all, man. What does his voice sound like? Okay, so we get this. Let's get in here. So, Defiling Deluge. Oh my god, look at that. Did that just not do damage? Okay, it's only six seconds. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I feel like that didn't do any damage. Maybe the animation's bugged or something? Let me know. Yeah, that seems like it might not work. Because I think the heal went off, but it didn't seem to do any uh, damage to the actual units. Okay, so let's get him out of here. Watch a short video on the Arwar Cathay. Yeah, we'll, we'll try him next. We'll try him next. Okay, so we're just kind of waiting for the cooldowns here. You know, attack this guy. Just give him a, give him a little razzle dazzle here. The defiling deluge. We'll have to watch the HP this time around. Okay, so coming up in about ten seconds, because you would think it would do more. Okay, so let's look at these units. Yes, yeah, so this guy's got what six point two. Okay, okay, it actually does do damage. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. How much value has he gotten? About 800? Okay. So we kind of get the idea with him. We kind of get the idea. It does 500. Yeah, 500 per unit. Okay. The first time it just looked like it didn't do damage. It's about 600 damage, 600 healing. Yeah. I don't know if I would pick that. Like, I feel like there's better things with Nurgle to spend your money on. But let's go check. Let's just go test the uh, Terracotta Sentinel now. That's that's pretty hype. Is the days of Cathay with Meow double Terracotta Sentinel coming back. The, the heathen days of old. All right. So... Yeah, let's get you. Let's do this. And let's go ahead and just put it against Vampire Coast. We can show you guys the bug as well if you want to. We'll show you after this one. So you guys can see this dreaded bug that we've been talking about so much. Okay, Ernissa. Well, let's just do like, do like Foot Luther. See if he reflects here. Okay, and then Bomber Mobs. Let's see how this goes. Uh, cool. Good enough. Let's give it a try. Put the Sentinel ROR against Blasting Charges. We're going to try it here against these guys. Meow, Meow never had Earthblood in her uh, dragon form. It was only it was only ever Talons of the Night. Yeah, she has regrowth uh, in her in her normal form. 
You think the RR? Yeah, it could be good against Skaven. Yeah, honestly, the Sentinel against Skaven could be really nasty because, like, then Skaven has to use their fighting to kill it, which, I don't know. It depends on the range of the aura because you can still shoot it from downtown. Yeah, it doesn't work well in cannons and things like that. So, what's the aura range? Redirection. Okay, 55 meters isn't terrible. It's not great, though. Maybe against, yeah, Skaven, I guess, globes, things like that. We'll have to see. Okay, so let's see. Is it just constant? Okay. So let's get you in range here. Can we shoot? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, does it redirect everything, though? I don't know why the bomber mobs aren't attacking here. Get me out. They're, they're just all going for meowing. Oh my god, how troll is that? Yeah, it's it's a little it's a little less good than I thought. But I mean, any time where a terracotta sentinel's good and they still have some shooting, maybe. Yeah, look at that. You see, as he fled, it, it reflected some of that, which is a really cool idea. Okay, meow. Let's get out of here. Let's go dragon form. Yeah, Globadiers will have to watch where they're firing for sure. All right, let's get meow into the corner. Like, what is with the AI, dude? Like, what is? why are they just not attacking this? The AI in this game is so weird sometimes. What is that like? Do I just retreat Meow off the battlefield and just make them attack it? Yeah, we're just going to do that. Let's get her off here. All right, Meow. Fairly well. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, now they'll, now they'll turn. Oh, yeah. Holy shit, look at the bomber mobs. All right, one sec here. I'm uh, going to check my DMs. Platypus needs something for the tournament. All right. All right, so we'll jump in and watch Platy's game. It looks like it hasn't started yet, so we'll go check that. Dude, look at the damage on the bomber mobs, though. That's pretty sick. That's cool. I mean, people aren't going to... Yeah, so maybe if he's... Even if they're not targeting him, it does reflect it, right? Yeah, Platy, thank you for the heads up, man. We'll uh, I'll come to your, your game here right now. All right, where are you at? And join with code. The road to Vols Anvil. It's a pretty big map. It's kind of like a better version of Ar Arnheim, basically. So we got uh, Wood Elves versus Inch. And let's get the scoreboards updated. So Platypus. It is, it's not just a Platypus, it's a menacing one. So he was top 16. I think Stingers was very close. I can't remember if he was last season. He's, he's always been a good, a solid contender. See if it works for other units within the aura. That's something else, because it could, like, protect something. Yeah, that's, like, one of those things that if you screw up, it could just, like, end your world. Yeah. It works on anything within the aura, even if they're not shooting at him. Wow. Yeah, talk about shutting down Dwarven Blasting Charges, huh? The problem is Dwarves can cannon it, and they can also use Thunderers on it at a pretty good range. So, I don't know. Maybe with Meow Ying healing, you could, like, weather the storm? It's hard to say. I don't know, maybe so, but we're loading into the next match, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. Outstanding. What is this build? Uh, that is a mass archer build <laughs> with Prey of Anathrema, most likely. I think it's a Glady with Prey of Anathrema looking to like snare down like the chicken and kill it. I'm Team Wood Elves, yeah. That's what you're saying? Okay, fair play. Romulan says, wait, what I like about the ROR Sentinel is that it actually looks like a statue. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's got that cool jade coloring. Dude, when Cathay gets a DLC, they're going to be really scary, I bet. Or they could get the Lizardman treatment where they just get like absolute dog shit DLC units. <laughs> like like a Coatl, Chameleon Stalkers, like those kind of things that are just so haggard. It's, it's hilarious. So yeah, classic Zinch stuff. Horsemen. Blue Fire Spammer with the Snare, and Warriors. That's what you bring. It's good. Shielded Warriors are tough for Wood Elves to kill. And I have no idea about this build from Stingers. He's got a great Stag Knight, a Prey of an Anathrama, a Prey of an Anathrama Lady, a bunch of Glade Guard, and more Glade Guard. And that is that. I honestly don't know how this build's going to deal with all those Zinch Silver Shields. Like, that's uh, that seems like a tricky pickle. Granted, he does have a lot of Starfire Shafts in there and some Stag Knights, which do big armor piercing, so maybe... No caster. I like blue fire is going to just kill this glade lord if it's not careful. So that thing's going to have to sit back pretty far. Just got here. Are the ogres any better? Yeah, ogres had a 
We had an ogre victory earlier, right? Yeah, we had a solid ogre game. We had two ogre games. I think they won one and lost one. I can't quite remember. Yeah, they beat Kislev on the objectives. Yeah. Yeah, which they probably would have lost if it were the old ogres. So what else is going to play the low ground? Obviously, it's a pretty big open shooting map, so they're going to be able to kind of drop some shots on these guys. So we will see what happens here. On top of that, we got Marauder Horseman of Zinch in the back. And Kairos going to be spamming Blue Fire. Harmonic Convergence is an interesting one. I, I'm, I wonder why you bring that. Is it triggering some... I guess it triggers Life Leeching, which gives you WOM. But, I mean, that, that's only going to give you, what, plum point ten for 25 seconds. So it gives you, like, two and a half wins of magic, give or take, right? Every time you cast a spell. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah, something like Harmonic Convergence, you get, like, a partial refund, basically. But, yeah, Zeech is hands down top-tier faction. They're very, very good. Um, what Elves are, like, more mid-tier? I don't really know how it's going this season. Like, looking at Yield Total Tavern. Curious about the win rate so far. It's kind of fun to look at. Obviously, it doesn't mean the most, but... Ogres are three... Oh, no, Ogres haven't lost today. Shit. Ogres have three wins and no losses. Warriors of Chaos are undefeated. Dark Elves are 8-2. and two. Slanesh is 2-1, and one, because somehow they got through. High Elves are 14-8, and eight, so solid 60%. It'll probably bounce down to 50, I think, eventually. A lot of 50% factions, and yeah, looking good. The Empire is struggling. Empire's at 33, because everybody figured out War Wagons are the only way they can win, so... Now they know how to counter it. Now that the gimmick... The gimmick is out. I mean, the Empire has other ways to win, but that's obviously uh, that's obviously pretty big. All right. Sounds good. And looks like the game is on. Yeah, cool Wood Elf build. Ogre Kingdoms, the only one of the only undefeated factions on Total Tavern right now. Enjoy it while you can, Ogre fans. Enjoy it while you can. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure people will be giving them some trouble soon enough. Now, that is a shitload of archers. I mean, if you want to make sure Marauder Horsemen aren't going to be doing a whole lot, you can get some work done there. Are the win rates on Total Tavern combined domination and land battle? Just domination mode, yeah. Just domination at the moment, yes. I would still play I'll play Empire. If I end up playing in the Subutai's tournament tomorrow, I'll play some Empire. Yeah, I might not stream it just to spare my hand because it's a lot and I can't take breaks as much. But um, Blue Fire on the old uh, Great Stagnites is going to be good. It's going to probably kill a couple models, which is turbo cost effective. Uh, looks like he kills three models. Eh, not the end of the world. Probably hide the Stagnites in the back for now and just advance up with archers. And unfortunately, you're not going to get too much value shooting into the uh, to the Zechian units while their shields are active. So if you just chase like this, yeah, this is going to be good. Platy's going to take a lot of damage here. So the, the Wood Elf archers can't shoot on the move. They shoot while they're actually like moving forward. So a fair amount of equal skirmish damage. And look at this. Prey of an Othrama going down on Kairos. Uh, it's only going to last, well, I guess, another eight seconds. There's not too many archers shooting him at the moment. Here they come. The big concave fire, and uh, yeah, he's getting buttered pretty good. He's going to be free of that net in a second, and it will net a little bit of damage on Kairos, but not enough to be devastating. But at least you're kind of punishing him for being, you know, greedy like that. All the Marauder Horsemen are getting beat up, though. Several of them have had to pull back. Their overpowered Protoss shields will heal them, though, so they're going to get that. They're going to get healing that would make Nurgle envious. Yeah, I think Zinch healing is so strong. I always feel like it should be tied to Winds of Magic, so it becomes like a dead mechanic at the end of the battle once you're out of magic. I think that'd be more fair, honestly. But again, they don't want to do that because campaign, you know, people would be happy in campaign probably. Um, up on the high ground, we got Warriors on the hills, just mad amount of Chaos Warriors and Marauder Horsemen. In the back, we got Eternal Guard on their way out, which are a very good unit here. Eternal Guard will uh, be able to, uh, for sure, for sure hold back Chaos Warriors for a period of time. Remind me, please, what is the cost reduction of Minotaurs? I don't remember off the top of my head. It's a couple hundred. It's like 100, 150 or something like that, which is which is not insignificant. It's not insignificant for sure. So Glade Guard have got Zinch pushed back. I don't think Zinch really cares, though. Zinch has at least got one objective and is going to be moving down in numbers soon. Like Zinch is going to pull the, the dreaded Mordor tactic of gathering its forces in the shadows and then moving up as one. So will be quite nasty indeed. So, shots coming from downtown into ye old marauders. And we do get the great stagnites pouring forth. So they're going to be uh, pushing across, looking to attack these marauders, maybe get some freebies. Kairos is a little bit screened back now. And the marauder horsemen just can't get close. This is a really interesting build from Stingers. I mean, so far it's working. But if Stingers, like, lapses in formation and lets all the archers get bunched up, like, for his each army ultimate, like, what's going on here was looking a little bit suspicious there for a second. Marauders get absolutely hammered, but now the horsemen are going to be coming in. But it's just like, it's so funny. It's like an archer front line. It's like, yeah, and they're even just killing shielded units. They don't give a shit. They're just like, <laughs> they're just going for it. Mass Glade Guard, man. How cool is that? So Great Stag's going to pull back, and uh, we got some spears saturating in. 
probably going to be fighting those Chaos Warriors. Now the Wood Elf Archer is going to be pulling back a little bit as they're trying to kill the Marauder Horsemen. And they're getting big salvos of fire. Those Marauder Horsemen certainly going to be shaken. Uh, yeah, Alex, I'll be streaming Age of Empires this week, actually. I don't know when. Sometime in the next few days. My hands have been hurting a little bit, so I'm trying to, like... This doesn't bother me because I'm not playing, but... Yeah, age requires a lot, so... It's a tough one. Eternal Guard? Maybe going to engage against these Chaos Warriors of Zinch to hold the objective? I don't know. Wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing in the world. Marauders getting hammered down so far. Stingers is trading very well. Great Stagnite's coming in and buckling those Marauders. And we do also get the cheap Glade Riders. And rejoice, Wood Elf players, because now your Skirmish Cavalry can actually defeat the Skirmish Cavalry of Chaos, whereas they couldn't before. Big, chunky Chaos Knight unit coming out from Platypus. That's pretty cool. So we get the Chaos Knights of Zinch. Check that out. Those bad boys, a little bit vulnerable to focus fire. If I were the Wood Elf player right now, I'd probably have a full chub for shooting those Chaos Knights down. I'd be like, give me the Chaos Knights precious. And you see how the archers are a little bit bunched up? You have to be really cognizant of this if you're like an Elf player or, or like a bowline player, gunline player, whatever you want to call it. Like the way those units are sta staggered is uh, very, very stressful for sure, I can I can assure you. But now Zinch is pushing in. They have units all over the place. Chaos Warriors seem very, very tough to kill for this like archer line. And we do have Dryads moving on over to objective uh, three here to help mitigate some of the pressure from the Marauders. Marauders uh, of Zinch are actually quite good against Dryads. Dryads rely heavily on their 20% physical resist to stay alive. And it looks like some of the archers are moving into the Chaos Knights now. But this, this situation here needs to be fixed. Like, the stacked archers, they need to be retreating backwards. Like, Wood Elves are not a forgiving faction. They can do a ton of damage, but if you get bad positions and get caught, dude, you really pay the troll toll with them. You really feel it. So it looks like some Marauder Horsemen here are getting caught in a Prey of an More Horsemen going to be surging down from the hill. I would imagine Glade Guard or Glade Riders will come out and maybe counter them. We'll have to see how effective that is. But Dryads will still um, be able to go after and clean up these Marauders. Yeah, looks like they're getting pushed back. Eternal Guard, a guard holding. Chaos Knights did get a cost reduction, so they cost 100 gold less than they did uh, yesterday. But I still think they're kind of a trap unit. Like, I always find that Chaos Knights in theory seem good, but then I end up losing the game because of them. So that's just my two cents. Now, top objective completely undefended. What else could easily send some Dryads up there? It looks like some Eternal Guard have been summoned. I really like that play. If your opponent's going to be greedy and not protect objectives, I think you need to go for that. Blue fire coming down. Again, just some Hagbane tips. Not really that much value. Horsemen in the backfield being cleaned up. And it looks like a Pit of Shades. That's going to be a money Pit of Shades. That's probably overcasted right on the face of those Chaos Warriors. And now we get Wildwood Rangers. You, you don't see terribly often, but these guys are very good at killing armor. Like, Wildwood Rangers have been used against armor in the history of Warhammer 2. And uh, now in Warhammer 3, it looks like they're performing reasonably well. As the Zinch Army Ultimate goes down and it kind of tickles those Wildwood Rangers. And does enough to maybe give the Chaos Warriors the edge in that fight. So, that is cool. Chaos Knights getting back in there, charging into the double archers, which are stacked on top of each other. And it looks like the other unit of Chaos Knights are in, so maybe uh, Chaos Knights are a little bit better now. I guess Zinch ones are probably better inherently because they have extra HP via their shields. And yeah, man, big Chaos Knight push into the back. The double archers being shut down. And are we seeing the Menacing Platypus start to take over some of the value trading? It would appear that the, now that the Chaos Knights are out on the battlefield, they are doing some work. Top objective going to be taken by Eternal Guard. Wilded Rangers... Might be able to clean off those Chaos Warriors, but Platypus using these buffing spells, pretty interesting. Harmonic Convergence on the Chaos Warriors gives them very favorable stats into those guys, so maybe they can actually win that. And Spellweaver of Shadows, this could be a game-winning play, potentially. The Spellweaver of Shadows has been gooned by Kairos and some Chaos Warriors, so now there's not going to be any more Pit of Shades, which is one of the big lifelines the Wood Elves have for actually taking down these different units, right? So here they come. So big Stagnite charge. Stagnites will be good. Oh, beautiful play by Platy. The Gaze of Fate, the Zoomer Micro, he gets in there, he locks those guys down and uh, gets a blue fire and a full charge on them right there. So there you go, man. Chaos Knights with Lances, uh, a little bit beat up, but not as bad as those Stag Knights who just got caught by that crazy, crazy Gaze of Fate. Dryad's going to get killed by Forsaken. I think that Platypus is starting to take over this game. Even though the high ground objective is taken by the Wood Elves right there, I think that's probably going to be it. Chaos Knights with Protoss Shields. Yeah, that's the thing. They have a healing mechanic. So suddenly they become good. They also do magic damage, which makes them pertinent against a lot of different units. So I think maybe Zinch Chaos Knights are certainly some of the more viable ones, whereas Corn ones, I guess, do slightly more damage, but they're much squishier. So, so that was very nice. Middle objective owned by the Chicken. Back objective owned by the Chicken Master. Wood Elves are pushed back. That's probably game. All the Archers are routing. Value lead favors the faction that has heals as well. So that's going to be tough. And uh, I think that's it. I think it's GG. I wouldn't be surprised to see Stingers tap out. Yeah, you can really feel it in the air in that one. Yeah, sometimes if you net units while it's charging, it will, it will like finish its charge and then like stop after that. It's a weird thing. Classic Total War mechanics.
Yeah, the charge animations mitigate them a little bit, I guess. I don't know. So, yeah, it was a cool build in the beginning. But then, like, when the Chaos Knights got out and, like, the mobility started pressing, it became nasty. Look at that. Chaos Knights paying for themselves. How cool is that? 1600. Look, in Warhammer 2, Chaos Knights were actually really good against Wood Elves. So, I, I don't... I'm not surprised to see this. I'm not surprised to see it. All right. GG well played. That's game one between these two mighty champions. And now we go into game two. And I don't remember what the next map is. Make sure they don't need anything from me. Okay. Let's go check this out. Go see the leaderboard. I believe the other semifinals probably should be starting. Yep, Void Lulls and Samurai Style are playing. So I'll let them know. Yeah, they can just start and they don't need to wait for me. Yep, Samurai and Void Laws are playing on the top side, so we will have a Duel of Fates upon us very, very soon. Yeah, man, Protoss Shields are very good. Zinch, Zinch is a strong faction. I think if you really want to be a meta, kind of a meta-chasing player who plays the strongest stuff, Zinch is a really good one to learn. RTK is very... A lot of the RTK guys are very good at Zinch, too. Like, I think that's like Tim the Wild, their mains them. Platypus is obviously very good. A lot of those, like, top RTK players. Yeah, very, very strong there. Yeah, it, it sucks that we, like, just the Tim Kings and the Vampire Counts are just not really playable right now with that bug. It's so haggard. It's just so janky. Uh, the Graveyard of Altorf. So, pretty big map here. So, mobility is pretty important here. Like, you definitely want to play factions that can stick and move. Zinch would be a good pick here with all their horsemen and stuff. Corn actually might be viable on this map, too. Like, Flesh Hounds and stuff. They could definitely sweep those side points pretty effectively. I don't really know what the Zinch shields are supposed to represent. I think... I don't, I don't know if they had... I think Zinch has some sort of ward save abilities on tabletop and like extra invulnerable saves. Yeah, so it's probably like that. Because usually Zinch units in Warmer 40k, for example, will have like a special type of like, they'll have a really good invulnerable save, which makes them harder to kill. But honestly, Zinch feels like tankier than Nurgle at times. Like when I look at Zinch units, I'm just like, man, they're tough. No, they fixed the infinite ammo bug, but they introduced a new bug with today's patch, yeah. So hopefully we'll just get a hot fix like fast. So that we can actually like play with vampire counts and you know tomb kings will still be pretty op but we'll, we won't like just ban them from tournaments when they fix that bug you could still play vampire counts and uh and vampire coast but you just aren't allowed to use the vampire's lore passive or invocation of nahek so they're both still playable those factions yeah extra extra ward slash invuln save yeah so those are those are kind of the core things there thank you guys all for joining tonight it's been a really fun stream and uh, yeah, about just over five hours. We're making good progress. We're making good progress. I would say for a full best of three tournament, like best of one tournaments, it would be over by now. Like if we had best of one with best of three, but I think it's kind of fun to like really get in there and get your teeth in the competitive with best of threes and every now and then. I do like best of one, like single elim, double elim. But um, yeah, Void Laws and uh, Samurai Style are playing. Let's do some hand stretches. How many of you guys are, uh, what time is it for all of you guys? Where are you guys from? I, I would imagine some of the Europeans are actually getting up now. Let's see. So it'd be like, what, 6 a.m., 5 a.m. over there? Yeah, depending on where you are. 7 a.m. <laughs> How many of you guys are just pulling all-nighters to watch from wild total war battles? The bug is, uh, he, yeah, I'll show, I'll show the bug at the very end of the stream if I'm not too tired. I'll, 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 I'll show you guys. But there's been several videos made on it already, I'm sure. Yeah. Not not my not my jam as much. Eight AM? Okay, yeah, so for you it's like you must be somewhere in that part of the world. Six AM, yeah, yeah. The the Europeans and and folks on the eastern eastern realm are rising. East coast, eleven thirty PM. Six twenty AM, damn. Eleven in Chicago. Yeah, not so bad for you guys. You East Coasters, like, you're getting a late night a little late night party here. Just joined now. How's the new regiments of renown? We haven't seen them yet. Nobody's used them. Because they're all big expensive centerpieces, so I don't think it's really conducive to competitive as much, but I mean, you and it's 5 a.m. Just going to bed now. Damn, you had a long night. We'll get some rest. 3 p.m. in Australia. Yeah, the Australians are stoked right now. They're just like, this is great. Hey, we get a corn pick from Stingers. I was hoping to see corn. I don't know what Platy's going to play yet. Platy is probably on the counter pick here, so we'll have to see what they do. 719 in Lithuania. I have to take the dog on a walk. Take the noble beast on a walk, Ice Pilgrim. Ice Pilgrim. It deserves it. 
3 20 p.m in australia yeah it's comfortable man it's comfortable nothing like having a i don't know how many of you guys do this but i love having like a decaf coffee late at night just like nine like eight or nine p.m just get like a decaf and wind down with like a game you enjoy or like a tv show it's, it's definitely nice Love the sound of Warhammer in the morning. Okay, guys. So Platypus is playing Vampire Counts, but he's not bringing any of the healing stuff because it's bugged. Dude, that is so funny. Oh, my God. How is he going to use just use a death caster? I guess he's confident enough. Okay, yeah, because Vampire Counts cr usually crush corn in my experience because they're just better at melee than corn is. But um, yeah, this is going to be wild. Vampire count, vampire counts with no, with no healing. Let me, let me go ahead and take a look at this. I, I, I got to see what he's bringing. I mean, it's got to be obvious. Okay. <laughs> How is he going to deal with that without the healing? It's going to be so much harder, bro. It's going to be so much harder. Oh, sorry about that. Should be fine. Doing that right now. I love a decaf at night, especially with Total War. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. Got some tea. Yeah, tea kind of feels the same. Just like a warm drink in general. It's like nice. But there's something about the smell of coffee that just gets the gears going, you know? I mean, the best thing is having a coffee at like 8 p.m. and just having like a super productive night. Like if I have a coffee at like 8 p.m., you know, like for the next like four or five hours, I'm getting like everything done, you know? And, and then you just can't sleep, obviously. But it's, <laughs> it's her an ASMR. Oh, my God. Mass blood crushers. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know. Like exalted, um, exalted blood letters are actually very good in this matchup. I think vampires might go for some mobile play, like some blood knights and stuff. Yeah, vampire counts for his corn. Wow. Yeah, I have no idea what's going to go down here. A cool twelve thirty at night in upstate New York. Yeah, you must be getting some some cold weather now, right? It's getting into that fall season. Yeah, Vampire Counts are haggard, but they, they're probably still as good as corn. Like, Vampire Counts just have crazy mechanics in general. Their units are just so strong. And, you know, a lot of Vampire Counts players just use Winds of Death and Raise Dead and things like that. So you don't necessarily have to have the big heals, although it really is a saving grace. It gives you a huge, a huge crutch to lean on. How do you get into Warhammer 2 multiplayer? There's so much stuff to learn. Um, I would recommend just picking, like, two or three factions you like. You get those DLCs for them and, and uh, just start playing, dude. Just play those factions and learn... Once you get reps and just like play those factions against like on ladder, or like in discord, whatever with, uh, with us, you know, you're eventually going to learn. Yeah, that's it. It, it. It's certainly a hard one to get into, but it's, it's, it's well worth it. It's very fun. Ladder can be with a wild west, but now you can at least queue up for domination or land battle, which is nice. So that's a positive change we got. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's all I got to say, man. Hopefully, hopefully that's apt. Vampire counts versus corn, dude. I can't. I can't hold my. I can't wait. I. I actually have to look and see what they're playing. Okay. Okay. All right. This is getting real interesting. This is getting real interesting here. They're both kind of like yeah. Corn has a lot of like their units in general are just expensive. So this is the semifinal. After this, we have the grand final, and that will be uh, that'll be the end of the road. The winner of this match versus the winner of the top side. This is uh, game two. Platypus won the first game. Graveyard of Altdorf. Again, a very big map. I would, if I were Vampire Counts with this map, I'd for sure bring a Blood Knight. Like, a Blood Knight will dominate Corn Flesh Hounds and control the flanks very well. And Corn doesn't really have any equivalent unit that can fight it well. Maybe a Skull Crusher could, but yeah, actually, now that there's no invocation on the Blood Knights, yeah, maybe. Maybe you could actually win that fight. No lore passive for vampires. Nothing that resurrects models is allowed in the tournament because it's, it's heavily bugged. It's heavily bugged. It's so troll, dude. It's not just... It's... it's uh, Rev crystals are bugged, too. Heal, so, healing on cavalry units, like, uh, just... Is, like, just super crazy. It, like... It, it, it ignores the healing cap and just resurrects them at full health. It's crazy. Yeah, I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys later. If we have a little bit of time between the grand finals, we'll go explore it, so... Should be fun. Good times, but it affects campaign, which means Creative Assembly is actually going to fix it. And we're not going to have to wait like six months. It'll probably be fixed in a week or two. Maybe my guess. So if it were just a multiplayer only thing, we'd have to wait like four or five months probably <laughs> before it's get fixed. Yeah, I would wait. It'd be a while. We get the scraps here, but we, we take them happily because the game is great. So uh, Vampire Counts, Corn, 
the old way, the old thought process for this was exalted bloodletters because they just massacre all the vampire infantry. Kind of, you know, try and support them, but they obviously uh, are not the tankiest of units, so you can kind of pay the price here a little bit. Rev crystals are not allowed either. No, they're banned, yeah. Because rev crystals, you could just like spam it on horn ones and you just have like an invincible unit, basically, yeah. It's a tricky one. Yeah, it's a big bug. I'll, I'll show you. We'll show you in action. And the healing cap is also ignored too. So, like that's, a, that's a, a really big issue too. There's no healing cap on those cab units. So you could just have like an undead unit. Like back in Warhammer 1, there was no healing cap and it was like the biggest bullshit ever. Like you could just spam heal like undead units all day and they just never die. And th there was also, oh my God, it was so bad. Those are the dark ages, man. If you think we have issues now, go back to Warhammer 1. That shit was so janky in PvP. Like just so janky. Yeah, Rev Crystals are good. They're a decent unit. Hopefully it'll get fixed though. I'm sure, I'm sure they know about it. So, although they were kind of asleep when it was discovered, so who knows? It is the menacing platypus. Platypus are pretty crazy creatures, if you really think about it. They're so unique in terms of like, you know, what's out there in nature. All right, guys, Vampire Counts vs. Corn. The graveyard of Altdorf is upon us. And we have Chad Brand the Exiled with some warriors, some spawn, and some horsemen. Yeah, they're bugged in campaign too. But in campaign, it doesn't matter. It's it's like, sure, in campaign, it can only help you. I mean, the AI isn't going to take advantage of it, really. And um, yeah, you're totally fine. Like, it's not going to affect your campaign experience in any way, except make you stronger. And you can just not abuse it if you want to in campaign. The problem in multiplayer is people will abuse it or they'll accidentally abuse it, you know. I can only imagine how crappy land battles are, not land battles, excuse me, quick battles and uh, land battles and domination on ladder are right now. Jesus. People are probably abusing the hell out of this bug. Like when the when we had the bug with the Star Dragon with like 88,000 HP, you would just run into it on ladder all the time. Platypus creation of Zinch for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think that's an apt description. Um, all right, so we're on the Altsurf Graveyard. We have the Coronate Army, which is very grindy. We'll take a look at that first while he sets up his bigger army. So, in theory, dual weapon Corn Warriors will cut through chaff super quickly. They will beat Graveguard with swords. Graveguard Great Opens might actually beat them, though, so I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, we do have Marauder Horse and Throwing Axe. is a great choice. One of the few tools you have is Corn to poke down Mortis Engines, Big Lords at a distance, all that sort of other good stuff like that. So, on top of that, Scarbrand. You screw up once again, Scarbrand. He rampages you. You lose the game. He's got rage embodied. That man is ready to party. And honestly, I don't. I don't mind the taking the killing thing with him either. The one that gives him scaling damage. And on the other side, we do have the vampire counts army. It's going to be zombies, backed up by all these bad boys. So skeleton warriors, skeleton warriors, and skeleton warriors. Now he obviously can't bring the uh, healing. So no vampires lore passive. Rather, he has gaze of Nagash and winds of death. On the Necromancers, we have the, I believe, Master of the Dead does not raise units. So he does have some healing via the Unholy Lodestone. So it's not like he's without healing completely. Because uh, Mortis Engines also heal. The Unholy Lodestone provides a little bit of healing. So he can always kind of park next to that and uh, and do his thing. So, yep, other Necromancer in the back. Just going to be a furiously stroking that Forbidden Rod. Very, very simplistic stuff. You guys get the picture. Two armies that are pretty straightforward to play. No, great. Nothing terribly out of the ordinary here. You know, sometimes it's like interchangeable with corn. Do you want to go blood letters? Do you want to go like hit warriors? The warriors are have more armor, more durable than the demons, uh, so they they can stay and fight a little bit longer. Therefore, that might increase their DPS. They also have crazy high stats. Like in terms of killing chaff units, chaos warriors of corn are definitely definitely better than the, uh, or I would say more cost effective than the, the exalted blood letters, if for like the amount of money you're paying. All right, so. Going for a long stream today? Oh, yeah, another 30 or 40 minutes, I would say. We have this match here, another one, depending on who wins it, and then we have a finals, which is just best of three. So, yeah, Void Laws, I think, is Eastern Europe as well. So he, he's playing until literally 5 or 6 a.m. He probably wants the number one spot on the leaderboard. <laughs> he's, he's, he's probably coming for it. He's coming for blood. I played. I was in the grand finals of a tournament the other day, and I got punished by Void Laws. He's very good. Very, very good. It was like one of those moments, like, there's levels to this shit, you know? Especially since he banned all my mains. <laughs> so I just couldn't play the things I'm good at. Blood Dragon Vampire Lord coming on over with the Gaze of Nagash and Winds of Death. I'm gonna be eyeing down those units. Probably Gaze of Nagash spam on Scarbrand? 
probably not a bad idea to kind of wear down the big boy. You're allowed to, they can summon units. Like the vampires have uh, raised dead. So you can see they, they can do that. It's just, it's just the invocation is bugged. So we have, uh, we have banned that for the tournament and anything that resurrects models essentially. So like Heinrich Kemmler's Tomb Blade, I think also resurrects models. So, so that one is, uh, is a thing as well. Now, is that really going to be a gaze of Nagash through the trees? Wow, he actually gets lucky and they all get through. And that did not feel worth it at all. It kills... It, that ain't blue fire, homie. That is not blue fire. So, considering this is a pretty big map, I would probably um, try and outdo the forces of the vampires on mobility pretty heavily. We see Menacing Platypus moving this way over to point one. So maybe he's just going to do point one and then crash down on point two after? And the Marauder Horseman should not be wasting ammo on these things, that's for sure. It looks like the Dire Pack's gonna come out. Dire Pack is infantry size though, so uh, if you if Stingers is paying attention, Stingers can get the dire, get these uh, Marauder Horsemen of Corn who have crazy melee stats and actually kill the Dire Pack in a 2v1 if he's paying attention. But it looks like he might just be pulling back through the middle here. In the meantime, some Haggard Throwing Axes going through the trees. Uh, Chaos Warriors gonna be going to the other side. So we do see the spawn in Warriors. Going to be grabbing that far side point. And both players are basically just trading uh, sides, which is kind of interesting. Engaging Bear, finally got a live stream. Sitting here with my sleeping kid and just enjoying the commentary. Hey, thank you so much. Love your love your stuff, by the way. And uh, thank you for the tenor. Greatly appreciate it. Hope you and the kid are doing well. And uh, sounds like you're raising them right. Raising them on some good old Warhammer. So always a good time. Hope you're doing well. Skeleton Warriors moving up. Skeleton Spearmen. Zombies. Crypt Horrors. The time is now. The middle objective. Got to be pressured. Horsemen grabbing it. Corn going to be grabbing the far side objective, so it will be a two cap initially for Corn, but then they have to fight the vampires over the turf. And it looks like uh, Skeletons here has actually managed to find their way to Scarbrand and uh, did a little bit of damage against them, so got to be very careful to preserve those big expensive lords. Oh my god, I'm full chub. We got Chosen of Corn with dual weapons coming out. The big boys. I love how they have the berserker posture, like they're all hunched over. Talk about a lawnmower unit. Now, Winds of Death can kill them. Uh, vampire Breath Attacks can kill them. They have a lot of vulnerabilities here. Skeleton's going to be getting attacked by the Cornate Horseman and taking damage, but I still feel like that's not worth it. Like, you're doing a little bit of damage into some, like, cheap, crappy spear units. I think at the end of the day, you just save your ammo and your Horseman, you don't waste it here, and you wait for some warriors to get here, right? Side objective is going to be taken by what? Some spawn? I like the idea of some spawn guarding this. It would take Blood Knights to get over here and shut these guys down. So, having them just kind of Netflix and chill on that objective isn't a bad idea. Um, might want to send a Marauder over as well, something to buffer, because, like, yeah, a single Blood Knight could go run them down. But I don't see Platypus as the kind of guy who's going to be using Blood Knights. For some reason, I feel like uh, it would be, like, Black Knights, Cryptors, that kind of thing. Just more cheaper units. Cryptors are on their way out. They look like, if you look at Cryptors from a distance, they look like giant chickens, kind of, the way they, eh. They, you know what they look like is the Abomination from the, the original Hulk movie. Yeah. Scarbrand took a lot of damage, though. Looks like he got hammered by Gaze of Nagash. He's still in decent shape. And uh, the big Vampire Lord, remember, doesn't have access to Invocation. Because it's currently heavily bugged, which is classic. Always a good time. And uh, when will the Cornate units move up and contest the middle? Looks like he's going to maneuver to the side using the superior corn mobility. So you really have to be kind of a, a, a meister of, uh, you know, positioning your, your units. On a bigger map like this, if you choose to play a slow play style, like Platy could be bringing vampire mobility, but instead choosing to play a very slow play style. Like if you don't allocate enough resources to defending the side points, you could be in a little bit of danger. That is the case. Scarbrand, maybe going to be attacking the Dire Pack here. No, it doesn't look like it. He's got those Cryptors coming in. Cryptors, uh, you know, pretty annoying, but Marauder Horseman of Corn actually very good against him. The fire damage actually helps a lot. And now the Chad Corn Warriors are moving up. So this is going to be a ton of capture weight. So that's 15 capture weight. Uh, probably will out capture the vampire units on the objective. Um, one thing, if they, like, here's the thing. If there's a big Winds of Death on these Chaos Warriors, that's just going to be, uh, that's just going to be game blouses. You're, you're just dead. Like, you got to really make sure you're paying attention to that. Now, Marauder Horseman screening out the Cryptors. Platypus with some very clean micro, able to pull those back. And now we just got some wild ass Chosen of Corn over here. So, Chosen of Corn could solo a lot of this, but they will get wrecked by Cryptors. You don't want that. And now we got Minos with the dual weapons coming out. So, that gives you a little something something to kind of fight those units off. Platypus's micro is very, very good. He's definitely dodging this well. And it looks like a breath attack, but that's pretty bad. And not because Platypus played bad or anything but because of the positioning of those chosen. So that's a really good omen for corn for sure. The fact that they're chosen mitigated that and are like fighting efficiently, backed by minotaurs and throwing weapons. Like there's a lot of things actually going here for sure. Now this could be game blouses. If Stingers isn't paying attention here. Oh, oh no. 
Oh my god, that Winds of Death did so much damage. See, that platypus was losing in value, and then that happened. And now it's like more of an even situation, right? You gotta watch out for that. You gotta watch out for it. So platypus gonna be getting the Blood Dragon Lord. Throwing axes, getting in there, and melting down the old uh, Cryptors here. Scarbrand trading okay. And Chosen of Corn, buzzsawing through, but now going to be getting attacked. Oh, check this out. Homeboy just brought in some Cairn Wraiths. Cairn Wraiths have 100% armor piercing and physical resist. Now that's something I haven't seen in a while, and could potentially be an excellent counter against these Chosen of Corn, right? Scarbrand, uh, does he do magic damage? He does, so he can attack those if he wants to. He does also have a breath attack, but I don't think he brought it. So that's not going to happen. But really, the Blood Dragon Lord is kind of being used as a, a caster bot. He's just flying around. Can't really safely land on the ground. You know, Flesh Hounds are an excellent counter against uh, the Ethereal as well. They do magic damage. They hit like trucks. Chosen of Corn grinding. And Cryptor is actually dying to the Minotaur Chosen combo. And Scarbrand the Exile trapped up. But he's going to Rampage. Oh, man. Heart Piercing and Sword of Antiheroes is active. 1,000 weapon strength here. And it does land on the ground. But Rage in Body. Scarbrand has Rampage this guy. So he's going to be trapped here in the Thunderdome for uh, 28 seconds, which could be enough for Scarbrand to kill him. And if Scarbrand manages to kill that Vampire Lord, that could probably just be GG. But the Vampire Lord dunking on Scarbrand as well. I mean, a thousand weapon strength is no joke. Big Throwing Axe Volley coming in does about 800 damage instantly. They are just parking here and just getting those Throwing Axe attacks. He's going to be Rampage for another nine seconds. I mean, he came into Scarbrand's Thunderdome. He chose that fate. Now, as far as the middle goes, Corn is, you know, that Winds of Death changed everything here. That Winds of Death changed everything. Stingers is up in value, but if these guys hadn't been hit by Winds, they probably would have cleared off a lot of these. I guess they still do have some Chaos Warriors on the side, so maybe they can still win that fight. And the Vampire Lord does get back up in the sky, so he is uh, he's in a little bit of danger. Breath Attack, maybe. Gaze him to Gash. I think it's Gaze him to Gash. It does hit him. It does about 200 damage. It's not that crazy of a spell, in my opinion. It's, it's okay. Uh, it was busted at one point, but yeah, we do have the Flesh Hounds of Corn chewing through zombies. And, uh, man, these Chosen of Corn just give no shits. As far as value, they've gotten about a 1,000 value just grinding through all these units, even something that theoretically is a counter to them. Zyre Pack battling against Marauders, but the Marauders do have bonus for infantry and hit very, very hard in melee. Scarbrand with the big overhand right, throwing the axes down. I think Scarbrand's got to be one of the coolest, coolest things in the game. I mean, look at that thing, dude. It almost makes me want to get his tabletop model. Winds of Death coming down. Um, probably not going to be that crazy. I mean, it'll tickle these Marauder Horsemen a little bit, but that just doesn't seem like a good usage of Winds of Death to me. And the Chosen still fighting like Chads. Their leadership's a little bit low. Their stats are debuffed from the Noxious Gas, but the, the, the Horn of Corn is going to be saucing them up. And Minotaur is piling in. Overall, Corn seems to be trading pretty well. And uh, the Vampire Lord up in the sky is definitely in some serious danger. Dire Pack here, going to be getting attacked. And uh, yeah, there you go. He's running for the hills, getting throwing axed. Dire pack here, crumbling on down. Chosen of corn grinding those units. Now back on the middle point, this is something we were kind of keeping an eye on. We get more chaos warriors with dual weapons. And you know, corn is still going here. The necromancer kind of keeping the party alive for everybody. Cryptors actually do take some damage from the chaos warriors. Looks like a terror route coming down. Where's that terror route coming in for? Is there something? Ah, oh, the devils of Svartsoffen. Very, very nice pick. A great counter pick to some of the corn armored units. But here it looks like vampires have lost this side fight, so Korn has emerged victorious. Uh, this fight is going to be the crumbling of the rest of these vampire units, including the uh, Cairn Wraiths here. And Scarbrand will probably make his way over to the middle. The backside objective is owned by Korn, so it looks like some Flesh Hounds got that. So Korn is in a relatively comfortable position. Platypus does have a points lead at 673. But yeah, all these vampire units are basically dead now. Especially if Scarbrand helps them. Uh, looks like he's kind of taking a little bit of a vacation. Ooh, the devils are actually eyeing Scarbrand. Look at that. These things are really good at killing characters. They have 110 weapon strength each and just hit like absolute trucks. So Scarbrand needs to have a little bit of a, a corn escort, it would look like. And uh, yeah, Minotaurs and Flesh Hounds should be able to finish these guys off. It looks like they're getting there. We do get the charge coming in from the Devils. Might be able to buckle this position. Will the Marauder Horseman move in? And suddenly the Vampires have a little bit of a reversal here. With the Devils flying across, this objective suddenly swings over to the Vampire Counts. As it looks like, well, not in terms of the capture. Well, in terms of the capture as well, but... You're able to get it. Gaze into Gash going down, and nice one. That was actually a good square hit that did about 700 damage. He tries to Rampage uh, the Lord, but the Rampage only works one time per HP threshold. So you can't just Rampage someone over until they... It's like 80% or less, and then I think it's like 40% or something. There's like a certain threshold margin for that. So that was a really good attempted play, but at the end of the day, it was, uh, it was not great. So here, Chaos Warriors moving up. Middle objective owned by some Cryptors. It looks like there's going to be some Chaos Warriors moving to try and secure that. The back objective is owned uh, by Corn, but it looks like the Vampires are going to be sending some uh, Golems over there. So Golem is on his way over. Here they come. They're, they're looking for the ring. They're looking for the Precious, which is objective number uh, three here. 
Now, we should probably pay close attention to this. Vampire's probably going to continue using Gaze and Gash. And now the Knights of Red Keep have come out. Yes, dude. So good on this map. So the Knights of Red Keep are going to be battling Scarbrand, and that is going to be some serious punishment for the big boy. And a lot of warriors are on their way over. Value trading's pretty even. He's mostly just Haggard Marauders, though, and some one unit of Chaos Warriors. But Scarbrand is being hunted by the Elite. I think Blood Knights are just one of the coolest units in the game. They're so rad. And, uh, yeah, a couple Corn Warriors coming in, trying to save their dude, but the Blood Knights are like, screw you, man. Go home. You're drunk. And uh, just riding over them. Those are, uh, those are chosen, actually, so might be able to get a little bit of damage on them, but... The Knight's Hunger. Blood Knights actually heal themselves. Uh, they don't resurrect models on their own. They just heal HP, so it's not going to trigger the bug. And Scarbrand is just getting lanced down by these Blood Knights. He is just getting absolutely karate chopped. So there they go. And a one, a two, and a three. Good night, sweet Scarbrand. You'll be missed. Demonic Crumbling doing a ton of damage. And uh, farewell. You you did great, buddy. You, al you almost got it. Middle objective, the Blood Dragon Lord's going to be kind of hard to contest now. He does have about 1,000 HP. I would imagine Platy will maybe unsummon him at some point, although the Terror is very nice. Chaos Warriors here do get Terror routed, and now we get more Chaos Warriors moving in and more on the other side. Horn has an opportunity to maybe steal this objective, but Blood Knights are probably going to be able to get these guys. Um, honestly, these are mostly lightly armored Marauders, and Blood Knights have crazy good shock damage, even against infantry. So here they come, and the Knights of Red Keep going to be riding down the Haggard Barbarians. There they go. Look at that. It's almost as if, yeah, when you... Like, it's, with Vampires Without Healing, it almost feels like, yeah, it's interesting. They feel more fair, for sure. Um, so Blood Knight's pulling back. They get away. Corn knows it's over. Platypus advances to the grand final, ladies and gentlemen. GG, well played. That was a great game. Really cool showcase. Vampires can still compete without, I mean, without healing, right? Like, their units are good enough. Scarbrand almost got it, though. If the Blood Dragon Lord had died, I think Scarbrand maybe can carry the game. The Blood, Knight, the Blood Knights were like the nail in the coffin. Like, the Blood Knights were one problem, but also the Winds of Death, like, hitting all three of his warriors, I think was was just too much. That was just so much value, and that gave the middle to the Vampires. Whereas the middle would have been lost. The corn would have taken that for sure. So, GG well played. That was a fun one. So, now, let's get this. And see how the finals are looking. We're going to go check it out. And I believe it's still, still going here. Let's see. Yeah, all right. So there we are. So Platypus advances and Void Laws and Samurai Style are playing, which is good. So we'll get that going and um, I will message Platypus. Uh, Zyphos hit me up. He's like, hey, you want to play some games? I'm like, streaming. All right, Platy. And Void is ready. When, uh... All right, very good. So, let's go ahead and get this, show you guys a little bit of this fun action. So for today's test, we're going to go to the, the Generate Vampire Counts. Where are they? Good. We'll get Manfred and all of his fury. He can be on his little dragon. Should be fine. And uh, then we want to get double Necromancers. We can just get them on uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Let's get them on Nightmares just for mobility sake so we can get to the opponent. And then we can get just like a Blood Knight, right? So we'll show you how this goes. And then, um, yeah, like throw them into some zombies or something like that. Uh, what's a good faction to kind of test against? That won't cause, cause too much drama. All right, so we can get the, I guess it doesn't really matter. See, the Norse goes fine. They have like a really haggard basic lord, so. All right, so he's there. And let's just get a bunch of, a couple of marauders, a couple of these guys. Doesn't really matter too much for the sake of the test. You guys will get the picture. And we'll get in there. Foot Blood Knights would be pretty interesting. Messing me when your opponent is ready. All right, cool. So, basically, cavalry units are, if they're healed by the passive, or and there's no healing cap either. So, yeah, Foot Blood Knights at like a chosen price point, that'd be kind of interesting. I would like to have like Foot Reichsguard Knights for the Empire. Although you kind of already have Great Sword, so they kind of fill that role. It'd be a little bit redundant, I suppose. I don't know what the difference would be. Great swords definitely need a buff. They're just a weak unit in general. All right. So we got you guys. We got Forbidden Rods to stroke. And let's move up. It is time. It is time. So we'll stroke the rods to get the invos. Blood Knights will move up. Fast forward. Yes. Good. Good. So we're just going to charge these guys like straight up in here. Just be like, all right, have fun. Treat yourselves. We have another Forbidden Rod. 
do that. Manfred needs to come over and go to his lore of vampires. I need... Maybe I should have brought stronger units. I, I'm hoping the Blood Knights will, uh, will actually take some damage here. All right, there we go. I was like, are these Blood Knights going to solo their whole army? Hold up here. All right, so wrong button. I don't play vampires often, as you can tell. So Invocation's going down, and that's going to resurrect models. But they also go beyond their healing cap, so that becomes part of the problem as well. So there they go. Invocation is going for another eight seconds. And you'll see the healing cap doesn't appear, which is one of the first issues we run into. So Invocation's off. Let's go ahead and do this. Pop that. Should be able to get another one here in a second. Last another eight seconds. Well, they might actually crumble down. Yeah, I might have to like pull them back to really truly demonstrate. So let's get them back now. So you see the healing cap appearing, right? We're going to go right past that. So let's go ahead and get another heal here. All right, there they go. Let's get the Blood Knights back. Okay, good Blood Knights. You guys just scurry this way. Manfred rides. And the healing cap is creeping up. Okay, so you see that. And now we should have another heal in a couple seconds. Looks like we do. And there it goes. <laughs> Necromancers are very good. So, should jump past the healing cap in just a second. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, 27. Takes me back to the old Warhammer 1 days. Plus, it's especially problematic with vampire counts since they have, like, infinite WOM. Yeah, so models are being resurrected at full HP now, I think. Let's see. Should be the case. Maybe I'm not executing the bug correctly. I think I should. Uh, will there be a video tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we'll have something going on. Okay, okay. Why can I not cast that on them? Invalid target ally? That's Is that another bug that I can't target them? Because, see, I can't cast Invo on these guys now. That's so weird. Oh, let's see here. Because it says invalid target because it's an ally? Okay, I can target them. Oh, is it the vampire lore passive that does it? Hang on a sec. Let me let me uh, let me just pause this for a second. I haven't experienced it myself. Imagine if it was patched. All right, so so to yeah, they're not at the heel cap. Oh, let me try the lore passive. Actually, that could do it. Yeah, we can just overcast it. That's true. See if that actually hits him. Okay, that didn't hit him, but the lore passive is proc. So we have 28 models right now. So let's just keep casting spells. And see if that like raises the dead back. So the passive, oh, do I have the passive turned off? Is that what's going on here? Oh, curse of death. Oh, so they need to be in range. Okay, I'm stupid. Let's get them over here. Heal capped units can't be targeted. So, Intensity, what is the crux of the bug then? Because I haven't tested it myself. I've only heard secondhand. Yeah, it sounds like it's the lore passive, right? So, 26 models. So, let's do this. And is anything resurrecting? Doesn't look like it's triggering here. Yeah, it sounds like the lore passive. They're heal capped. You just got unlucky, basically. But I always... Somebody was telling me it goes past the healing cap. Let's see. Maybe I have to like target them or something. Huh. Strange. Maybe it's like not a consistent bug. No idea. I haven't tested yet. I saw I saw the video in which it was done on on um, on uh, on what's his name's channel. Yeah, it seems weird. It seems very. Wait, where did that model? See, some weird shit is happening. It resurrected that model over here. But that would happen normally, wouldn't it? Is it so? It's resurrecting models at full health. Okay. If it doesn't revive a model, it won't bug. Okay, so maybe I... Oh, I healing capped in the fight. Okay, let's try and recreate that again. We have time. I think they're still doing their series. Copy that. I'll, I'll figure it out, yeah. Uh, the bug resets the heal cap, but only if it revives a model. Got it. So I, I screwed it up. Okay. So let's let's do that properly this time. So we'll just get some, uh, let's get some, some things that actually like damage them here. Okay, so we need to lose some models first. Let's give it a try. We'll recreate this. Yeah, you want to get to the very low model. Yeah, we need to lose some models first, right? 
Hold them out of combat, then heal. Yeah, we'll give it a try. I saw it on the video that they just like were healing like crazy, so I'm trying to recreate it. To actually arrive, do you need to be near the dead body? I don't know. I'm not, I don't think so. Usually, it just respawns the unit like with the with the with the with the, the goon squad that is with. Come, come, minions. Alright, here they come. Try this again. Necromancy. Round two, fight. Alright, so let's go. Again, I probably like brought units that they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna do well against here. Alright, so let's just charge the, 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 the beasts here. Begins. Forbidden rod stroking is so strong. It's so broken. Okay, so they get the charge. Good damage. We need to start losing models. Okay, so let's just like kind of play poorly and just charge here. So we've lost five models now. So we need to we need to basically get them uh, to reset the healing cap. So at this point, I've lost I've lost a handful of models, right? So to trigger the bug, we I guess we just yeah. What would be the steps from what you've seen in to trigger trigger this? Heal models first with non-resing healing, then invo. Okay, non-resing healing. You're saying. Okay, one sec. Let me see what Platypus is saying here. So heal models first with non-res healing, then invo. So you using uh, the hunger, for example. Just talking to him here. Wait until they're really damaged. Okay, well, I guess we'll just do that. We can come in and rescue them with the save here. Scroll of shielding. Man, necromancers have so many good abilities. Why can't the Empire have something like this? Okay, they've lost a lot of models now. We dropped the Haggard Zombie Summon to try and free him up. We'll get these guys out. Oh, okay, it's easier with the Corpse Guard or Necromancer healing. Got it. The Necromancer... Oh, wait, did I just see something? Okay, so let's get these guys back. Yeah, let's try and get these guys away now. So we invoked them. And now we're just kind of like healing them with the lore passive. Yeah, we see the curse of... Oh. Oh. Oh, holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that. Holy shit. Yeah, no, it's a good thing we banned that. <laughs> Surprise! A full health unit of Blood Knights, dude. Oh my god, that's gross. Jesus. Okay. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's definitely broken. It's a pretty big problem. Can't have that in the game. Jesus, dude. Yeah, it just reses all the models at full health and is just cackling at you. <laughs> there we go. So that's why raising undead, uh, resurrecting models is banned right now. The same thing would happen with the Lizardmen, I think. Truly undeath, yeah. Uh, okay, so seems fine. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's see the turn top turn finals. All right, host game as spectator. Send platypus an invite. So where's the platy? And then the winner of the top side. Yeah, do the festering stooges just do that also? It'd be funny because yeah, festering stooges do the festering stooges resurrect their own models? Yeah, rev crystals banned. Yeah, we already did all that, Zyphos. We already did all that. So let's look at the maps for the grand finals today. Let's see what they are. We have, um, we have Glinty Tooth's Crag, Celestial Lake. I will do Glade of the Everqueen instead. Um, should be fine. All right. So Glinty Tooth's Crag. It's a fun one. It's a very neat map. It's kind of like a subterranean greenskin-esque map. Yeah, vampires. Dude, vampires are just so strong. I was like looking at all the mechanics and I'm like, geez, dude. Like just all these things they have, like free raised deads and like, I'm just looking at my like witch hunter and just like, I'm like, come on, man, you got to step up your game. Look at that necromancer. He's like carrying the game. And you're just sitting there shooting at chaff units and doing nothing. 
They like they honestly probably could have just kept witch hunter damage being direct with accusation, and they'd actually be useful now. It's just they're so haggard. Yeah, lizards lizards are suffering too. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just uh, yeah, it only works on cavalry units. Like we could have something like, oh, you know, you can bring it, but you just can't use it on your cav. But like. That's like with vampires that can happen too easily because of overcasted spells and things like that. And the lore passive, it's just, it's just, it's just drama. Yeah, it's just drama. Yeah. So we like, obviously you saw a vampire game last game, right? So you guys got like to see that they can still play without that stuff. It's just, uh, they're a little bit more fair to be honest. Yeah, you can heal with corpse carts, all that kind of stuff. Cryptors heal themselves with, with the re regeneration that they have. So. It is what it is. All right, let's see. Hopefully, hopefully we don't have any lag in this series. Oh man, that screen's bright as hell. The dreaded two witch hunter gelt meta. Those were the days of old. Yeah, but people might try and sneak it too, and like your opponent might not see it. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a tough one. It's definitely a tough one. It's a great game so far. A good tournament today. It's been a lot of fun. It's uh, been a good six hour run. Probably take it easy tomorrow. Take the day off. Play in Super Ties tournament, maybe watch it. Not sure. We'll see how we feel. Doesn't feel like vampires without an invocation. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely a staple of their roster. It's been uh, it's been kind of their main their main squeeze for a long time. Surprised Skaven ever having a bad run today. I don't know if the high level players or like really high level guys are playing Skaven, but I uh, did not expect Skaven to get off to such a bad start. They're two and nine today, and that's definitely not. Yeah, you got to have I guess the right people playing on him. Dude, guys, the meta has been decided. The Ogre Kingdoms are your dark lords and saviors. Bow down before the one you serve. Greasus Goldtooth sits atop his pile of gold. Dark Elves doing great. High Elves, high elves are doing better. They seem, they seem fine. Yeah, a lot of factions kind of breaking even. Greenskins having a much better start than last season when they were like in the pits of hell. Beastmen with an eight and seven record. I think it's a lot of the new maps have like more dynamic play for these factions than just like lane battles, like MOBA, MOBA maps, which we've had in the past. God, remember how shitty Crossing Sea of Claws was? Like when we actually played on that map? God, that map sucks. It's like the choke points and just, yeah, yeah. I know, Platy. I don't know what's going on with the Skaven, bro. So, I guess the right people aren't playing or something. Kislev is usually where they belong. Um, yeah. I don't know what the hell's happening with this. Ogre Kingdoms haven't lost yet. They beat dwarves twice, actually. I don't know. I'd be curious to see how ogres beat dwarves. I feel like dwarves are very favored against them. But maybe I'm wrong. Like, what, slayers and quarrelers and shit? Like, how are you going to deal with that in, like, dwarf warriors? Empire always suffers. And then a couple Sigmarites appear and pull them out of the ashes, you know? Yeah, let's see who else. Norska's doing good as usual. Norska's a very solid faction. How's Nur Our boy Nurgle's at 50-50. They beat High Elves. They beat Norska. And looks like they lost the Wood Elves and Lizardmen. Lizardmen getting some Ws today. Yeah, we're in the Grand Finals now. We're just waiting for the uh, for the other side of the bracket to finish. It should be done soon. They've been playing a while, so. Hadrius will be back. Yeah, he didn't play today. He'll he'll carry his Skaven back to 50% at least. He will return. And, and just look to the east when you're in your hour of need. Hey, Deadshot. Thank you, man. Uh, dwarves, High Elves, and, and Kislev. Any advice? Yeah, Dwarves are, you know, typically just like good a good solid core of Dwarf Warriors with, you know, Corlers and or Thunderers with Slayers protecting them is a very solid comp. High Elves, Lothar and Seaguard are really good. Um, Reavers are amazing now with some of the cost reductions. Kislev is tough. I would say Kislev is in a, a very weak, bad place. They just need more stuff. Yeah. Yeah, of course, the Ogres games are due to the players. Correct. Like, once we get more games, Ogres will drop down. 100%. It's kind of hard to work around Globideers, though, Brian, in my experience. Like, Globideers are very, very strong. Like, and they're, like, they're so cheap, they only cost, like, 500. So even if you, like, really focus on bringing those guys down, you, you could just totally pay the troll toll. Oh, man. Here we go. There we go. So this map is very neat, the Glinty Tooth's Crag. This uh, this is one of our new maps made by Wacka Wacka 3000. 
he obviously, he was one of the big uh, big forces who helped everyone learn how to make Max in the first place. We have a couple bugged maps at the moment that are going to get fixed in the next few days. Um, but from there, we should be fine, and everyone should be able to enjoy them. So. Stop playing. Yeah, everyone should just quit playing Ogres, like, for now, like, forever, right? There's no more. Just leave them at the dreaded 100% win rate. You know what would happen then? You guys want to know what would happen? Creative Assembly would be like, all right, well, maybe we should go look and see what the win rates are. Oh, Ogres are undefeated? Man, we should probably nerf them, and then Ogres will get nerfed, and you'll just be suffering. Diving Globes with Furies is still a gold loss if the Furies... Yeah. Yeah, well, Globedeers have 100 armor, too. People forget that. So, like, things like Furies and Hounds, like, do kill them, but, like, the Skaven have time to get their own Ogres and Wolf Rats there to kind of support them and stuff, so it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. If you nerf Globes, though, you need to buff other things in Skaven, I agree. Same with, like, Empire. Like, if you nerfed War Wagons, you need to buff other things, because, like, without War Wagons, like, Empire would just be, like, kind of a meme faction. They still all kind of are, in a way. Yeah, unfortunately. But what can you do, man? What can you do? So let me check in on that other series, see how we're looking. Did not expect it to go this long today. I guess it went a little longer. Best of, I haven't had best of three tournaments in a while, so I suppose it takes some getting used to. So uh, let's reset this. Platypus is in the right spot. He could be facing the dreaded to be determined. And let's look down here. All right, where are we at? Yep, Samurai Style and Void are still playing. A little message, Samurai Style. Let's see where they're at. You guys are on. Cheers. All right, so just send them a message. We'll see what they have to say. They're probably, I would imagine, on their last game. It could be, they could have gone to game three, which would be pretty incre pretty incredible. With Yeah, War Wagons are really important for the Empire, I'm telling you. Like, you can kind of play Empire without them. Just play, like, with their cavalry and some of their shooting and their artillery. Empire does have good artillery, too, but your infantry are just so bad. War Wagons are just such a strong utility piece. Like, the War Wagon combo with um, Earthblood... Like, Empire went from being, like, a 30% win rate faction, then everybody figured out how good War Wagons were and started using them, and then they went up to, like, 50%. And then they just stayed, like, around there. Yeah, so. All right, perfect. Still chilling out. Got some other cool maps to explore, too. There's so many. Um, the current maps that are bugged, to my knowledge, are Celestial Lake. Uh, let me give the players the maps as well. So I'm going to send them to Platy. So we are going to be doing... Glinty, Toof's Crag. Then we're going to replace that one with Glade of the Everqueen, I think was the other one. Where are we at? Up on the top here. Uh, yeah, and then Black Ark. All right, cool. And then Black Ark. Great. So, yeah, Samurai and uh, Void must be in game because it's, uh, it's going down there. The Empire Grenade Launcher ROR is the most... Oh, you mean the one from Campaign, yeah. What is the win rate of Lizardmen? Well, in the last patch, it was like 30-something percent. Now, we don't really know, because it's day one of, of, uh, of, the new, of the new season and the new stats, so we don't really have like conclusive data yet. Yeah, High Elves have definitely been spamming Lothar and Seaguard and Reavers, but that's also what they did before Bantu. But it just wasn't as good, because they were a little bit overpriced. So, yeah, High Elves needed that. Let, let's not let's not be calling high elves op yet we gotta we gotta let them have their time in the sun they've been terrible for years high elves have literally been terrible since like the dawn of time just just give them this moment in the sun let's not let's not put them in the trash yet yeah empires like stand your ground is such a crappy army ability <laughs> it's like you get like four melee defense and some leadership if you're near a lord it's like oh lovely that's impactful you know <laughs> that's great all right, so we sent Platy the maps there. And uh, I could take a look at some of the maps as well. Let's look at the other RORs real quick. We'll uh, rehost when ready. All right. So let's go look at some of the RORs in the meantime. We got a little time to kill. So let's do that. Let's do this. Go skirmish versus AI. So we looked at the Nurgle one, the farting guy. What is the corn one? The corn one is is this thing. It's corn's bloody fist. So it's an anti-large dude, and he gets the gore shell. So he gets ten percent ward save when he's in range. Huh. 
That doesn't seem that good. Like, it's so expensive. Like, I would probably rather just pay 350 less. I mean, he does have better stats too, right? Yeah, he's got better stats. I don't know if I'm a big fan of the Corns, the Corns guy. I don't know. Could you tell us who, uh, who Skaven lost to by chance? Yeah, so if you go to Total Tavern, you can look, Bryant. Um, you can pull it up. Just go to the stats and look. But I would look at last season for Skaven. Like, go back to the previous season, which you could do at the top, and you can see, like, more of an accurate place of where the Skaven were before. So, yeah, Skaven were doing fine. They're really good. They're, like, a strong faction, but they have a very high skill cap. Skaven are not easy to play. So, Kislev. Let's, let's, t let's test the bear out. So, we got, we've looked at those. Slanesh has the Cenobite. It has the, um, the Marquis of Masochism. Like a, what, Enfeebling Foe and, yeah, Phantasmagoria. Feasting on fear, so it heals when it's routing things. It's very, very uh, Cenobite for sure. Very Hellraiser-esque. I'm trying to think what other ones we would want to peek at here. Cathay's got the damage reflection guy. Kislev, we, I would like to see what the bear looks like, actually. Uh, let's go look at the bear. Border Orson. Here they come. So where's the bear? The bear, the frozen heart of winter. So... He costs 500 more gold than the standard bear. Comes with a minor stat increase. Uh, and has... Does the other one have a chilling aura? It does. Okay. So it's got one Heart of Winter. Elemental Breath. 25% physical resist. And this thing is... Yeah, like... Dude, 500 gold for a Heart of Winter bound is pretty steep. I mean, maybe if you went with like a double Patriarch build or something like that. Maybe. I don't know. That that seems like a seems like a, a tall order to me. Let's, let's see what he looks like in battle. Yeah, like almost like I almost would just rather take a regular bear, but I guess Heart of Winter is a decent spell. It's it's not great. I mean, it is super what twenty one's a magic spell, so okay. Maybe if you were playing a faction where uh, you know they're going to be an infantry blob, like vampire counts or something, you just kind of bring this bear with some patriarchs and he's uh, how long on the stream left? Well, we have one more best of three, so however long that takes. Between these two mighty chads. Yeah, I keep watching the replays last season to see how I can... They're meant to be played. Yeah. It's not overcasted, is it? No, of course not. So elemental bears, they're good in land battles. I would say better. Because you have to deal with them. Whereas in Dom, you can kind of ignore them to an extent. I mean, you still... They'll still fight on one objective, right? So... Yeah, this thing looks cool. I mean, in campaign, this is great, right? It's just, it's just uh, kind of more of a multiplayer... On well, campaign, it probably think probably costs like a thousand gold, anyways. The dreaded elemental bear. And you can cast a heart. Oh, so he just casts the heart of winter right on top of himself, so you don't get to aim it. That makes it even worse. I thought it was gonna let me cast the heart of winter. Like, if you want to make this unit actually good, like heart of winter. If you wanted to buff Kislev, you could make heart of winter be like at, like almost as good as like as good as dwellers below, right? Like dwellers below costs so much less wins. It's so much more punishing. Like, like, that's not that good. Like, it took a little health off some Marauders, I guess. It a slow speed, I guess. And that's that's its final form. Which value has it gotten so far? Yeah, about a thousand. It's going to be hard for this thing to pay for itself. It's going to be hard. It's very cool, though. Like, I would definitely recruit this in my campaign. It moves with the bear. Oh, it follows the bear? Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, what matchups would I use this against? Maybe Corn. Nah, Corn has got like them, some magic resist. Uh, Corn does struggle with big monsters. I don't know. Maybe it's decent because it is it is a big slow, so it follows him around. Yeah, that that's a good point. You can use it on the bear and then chase the units so they can't escape. Yeah, that's actually pretty badass. In terms of competitive viability, though, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, so uh, next up. We looked at the Cathay guy, and we looked at, I think, most of the demon ones. Zinch has the, the the golden chicken. He's got Gehenna's golden golden dogs, that sort of thing. It's okay. It's, it's, it doesn't really excite me that much. And this guy, does his ward save scale or anything? Let's go, let's go let's like, test him out against like, uh, like a mammoth or something. So put this mammoth here. We'll see if he can, if he can beat a mammoth. The new R o R Ogre R O R. Oh yeah, that's right. We gotta check that one too. Oh, uh, the big bear I would say is like not meta. Kislev is just so weak though. I mean, man. People need to maybe start exploring new tactics with Kislev, because they're just in the pits right now, man. 
They're very weak. They're such a cool faction. Very strong roots. You know, their passive is so good. Like, if the Empire had their passive, they'd be so strong. But yeah, the roster is so limited. It's just so bare bones. It's just so bare bones. The Zinchar War has... It has 90 armor, I think. That's what I saw. Okay, so this thing has a base of 10%. It doesn't scale, but a large enemy presence nearby. So, I mean, you're just getting a Blood Letter with 10% ward save. That's conditional with slightly better stats. Probably gonna like lose to this mammoth. These things are so janky. Does look cool though. I'm like a big scary demon. He's got his whips and things like that. Kind of struggling with this mammoth a little bit. Yeah, so the ward save ability is active right now. He's getting 10% ward save. All right. But it's conditional. There has to be something large nearby. So maybe, maybe, maybe you could see him against like lizard men. But then he's gonna get wrecked by chameleon skinks pretty bad. Like some Lizardman players, they usually will bring some to big stuff, like almost always. Because you can't just rely on Saurus. Otherwise the Corn Infantry will kill you. They'll defeat your Lizard Infantry, so... Yeah, okay, I mean, it, it obviously crushes the Mammoth. Anti-Infantry monster. Not bad. I mean, but a regular one would probably do that as well. And it wouldn't cost as much, so... Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's quite a steep one. It's quite a steep one. Alright, so let's look at the Ogres. Uh, the Ogre Kingdoms, where are they at? All right, here's my boy. Uh, we got the Sky Striders. Yeah, this one seems decent. So let's get let's get some uh, some Dowie shooting. So let's get a couple like Thunders and then some bows, and we can get a cannon too. Okay, Slaughter Master of the Great Maw. Sure, sounds good. Let's load in and try this. The Ward stacks with the twenty percent physical resist. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, Heart of Winter, if, if they gave that bear two charges, we'd be talking. We would be talking 100%. Yeah, we're just waiting for the Grand Finals right now. Void Laws is battling Samurai style. They've been in a long... They must have gone to Game 3, which is pretty crazy. So, uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on there? It has way more anti-large than a normal Bloodthirster? Okay. That makes it better. Yeah, it did seem like it dunked on that Mammoth pretty quick. Alright, so this thing has... Yeah, standard. Um, it has the glacial defense, so it loses speed, but it gets additional 20%. Uh, so it's up to 40? When is it, is it, do I need, oh, I have to activate it? Ooh, do I get to click it and it just stays? Yeah, that kind of sucks a little. How long does it last? 60 seconds, 20, only 21 seconds. That's kind of a bummer. I guess it has the frostbite, right? It looks cool. I mean, I guess it's not bad. So you lose some speed, you get a f hell of a lot of armor, about to say something else, and 20% uh, missile, putting you up to 40. Okay, so let's get in a range of these guys. I'll be shooting here in a second. Okay, so we popped it. I mean, that's a lot of firepower that it's eaten, for sure. I guess if you need, like, a bunker-busting type unit, but, I mean, yeah, obviously that... That's a, not the greatest test. Dwarf shooting's pretty mean. You can get a Slaughter Master to cast like Trollgus on it or something. Like, I just wish it had like maybe 10% extra resist and it wasn't an activatable. What's the cooldown on this thing? Okay, still pretty disruptive. Let's get in there. They're such a weird unit sometimes, these Stonehorns. Yeah, I, I just wish it was... I, I really don't like those kind of activatable abilities like that, like activatable buffs. It's kind of like in Magic the Gathering when you have... Um, when you have a unit that, like, or a card that doesn't immediately have an impact coming onto the table, it's just not nearly as good, right? I guess you could stack this with, like, the Toothcracker to give them a little bit more resistances. I guess the cooldown's not that long. Okay, the Ogre broke. Did we get the, the spell on? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I mean, this thing's disruptive for sure. I can see Ogre players maybe bringing it. Regular Stonehorns have been brought as, like, a bunker-busting unit to get in, and then you use, like, a fat troll guts to, like, heal it up. You know, that's not bad. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Seems okay, yeah. Like, but even that like very small dwarven shooting position kind of gave it the business. The Cathay Terracotta Sentinel just seems way, way better for that. Like, if you guys are just joining now, we can show you that real quick before we do the grand finals. All right, Meow's coming. And uh, let's actually try this and see what that looks like. That'd be kind of fun. All right, let's check here. All on. It's been a fun stream tonight, guys. We're getting there. We've been on this journey together. 
I know it's getting late, or I guess early for some of you guys in Europe. You've tuned in for the the duel of fates, the grand fight, the grand finale between these two champions, whoever it may be. Yeah, late night stream. Late, it's all good. I haven't streamed in a couple days, so it's good to get back at it. I'll we'll probably take tomorrow off. So, all right. So here's the terracotta. Yeah, I was gonna hustle. So this is this thing is the coolest. It has like a damage, re like it reflects ammo. So it doesn't reflect the cannon shots, obviously. It needs to be hit. So let's see if it... Okay. Wow. Is that thing... <laughs> the dreaded AI, dude. Okay. Is it protecting? It's not protecting Mao. They're just missing, right? All right. So this actually seems like it could be a pretty fun Cathay strategy. You just, like, get in there. Let it, like, charge in. Earth flood it. Oh, my God. Come on. Get a little closer, geez. We're trying to demonstrate something cool here. All right, so we'll just like park it right here Ready and keep me out back there. Okay, here comes the shooting. Oh, the cannons reflect back. Oh, that's that's for sure the coolest ROR. And look, oh my god, look at that. All right, that's that's really cool. Because this thing's gonna be kind of hard to take down once it gets into your lines. Plus, terracottas are like unbreakable too. Oh, meow, meow's out of the aura, so we need to get her in there. Oh, no, she doesn't need to be in the aura. Okay, so it's just that unit. <laughs> Look at that. Just reflecting all that shit, man. That's so good. Yeah, even the cannons are getting it. Although, now I'm out of range of the cannon, so you'd have to, like, move into range here. Come on. There they go. All right, so Meow can get in and attack these guys. Yeah, see, they're trying to shoot. Cannon's just reflecting it itself. Meow is obviously a very good fighter. She could just heal herself and uh, use the Wrath of the Storm. This is the this is the coolest one. Yeah, this is the coolest R War. Of all of them, Cathay definitely won the won the fun unit. And actually maybe good. In some matchups. Like maybe, maybe good. Okay. Outstanding. Why do my lizards have something like that? I know. It's it's really good into blasting charges. Oh I bet. I bet it's really, really good into blasting charges, yeah. Uh let's look around here. Yeah, we look the Cenobite one doesn't seem like it's worth looking at, I don't think. Yeah, but we could try it into Dwarven Blasting Charges. Let's do that. So let's get some Dowie Blasting Charges and, <laughs> and see what that looks like. That's going to be really interesting. I don't think it's going to be overpowered. Blasting Charges will do the trick, right, Duff? Yeah, for Uncle's okay. I don't know. I, I still think with Nurgle it's like... Yeah, I don't know what matchup I bring him. Maybe I'd bring him against Beastmen or something. He does. I mean, it's a self heal. He's got Spirit Leech. He's still a big scary monster. I don't know. I don't know where I would bring like the big Nurgle beast. There's so much new, like so much stuff to explore. We got our new season going. Shit's gonna get wild for sure. All right, so let's get Homeboy over there. You just go say hello to the blasting charges. Yeah, Lizardmen definitely have gotten some terrible units in their DLCs. Yeah, blasting charges are probably gonna get wrecked really bad. Let's see. <laughs> Jesus. Alright guys, throw, throw your blasting charges. Come on. Do what your friends did. Clearly it works. There you go. Oh, that's so funny, dude. Like what is with the AI not attacking? That's so obnoxious, dude. Okay, we just get Meow off the battlefield, I guess. Like what is this shit? Like, why is it not fighting? Like, I could just attack it and it just probably wouldn't even fight back. You know, it's just gonna keep marching? Okay, at least that one did. Now it's now it's there. So yeah, the, against blasting charges, dwarves will still... Oh. oh my god, that's so funny. That's so funny, dude. Okay, Meow's off the battlefield, so now they'll stop messing around. Oh, man. And against Gaven Globes, it'll do the... <laughs> it'll do the exact same thing. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? He's a pretty good fighter, too. Yeah, redirecting aura. This little bit of fiendish battle magic rains missiles back to the attacker. Cathay's really... Not Cathay, but CA's really trying to make reflecting missiles work. They failed with Missile Mirror. Nobody uses it. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> they finally succeeded. Maybe they'll finally get us to use it. In camp Do you know how abused this is going to be in campaign, though? Like with the dumb AI, just like moving into a shooting army and just letting them, you know, take themselves out. Oh my god, that's gonna be so fun. 
That's going to be amazing, guys. That is going to be quite hilarious. Okay, so nothing from uh, from Void Lulz and, and the top side yet. I messaged them both with no response, so they must have gone to a very competitive game three. This is certainly a long wait. I would play games, but my hand's killing me, so... Can we actually load into our custom maps on here? I don't think so. Yeah, that's a bit of a shame. So we'll get back to the lobby. We've kind of looked through everything we want to look through at this point. And uh, oh, it looks like there's some people playing on the new maps. That's pretty cool to see. Host as spectator. Does it reflect tower shots? Ah, oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I have to get in campaign. Cloak of Jet to get it in without getting shot and then profit. That sounds really good. Versus Skaven, Coast, and Dwarves. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that could be that could be really oppressive. I'm surprised we haven't seen it yet today. Can you try the Green Guardian against the Luminarch? Oh, it'll work. It'll work all right. Stack Missile Mirror on him. <laughs> oh man, can you make the Sentinel invisible and faster? Yeah, you can use it, like Dov plays in chat said. Um, you can use Cloak of Jet on it to make it sneak up on someone. Because Cathay already does that with their Lords. They'll sneak up on you with, um, they'll sneak up on you with, what's it called? Uh, the dragon blooded lords and they'll drop like summons on top of your artillery or, or uh, talents of the night or something like that It feels really bad. What trades efficiently against Saurus warriors? A lot of things Most infantry any any sort of armored infantry will trade very well against Saurus Anything with high melee defense Saurus have uh, Saurus have really bad combat stats. They just hit hard, but if you have like high melee defense and armor, they're not they're not gonna touch you Yeah, hopefully that answers your question The crucible was a lot of fun that was a great map today. I had, I had a good time with that one. Glinty Toof's Crag is coming up next. Still nothing from those guys. Man, I have no idea what's going on. I know it's getting late. I feel bad for the players. We could always have them um, finish tomorrow too if they want to. That's not a problem. We, we fixed the website so we could do that. So if um, if Platy would want to finish tomorrow, and Void Laws for Void Laws, it's also 5M. Um, would they finish? I'm down either way. All right, just checking with Platypus. I know for Void, it's like literally like... Void's been playing all night. It's like 7 or 8 a.m. for him. And also, Samurai Style, I think, is European as well. I'm not sure, actually. We'll see who ends up winning. But we'll see what Platy says. What factions are they playing? I have no idea. Like, we finished the Platypus series, and we've just been kind of waiting on him. Sounds good. Platypus wants to finish it tonight. Totally, totally understand. It's only best of three, so it shouldn't take too long, but yeah. Saurus and Lord. Yeah, Saurus are, uh, they're okay. I'm not the biggest fan of them. You know, I really thought they would be good at like just swamping objectives and things like that with uh, with all those kind of goodies, but it, it didn't, uh, it didn't appear to be the case. Yeah, it didn't appear to be the case. Yeah, Nurgle, no, you wouldn't bring Fur Uncle against, um, Against the uh, what's it called lizards because chameleon skinks will tear him apart and salamanders like shooting fire at him He's just gonna get trash canned for uncle would be brought against like factions with really subpar shooting or none at all Like maybe against corn you could bring him um, You could maybe bring him against like beast men. He might be like a decent anchor in that matchup that you can kind of heal It's tricky yeah, it's tricky for Nurgle. Nurgle, you would think, would be good. I mean, they have so many strong mechanics, like AoE healing, Mortis Engines, but I guess some of their units just aren't that good. Um, White Lions should defeat Saurus head-to-head, -head, yeah. They should. I don't know about, like, no problem, but they, they'll win it. Their armor is just, uh, their armor is a really big, big factor as well. Oh. Okay. Uh, give me code, please. I will cast it. All right, so we're, we, they actually just went to game three. I don't know what's going on there, but oh man, that must have been a really contested series. It's 1-1. One, one. I'm going to go cast the last game right now between these two. So we'll cast uh, Samurai Style versus uh, versus Void Loss, game three. The big schemes are afoot. Void Loss is a vampire count main. He likes all that kind of stuff, so... Uh, Obviously, it's going to be harder for him when he can't use those things. So he's probably having to play factions he maybe doesn't main. or. But that's what you get for maining an OP faction. You have to pay the troll toll. All right, so let's go here. You <laughs> should feel bad. All right, so this is going to be Void. Oh, my God. Did we actually have a Warriors of Chaos game? Samurai style. 
And let's get that going. Great. All right, so 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I have no idea what that last game could have been. So they're on game three of the semifinals, which the map is going to be. The Indu Elemental Bear could be interesting. I, I think it's too early to say anything's like trash. You know, I would like to play test myself a little bit. Um, for the semis, uh, the map is going to be... Where is that maps? And we got Altorf Graveyard. Yeah, so we cast, we saw this one earlier. All right, so all good. Once armies are finalized, five minutes to build. All right, cool. Good luck, have fun. All right, so we don't know what the matchup is yet. Let me actually double check this. Um, so I will go to the intermission and we can look and see the armies here. Holy shit, did we actually have a corn versus a... Uh... We had a corn Warriors of Chaos game last game. I would imagine Warriors of Chaos dominated that one. Yeah, it looks like it was... Perhaps that's what it was. 1-1 one, one, though, this is, uh, this is big. <laughs> Vampire counts have always been the problem child. You know the meme of like the two ladies like pointing at the cat like sitting behind the table and it's like hissing and like what you know like why you got to go and mess it like that's vampire counts they're like the little cat sitting behind the table just ruining ruining balance ruining ruining with bugs they have infinite winds of magic with their their forbidden rods and manfred it's just so, they're just so cheesy and toxic oh my god vampires are such a toxic faction they always have been like when we used to have to deal with rule breaks in tournaments like it was always the vampire counts you know, it was always like someone, some, some of that shit, you know? Yeah. It's always, it's always them. They're always the problem children. Vampire counts have, I think, been the most problematic. And now Slanesh is like the vampire counts of game three. Like, you know, ner every mark of chaos has like some, like, isn't like, you know, has some downside to some extent. But like, then Slanesh is just like, here, get ITP on your whole army. Let's get some physical resist on every single unit you have. Just, just here, have everything. Just have every good, good mechanic. Have a hundred speed, you know, bonus for infantry on your chaff. That's like really, really cost effective. Yeah, Heinrich isn't terrible. He's de he's definitely decent. So let's see here what they're saying. Sounds good. Sounds good. Hopefully the game doesn't lag. Yeah, we got it. We got to hope for the best here. Did not expect this to turn into a seven-hour marathon, but hey, we're here. We're doing it. Yeah, vampire counts like probably need to be redesigned from the ground up to be made properly. It's just like, but it's not going to happen. You know, it's okay. We need to have a villain that everybody hates, and so then when they lose, it's like you know, <laughs> feels good. Yeah, the slanesh mark needs to have some sort of a penalty. It's like it, it does. Like they need to be more glass cannon. Slanesh needs to be way squishier, but they're just not. They're like actually tanky because of ITP, and they have warriors and armor, and like yeah, it's crazy. Uh, remember when summons didn't vanish? Oh my god, Pepperidge Farm remembers. Those were the days of old, man. Those were the days of old. Those were dark times we lived in. Alright, looks like it's gonna be Norska, maybe? Oh, we're on- Oh, Norska versus Skaven. Hey! Whoever wanted to see good Skaven play, you're about to see some. It's gonna be the dreaded Void Lulls, bringing up the Skaven uh, from the pits here, or attempting to. Samurai Style took a game off him. Void Lulls 1-1. And now we're here. It's Skaven versus Norska. All right. Uh, all right, so five minutes. Five minutes to pick. Good luck, have fun. So we're gonna give him five minutes here just so we're, you know. Although, who cares? We're already in the long haul. Let's just, let's just fasten them belts in and enjoy each other's company. I'd love to have a coffee with you guys right now. It'd be nice. Hmm. Yeah, Slanesh is not glass cannon. They sh yeah. Maybe they should have given Slanesh some armor platypus, but like make the armor worse. So, like, Slanesh Chaos Warriors have, like, 65 armor because they're, you know, they're not wearing as much of it. They're, they, they prefer the nude. <laughs> like, that would be a good change. Like, you can give them more damage but make them really squishy. So, like, if your opponent hits them, they get punished. It's just, like, Slanesh wasn't as bad before because when, but, man, when they got all that stuff, oh, my God. It was just bad. Yeah, give Slanesh zero melee defense. I'm down. Sign me up. They're so oppressive, dude. But I, I think that Creative Assembly will fix... I think they'll get it in the next patch, whenever that is. 
Like I think I think it takes them like two development cycles to like get it, and then when they get it, it's fine, right? Like it's it's, it's how we roll. Yeah, back in Warhammer One, infinite summons were a thing. Oh my god! <laughs> exactly, Platy. Exactly. Man, going back to Warhammer, I was going back and looking at some of my Warhammer One videos the other day. It's it's trippy. That was like 2016, right? God, that was crazy. I was like in my like late, I was in like my mid twenties. I'm just all old and decrepit now. <laughs> yeah, Skaven versus Norska though. It's a fun matchup, it's a classic. I think, uh, I think both of them have tools. Honestly, we've had some really, we've had really, really good matchups today. We've had really, really good matchups. So, let's see what happens. We will see what happens. Yeah, Hellstriders are the big problem. If you nerf Hellstriders like properly, God, I'm like afraid that Creative Assembly is going to nerf the anti-large ones, and then the the, the Hell Scourge ones are going to we're going to find out they're OP too. Like that's my big nightmare that that's going to happen. But you know that's why global bans are in the game. I think if we get a proper balancing patch that fixes like Slanesh and Warriors of Chaos, Warriors of Chaos just need Hellstriders nerfed, and they're fine. I think um, they'll be top tier, but they like you know maybe don't warrant a global ban all the time, right? You were a freshman in college when Warhammer One came out. I know. Yeah, Eagle Guy. That's that's actually how I got started. I was back in my uh, office at uh, my old job. Not an office, really. I uh, Well, I guess it was technically. It was like a satellite office, basically, where I, I ran sport. I was an athletic director. And I used to just watch Air of Carthage in my office. I would just be, like, binging, like, a full pot of black coffee to keep up with, like, all the stuff I had to deal with and just, like, watching Air of Carthage stream and just, just being like, man, this looks like fun. I want to try this. He actually, he's the reason I started. I started YouTube. It was him. Yeah. He was, he was, he was the inspiration. He was the muse. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, game three of the uh, top side semifinal match. It's going to be the dreaded Skaven. So uh, we got Night Runners. Wow. Four Night Runners. Jeez. Skaven Slaves, including the Haggard Skaven Slave power grab combo with the Chieftain. We got Globideers. Three of them. Wait. Poison Wind Globes, Poison Wind, Poison Wind. Yeah. And a single Natty Bubo Sharpshooter. Dude, this guy has like no front... Void Laws has like no front line whatsoever. Like none. He's got like two Skaven Slaves and two Ogres. That's his front line. He's just like... He's like, just walk into these globes and enjoy yourself. It's pretty crazy. At least in the chat saying, I was in middle school and Warhammer 1 was announced. Now I'm halfway through college. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, Eric Carthage is the man. He's super nice too. I got to meet him in person a couple times. And he's just like... He's just like a gem of a person. You can just tell. He's a great dude. I would actually love to do some casting with him. It'd be really fun to do some events. I know he's got a busy schedule, though. Like, he's usually busy during the day and stuff. But I feel like we could work something out. I'll have to get on that. But Marauders into the Sunset. Great weapons. Kind of an interesting choice against Gaven. Um, maybe he was expecting, like, a Storm Vermin wall? Or maybe he just wants more Marauder variants. Not 100% sure, but a lot of great weapons, including the Good Boys. So he's got the Norsk and Ice Wolves. The Walmart Flesh Hounds, as I like to call them. And it's going to be Wolfric the Wanderer, so uh, he's going to be trying to punish the Skaven here with some T-Fangs, which Void Lulls, uh has no front line, really. Just a couple of Skaven Slaves. Look at that! Look at that. Void Lulls uses his, like, starting 500 gold to just summon out mass Skaven Slaves. And that's how you just know those Globideers are coming for you, right? That's how you know they're coming. Night Runner is also a good skirmishing piece. They can fire while moving, and they can, uh, they can poke... Not bad in combat if they do get caught, but definitely very good against these Marauders. You're going to want some shielded units, that is for sure. So, but this way, Ice Storm Marauder is going to be moving out. We do get the uh, the nice poke, as well as the Gisales from downtown shooting into the Norskin Ice Wolf. So those guys are going to be getting their bread buttered. So far, a very good start for Void. Not a ton of value, but still he's got one of these guys doing about, you know, 80%, 70%. Gisales shooting in. Norska collapsing from all sides, so Samurai style up on the top does have the Marauder Spears and Norskan Ice Wolves. Looking like he's on his way in. And the battle will be upon us soon as Norska advances on the dreaded Skaven position. So, Skaven players, see if this works out for you, or Void Laws will contribute to the Skaven losses that we've had today. You're about to see how good Globideers are. Very nasty. Now, I wonder if, like, how Chariots would be. Like, just basic Marauder Chariots. I don't know. Feels like it'd be a little bit janky. Globideer Fire, they can... They can actually throw while they're on top of infantry, unlike a lot of missile units. So they get a nice one there. And these uh, rather expensive Ice Worm Rotters are going to be getting punished pretty heavily. But look at this. we got a Familiar Bale Fiend in here. I feel like he's going to drop a Pit of Shades. 
Oh, Pit of Shades coming down somewhere. So on the other side, we do get a Pit of Shades on top of the Globe of Ears. Very, very good. But look at the amount of damage the Globes are doing. Like, this whole Norskin battle line is just getting crumbed. But there's a lot of pressure coming in. On the top side, we got more Marauders. Seafang also coming in from Wolfric. And uh, Void Lulz, to an extent, is doing the dreaded Game of Thrones strategy. We're using your Trebuchets, a.k.a. Globe of Ears, in the front line to tank the Nightwalkers. So we'll have to see how that works out for him. This one, Globadier's going to get by. So if he stabilizes the Globes on the flanks, it's very strong because he can concave in and really start to cause a lot of problems. And here, the Marauder's Great Weapon's getting punished by Ogres. and so not surprised. Value trading's pretty even, though. Definitely a very, very good trade initially. Wolfric the Wanderer trapped in Skaven Slaves, not where he wants to be. And the Bale Fiend of Shadows does get on top of the Globadier's. So the Globadier's have been shut down. And objectives, one for Norska, two for Norska, and three for the Skaven. So the Skaven were able to kind of maintain. On the far side... While well, the Skaven Slaves are getting forced back. And we do get some Hounds in the back. So some of the good boys are chasing. Some Wolf Rats are coming after them. But if the Norsk and Ice Wolves of Samurai Style turn around and actually get a counter charge, they might be able to win. We'll see. He's microing pretty aggressively. And it looks like he does partially get that light counter charge, but a little bit tough. So Globes are melting the Norskin flank here. In the middle, it looks like Skaven are stabilizing. Ooh, Void Lulz actually summoned out the Council Guard. So the Council Guard going to be coming out with their Halberds and holding back the Marauders. Meanwhile, the Chieftain... Going to be uh, surging across maybe to go after Wolfric, who's out. Oh, Flensing Rune, yeah. So that's the other thing for Skaven that's really busted. If you guys want to win games with Skaven, there's a great point-and-click mechanic called Flensing Rune. Highly recommend it. Void Lulz pulling the value. Obviously, Wolfric got punished by Flensing Rune, which is just like a broken uh, broken version of... Uh, what's that spell called? Uh, Final Transmutation. It's, it's like what Final Transmutation lays in bed at night and dreams about, right? More Norskin Warhounds coming in. For sure going to get in there. Value is within 800, so it's not like Norska can't come back here. If they do manage to get some pressure in the backfield and like get their Gisales and all these Globadiers offline, that's when the Norskin Infantry are going to start you know, trading very, very well. Platy says, oh no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do it. It's going to be a bad time for you. Many, many have tried. Few have succeeded. So Beast of Tashnar, nice engagement with Norskin Spears. Beast of Tashnar are going to tear apart these Rat Ogres. And suddenly we see Samurai Style pulling the value back. You know, he gets on top of the Globadiers, shuts them down, gets on top of Gisales as well as Ogres with Spears and Anti-Large Hounds. And he's able to nibble on those guys pretty effectively now. Objective 1 owned by Norska, 2 by Norska, 3 owned by the Rat still. Looks like Pit of Shades going down to really finish these guys off. And now there's going to be Flensing Rune. This is basically going to end the game. Or be very close to it. Flensing Rune is going to hit all these units. Uh, oh no, that's Brass Orb. Okay, that was for Make It Claw. And there's the Flensing Rune. So that's going to hit the Maws of Savagery here, which are the ROR Ogres. No, it's just actually the basic skin bolts here. But Flensing Rune's going to just nail all those guys and just get a ton of damage. And you can see the, the whole Norskin army starts to buckle there. It just does so much damage. Well, not end the game per se, but certainly salvage a bad situation for this game. So reinforcements coming in. We get the Mistwalk, Mistalkers, the Femir ROR's. They do have good missile resist. Can certainly creep up on the Skaven. I don't know if they cause any terror. They do actually. That's actually quite impactful against Skaven. Some Marauders moving up to the high ground point. You need to make sure the Skaven slaves don't jack that objective from you. And it looks like the Skaven are contesting the middle. But Norska is trading very evenly. Samurai style, despite getting caught in a relatively tough situation at the beginning, is playing like an absolute chad. Very, very impressed with his play. In the backfield, Skaven. Uh, looks like they're clearing out these. But fighting in the backfield for Skaven never feels that great. And here you can see the Natty Bubo sharpshooters are being shut down while these Condom Wolves continue to fight to the bitter end. And uh, Skaven Globes are kind of out of the picture right now. So that gives Norska a huge opportunity to fight here. But Skaven definitely need this middle objective. That's going to be big. And I think for Norska, that needs to be one of their primary uh, missions here too, is to kind of hold that down. Skaven Slaves getting rear charged. Here we do have ye old Mistalkers uh, getting in there and probably going to start causing some terror. You'll see these Skaven Slaves get terrified here. Council Guard with only 22 models, so probably even the basic Marauders will finish them off. And uh, yeah, looking like Skaven are pushed back a little bit. Like, if you can effectively micro and shut down all of the... Uh... Yeah, there's a little bit of echo with my microphone because unfortunately where I live, I, I am in a, a wooden, like a room with hardwood floors and it's really difficult to soundproof. So there's a tiny bit of echo if you're wearing headphones, but aside from that, it should be okay. So Mistalkers battling side by side with the Bale Fiend, and we do get ye old uh, Skin Wolves moving in. Anti-large, hard counter against the Rat Ogres. But, you know, honestly, Samurai Style had some beautiful micro with all of the hounds and skirmishers to get into the back of the Skaven lines. It's been really, really strong. And, you know, with the Vampire Counts being bugged right now, taking away Void Law's main. Uh, granted, you know, if you're playing Void Lulz and you've ever watched Total War Warhammer, you know you're banning Vampire Counts in your global bans. Like, it has to happen, uh, or else you're going to be 
you know, paying the price. And that's kind of the cool thing. Like one thing I like about global bands is it's, it's been forcing me to learn other factions. It's actually been making me a more well-rounded player. Like I've started to pick up other factions, whereas before I used to always just kind of lean on the same couple factions. So it's given me a lot of knowledge um, aside from just balancing the game. Spears holding back Ogres, pretty substantial point lead, and a Flensing Rune's going to be going down. What a nasty spell that is. And that'll be... Dude, it lasts for like 30 seconds. Like that one spell is straight up just going to kill this Femir unit. Like it's just, it's just insane how long that spell lasts. Another 20... Like 30 seconds of just pure high damage punishment. So crazy. Now side objective, we do have the Beast of Tashnar looking to chase down some of these Skirmishers. For sure going to get them. Skin Wolves in the back fighting off some Wolf Rats, but looks like those Wolf Rats will win that fight. And in the middle... Skaven win because of the OP Flensing Rune, which is, uh, Flensing Rune is one of the things that really, really, that and Globadiers is the strongest combo for Skaven, like. Lore of Plague, yeah, screw that, you know, that's not, that's not gonna happen here, so. The Mistwalkers, Miststalkers, uh, trying to fight, but gonna get routed. Skaven have a really nasty Rat Blob here, which is, you know, their favorite thing. And one of the reasons why this game is close in many ways is because Samurai Style has not been unsummoning, uh, not Samurai Style, but Void hasn't been unsummoning his Globes. So he hasn't had his Globadiers in the pool to resummon, which has been giving Norska uh, a very good fighting chance because uh, the constant Globadier pressure would be very, very nasty for sure. So here they are. Marauders battling in. More Night Runners coming up. Will the Marauders be able to hold back the Skaven Tide? The only chance the uh, Norskins really have now is to try and play the flanks a little bit and, you know, pick, up, pick apart the Skaven army as it, as it surges to different points. And now we see some Norskin Warriors coming out, some Marauder Champions. Since there's no Globadiers, Marauder Champions are actually a good choice. And the Norskin Ice Wolves going to go hold that point. Meanwhile, on the other side, we do have the Marauder Spears trying to hold this one. So, yeah, Norska needs to hold its side point. It does have a big point lead, but, I mean, this is a long time to play. I feel like Void Laws has just years and years. Um, you can get a noise gate on OBS to fix it. Yeah, you know, I tried it. It actually, um, it doesn't quite work. It, it, it kind of like randomly mutes you and things like that. But thank you for the, uh, thank you for the feedback. Yeah. So here comes Marauder Champions. Going to be moving on over. <clears throat> trying to hold that point. I think Void Laws would still win on, uh, would he win on two? It's, it, I think he would. Uh, and here the Norsk and Ice Wolves are uh, going to be chewing on these, certainly doing some good work, while the Marauders almost get there. But if a single Globe gets summoned, it basically counters any good elite infantry units. Norsk is very behind in value right now, 9.6 to 7.4. So I don't think there's going to be any tools. I mean, maybe Norsk could send some units to the side point. Looks like they're going to do that, but it's such a predictable move at this point. That's why you usually start with infantry and then come in with speed. But at this point, you don't really have a choice, right? But Marauder Champions are up. Skaven have a ton of Rat Ogres here. Rat Ogres will actually be very, very good against Marauder Champions. They'll get in there with those big Power Fists, and they're going to plow these Barbarians. That is for sure. Yeah, that Flensing Rune spell is really, really nasty. The Skaven have taken over the game largely because of Flensing Rune. Uh, I think that was the big deciding factor. It killed Wolfric. Uh, without Flensing Rune, I think if Skaven go Lord of Plague, I think they honestly lose this game. Uh, based on the trading... And the fact that Samurai shut down all the Globid Ears, but the Rune was able to kind of carry that. And side objective, firm control for the Skaven. Ogres on their way over. Ogres will defeat Marauders. Marauders coming up. They'll get killed by this fat Zerg of Skaven. And it uh, looks like this objective is going to be getting taken by Void Lulls. And that will probably be game blouses. I don't see too many comeback mechanics here for your old Norska. They're down 2,000 value. I mean, unless Void Lulls, like, let's ick it die here and, like, somehow takes, like, some horrific trades... It just doesn't seem likely. Um, looks like some more Spears and Beasts of Tashnar are coming in. Because now Skaven have a triple cap on you. It's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. Beasts of Tashnar, though, with a big surround here, could punish the Skaven position. But there are Ogres as well as Clan Rats on standby to kind of screen those out. We do have some Rotters moving over here. That's nah, a cute play. They'll be able to kind of buckle these Wolf Rats, but it's not going to matter too much with the Rat Ogres uh, kind of giving them the dirty. So here they go. Trying their best. Marauders moving on to the point. Ogres are like, all right, it's my turn. Let's get those big ogre power fists up and uh, have some fun. So here they go. Boom, boom. Big colossal shots as you see the Marauders being sent to another dimension. And again, Void Lulls has got this game in the bag. It would take some colossal misplays, like colossal misplays. Marauder Spears in here are kind of a cute idea. Um, Skaven are losing the objective, but now Void Lulls has gotten enough points by having a triple cap that... Like, Norska would have to swing this one back somehow. And it looks like another Flensing Rune went down. So that, again, is just going to kill the entire Norskan army here. It's very, very strong. And we'll look at the value on Ikit Claw. Um, Ikit Claw's value is currently at 3,400, which is nuts, right? Like, if Balthazar Gelt and Final Transmutation were that good, that would just take Empire to a whole other level. It's it's just such an incredibly strong spell. Yep, GG well played. Norska's out. They got nothing. They're, they're literally tabled. They have nothing on the board. They have a couple routing Marauders. Uh, that's about it. So, GG, well played. A good match. 
really taking advantage. That's the Skaven meta, though. The Chieftain Lord, or the, the Skaven Slave Lord, unsummoning said Skaven Slave, uh, getting the old um, Chieftain to use the power grab ability, which is right here. And it gives your whole army plus eight leadership, which is very good for Skaven. And then, um, then yeah, just using Ikit Claw and reinforcements with Flensing Rune. It's, it's basically it. Hey, Tion, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, you know, you do it for a living, so eventually you get used to it. I don't know what Norsk is thinking here, dude. I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, Samurai played like an absolute beast today. He played very, very well, but it ain't going to do it, brother. It ain't going to do it. You are going to pay the old troll toll. And uh, we see some spirits moving up. Like a single Globadier summon coming out, summon it comes out and just counters like this entire Norse can push. This entire Norse can push. Yeah. And Skaven had some really good tools here. They really, really did. Um, the one thing you got to avoid against Skaven is blobbing up now. They really punish you with flensing. Skaven, of course, have matchups that are bad for them still, but you can see the strength of this combo. Voidlaws was losing for a while, though. He was, until he got those big AoE punishments, and that was able to do it. So, looking back here, we got a couple of Marauders. But yeah, like, Void's passed him in points now. It's like 951 to 890. We got some Wolves coming out. Looks like he saved up, but like, Voidlaws is banking 2,000 resources. He's waiting to see where the Norskin army goes before he really commits. He's kind of memeing now. He's sending in the Chieftain. And, oh, he's just baiting another Flensing Rune. Dude, that spell is so gross, man. Oh, my God. So that's going to just kill these units. Uh, I don't know if it stays with the unit when they leave the area. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, so it looks like Flensing Rune... No, it does not. So if you move out of the circle, it will mitigate some of the damage. Yeah, and it, it, it does a bit of work. It just lasts a long, long time. It seems really good against characters, too. Void Lull's sitting on 2,500 resources. He's just kind of flexing here a little bit, saying, you know, hey, I don't need to summon anything. I got this. Just going to use Ikit and company to get the job done. Ogre is a very, very good unit for uh, for uh, only 700 gold. Very fighty. By Skaven standards, 66 leadership is pretty good. They're uh, they're doing fine. Here comes the Beast of Tashnar moving in. Again, don't really know what he sees in this. Globideers are going to just kill all this all this stuff. Like It's all dead. Beast of Tashnar will get around the side, but Ogres plus Wolf Rats will trade well into them. And a couple Spears are cute, but that's pretty much it. So... With this being said, the Grand Finals, most likely, unless Void Lulls withdraws from the tournament randomly, because he's tired, is going to be Samurai Style, or excuse me, Void Lulls versus uh, Platypus, which is a very high-level matchup. These are two of the best players in the world going at it, so that will be a very interesting best of three to have. Very, very interesting best of three. And again, Norsky moves up. Void Lulls is still banking like 3,000 resources. If he really wanted to, he could be like sweating and unsummoning units here. Like, Void Lulls could unsummon Council Guard and resummon them. Like, to really just put the nail in the coffin. But I think he's just being lazy. Because he knows it's over. He knows there's no chances. And, uh, like, even if Norska got this objective back, they'd still have to muscle these two objectives, which would be basically next to impossible. Norska is popular because of Marauder Horsemasters. Yeah, I would agree with that sentiment, Proto Man. I think that's a big reason they're popular. Um, they also have pretty cost effective infantry, which, you know, is important for objective control. Yeah, Norsk is a pretty limited roster. They could definitely use a DLC. Um, if Norsk gets a DLC with actual good units in it, they will become a top... They're already like an upper mid-tier faction, but they will be very, very strong. Very, very strong. So, yeah, I don't know why he's not leaving. It's very strange. Like, this game is so over. He's just been sitting here, like, kind of dragging us through the mud for a couple of minutes. What chances does he think he have? Is he trying to... Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know why he's staying in this game. Like, very perplexing. Is he trying to troll his opponent or something? I have no idea. It's kind of like in Age of Empires when you defeat somebody, like an open field, and then they like, they just stay in their base and make you kill them, and it takes like an extra 20 minutes. GG! Void Lulls in the Grand Finals versus the Platypus. Let's get this party started. Well played to Samurai Style. Taking a game off Void Lulls is not easy. Few, very few people have done it, so hold your head up high, brother. You have done it. Me and the boys watching at 2 a.m., hell yeah. William, thank you for the uh, for the uh, membership for 30 months. Damn, that's a long time. Thank you, my friend. All right. Thanks for the tournament coverage. You got it. Just hanging out with you guys. It's good. It's, it's, my, it's my social life. So let's get you. And let's get you in here. And maps. I sent Platypus the maps. We'll send them to Void Laws as well. And let's get on the Glinty Tooth's Crag. And we've finally arrived to the Grand Finals. No, no biggie, just about seven hours in. I actually thought the stream would be over in five. Yeah, I really did. Damn, pulled an all-nighter, but it's almost 8 a.m. Hey, go get some rest. Go get some rest. You'll, you'll be able to watch the finals tomorrow, yeah. Platypus is here, establishing dominance with the Bretonian badge. 
And Void Laws is on his way in. Yeah, Skin Wolves are great. They're a good unit. They're regenerating anti-large fast. You know, they fight pretty well. Good staying, decent staying power, despite having low armor and low melee defense because of the healing. Platy's coming for it. No, he, he pulled an all-nighter by staying up to 8 a.m. So he stayed up all night watching the stream, and then he he's here. Yeah. That wasn't the grand finals. No, dude. This is this is the grand that was the semis. Okay, let's see here. Okay, Boyd Laws is here. Perfect. All right, so good luck, have fun. Map is set. And let's see what he can do. The Glinty Tooth's Crag. I think uh, Platypus is somewhere in the States, so for him it's probably not too bad. Void Laws is Void Laws is actually pulled an all-nighter. He's probably gonna sleep all day. I would imagine. <laughs> So brutal, man. Jesus. Yeah. I'm trying to think the last, the last time I pulled an all-nighter. Let's see. What year would that have been? So we're in 2022 now. Okay, yeah, okay. I think I think the wife and I might have pulled one. God, yeah. It must be like 10 years. No, maybe, I don't know. Was it sooner? I can't remember. It's been... I can't even remember. DNS, thank you for the stream turn. Epic tournament so far. It's been really epic. We've had some really good stuff. The board is set. The pieces are moving. Yes. I understand you're trying to do the Gandalf quote, right? Yeah, I got you. It's still early for me. Yeah, it's it's on it's not eleven yet, so we'll see what the players pick and ban. Uh, just to make sure I can get through this, no problem. I'm gonna go get some water and uh, maybe some tea as well, and we'll uh, we'll be back. All right, guys, I'm back. You know what we could do in the meantime? We could make thumbnails too. We could just sit here and like craft thumbnails while uh, while people uh, people are doing their thing. I think we got to do that someday. Have like a like a like a low key podcast stream where I just like craft thumbnails all the time. So I'll like get a bunch of videos ready and just craft them. Yeah, that could be kind of a fun one thumbnail stream. There's so many things to do. Life's too short, man. So Mantu says, uh, about 10 years ago when I was still in college, I pulled a 48 hour no sleep watching all Breaking Bad seasons. That's pretty awesome. Breaking Bad is such a good show. Oh my God. That's one of my favorite shows of all time. Like, remember the, remember the ending of the first season when like Walter like confronts those guys and like has the flash bomb thing he throws in there. And like, there's so many like iconic moments when like Walter White's like, I'm the one who knocks and I'm the, I'm the danger. And like, oh, it's just. It's so cool to see the transformation of this character. Even though, like, he's the villain, technically. Like, you're still rooting for him. It's like, yeah, Breaking Bad is just such an iconic show. It's so iconic. Had to pull an on audio yesterday at the hospital. I can only dream of the time I can say, hmm, when I was like, yeah, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully you can get some rest. Bob Ross meme stream. Oh, yeah, that could happen. All right, so let's see what the picks are going to be. Um, is it going to be the dreaded Demons of Chaos versus Bretonia? I seriously doubt it. Or is it? No way. No way this is happening. Is it Demons of Chaos? For Dude, the we're getting such weird matchups today. I don't know if that's what it's going to be. I did all-nighters playing HOM 3 with my friend. Yeah. Yeah, t that's the, that's the That's the life. I have to admit, like... Lately, I've been... Uh, I've been... 
when ever since I reinstalled Ultima Online, that like childhood like addiction has come back with that. Like I'm having to fight it. Like I find myself at like two a.m. I'm like, oh shit! I like I'm I'm just playing it all night and just like getting lost in it. And I'm like, man, Total War does that for me too. But like I I also like you know it's not something you really do on your own outside of campaign. Which yeah, you have severe insomnia. That's rough, foul. Sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, I have trouble sleeping sometimes too. I think everyone does to an extent. I grind the hell out of my teeth. My your first all nighter was a D two hot seat Diablo two. Really, that's fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Red Olgor has appeared on stream several times today. Like, several times. Is it legit Demons of Chaos versus Bretonia? That's just going to be the trolliest thing ever, if that is. I see builds in there for both these guys. Okay. Wow, they're going with Sweat. They're doing their global bans right now. So that's why it's taking a little time, because they're doing their globals. Yeah, yeah, but it looks like Warriors of Chaos did not get banned in the in their their series. So they, these guys are both going full sweat. So if you want to see the OP factions, you might actually get to see even Slanesh here. I don't know. That'd be really curious. Yeah, yeah. The the the, the gaming marathons are really fun. Like back, you know, I remember back in like two thousand four, two thousand five, like having friends stay over on the weekends, and we would just we would just put together our, our money and order like several Domino's pizzas just like and just sit there and just like game until like 5 a.m. like the sun would come up and then we'd just like start to pass out it was like oh man those are those are the 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 wild days I'm sure everyone here I'm sure has done that something similar at one point watching from my laptop yeah there you go well you guys have made it this far you're now you now you're up is like oh what a pleasant morning stream <laughs> we arise Hob 3 multiplayer is really good. Yeah, the, my only thing about Hom 3 is like, I played it as a kid, and then when I played it again as an adult and I started to learn the competitive strategies, like, I was like, oh, that's not as fun. Like the, like the really, really, um, sw like having like 30 heroes passing your units to one another. I don't like that. Like, I like having one hero that just runs around and does everything. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Reginald. Good morning, bro. Hope you're doing well. I miss Domino. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Pizza's so good. I remember having the last slices of pizza on top of your monitor, so they stayed warm. Dude, that's next level, Steven. Stefan, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, brother. That's that's next level. Good morning from dear old Germany. There you go. The Europeans rise. It's a great idea. Yeah, when the sun comes up, it feels really bad. You're just like, oh, God. Dude, are we, we're getting the sweatiest of sweat. <laughs> so we had an entire night full of like very fun matchups. And now you guys are going to see the unfun stuff. The Warriors of Chaos mirror match. So here it comes. Oh my God, this is going to be so, so bad. I'm sorry for all of you Europeans who just woke up to this. We've had amazing games all night with fun matchups. <laughs> but now you're here with the Warriors of Chaos mirror match. Mm. Yeah, that game's fun. The new uh, Heroes of Might and Magic uh Songs of Conquest. It's a good game. It's really good. Yeah, I enjoy it. Um, honestly, though, I just play Total War and Ultima now. That's it. Like Total War, Warhammer, and Ultima online, and occasionally Age of Empires. But my hands have been acting up lately, so can't can't do it all. It's eight AM sharp in the old world. That's true. Yeah, the old world calls. So Warriors of Chaos mirror match. Void Lols versus Platypus. The full sweat has been unleashed. Drenching themselves, they are. Uh, Platypus says, I'm sorry, chat. You see, at least he comes in here and apologizes. Void Law is just no no such pleasantries. <laughs> he says, I'm sorry, chat. Oh, I love it. I love that he's ap uh, apologizing. I'm actually curious, Platypus, if you're still here, what, what, were, what were the global bands in this series? Like, you guys have six global bands and this shit gets through? Like, come on, man. What's, what's going on there? I'm sorry this is the first one. I swear, if you go back, there was good-ass games, like, all day. Like, we had, like, Corn, Bretonia, like, crazy stuff all day. We had, like, Red Olgor getting up in here. The time for sweat has come. Void banned your Cathay. Interesting. Okay. You banned Cathay. Waits at the edge of the world upon a throne of skulls. That's, like, the coolest quote ever from the, uh, from the, from the Blood for the Blood God trailer in Warhammer 1. Oh, it's so good. 
No, there's no, there's, uh, so Reginald, this is a, a leader, the first tournament of season three of Total Tavern. And, um, whoever wins this is basically like all you really need to do to guarantee yourself a spot in the grand finals, which has between 500 to a thousand dollars cash prize is win a tournament during se a season. So, you know, whoever, whoever win like winning a tournament is a pretty big deal in terms of like qualifying and having a chance to be, you know, the top player in the world, uh, winning the championship. We had Moffitt win last season. And uh, yeah, now we're just starting. So it looks like Platypus says, Voidlaws ban Dark Elves, Grand Cathay, and Slanesh. And I ban Vampire, Vampires, Vampire Counts, and Zeech. Hey, see ya, Platy. I'm surprised, I'm surprised to see uh, uh, Vampire Counts ban, considering they don't have access to their healing. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, but I understand. Voidlaws is so good at Vampire Counts. Yeah, I, I get your bans, Platy. I think they're really good targeted bans. So... You guys ready for the Degenerate? It's Mass Marauder Horseman with Marauders and a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch with the Scepter of Instability for the Sniping Blue Fire duel. And Void Lulls, hey, guess what, guys? He's doing the exact same thing. He's got a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch with six Marauder Horsemen. And guess what? Else? Guess what's in reserve? Anyone who guesses is, is going to be uh, deemed as eternally wise. It is the dreaded Hellstrider, yes. So Hellstrider's going to be coming out and uh, win a million dollars. Oh man, that'd be crazy. That would be crazy indeed. You know, it'd be kind of an interesting thing to do for like tournaments too, is to do like, uh, like I, I, I don't know if it's a good idea, but to do like a global ban where every player, like every player in the tournament who's playing votes on a faction to globally ban, and then those factions just can't be played in the tournament. So you would do like six in total and the top six would just be banned out. He needed all this time to come up with this. I know, Reggie. Reggie, I hope to see you coming back soon. I swear that it's not what you think. The game isn't just like this. We've had so many fun matchups tonight. And I'm sure the next one will be great. So this is one of our new maps. This is Glinty Tooth's Crag. It's a beautiful green skin map here. We have uh, objective one, we have three, and, uh, and two. So these ones are contested in the middle. And then you have the side objective up on the hill, which is contested. So that is the jam. Yeah, and for anybody just joining, go back and watch some of these like great, amazing games. We've had so many nail-biting close games tonight. It's just been absolutely amazing for sure. Rider Horse Masters dueling each other. We have the Sausage, the Zinchian Warlords just kind of dueling each other, using their overpowered healing mechanics to enjoy their best life. And now up in the front, we do get the Marauders of Chaos moving up. Going to be trying to press. It, it's like... It's so hard to tell who's who. Even though they have different banners, it's like all the units are the exact same. There's like literally no variance in their armies. Except these Chaos Warrior Halberds versus Forsaken. That's like one change. And Forsaken are coming out. But basically you saturate your army with like mobile units and then you bring in the do the dreaded um, Hellstriders, right? No, they haven't all been Nurgle Mirrors. You take that back. We've had good matches today. Come on. We had Red Olgor appear three times on stream today. After getting his cost reduction, he's back. He's back. So Chaos Sorcerer moving up. Looks like Platypus is going to be getting a heavy infantry push, including some warriors and halberds up on this point. So Platypus should be controlling the top point. In the meanwhile, though, it looks like Void Lull is doing pretty well in the skirmishing fight. Most of the horsemen here for uh, for menacing Platypus have been heavily hammered, so those things are going to be in a little bit of danger. Reggie says, uh, mostly because of Uni, but you're still, still lurking here as always. I hope to see you back, Reggie. You've always been one of my favorite players, so I would really like to see you back in action. No pressure, obviously. Take care of your, of your IRL stuff. Now, Marauders of Platypus, defending. I like this idea. I think contesting the high ground here is probably the play. Like, pushing into your opponent here is, is a little bit precarious considering the vanguards. Like, Hellstriders, as soon as you overextend, Hellstriders are going to come and just go balls deep in your army, right? So, uh, I think playing this and just, like, fighting over the high ground is probably the preferential play against Hellstriders. Now, Marauders into Forsaken. Forsaken will tear them to shreds. And Forsaken are a very cool-looking unit. They're so badass. They're like Chaos has a lot of units that are totally balanced and fine. It's just the it's just the Hellstriders in the back pocket are just so nasty, and you'll be seeing them. Yep, here it comes. I, I was like starting to feel a little bit suspicious. I was like, oh, maybe the fifty gold cost deterred them. Oh, but no, it didn't. So look, Hellstriders coming in. We got two of those. We do also have some Chaos Trolls on their way in. Armored Chaos Trolls by the Menacing Platypus. Interesting. How are they going to fare? I mean, there's no Terror. There's no Bellicor being picked. Maybe. It does seem like Void Lalzo is getting like slightly better trades here. These Marauders are getting punished, and the Trolls are kind of overextending a little bit. In the meantime, uh, we do get Void Lalz collapsing with his Hellstriders in, crushing these basic Marauders. And the Halberd Warriors are a little bit late to the party, and we do see Hellstriders coming in from, uh, from Menacing Platypus as well. 
Meanwhile, in the middle, still a little bit of skirmishing going down. Some very, very sweaty micros, uh, micros those players play back and forth. But I really do think playing up on the high ground is um, it's just the way. Hellstriders of Platy do get an opportune charge and do a little bit better. Void Lulz, though, has his Chaos Sorcerer nearby. Probably going to be using some blue fire to help, while Platypus uses blue fire as well. Void Lulz up about 800 on the value trading. And Void Lulz brings in Chaos Spawn, and I think they're just going to perform straight up better than the Trolls, although... You know, we'll have to see how the trolls do. And, and that's not to say Platypus doesn't have his own spawn, which I believe got a cost increase as well. But currently, Void Lulz does have the double cap. He's uh, still just skirmishing. A lot of sweaty micro all over the battlefield. Nobody's really trying to take the objective down the low ground. Like I said, it's just kind of becoming a royal rumble up here on the high ground. As the Chaos Warriors uh, get a nice screen onto the horsemen here. You can see they're kind of blocking multiple units. In the back, another blue fire going down. Just spamming it to get guaranteed value on said units. But Void Lulz seems to just be dominating a lot of the fights on the high ground. His Hellstriders uh, overwhelm the Hellstriders uh, Platypus. Platypus's Hellstriders are dying to spawn here. And uh, I think I think Void is really just getting a lot of momentum. As he does control the objective, he secures a pretty substantial value lead. And like both of these builds are so like symmetrical that I don't think we're going to see any surprise unit that can pull the value back. You know, it's, uh, it, it's for sure not going to be the case. But yep, Marauders are on the run. And we do get the old Hellstriders to Slanesh. Yeah, thanks CA for not buffing them, nerfing them enough. Come on. Get on it for next season, hopefully, or next patch. Maybe in the hotfix they could do it. If they're going to be opening up the build, maybe for the hotfix, we can maybe t maybe whisper in their ear and see if they could get Hellstriders a, a substantial nerf, you know. Like, I, f I wonder if, like, Hellstriders even cost 800 gold if Warriors of Chaos would still kind of play in this, like, same fashion. So Chaos Warriors don't care. They can absorb it on their armor against those horsemen. But, yeah, Void Lulz is up 4,100 to about 3,000. He has some of the most insane micro I've ever played against. Um... So he's able to just dominate this point. He's got a massive superiority in terms of the Hellstriders. Platypus trying to get some decent trading with the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. And now it looks like there's a little bit of a aggression here in the middle. As Forsaken actually getting a melee with Marauder Horseman here. So we'll see. Hey, Reginald. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. Tournaments take up a lot of time. You should play in some of the best of one tournaments we have, which we'll have on tomorrow, um, where it's best of one until the semis. So, like, you just get to kind of mess around and have fun and get some games in and get on the leaderboard and all that sort of stuff. So... So yeah, Marauder Horseman and the Hellstriders of Slanesh. Pretty much just grinding against one another, but at the end of the day, Void Lulz has the objective. Houseplant, not Houseplant, uh, Platypus. I was, I don't know why. They're just like two kind of names that just, I don't know why they kind of blur into one here. Fly turn out to Creative Assembly and ride into their offices with the Hellstrider. Well, that would probably be uh, terrifying if those things actually existed. And uh, yeah, might get the job done. Now, a single Chaos Chariot coming out for Void. Uh, should be a pretty good tool for clearing out infantry. Void Lulz has enough of a value lead that he might be able to actually push Platy off Objective 3. I do like this play from him. It's a really nice tech. A single Chariot, you know, with the battle being so entrenched up here, could cause some serious problems. But Houseplant's actually doing a decent job of trading the value back a little bit. He's closed the gap. It's only 1,200 now. It's actually a little bit more substantial. But Void might be able to move up the middle and uh, grab this. We'll have to see. So um, here they come. Chaos Chariots of Zinch? No, not of anything. Just basic Chaos, uh, Chaos Chariots undivided. Forsaken moving up, and honestly, Platy might be in danger of losing this. He summons his own Hellstriders of Slaneshin to come up and do some battle. Just look at these units. They have they have Scaling Ward Save, Scaling Leadership, Charge Bonus, Mark of Slanesh grants them ITP, they cause Fear, they have Base Physical Resist Vanguard Deployment. Like, dude, come on. Like, what are you thinking with those units? What are you thinking? Just so absurd. I would love, you know what would be on my Christmas list for tonight? Would be to see a Nurgle game. Like, if we get a Nurgle game out of one of these players, that'd be pretty sweet. But again, it's only best of three, so, you know, best of five could take, like, literally, that would make this, like, a nine-hour stream. So, don't know if that's going to be happening here. Now, this objective looks like uh, Platypus is kind of wrestling a little bit of capture weight, but again, the trading is favoring Void by a substantial amount. And this objective, the home objective of Platypus, looks like it's in a little bit of danger as the chariots continue to roll through these Chaos Warriors. I don't have crazy armor piercing, but still, it's not insignificant as the Marauder Horsemen continue to pour in some fire into those silver shields. Will Platypus be able to pull this back? He's down 1,300 value. Void Lulz, uh has a solid victory up on the high ground objective, pushing back the forces of Platy. Looks like he does control that one, as so we have a little bit of stuttering, but it doesn't seem like it's, uh, it's too much there. So they push those. Void maintaining a big value lead as well, about 700 to about 360 once the points kind of normalize here. The Platypus is being pushed off the objective. I would not be surprised to see Platypus tap out. Void Lulz is very much a player who's going to go for the throat. So if you do yield uh, 
you know, uh, uh, if he gets a lead against you, it's not going to be easy to get it back. That is for sure. Void Lol's character is beat up, but doesn't really mean much. Game one is going to be going to Void. GG, well played. GG, well played. Scary opponent, man. Void Lol's looking very strong. You know, uh, he's going to be playing in the Season 2 Grand Championships, which will be happening uh, as soon as we get a hotfix. We'll be doing the championship, so... Um, yeah, don't know when that's going to be, but not much to say about the game, guys. You saw the, what was done. It's basically just Hell Striders and Horsemen, and whoever micro is better wins the game. So that is that. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. So next map is going to be the Glade of the Everqueen, another one of our new maps. A beautiful one by Wacka Wacka 3000. It is an absolute beauty. And let's see how it goes. Yeah, it wasn't for long. Maybe we'll see some Nurgle. I think Void would play Nurgle. I feel like it, it might be up his, his wheelhouse to kind of play a little bit of Nurgle action. Yeah, at least we didn't have to suffer for long. Like that one was, that was like a short and quick suffering. Yeah, the healing bugs are banned. Yeah, we got them banned because it's just like, that just breaks the game, you know? Just want to thank you guys all for joining, by the way, man. You guys have really been sticking through it, even late night, you know, staying the, stay the course. Greatly appreciate that. And uh, thank you guys so much. If you're enjoying the stream, do drop a like. It helps out quite a bit. Thank you guys for uh, all your support. It's been fun. More wild times to be had. So what will the picks be? Will we see another sweaty mirror match? Now that Warriors of Chaos are off the table, all the other sweat factions are banned, according to their global bans. So I think we see something more normal now. Uh, the hotfix is needed to fix the, uh, to fix the, what's it called? To fix the, uh, the healing bug, yeah. Sorry, it's get, I'm getting a little bit loopy. It's you know, seven hours, I'm just ranting straight. I, I feel bad for my when when my wife and I go on road trips and I drink coffee, it's like doomsday. Just just ranting for hours. My poor wife. She she she's a saint. She tolerate she tolerates me. Oh, but the healing bugs basically just like insta heal something to full health. Yeah, with inv with in as long as you're resurrecting models, it's just so broken. I always enjoy a good late night stream. Yeah, late night streams are really fun. They're really fun for sure. It's a very thick stream. I know. There wasn't too many, I mean, uh, I would say, yeah, Legend of Total War probably had the longest streams in general on average, right? He, he at some points had regularly like six, seven, eight hour streams, but I don't know. We're, we're encroaching on that territory with this one. Why not eight? I'm getting hungry, dude. I haven't eaten anything since like noon. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, it's almost midnight. So Yeah. Getting a little bit hungry. Is your throat as dry as... No, not really, honestly. I'm dr I drink a ton of water, so my throat feels actually really good. I don't feel, like, strained or anything. I mean, maybe tomorrow I'll feel it a little bit, but... Yeah. We will have to see. <laughs> yeah, the Glade of the Everqueen, that, like, loincloth looks... From a distance looks awfully suspicious. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, demons are in multiplayer. At least in my tournaments, you're allowed to play Demons of Chaos. So, they are allowed to be played. Hmm. Let's see here. No problem. Okay. Perfect. During desires butchery is becoming an ogre. No, oh, no, I don't think I'll become an ogre. I I was getting a little bit chubby at one point though. Recently, yeah, it was it was. It was like it was like a summer like back uh what in like 2020 yeah during the the rona i, I became a chub i put on some weight for sure like I, I think i was like weighing like oh man i was like almost 195 at one point yeah it was pretty that's pretty heavy for me i'm i weigh like 178 right now so it's it's a it's a pretty stark difference become a victim of the great mod dude i'm hungry my wife's actually making me a pizza right now so she, again just like further talking about how awesome she is Oh, Wood Elves, actually, for Void Laws. Interesting. So, Wood Elves versus... Uh, what's it going to be? Glade of the Everqueen. Could be a decent map for Wood Elves. Has some good Vanguard points. A couple different options like that. Yeah. I was becoming a Chungus. Um, you know, and again, weight is all... It's all relative to your frame and your size and everything. But And I am not. I don't have a frame to weigh that much. It, lo it did not look good. What about all the Fil Filipino... Oh, dude. Filipino food is a very quick way to put on weight. If you want to... If you want to... put get heavy just eat filipino food it's so good oh bit of a personal question how fit i'm pretty out of shape i don't like look bad but i like i it's it's very hard for me to exercise with the damage to my hands i can't like do traditional weightlifting yet i'm, I'm working on it i'm trying to like figure it all out um 
So yeah, but I'm in okay shape. Yeah, you know, like when you when you have like a really athletic background as like a, t a young a young man and uh, as like a teenager and a kid, like you have a lot of muscle memory. So like I, I find that like I used to work out so hard that like my body still maintains some of that physique. Like the muscle memory is still there. So I think that's I think that's a factor for sure. Will they add them to ladder? Says Dylan. The demons of chaos? Probably not. No, I don't know why they wouldn't. Like demons of chaos are okay. They're not that good, really. Turn is like seven one. No, I'm not. I'm five ten. Technically five ten and a half, but let's just say five ten. It's fine. It's close enough. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. So now that the filth is gone, yeah, we can have some fun games now. Dwarves versus wood elves. Holy shit. This I feel is very dwarf favored. I'd be surprised if Void Lols finds a way to win this. Although I don't know, Void probably can. Yeah, Wood Elves versus Dwarves, Arrows of Kernis, Snipe Artillery. Maybe we see Sisters of Twilight. They've been the most meta lord for the Wood Elves. Dude, what if we saw a Chad Orion? Yeah. Orion getting in there. There's a Dota 2 caster named Purge who has done a 9 hour and 40 minute patch review. Are you serious? Oh my god, that is crazy. I mean, Dota probably has colossal patches though, right? But is he just talking about the patch the entire time? Or is he... Is he um, like actually playing games to illustrate it. I used to lift, yeah. I used to lift, yeah, a long time ago. Good morning from Germany. Yes, we are on the grand finals of the tournament. Void Lol's up one. If he wins this, it's over. Um, if Platypus wins, we go to game three. We got a Dwarf versus Wood Elf match on the Glade of the Everqueen. So very, very cool map. Satisfy the grudge. Eagles don't really have good armor piercing values, no. Um, Manticores, I think, have slightly better AP values, but... Typically, eagles are very... They're good at hunting lightly armored characters if you want to use them. Like, I would never use eagles against dwarves. Against dwarves, probably starfire shafts, way watchers, wildwood rangers, um, cheap cavalry is going to be your best bet. Yeah, purge reviews the mechanics in extreme detail. Man, that's nuts. A nine hour and 40 minute stream. That's pretty serious to just like review one topic. Yeah, this is a it's it's domination changes the matchup a little bit because the dwarves can't just sit in a haggard box. Like you, you kind of have to like move out a little, so it, it gives the wood elves a better chance. I'd still say it's Dowie favored. Oh, Hawk Rider's got Vanguard today. Got it. Okay. He tests every little thing in the patch. That's crazy. That's impressive. You know, the world needs people like that. Like I would never do that, but like you you need people who are willing to just get into the gears of things and just figure it out. You know. It, <laughs> It's good. So let's look at the stats for the day. Warriors of Chaos undefeated. Ogre Kingdoms, 3-0. Dark Elves doing pretty well. High Elves with a nice showing. 14-8. Wins and losses. Wins and losses. In the pits, we have the Skaven, which is very strange. We saw how dominant they were when Void Lols played them. That's for sure. And uh, and yeah, Empire with a bad opening. Dwarves not doing super hot. Looks like they've lost a couple games since then. But again, once we have like like 10 tournaments, we'll actually have some useful stats. These, these don't really say much. Warp Grinders. Warp Grinders are probably not as good as they used to be. Um, in land battle, they're better because your opponent has to, they can just sit in the corner in a box and be like, you know, you have to deal with it. Oh my God, look at that build, Jesus. This is exactly what I expected, actually. That is a lot of Dwarven bodies to deal with. That is a lot of Dwarven bodies. So it is one, two, three. So yeah, it looks like nine Quarrelers, uh, a bunch of Dwarf Warriors and Thorek. This is the, this is, I actually played against Houseplant in a tournament and he did like this to me, but it was, uh, it was with, uh, what was I playing? I can't remember. I think it was Empire. Well, I also have a 64% win rate today. It's only one event. So after like a handful of more events, you're going to get a true metric. It's just literally one tournament's worth of data, like today. So once we have like a lot of tournaments, you're really going to start seeing it. And our, our lovely hosts will be um, will be hosting said tournament. So that'd be pretty hype. That will be pretty hype indeed. So Glade of the Everqueen, a really nice new map by Wacka Wacka 3000. Love this one. It's pretty great. And uh, yeah, checking it out here. It is going to be the dreaded Dowie Quarreler Horde. So they basically just move out. All these dwarves are armored with shields. It is like the Wood Elves will honestly run out of ammo shooting into you. So I, I'm really curious if Void's going to find a way around that because I haven't been able to. Now, for the Wood Elves, it's going to be Way Watchers. They can move and hit and run against dwarven missiles and pick them off. But honestly, they end up running out of ammo. But I guess you can unsummon them and get a refund at that point. So maybe that's the strategy. And then Starfire Shafts and Sisters of Twilight up on the dragon. So Breath Attack's very good here. They have auto healing, so you don't need to waste heals on them. 
I would wager Void Laws will summon in a caster, most likely a Dweller's Blow caster or um, a Shadow caster of some sort. That would be my guess. Yeah, seven hour stream, man. It ain't no thing. I could I could stream all day. If I didn't have to like broadcast and like cast games, I could definitely do a 24 hour stream pretty easily. It's just, uh, you know, when you're casting it, like it, it tires you out a little bit more, I would say. Yeah. Stream's been really good. We've had amazing games. The, the only one really haggard game, which was the Warriors of Chaos Mirror. Everything else has been pretty good, I would say. And pretty enjoyable. Oh, I, I love this color scheme. The purple, the Barrack Var Dwarves are so rad looking. I would honestly do this scheme in tabletop. If I were to paint a dwarf army, this would be something I would for sure consider. Like, purple's a pretty easy color to paint, and it's uh, it looks really rad. I think it's, like, very regal, very royal. The Dowie are ready. Moving up. Going to be grabbing objective one. The Dwarven Tide cometh. They basically are just going to spam blasting charges after this, I would imagine, from Vanguard. Blasting charges are just, so, like, 80 armor, so you still need to focus them down. And, uh, yeah, so they're just so annoying. And Wood Elves, like, you can't press the Dwarves, because you're just going to get blasting charged, like... I really don't know how Void wins this matchup. I really don't know how he does it. Uh, the new patch has a ton of problems. It's not a really good patch, um, unfortunately, but I think it's something Creative Assembly will, will improve upon and, and hopefully fix in the future. So, I'm trying to be optimistic. I know I was I was saltier at the beginning of the stream, you know, when the emotions were running high, but I've since uh, I've since kind of been like, yeah, you know, whatever. It, it, it'll get there. It'll get there. Somebody in chat went and got a tattoo and came back, and I'm still streaming. I love it. I love it. It's, it's classic stuff. So here, uh, we get the Waywatchers shooting into the Corlers. Corlers getting wrecked pretty badly. And the reason why they got wrecked is because they turned their backs and ran, and then they got shot in the back, so their shields did not apply. So that's the main reason there. In the woods, we got a Spellweaver of Life, a Dweller's Caster, no surprises. And Sisters of Twilight are uh, going to try and breath attack here. We'll see. Maybe they're going to actually attack in melee. They probably will use their spray fire mode. But now the Starfire Shaft's moving in. We do see one Dwarf unit kind of get wrecked. That's, it's very normal. And if you're the Dwarf player here, what you do is you just unsummon these Corlers. Oh yeah, head-to-head -head campaign soon. I want to do one in the next few days. Um, not tomorrow, but maybe the day after we'll do a head-to-head -head campaign. So so yeah, it's going to be good. Um, yeah, and the dwarf's just moving up. Objective 1 going to be controlled. Objective 3, Wood Elves will obviously have their home objective. The Wood Elves have to just get a colossal value lead, which is not easy. Oh, don't turn your backs. That's going to give you a lot of damage if you're not careful. And now the first Dowie artillery has come out. So the, the, gro the, the Grob Lobber, the, the Goblin Lobber. Going to be throwing some goblins at the Wood Elves, which is, uh, I'm certainly, they probably won't enjoy that either. They don't, they, it's not like they like goblins. Now, Glade Rider Spears, we're not going to be seeing any, like, cheeky Stagnite play. I, I understand that. Um, and the Sisters of the Twilight have picked off a couple models, but they're being pretty conservative here. Um, maybe going to be collapsing into the miners to try and nullify the blasting charges, because these Dowie are ready. And if these Glade Riders get into range, they're going to get Shadow Realms by the blasting charges. Nice breath attack. That's good. It's going to clear out some of the infantry there. So that's a nice little push for the Wood Elves. The problem is, in my experience, I've played this matchup a couple times. It seems as if it's ta it takes too much time for the Wood Elves to value the Dwarves off the objectives to win the game, even with the new uh, game here. So it's a tricky one. Yeah, Warcraft 3, is, it's not off the menu. It's one of my favorite games of all time, so we could definitely do it. Here, Sisters of Twilight battling against Miners, trying to nullify the Blasting Charges. Meanwhile, the Glade Riders, oh... Void Lulls with the, 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 the attention of a predator. He's just moving around the back. And like, that's easy to lose track of. They just ran into the forest and now they're hidden, right? So uh, Platypus could potentially just lose that artillery in the backfield. But the dwarves are going to just push up on you and they're going to be such an absolute machine. Absolute machine. Hey, John, I appreciate that. Thank you for the kind words. And look at this Lost Sylvan Knights coming out. Now, I've tried these guys against dwarves. I haven't had success, but I'm not as good as Void Lulls. And here they come. So they're going to move into the Miners with Blasting Charges. For sure wreck them. And now there's a little bit of a weakness in the Dwarven Formation. This side is being taken by the Wood Elves. And the Dwarves are going to have to move up eventually. I would like to see some Dwarf Warriors just move up on this point. Like, I don't see why why you wouldn't. I guess it overextends you a little bit potentially. But I do think that could be good. Now here we do have, uh-oh, Rune of Slowness going down. Sisters of Twilight are currently bogged down by your boy Thorek. And they're taking a lot of damage. But remember the Dragons. They do have access to uh, that free healing ability, so um, so yeah, they can do it. Lost Silver Knights are pulling back, retreating, and uh, maybe get a cycle charge in. I wouldn't charge into that position. Sisters of Twilight take a hammering, although I don't think they're worth a heal because I think you just use your um, your uh, conjoined destiny to heal them. Now the dwarves have pulled the value back, right? So this is very much how this matchup goes. What else usually go up, like you know, 800, 900 value, and then things start to change. And look at this, Void Lulls actually does get on top of the Goblobber back here, but it looks like Platypus had some Slayers ready. It's pretty important to keep it near your spawn point, but it still forces your opponent to summon a unit they might not want to summon. 
So the Slayers are going to be killing those Glade Riders. So Void Lulls with his very predatory play on the flank there. Not going to be paying off. Now, Lost Silver Knights maneuvering. Wood Elves holding on the two points. Dwarves being a little bit too conservative. I, I really think they should push up and force the issue. Uh, there are going to be some more cap coming out. So we got some more great Stag Knights. So they're one of the few really like heavy AP units that the Wood Elves have outside of like Wilded Rangers. Nice shots there. It's the way Watchers stick and move. Very, very good ammunition conservation by Void. He's been able to hold on to these bad boys pretty well. And the Lost Sylvan Knights in the forest, taking down the Miners with Blasting Charges and kind of cleaning out some of the Dwarven Routing Units. Meanwhile, more Dwarf Warrior Great Opens are on their way out. And the Goblobber in the back is online and shooting into the Waywatchers. Dwarves moving up onto the point, and the Bows in the back <clears throat> are actually very tattered. But he's got three of them right here, which appear to be in very, very good shape there. So here they come. Here they come. Big Breath Attack coming downtown. Corlers kind of getting wrecked a little bit. Noxious Gas. This is kind of a Bronzodia blob right here. you got three archers stacked on top of each other. It happens when you're in a very heated game, right? But Void Lulls is trading evenly with the Dwarves, which is not easy to do with the Wood Elves, and he shuts down multiple archer units. And now the Great Stag Knights get a beautiful charge into the Alt Arch Raiders, and Dwarves don't have a ton of magic damage, so this is going to hurt pretty bad. Losing a very expensive and cost-effective unit, but yeah, you can see Corlers just shooting into the Stag Knights, and the front archers are peppering into the advancing Dwarven units. So you see what I'm saying about advancing Dwarf Warriors? You're forcing Way Watchers to shoot into just crappy cheap chaff infantry that are shielded so that's kind of the school of thought with that now sisters of twilight are going to be able to heal void Lulls has got more glade riders looks like he's going to be going around to try and press the artillery again which i don't hate that idea it forces a unit of slayers to stay back there and look at this beautiful great stagnite play maneuvering over to the side getting on top of the coilers and sisters of twilight are still very healthy side objective owned by the hardwood and uh, looks like some cavalry are on their way back are the sisters going to go after thoric maybe are they going to just use their arrow and kind of sit and shoot at him? I think that's what it's going to be. The objective is being held by, or control, not, it's controlled by Void, but Platy does have the capture weight with these dwarves on it. And it looks like the dwarves are pushing back the Wood Elves here a little bit. You can see the Waywatchers have kind of been forced into the Shadow Realm a little bit. And these Lost Sylvan Knights, though, are going very ham. And I got to tell you, this is so micro-intensive. Like, Void Lulls is like a surgeon here. He's basically just like hunting down like every missile piece and, and weaving through these Dwarven shooting formations while also mitigating. And look at that, he even comes full circle to hammer these dwarves off the point. He literally did a full lap here, like killed stuff and has come full circle to clear these dwarf warriors off the point. The great Stag Knights here also doing a very good job against the Dowie infantry. And Void Lulls is kind of taking over this game. This is a, this is truly a masterclass, man. He is just so, his micro is so good. And so is Platy's. Platy has good micro, but the thing about dwarves is the expression of micro isn't going to show as much because obviously they're more static, slower army, so you're not going to like see the crazy micro with them as much. So it's a little bit harder to kind of articulate here, but Thorax just kind of sitting down here. Sisters uh, do lose that objective, and it's a little bit dangerous. The dwarves even being behind in value could, uh, and they're not buying behind that by that much, can just hold on to two points. And we do see an Earthblood overcasted coming down, so I think these guys get to move over here. And now we got War Dancers moving out. So now that many of the archers of the dwarves have been compromised, the Wood Elves are going to be moving up with some actual infantry. Like, uh, we still see Blasting Charges and some archers. Sisters are just trying to wear down Thoric a little bit, probably so you can get in there in the late game and try and take him out. But now the hard wood is moving up, and you can see the Dwarf Warriors with Grey Opens here getting hammered by Stag Knights. Way Watchers shooting, but what's really nice about Way Watchers is when they run out of ammo, they usually accrue their value, and, oh, well, I guess against Dwarves, probably not. But you can just unsummon them, which is uh, what you want to be doing. So Slayer's getting popped here. Oh my god, Void Lulls is so persistent. He's got these spears back here, and he's, he's trying to shut down the Goblobber, and that's keeping a really expensive Slayer unit back there, which is definitely rough, right? Now, looking at the score, Platypus is... Uh, down by like a little bit. Void Lulls has a slight lead, but it's it's not super huge. Is he actually going to use the the Way Watchers to fight? I mean, they do have decent melee stats, 30, 30, and 32. So you can definitely have them fight Slayers. That wouldn't be a bad fight at all. And it looks like that's what's going to be happening. Meanwhile, on the other side, we haven't seen the War Dancers move in. We do see more Glade Riders riding through the forest. I love that the Wood Elves are actually using the forest in their fight. I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. Now, as far as banked resources, Void Lulls has about 1,500, which means another Stag Knight's probably coming out. Um, Platy has been spending pretty actively just trying to get like cheap chaff units out that are you know relatively tough to deal with and in the back it looks like the glade riders were sacrificed to shut down the goblobber which is certainly not a bad idea and this archer position for Platy is now going to get compromised pretty heavily as the sisters are back here and uh, Christmas is coming a little bit early guys here they come so uh, it's time for the holidays uh, Santa Claus is all up in this game here as those guys do charge in and the dwarves get punted and the rune of Jim active giving a little bit of a stat buff but man surgical scalpel play here as the sisters of twilight move in and get a really nice charge but you know the dwarves still have the value uh the two objectives so 
This one's going to be hard to maneuver. Eternal Guard trying to fight there. They do get Blasting Charged. And uh, the Dwarves are also pressing for the back objective of Void here. As we see War Dancers for Void Lulls moving in. So the War Dancers hunting down Slayers. Probably turn and fight, honestly. I don't know why you wouldn't just turn and sandwich them and kill them quickly. But the Dwarves might steal your back objective. Now Void Lulls is going to be stealing the Dwarven Home objective. Dude, this game is getting crazy as hell. So this objective is going to be taken by Void. Um, and then what does he do from here? Maybe he bounces back and punishes this Dwarven overextension. I think that's the way. And Void did end up doing that right. So he actually stops here. He gets all of his uh, his War Dancers and... Ooh, Blasting Charges from downtown. That is a very, very scary thing. But even still, the Slayers do get cut to pieces. And the value is super, super close. So Void does grab the objective. He's able to get the Lost Sylvan Knights in to the Dwarf Warriors here. All the Dwarven Missiles are being just surgically taken out. Like, absolutely taken out here. Uh, Slayer Strategy says, I haven't played Domination yet. How does the economy work with returning units to the pool? Uh, I think you get like half off if, if they have full health. Uh, it depends on the amount of health you have left on the unit. So Ammunition isn't factored in, which is probably something that needs to be changed. But aside from that, it uh, that's how it works. So Dwarves going to retake their home objective. And uh, yeah, the, the Elves are kind of getting pushed back. I think it's going to be tough. The Dwarven Tide is a real thing. And it's very, very tough to stop. Um, dwarves might actually get a triple cap here. So Dwarves have taken the home objective of the Wood Elves. We see some archers trying to shoot them off here, which is not easy. A couple war dancers will probably move on to this point. I think the Wood Elves will be able to get this one back. But if Void isn't careful and he lets Platypus get you know too much of a lead here, the dreaded Platy could come back with the Dwarven, uh, the dwarven Grudges and, uh, and, and give him the business. So those Dwarves going to get routed like instantly. This Dwarven position going to get Terror routed. These guys actually cause Terror, which is useful against Dwarven Chaff, like Miners. So these Miner units are going to get routed. And now the objective is going to go back to the Wood Elves. So Platy is very, very dangerous with this Triple Cap here. And the Wood Elves are going to have to start getting more aggressive. I mean, the value lead is probably about as good as it's going to get. Not a ton of Dwarven capture weight here. So I think the Wood Elves will probably just try and get a double cap and hold on to those two points. And I think that is going to be the play for sure. Wood Elves resurgent. A lot of archers coming out of the forest. We have the Glade Guard maneuvering up and that will easily punish this. We could even see Thoric potentially die here. Uh, he could get shot to pieces by all those Glade Guard. Back objective is going to be controlled by Void, so he does get that with those War Dancers right there. And the Lost Sylvan Knights, dude, these things are just unholy. Like, I feel so bad for Platy having to deal with these things. Like, with Void Lulls, like, super sweat micro, and, like, they're just, like, rampaging. And these, like, great Stag Knights, man. And this is the thing, what else are so micro-intensive? They're just so micro-intensive, but it's kind of cool to see Void Lulls playing factions, like, other than Vampire Counts, because it really gets to see, you get to see the expression of his skills, you know? Yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy because this is a hard matchup. This is not easy at all. So there's Twilight back here trying to target them as a mistake because uh, they're going to get that free heal with Conjoined Destiny. So you're not going to get them unless like you really screw up and get caught with like a Rune of Doom and a bunch of shooting. And we do see the uh, Stag Knights get back here shutting down these Coilers as they try and advance. And now the Wood Elves have gotten a double cap. And at this point, the Wood Elves will win with a double cap right here. They're going to get it. Glade Guard moving up, shooting into the Miners with Blasting Charges. This guy's going to get hammered. And, dude, Lost Sylvan Knights just rampaging. Just like every time the dwarves pop out with something, it's like it's like that surprise the surprise meme, you know, where the guy, like, appears. He's like, surprise. I don't know. I can't say that. I don't want to say that on the stream, obviously. But Miners of Blasting Charges are getting absolutely wrecked. And that's so good. I mean, the Blasting Charges are such a good counter to all these units. But instead, they just get basically KO'd by these Lost Sylvan Knights that are just going all over the place. Absolutely insane. Slayers coming up, which is cool. They might be able to, you know, hold this point, but the Slayers are going to get shot to pieces by all these units. And the Sylvan Knights are still just rampaging in the backfield. Look at them. Oh my god, getting into the Coilers here. Voidal's really taking over the game. Um, the value lead is starting to become more stark. The Dwarves are looking very bare on the battlefield. We see some Slayers coming out as well as Dwarf Warriors, but the Dowie Tide was not able to get there. It doesn't look like it. And Voidal is with a very, very crazy win. I mean... The amount of micro that went into this is insane. And we see Xyphos in chat. He would know. Xyphos knows how this matchup is. It's a, it's a stressful one. Thoric just kind of sitting there doing what Dwarf Lords do, which is mostly nothing unless they have an army-wide ability like Rune of Doom or Rune of Slow. And uh, on the side here, we do have the objective being controlled by the Dwarves. But now we get Way Watchers moving up and Sisters look like they're going to be going in after the Slayers there. So uh, there they go. Turn remembered some babies. Listen to a stream when you sleep. Yeah, some people have told me that actually. Pretty cool. Lost Silver Knights cleaning up in the backfield. Platy, I think, is uh, is is playing good. You know, this is this is what happened to me when I played Void. It's uh, it's it's hard to keep up with all of it, man. And uh, those cavalry moving about. We do see the Slayers getting shot to pieces. Back objective is going to be owned, and uh, yeah, probably gonna be GG. I mean, that's now a Wood Elf triple cap against the Dwarves. The Dwarves do have the Rune of Doom active, which is going to be going down. 
Not really buffing much. I mean, you basically see Thoric and a couple of Slayers with it active that are actually in combat. The rest of the Slayers are just, just like running an open field and just can't do anything. They're just being picked apart. So GG. Void Lols with a Steel Chair. Well played to Platy. He played like an absolute champ in today's tournament. But in the end, Void Lols is going to be claiming the first win, ladies and gentlemen, of Season 3 on Total Tavern and will be securing the victory and the number one spot on the leaderboard. So he gets that, that rock hard number one spot, which pretty much guarantees him a spot in the grand finals of season three. So he can kind of chill out now if he doesn't want to play in tournaments. He, he's earned it. So as long as he practices behind the scene, he is gonna, he's going to be good. So GG well played, man. Holy shit. Sisters, Weight Watchers did okay. They weren't really the, it was the cavalry. It was the Sylvan Knights and the Stag Knights. Those things were just so good. GG well played. Yeah. Super incredible game. So very well played to Void. Congrats to his victory and to Platypus and to all of you who played today. If you guys enjoyed this stream, please do drop a like. It helps out quite a bit. Let's pump those, those numbers up. Let's we'll see what we can get. It helps out. It helps more people find multiplayer, really. And thank you guys for the generous donations. We had some really big ones today. I really appreciate you guys. And we also have two new channel members. So welcome to the Dukes of Haggard, my friends. You guys are the best. And that's it. I'm going to go hang out with my wife. I'm going to go chill, get some food. I'm pretty damn hungry now. It's been a long day. How do you counter this as dwarves, though? Uh, it's definitely beatable. I uh, against uh, wood elves, I really like to use double master engineer, and with the and they sit in your backfield with the flash bomb, and you just like flash bomb the cab down. Yeah, it's not easy, but dwarves are definitely, I would say, favored in this matchup. Like, oh, oh, like if you just put like, you know, I think they would win more often with two equally skilled players. Yeah, still they can lose though. All right, guys, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Great kickoff for season three. I agree, it was very fun. We'll see you guys next time. Going to take tomorrow off streaming probably. And uh, I'll be back the day after that with a head-to-head -head campaign or some sort of a tournament or something. GG, well played. Adios, my friends. See ya. Take care.